Brandon Kaczynski. <laughs> oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. We'll get the pods. We'll get to Steve Kerr. I think Willard and Dibbs did a tremendous job with Steve Kerr last night. As the Warrior season is over and it's all hitting us, there is no more basketball for the rest of the 2023-24 season. We're going into the offseason full of questions. And I just keep coming back to this, Shasky. We're going to get into Steve mm. Kerr. And good morning to everybody out there on YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First North Cal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First North Cal First Class money market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages. As we've added the QR code on both pages, shout out to the Xfinity Mobile Tax Line. And shout out to our friends at Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call into the roast, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. We had a lot of good calls yesterday. For the people who couldn't get in yesterday, feel free to call back today. Get your thoughts on the offseason. Get your thoughts on the season. What the Warriors need to do. Who's got to go? Who's got to stay? But here in Steve Kerr, we're going to get into it. And I just keep coming back to this, Shasky. Were they a good team this year? I don't know. They went like 16 or 18 0 against the Detroits, the Charlottes, the worst teams in the league. The Spurs, they went 3 1 against the Blazers. All that stuff. Are they a good team? I don't really know. But I do know that they were in 10th place. <laughs> and when I look behind to go to St. Warriors, San Antonio will get better. Houston will get better. Utah will get better. The Memphis Grizzlies will get a lot better with John Morant. They were the number two seed in the West the last two years. So in my mind, I keep telling myself, they're a 10th place team. It would be criminal if they just ran it back. They've got to make changes. Steve Kerr kind of hinted at it, but you've got to get bigger. You've got to get more athletic. I'm even watching the Bulls last night and Kobe White. You know I love Kobe mm -hmm. White. He drops a 40-burger on the Atlanta Hawks. Now, Atlanta Hawks can't defend me and you. Mm -hmm. They can't defend you and I. It's just, it's they, they don't play defense. But I'm looking at how athletic Kobe White is. I'm looking at DeMar DeRozan. I'm looking at how quick he is. They bring some guy Terry off the bench who's quick and athletic and would be one of the most athletic players on the Go to State Warriors. That is the league. And right now, I'm looking at the Golden State Warriors and how they were physically outmanned by the Sacramento Kings and how athletically, you know, gifted Sacramento looked compared to the Golden State Warriors. You can't possibly run this back. Well, and I, I think there's three, uh, well, two big dominoes that start, right? So, I don't, again, I I didn't realize how, how absurd this salary cap is in terms of crushing teams like the Warriors. Bonte. If Chris Paul opts in, they are $4 million. If they opt yep. into his contract, they're $4 million over the top, top, top of the cap. Se meaning they would lose all draft capital. Second apron. Yes. Second all apron. draft capital moving so, forward. Because we have the first apron and the second apron. Yes. To be able to, to make moves. So all the draft capital, it would just... Yep. That's before they would re-sign Clay Thompson. Mm -hmm. Now let's say, let's say they allow... Uh, Chris Paul to, be, to become a free agent. They decline his option or waive him or whatever, whatever the technical term is. They've only got about $30 million under that that apron, and that's if they get rid of Kevon Looney. So the second apron, $182.5 million. The first apron's $172 million, and the luxury tax starts at one sixty five. And they're repeat tax so, offenders. Which so means it when, you're re, when you're in a repeater tax, that dollar amount goes up. So basically... It's 1.8. So for, for, for argument's sake, it's 2x that you're paying. Yeah. So if you give, even if it's CP3, if I give CP3 the 30 million, I'm paying 60 million yeah. for that $30 million player. So like I, I just don't think people understand. I don't even know if the players fully understand because it's that complicated. They're really in a bind here. And I've thought about it long and hard. Yeah. And I've thought about different ways that they, they could flip this thing around. And I'm not saying this is where I'm at today. So just bear with me, B. But I do think that there's some argument, and look, at you are going to risk alienating Steph Curry. There is an argument for like, hey, maybe we just shred payroll here well, and just like, like, and I know no one wants to flirt with pissing off Steph Curry, and I get that. But there is a, there is an avenue well, of like, we might be best not bringing back a lot of guys. Well, this financially. is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. And hearing Steve Curry and Willard and Dibbs say this made me really wrap my rain wrap my brain around what's going on with this basketball team and what could happen over the next three to five years. Here's what Steve Kerr said about the payroll. Personally, I don't think it makes sense to have a massive payroll right now um, with with our team. 
Um, it just doesn't, you, you know, to spend that kind of money and Joe has been incredibly uh, generous and, and, um, you know, so uh, aggressive and, uh, you know, really attacking, looking for championships. But at some point, you you can't spend this much money for a team that didn't make the playoffs. So we have a lot of decisions to make and a lot of uh, a lot of questions to answer. So there, you know, those things are all kind of thrown into the pot, and you have to figure it out. And then not only that, did he say that because I'm with him there. Joe Lacob just paid for the most expensive roster in NBA history. Did not make the playoffs. That's the reality of it. I don't care what you think, how you felt about the 46 wins. You know, you, you played well on the road, but you didn't play well at home. You're 21 and 20. You're in 10th place in the Western Conference. And the Western Conference is not going to get any easier next season. You're in 10th place with the most expensive roster. How the hell can you justify That's bringing this roster back and spending that type of money when you're in 10th place? It just doesn't make sense. But also, are the Warriors still a championship contender? Are they a contender right now? Here's what Kerr had to say about that. It would be hard for me sitting here with our season over on April 17th, whatever it is, to tell you that we are a championship contender. That, that would be not the brightest comment I could ever make. You know, I mean, you, you, you have to prove that. You can't just say you're a contender. You have to, you have to prove it. So, you know, right now we're not, but um, we have, that's why you have an off season. That's why you talk to other teams. That's why, that's why you look at, every possibility to build your roster back up every year you're i'm always surprised at the deals that happen for any team There's, you just don't know and so you you have to go into the summer with an open mind and you know who knows there might be some deal that that mike and joe feel like you know gets us back into intention maybe there isn't if there's not then you know what's uh, what are we looking at what are we uh what's the goal what are we trying to accomplish and so what are we trying to accomplish moving forward? What are we trying to accomplish? Now, I get a lot of people want to, and I want to see this. I want Steph to get number five. But what is that avenue to getting number five? You know, and it's it's What's a realistic? long, it's the journey to get to number five right now looks longer than it did a season ago. It looks longer than it did four months ago. With this payroll and with you having to shed salary, and you have to make a big decision on Clay Thompson, what's it worth? Is it best for Clay to get his money here? Is it best for Clay to move on? Is it best for the Warriors to bring Clay back? I get the loyalty aspect of it. I want to see all these three players retire as they go to State Warrior, but I also want to win. I also want to win. I want to watch a team who wins games, who competes at a high, high level. But running it back, and I don't mean to pause you there, but running it back is just simply not good enough. I, I, I'm on saying, the court, on the court. On the court, it's and then not. The, then there's the other component of, like, I, I, my, Michelle and I have this conversation all the time. I go, Michelle... It's got a pencil, meaning it's got to make sense on the profit loss margin sheets. Like when I, if, if you go to anywhere and you go to buy a, a vehicle or whatever, they're going to run a credit report and they're going to be like, well, does the income justify you paying us back? Yeah. What are your expenses? And and I just don't think, I don't think enough people really truly understand that this is unsustainable. No, what they've I been think doing. people do understand you do? that yeah, absolutely when you don't people make the playoffs people understand what this payroll is you're paying for an expensive payroll you're expected to be a top 16 just baked it off the money that you're spending on this roster now the roster in return finished in 10th place in the western conference and you can pick apart situ situations you can pick, pick apart draymond green suspensions mm -hmm. you can pick apart uh chris paul and the injury you can pick apart andrew wiggins and this slow start and wiggins to his credit he said it yesterday he said it yesterday. I was just not good enough. Understand. And you know what? The accountability, I'll accept that. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we have to roll it back. Because if you roll it back, then all of a sudden I'm blocking Kamiga from flourishing. Because I need to see who Kamiga is. It's time for him to play 30 minutes a game and you just go out there and let him cook. And the same thing may be said for Moses Moody. You may need to just see, see him for 20 to 25 games for a season. But then with that said, you have Stephen Curry. And Stephen Curry just wants to win. Now, how do you just win without breaking this team apart and trying to go get... Because not only do you need a co-star, you may need a new number one. Steph Curry may be in a situation where he's dropping down to as the number two option, a very legit two option, but as a number one leading a championship team, I don't know if he's that guy no more after looking at all the numbers post-All-Star break. I'm not blaming Steph Curry for the season. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying he shot 36% from, since the All-Star well, break. I I'll meet you in the middle, and I'll say... I just don't think everything can be created around him. And I think the last three years, every single draft pick, every single acquisition 
was saw through the prism of, well, can you run this very specific thing that Steph's going to run? And now I think he's got a slight adjustment to make. You could still right. have a lot of things tailored in his direction. No doubt. But, no but doubt. I'm with you on, like, on, on any given night, he can be your one. But... Every night? No. He looked tired, man. Yeah, I agree Steve with that. Steve Kerr mentioned he looked with. tired. There was multiple people who said, boy, Steph doesn't look as fresh. And he needed that day off against the Utah Jazz after after playing that Dallas game Friday night. Hell, he had to play 36 minutes against Portland. You don't think that ate it to his legs Friday, the next night against New Orleans Pelicans? They were all over him. And he still went out there, you know, with 7 and 13 from 3 and 33 points. But, boy, he had to seven turnovers because the Pelicans made him work relentlessly. The Kings made him work relentlessly as you see these longer, more active defenders, which leads me to Steve Kerr. Basically, talk about how much we need size, Shasky. This team needs size, and Steve Kerr recognizes that. Last night, you could see we were we were overwhelmed physically. They were getting every every long rebound, every loose ball. That's where we really missed Gary yesterday. He's a guy who um, gets a lot of extra possessions for us. But um, yeah, there there are times, and and some of it is you know when we're playing our best players, we tend to be on the small side. So you know it's a tough combination when you know if you're getting beat athletically and and with size, you know you got to be perfect to to win games, and so. I do think we need to be um, a little bigger, a little more athletic. That that's, I mean, we all see that, right, Shasky? But well, but it's not just Curry. I I think that they also have a Draymond problem, and and what I mean by Draymond, he's a good player in a vacuum, but who you surround him with offensively and defensively is extremely important. You know, they tried to play TJD alongside of him against the Kings early on. TJD cannot guard on the perimeter. Yeah. Right, and so if if Dre's gonna be guarding Sabonis, just look at the per- for, and that's just yeah. one example. I'm just yep. I'm just presenting yep. one example. It was very difficult for TJD to guard whoever else out on the perimeter. Yep. You're leaving him open and vulnerable, and so then there's the offensive component of. You know, if Dre's going to be the four and he's not going to be a stretch four, right. now you're even co- you're, you're complicating your offense right. of half court sets. So, like, I want I, like the schematics of right. having Draymond Green. He brings a lot of good things to the table, but I I don't think I don't think we're we're also accounting. I know you are accounting for like it limits you, and and yeah. you have to have very well, specific pieces opposite him. Well, this is why I always say he needs to be more aggressive. Yes, because he's the you guy. He's the guy who's going to be wide open at the top of the key. All day. This is what frustrates me about Draymond Green at times. During the last year when they won fifteen games, I thought it was the perfect opportunity for him to get up at least ten threes a game and just shoot a shot, just work on his mm-hmm, game, mm-hmm. knowing that Steph's going to be back. Clay's going to be back. We have Wiggins now. Guess who's going to be wide open in the half-court offense? It's me. Because what Sacramento did, they sat on the split action. They took that away Tuesday night. Not only did they take away the split action, but how many times did Draymond Green try to throw the lob on the 4-3? or three? They were sitting on the lob threat. So if Draymond's not going to be a lob threat, and he's not going to be a great roller who can go to the basket and finish, and if he's not going to shoot a bunch of threes from the top of the key that presents themselves offensively, then yes, there needs to be an evolution in the offense. There needs to be some tinkering here because Steph Curry's running miles after miles mm-hmm. after miles after miles, mm-hmm. and it's like, that, that's not good for a 36-year-old. That's not good. Who's good. He's going to be 37 next year. I know. Running around on those legs but, like but, that. But I, I, I personally believe you take more of an exhaustion Holding the ball and bringing it up and and engaging and engaging the off ball stuff is still wear and tear though it's still wear and tear but, but not but, as much as like a James Harden with the ball in his hand and I know a lot of people want that more see like to me they need a natural well, number one point guard that but who's a bigger a guard combo who can guard, guard yes a Dejounte Murray Ex- who I'm watching last night who it's a good example him and Trey Trey Young don't fit no doubt. they don't fit no and doubt. Dejounte I think is the better overall player I, I would agree with that somebody like that or maybe even a little you know maybe even a little taller but Dejounte Murray, a guy like that, is a good starting point. Okay, okay, so like, I'm looking at all the woulda, coulda, shouldas. And one that stuck out to me, and I don't even know if this is fair, I'm not trying to do a retcon of the deadline, but knowing more about the cap that I do now, and I know that the GM knows this, I know that the owner knows this, whatever, you know, they they really whiff not trading Chris Paul. They're not going to get anything for him. They're not going to bring him back. They're probably going to have to waive him. Like, just knowing how dire their cap is, right? right they're getting nothing for him. Probably Absolutely not. nothing for Unless him in return. Unless they opt in and try to trade so, him for the thirty million, so, but you may not get as much value back. And you that. didn't play him in that game very much. So, game. like to me, it was like it was like a double whammy. And then I look at it, it's like 
you basically re-signed Jordan Poole and you spun the Jordan Poole monster year into nothing. You know, and Chris Paul's that, gone. That one hurt me no, now, now well, that I've thought about it. Well, I, I don't want to do high. I don't, no, I don't, but I'm saying but I hear that's you. bad asset that it's, allocation. It's, no, it is. It is and understanding it is, value. But, but, I, but I understand what was going on at the deadline. One, you're thinking, boy, maybe we got to run in this. Maybe we got to run in this. But that's your job as a GM but, but, but to see beyond the forest. But, but see, Mike Dunleavy's the first year on the job. We don't know what he was allowed to do. We don't know what his role was in that deadline. And for them, saying, boy, if we trade Paul, we're not really getting much. You're probably not going to get much anyway from him. So why not just keep him, have him? Because I think he was important for the rookies. I think that no, value there over the last 26 games to keep Jonathan Kaminga cool, to keep Moses Moody's head on straight, to keep Brendan Pajiski involved, even when he's slumping. I think Chris Paul was very important for this team. I get the argument that, hey, man, we should have flipped him at the deadline and this and that. It's revisionist but, for me. But, but it's revisionist it. history it. because we were not talking about that at the deadline. You're trying to get better, but how much better are you going to get by trading Chris Paul? The whole league knows if you're trading Chris Paul, they're not going to pivot and be like, hey, here you go, go to state. Here's a dominant player for no, Chris no, no, Paul. No, no. You know what I'm about, saying? It's not about acquiring a player. It's just you're literally losing him for nothing. Right. And so like it's similar to the Kevin Durant thing. Like I'd rather get something as opposed to nothing. Right. And and this is where they're at. Like financially, they're just they're up against it. Like e even if they wave Chris Paul and they, they get nothing for him, they've only got about 30 million dollars to play with. Whoa. And then if they sign Clay and another right. guy, you lose your mid-level no matter what. Right. But if you, you sign Clay and another couple guys to round out the rest of the roster, now you've limited the amount of draft capital you could yeah. you could package no, in a deal moving forward. Like that's the part. Like even if Clay takes this massive pay cut that people want which, him to which take, which I don't see happening. I don't either. And and look at and it. honestly, watching Clay, I want to get to Clay because he looked very uncomfortable at the podium yesterday. I watched him at the podium, looked very quirky, looked I very uncomfortable, really, and it just. I don't know, man. You know where I, he is. You got You got to make the pivot, Bonte. You know where he is. Like unfortunately. I feel like he's in the uncomfortable Pablo Sandoval zone where I, I just there there's this finance, there's this contract, there's this loyalty, there's this frustration from him, from Faith, like everything. And it's just I think everybody's gonna regret this ten years from now. And they're gonna look back at these last couple of years and be like, yeah, we were too harsh as a fan base. He was in a in a tough well, spot. Like there's just a lot of well ah, it's just ah. but 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 you know what? For him and for the Warriors, I, I it may be best to no, move I'm, on. I, when we're talking about the evolution of the offense, right? I'm coming around. Looking at Clay Thompson in this offense, and what's best for him, he needs easier shots. He needs shot creators around him. The Warriors don't have enough shot creators. They just don't. They don't have enough two way players. They have a lot of specialty players. They got to figure out to get five thirds on the floor at once offensively. You got to get guys who can play both ways. We'll continue the conversation. We're at day two of the Warriors offseason. 888-957-9570. What's your thoughts on here from Steve Kerr? Thought Willard and Dibbs did a tremendous job interviewing Phenomenal. them yesterday. Uh, great interview. Had me in my car it's stuck. On YouTube. Uh, YouTube, Odyssey. We'll replay a lot of the cuts from that interview. The Warriors had their interviews. Impressors, Pajipski, Wiggins, Clay, Chris Paul, Moses Moody, Jonathan Kamiga, we got all that sound as we wrap it up here. Anthony Slater is going to join us later in the program. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Cash in on basketball's biggest moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code Guru957.
This is Clay Thompson, and you are listening to the Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game. What up, Clay? It's been real, man. Been real. Clay talked yesterday at the podium. Got a little chippy with uh, Anthony Slater. When Slater asked him a question, we could play that question. We'll ask Slater about it at 8 o'clock. When he joins us to wrap up, the, wrap up this Warrior season, and it ends in Sacramento Tuesday night, abruptly, blown out at the Golden 1 Center. So Kings fans are filling themselves. Good for them. I am I actually, I'll say this too. I was joking. I went on with Draper and Gleason again yesterday. They were calling and trolling, but I was just like, look, man. <laughs> I, I'm actually, I think the Kings will win Friday. No Zion. I think they'll suffocate CJ McCollum. I root for the Kings. I hope they have a good good run here. They deserve it. They really do. Their fan base deserves it. Um, but we're focused on the Dubs and how to how to fix this team. They were in tenth place last year in the Western Conference. Tenth. There has to be change. But what are those changes? What are those changes, Dub Nation, that you want to see happen? And are you willing to make changes to the point to where? You may not be competing for anything for the next two years. The salary cap is a mess right now for the Golden State Warriors. Joe Lincoln's paying all this money, the luxury tax or whatnot. He's a repeat offender by doing it. You're in the 400 millions and paying for this roster that didn't even make the first round of the NBA playoffs. So there have to be changes. You, you, you say competing, and I know that that's a very um, vague term. Right. Do competing you, at a championship level. Okay, well, do you think that they competed at a championship level the last two Absol- years? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely so not. So, to me, that that kind of signals where you're at as an organization. And I go back to the, does it, does it pencil. Right now, just, they are so up against it, it is unsustainable to continue to go down the rabbit hole with expensive old players. There, it's just, there's so, very little leeway so and little, me, go ahead. and little wiggle room. And so, you're asking what I would do, like, I would, I would go to Steph, I would sit down, I would have the whiteboard, and I know he understands more than anyone. I would break down all of the finances and say to him, like, dude, there, there's really not much we can do outside of a miracle situation happening, begging for a Giannis or someone of that elk to come here. We're going to have to, like, trade away a lot of veteran players and get cheaper and younger so that we can flip this around in a year and a half from now. Otherwise, like, it's and just... And Steph's going to say, man, I'm going to be 37 years old. I know. Old. It's, and so this is a tough spot. So Bonte, let's just break this down You're asking quick. unrealistic no, I, things I, from I, Steph. I'm asking yeah. unrealistic things from uh, Steph. Um, the second apron starts at $182.5 million. So if the Warriors cross that second apron at $182.5 million, they will get penalized. Now, what are the penalties for the second apron? All of the penalties for the first apron apply to the second apron as well, which is triggered when a team exceeds salary, when a team's salary exceeds $182.5 million. For the 2023-24 season, one additional penalty is added when crossing the second apron. No access to the $5 million taxpayer mid-level exception. We know how how well the Warriors have done with that mid-level exception. You don't get that if you're in the second apron. Starting at the end of the 2023-24 season, even more restrictions will be added to the second apron, which happens now. Teams cannot use a trade exception generated by aggregating the salaries of multiple players. Teams cannot include cash in a trade. Teams cannot use a trade exception (laughs) generated in a prior year. First-round picks seven years out are frozen, unable to be traded. A team's first-round pick is moved to the end of the first round if they remain in the second apron for three out of five seasons. So that means even if you stink, you get you get zero benefit of it. So that's what I again if you're in that second apron. Yes. And like if you're in the second apron. I I know people want to like do the math however they want to do it. There's no saving money. (laughs) The the only way they're saving money is if they're not signing clay, if they're not bringing back Chris Paul, and they move guys who are on multi-year deals for something that's shorter or expiring or whatever, or to a team that's under the, like, for example, Orlando, who had yeah. room to to, to yeah. maneuver. They can absorb someone without giving something up. They're very limited. That What you're saying is they're very limited. Now, think about all the big-time deals with big-time players. Dame Lillard, who was traded this offseason. Yep. Uh, the famous Paul George deal or Kawhi Leonard, whatever. They are stapling multiple first rounders, future first rounders with those guys. So if they're over this second apron, that all goes away. That all goes away. So why so would Milwaukee, under- for example, want to trade with you? 
Why? Let's say, let's let's play this. Out. LeBron James. Why would the Lakers, without getting any first or second round picks, do any right. deals with you? Exactly. So exactly. you have no assets. You've got you're and you have no first round pick right now. So um, it, it's tough. It's tough. They need to be under 171. They could save some money here by not bringing back Clay and CP3, but you're limited with your moves, and those are two big points. Let's go to Anita and Santa Clara. Anita, what's happening? You're on the Rose here on 95.7 again. Hey. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Anytime. one of the things that I don't know if it's been discussed is looking at the coaching. Look at Mike Brown and where he is. Oh, at the Kings. Isn't it interesting that before going there, he was with the Warriors. I, I purport that he probably was part of the glue that kept the culture, the motivation, the spark with the players. What do you think? Well, I, I think that he was a big part of the coaching staff, but at the end of the day, they did get a lot older, you know, and yeah. and he's got a younger team, and guys have to execute. It's, you know, when you got an ace on the mound, you look like a genius in the dugout, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I just think that their guys aren't as good as they were just a couple of years ago. They're not. They all got older. This is what happens. This is what happens. And it feels at like the the end of the dynasty. other teams are, are better. They understand what the Warriors want to do. I feel like what the Warriors are doing is actually simplified versus years past. They could do more diverse things. And it's just, it, it, this happens. I don't think this is about coaching. No, it's not about coaching. It's it's having these assets and a lot of inconsistent players. And look, when you're trying to figure out a rotation and you're trying to figure out a closing lineup and you're trying to figure out a starting lineup, they had 27 different starting lineups due to injuries, due to suspensions. And it wasn't like they had major, like the one major injury was Chris Paul, right? He missed some time with the left hand fracture. But Curry, he missed a couple games here and there with an the ankle sprain. You know, Draymond Green missed a couple games here and there with the back injury. You know, Clay played 77 games. You know, all you guys for the most part, you know, Kaminga missed the six games with tendonitis, but for the most part, he was healthy. Andrew Wiggins, for the most part, he was healthy. So major injuries weren't an issue. It's just you got a little older. You got a little slower. And when you dominate for a decade, mm. this, this team has been around for a decade, which is impressive in today's NBA. You got a shelf life. How many of these other teams and these players have grown up watching the Golden State Warriors and the way they play? Sacramento watching the way the Warriors play over and over. New Orleans watching the way they play. Hell, Sacramento's implementing some of the things they do here with the Golden State Warriors because of Mike Brown and Leandro Barbosa. And Luke Lauks, who used to be an assistant coach with the Golden State Warriors, he's now on the Sacramento sideline. You know, New Orleans with Willie Green, who used to be in the system. He knows the Warriors' way. All these teams know like the Warriors' Willie way. Green. I do like Willie Green do, a lot. I actually like yeah, him. Yeah, no, I think he's a solid coach. He's got to get his house in order because they're all hurt. Well, uh, Zion gets yes, hurt. Yes. You know, B.I.'s getting hurt. He can't get his roster together. When he has his roster together, they're one of the best in the West. But we got to evolve. You got to get quicker. You got to get longer. You got to get more athletic. So how do you do that? You may have to take a step back before going forward here at the Golden State Warriors. That is the realization with the current crossroads with the roster. And I think some of Dub Nation, and we're going to, it's funny you said this yesterday, and I, I, this is what it intrigued me, you know, because it's always about the fans. So he said, we're going to find out about the fan base. <laughs> we're going to find out how patient this fan base is. We're going to find out who the real Warrior fans are. Because I know there's a lot of Warrior fans I know who suffered through 19 years where the Warriors only made the postseason one time. There may be some dark days ahead for the Golden State Warriors. And if so, how patient are you going to be? Because I would be patient. I'm ready for the reload. Because I understand that, boy, you may have squeezed every ounce of juice out of the Steph Curry era. You the may have. The downfall is near, and it's coming hard. Well, well, you have referenced the San Francisco Giants because of them keeping their core together for longer. And baseball's finances are very different. So it's not as... Um, it's not as penal when when you do overpay people. It right. sucks because you're kind of stuck with them, right. but it doesn't like take away draft picks and yep. and limit your amount of trade stuff. So it's actually easier to compete with bad contracts in baseball. But how long did the three championships wear off? How long of the like how long for the do you Giants? Yeah, by 2020 it was worn off. So I'd say at least by 2020. Five, let's say five, five six years. Five years. Yep. Five years. 
I mean, there's no guarantee that you compete in five, that even compete for a playoff spot right. in five years. I mean, the Kings have gone through a very difficult yep. road. Remember what the Warriors were prior. Now, do I believe that they're as inept as they were? No, they're no. not even close. Joe Lacob's going to do everything is, he can to turn over every stone to get the seed back in the playoffs. I don't even like saying that, but I feel like right. it's fair to say because sports does happen. Things, random things happen. I look at Cleveland, and I don't think as high of Cleveland's ownership as I do of yep. Lacob. Yep. Think of how quickly they bounce back from LeBron. Yep. Now, are they as good as they'd like to be or what no. they were? No. But they've had a pretty fun little top, team the last top, couple of years. Top four, top five seed. They swing a deal for Donovan Mitchell. You got Darius Garland. You got Evan Mobley. It's a very entertaining team. They play a very aesthetically pleasing brand of basketball with Bickerstaff. I, I, I like Cleveland. I do, too. And I just think that the Warrior fan base has had their cupeth runneth over yeah. of, of championships and run and everything. And there is a level of appreciation and surprisingly, I think we are ready to turn the page. Maybe not everyone. I don't want to speak for everybody. But it but it does happen. And you know what? You look at the 49ers and they rebuild. After hardball, things were dire. Yeah. You went through a dark year with Tom yeah. Sula. You went through a dark year with Chip Kelly. You bring in Shedahead. And by the end of year one with Shedahead, you had optimism. Yes. And you had hope that the Niners could be something. And here we are with Shedahead. I know they haven't won the Super Bowl, but damn, they've been really, really good. They've been really good. I will take that if I'm. I would be willing now. Would Steph be willing to do that? Well, that's thirty six years old. That's the okay. big elephant in the room. That's the Steph's. Steph says he just wants to win, and I understand that. I want him to win. I want him to get five. But what does it look like here with the Go to State Warriors? How do you get there quicker but with the Go to State Warriors? This is this is the this Steph is conundrum because you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's a difficult conversation. You, you, you can't afford expensive old players who aren't as good and say you want to play with your buddies, which I get and I understand. There's a loyalty and also compete with how just where they're at. But I think Steph says something it's Tuesday night in Sacramento. I get the NBA's a business. I don't envision myself playing without Clay Thompson and Draymond Green, but he does get the business side of the NBA. And at the end, he says, I just want to win. I just want to win. Well, what does it look like next season for the Go to St. Warriors as we get into the offseason here? What are some of the first changes you have to make on this roster? We're getting all into it. We're going to play all the sound from yesterday. Steve Kerr, who was on with Willard and Dibbs. Clay spoke. Wigan spoke. Kaminga. Pajipski. Moody. Chris Paul. All that stuff as we wrap up this season with the Go to St. Warriors. And we're entering one of the most riveting all seasons in recent Bay Area history. This is going to be a fascinating one, folks. What is going to happen with the Dubs going into next season? We'll try to figure it out here on the Morning Russell 95 7 game brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. No, 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 no. That's going to.
Hey, Dub Nation, it's Brandon Wajemski, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. We're getting to pots. Brandon Pajemski, who had a stellar rookie season. Um, he mentioned the other day that there's not five rookies better than him. Yesterday, he mentioned at the podium, very interesting, saying that naturally he's going to have more involvement in the offense. And the way the fan base have been split on him, I don't know. It's, we'll see about Pajemski. Well, we'll I, see. I think he needs to improve with this jump shot. I thought his comments um, were a little aggressive. It was It was a little aggressive. And I would say that, like, he's a young man, so I'm allowing him leniency. Read the room a little, you know. I'm going to have the ball naturally a little more next year. Say, ah, hey, dude, every young player on this team has exited the season thinking their role is going to be bigger the following year, only to find <laughs> out that that might not be the reality. No, no. Okay? And so uh, I just think Pods needs to chill a little. A little. I love Pods. Yeah. Chill a little. Yeah. And, and you know what? Athletically, he looked a little overmatched in that Sacramento game. <laughs> well, there's they threw De'Aaron him on De'Aaron Fox, and I'm like, no. Whether it was Keon Ellis, whether it was Keegan Murray, they were going at Pajipski. I agree. They were going at him. But I like him as a player. And I do like him as a player. I do like him. I like Pods. I do. He plays hard. I, I would I would roll with a lot of Pods. I got that mentality. I love it. Just don't eat you, the Tide Pods. But, but <laughs> don't eat the Tide Pods. And then, you know, just work on the jumper. We're kind of catch and shoot. I agree, and he's going to be fine. I agree, but I, I'm not mad at I'm not mad at Potts. I'm not mad at his game. He had a very stellar rookie season. I like the confidence. I'd rather have that in a rookie. The confidence, the overconfidence, did not have a guy. Did have a guy who's just sapping around, like yeah, I don't know, blah blah blah. Yeah, I, I'm not mad at Potts. You know, uh, was, he's got a lot of confidence in himself, and I'm not mad at that. No, I, I hear you. Now at the break. You were asking me some questions, and you were looking at me a little sideways regarding the baptism on Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah, If you want to pivot for a second. Just a uh, second. Just a second. What, why did you look at me sideways oh, regarding just, the baptism? You know, and I was like, I think Shasky, he keeps hitting me up about the baptism. Well, said, my well, wife is driving me well, crazy well, about, the, like, well, about three, attendance. Because she's like, the, the caterer needs to know exactly yeah. how many. I go, Michelle, just give him a round number, and whatever it costs, it costs. Yeah, so, she's kind of driving me crazy. So I was like, look, it all depends on the lawyer. That's the what lawyers I told my be, wife. And the Warriors know. may be playing on Sunday. And Oklahoma City threw their schedule out. Their first round series starts on Sunday. Then they'll play Wednesday. Then they'll play Friday or Saturday, I think. So, boy, the Warriors missed an opportunity. Could have played the Pelicans without Zion. Would have uh, banged up Brandon Ingram. Didn't you know play what? The Pelicans. It's better that this but, happened. But this it, is, it is a blessing this is in disguise. This is a cold hard truth. This like is a blessing me when in disguise. I get the catering bill. Yeah, so the catering bill is going to be high. So I was looking at Shaska. I was like, how many people are going to this baptism? Chassie's like 300, 350. That is not what I said. It's like, not damn. Not that is not what I said. <laughs> damn, what is this, a wedding? You have to understand. Okay, two things here. Oh, actually, there's like five. But two, to start with, we've got a big family that all live here. I didn't even invite a lot of the you know, NorCal family, which is, lives an hour, yep. two hours away. I got like 65, 70 family members in, in the immediate San Francisco area, yep. right? Then I've got all my family friends or whatever that are like essentially like family. And everybody's got two, three, four, five kids, right? right? It's like, you gotta invite them and you gotta invite the kids. Now I feel like I'm turning into Steiny. Well, yeah, then, you've been sounding like Steiny. What's up with this? You like... Because I kind of like that bit. And then, you know, yeah, they win, and I, then they lose, Darn and then I'm on the sidelines. more like me than you think you are. Exactly. No, but so the other strange. part is this. The other so part is strange. this. I like what Chasky's just asking. I'm projecting here. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, you know, the baptism normally you go immediate family, whatever. But there's like people that I see constantly. I got to invite like Rocco, and I got to invite yeah. you. And I got to invite a lot of people. And I'm not saying that like in a bad I want you guys there. I want you to be a part of LJ's yeah. life. And so it's gotten tremendously larger than I expected and anticipated. And you know what? I told my wife, like, whatever it costs, it costs. And I'll be angry about it, like, when it's all done. But, like, just stop asking me questions. Like, just here's the here's the amount of money, whatever you need. Let's go. Yeah, we baby Chaz's first birthday party cost me a pretty penny. So you get it. And we've scaled back tremendously over the next two yeah. birthdays. Although last year we did go to Disneyland. Well, see, here's uh, where we get a little lucky. You know. <laughs> here's where we get a little lucky. His birthday's in November, yeah. late November. And so I anticipate weather's not great. You can't go outside. It's holiday time. He's going to be around Thanksgiving like myself. So birthdays aren't going to be some huge yeah. hoopla. Just do it. 
Just do a burp jumpy house exactly. or something. Indoors. D- D- we're going to the batting cages when he can. <laughs> what are you talking about? For me and him. You know what I mean? So, yes, uh, on Sunday, we got a big christening uh, coming up, and I'm excited and, for it. And the baby's not going to remember it. At all. see the pictures. But he's wearing, look at, he's wearing a family, there's like a gown that Michelle's side of yeah. the family has that's very traditional. He's going to have his little suit underneath. Pops, you know, me, I've got my suit. My grandpa's going to be there, you know? And, and so I wanted him to be surrounded by family. And there's a lot of people that haven't yeah. met him yet. Yes. Right. And so we've had a lot of trauma over the last six months. This will be a good opportunity to kind of start refresh yeah. in the spring. The other part is there are graduations galore in May. So we had yeah. to get that Irish Center before, yeah. you know, all these yeah, no other doubt. graduations no got in front. We'll, we'll be in the back row at the baptism watching NBA playoffs while LJ gets baptized. That in the back room? <laughs> Dog, I'm bringing the iPad. What are you talking about? We'll Huddle be watching around the playoffs. Me. We'll be watching I was gonna do the, Giants. I was going to do the Jumpy House, but that got a little pricey just because there's going to be so many kids. Well, the Jumpy House, If you, I got some connections on Jumpy House. Do you? Yeah. Can they do the indoor one, the smaller oh, one? Oh, nah, probably Because I not. want, like, toddlers yeah. only. I don't really yeah, want well, the big kids. Well, they got some that's po- how kids get hurt. Well, they got some spots. They got some inside spots at Jumpy Houses where we... Where, what did we do, Baby Chaz's last birthday? Our Gary Sheet, they got this little jumpy house uh-huh. for toddlers. Yeah, yeah. We had about 12, 15 toddlers there. Yeah. They got the big slides. They got the ball pit. They got games, yeah. fake kitchen. Go up there and read books. So there's a couple So there now I have to ask you about jumpy houses. Are you the parent who's policing the other kids? Or no, I'm, I'm in there jumping in with them. Oh, well, that, that I, I'm the, I'm I'm the guy yeah. that the kids throw the balls at. And they ju- they chase me around and they like yeah, a cobra. I, I like I like being a big kid. I like being a big kid until it t- takes a while to get up that slide and then go down the slide. It kind of hurts a little bit. Bonte's, Bonte's, uh Adam Sandler, and Billy Madison 100%. playing dodgeball with the kids. Hundred yeah, percent. Now I you're all that. in big big trouble. I love that. But we got so my cousin Mike, his daughter Noel turns five on Saturday, and we got a little party before, and then I got a first communion. I got to go to after. It's like seven thousand kids I know having a first communion. But Jeez. point being is that my cousin Mike always does the jumpy house. And every year, one kid is the kid that all the kids come out of the jumpy house and crying right. and they're pointing and he hit me from yeah. behind. He's messing with there's me. Always, there's always going to be a crier. Some crying. little punk. Yeah, there's always going to be a couple criers or there's going to be some little punk kid yeah. who's going to do some things and that's when I check the punk kid. Say, yeah. hey, so you do alone. check the kid. Sometimes. But in a great way. I'm like, hey, 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 hey. That's my thing. But there are, I'm, I'm going to be really, thing is there like, are I, kids I, that like need to be like, hey, check. hey, no hey, young man, those are girls. Don't put your hands on and them. And that's where the parents should be paying attention. hundred percent. I don't want to have to police other people's hundred percent. Like I, I, I'm, I, there's there's rough but, house. Let me ask you something. And then there's like you don't you know what I'm saying? No, totally. Just, and that's I, why it was I, nice with the Warriors not having to do out with the young players let me, this year. Yes. <laughs> hey, listen. I, I gotta. We'll get back to the Warriors in a second. You. I just see. I just see something here from Matt Nahiga in the email. Peanut allergies. He asked a random question. Anyone have peanut allergies? Not me. What the hell right is on. peanut allergies? There's peanut allergies? Yes. Yeah. Different you'll, variations. Learn it, you'll learn it in, in kindergarten because you're not allowed to bring peanut butter sandwiches now to school. It's like... I Are mean, you serious? Oh, it's like one level up from... Well, I'm not even going to stay. That's not even a good joke. Wait, you can't bring pre-B and J into schools now? Oh, there are certain schools where you're not allowed to do that. No. Absolutely. What? Yes. You didn't know that? No. Peanut allergies. Are, there. There's a kid on our team right now. I believe it's Jaden. Like... Hot, extremely allergic to this. I mean, it's, it's like a very bad. Absolutely. It's a I, huge I, thing. I, I didn't realize it was a thing. Yeah, it's it's pretty there's big. A, there's entries, peed up free schools now? Yeah. What? It's very serious. I was uninitiated until about five years ago. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. So like when, you, when you're coaching, sometimes you'll see like a form where it'll be like list all of your allergies. Because like some of these things are very serious. You don't want one of the parents like bringing snacks or whatever and kid throws something down. And sometimes... Uh, they can't have any even uh, cross contamination. I mean, it's very serious. Their throats closing, and they're this. Like it's it's bad. That's dude. why you look on packaging; it'll say may yeah. may contain peanut like pine free. nuts or nuts, or yeah. is made in a facility. A where, facility yes. that's peanut free oh or, God, or allergen free. And now they that. have it during Halloween time. Like certain yeah. houses oh will God. say, "Hey, we I, sell I peanut free stuff, or we're giving." Yeah, it I, mean, I don't think I have. I don't know. I, by the way, I love peanut butter. Oh, wow. Of course, Reese's Come love on. peanut butter. No, I just like peanut butter. Wow. Damn. I like the smooth over the crunchy. Yeah. No, I like the crunchy. You I like the both. crunchy? I like the crunchy. Was, like see, the here, crunchy. Here's the thing with, with I both. had the smooth too much. I grew up the, on a uh, government peanut butter. I feel butter. you on that, and so when the crunchy, I, when I got though, a chance to get the crunchy. The crunchy, <laughs> it gets, when they have like the the uh, the oil that's like hovering the over separated. the top. That's when it's legit. Yeah. Yes, but you got it. You got to do. You got to whisk a little or whatever. Mix it up. 
Um, 888-957-9570. Shaka wants to talk about moves for the Warriors. Let's get back on track here. Does he uh, have a, a peanut good, allergy? Uh, yeah, well, I can already hear the boss, man. Ten minutes. You talk about peanut allergies two days after the offseason. Shaka, what's up? Shaka's christening. What's up, Shaka? Hey, hey, what's up, y'all, man? So I just wanted to just say something real quick about the, the Warriors and what we need to do, right? Huh. So this year I was doing NBA Fantasy, and I won a championship. And, like, all year I just had to, like, switch out different players, put in different players, and, like, make sure my team was good for the week. And I know some players that the Warriors should get. So, Charlotte Hornets, they got a guy named Nick Richards and a guy named Miles Bridges. We need to pick those guys up. If we do it, if we do anything, we need to trade John Kaminga and well, Andrew Wiggins for Miles Bridges. Well, let me ask you this real Miles quick. Let me ask you this, Shaka, because Miles Bridges is a good player, but he comes with a lot of baggage, a if you know what I mean. Do you, do you think this fan base and this organization can accept a player that's had some things go on in his life the way they've got on? Hey, if we can, if we can accept Chris Paul, no, 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 no. Chris no, Paul, no, no, Chris Paul's not putting his no, hands no, on women. No, no, no. He's not putting this, his this, hands on women. Dude, Miles Bridges has been accused of some very accused of some very serious things. Hey, winning cures everything, though, man. As long as we winning, the fan base ain't gonna mind. I, I I I get what you're saying. Look, he's 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 able to play in the league. He actually had a good game against the Warriors um, when the Warriors won there, but. I always, I always struggle with these things, right? There's an accusation. I mean, Trevor Bauer's out here, you know, and and I've heard from 50 people on both sides of the fence on Trevor Bauer. I'm indifferent just in general because I don't know what to make of any. I feel like our own justice system has a difficulty trying to figure out who's done what, who's guilty, who's not guilty. I mean, who well, knows? Look, but I when these leagues allow someone to play – um, that doesn't mean that your team wants to sign up for having that guy on your team. Yeah, I just, you know, his, his wife doubled down. Miles Bridges basically said, look, he's a good guy, deserves a second chance. I don't know how much I want to get into that, but there was accusations of Miles Bridges. He did have to step away from the NBA. And look, man, <clears throat> is he a guy who's a winning player? Is he going to fix all your problems? He is athletic. There's no doubt about that, but I just don't see the Warriors going down that route when you consider the baggage around him. And Again, is he, he is was he able a to play basketball. Player? Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know if he's a winning player. He has, he's been in Charlotte, stuck. Nobody's a winning player in Charlotte. I guess that, yeah. I mean, is that even fair to, to add? It's just when I think of him, I think of a better Kelly Oubre. Nah, he's he's better than that. He's a different he's a different player. So 26 for, uh, years old, 6 9 wingspan. Not to cut you off, Andy, real quick, just to clarify everything going on with him yeah. off, off the court. Bridges uh, is currently serving a three years of probation after pleading no contest in exchange for no jail time in the June 2022 domestic violence case involving the mother of his two children who accused Bridges of assaulting her in front of the children. He must adhere to a 10-year criminal protection order for the women, uh, weekly narcotics and marijuana testing and restitution, according to the L.A. County District Attorney's Office. Look, I, I, I personally... I, I, it is. And, and I, just me... Like I believe in second and third chances. I'm a product of those things. This is a this is this is a very serious thing, and everyone has their own moral compass, right? So I don't think there's one way to do this. I do, man. I, I'm very conflicted on something like that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going that route. I don't know if I'm going that route. I, don't I would know have if the a Warriors tough time. Go, I don't know if the Warriors go down that route. Let's go to Manny on the Dobart Bridge. Manny, what's happening? You're on the roast. What up, Manny? Hey, fellas. Good morning. It's Good been a morning. while since I called in, but I listen to you guys every day, as always. Man, I sat there in disbelief on Tuesday. I was hoping beyond hope that they were going to pull it off, man. When they came within one, I said, here we go. I need playoff clay, and then reality sunk in. Yeah. We all saw it, man. We all saw it. And my what I want to reference is this. You guys have been talking about the Giants. I'm going to reference the Niners, man. Bill Walsh had a philosophy of letting guys go before they got to the point where you had to let him go. Guys like, you know, Ray Worsing and Hacksaw, right? And I think as much as we love Clay and appreciate everything that he's done for this team over the last decade, what's the point in paying him and keep him, you know, keeping him around? We saw what we saw, right? The young cats are the, are the face of the, the franchise. And I was just thinking while I was on hold, 
man, Mike Dunleavy has to take a page out of the A's book and moneyball this thing and find players that are going to fit under the cap that we can revolve around Steph. I know you guys have been saying it, and I'm just parroting off of it, but at keeping keeping Clay, keeping Draymond, as sentimental as it is, because we all were there a decade ago. I remember where I was when they won their first championship. I was sitting in my buddy's living room in disbelief. Yep. But, you know, as great as the memory is, you hold on to that and you got to move forward. And that's what us as a Warrior fan base, like you said, we're going to find out who's who when the time yeah. comes, when we build this thing down and bring it right back up. But we, while we got to do it while we still have number 30 able to be the central piece in, in bringing it up. That's all I got, fellas. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the line as always. Hey, re excellent call, Manny. Excellent call. And I'm I'm kind of with you there. They're going to have to rebuild this thing. It's just Not a to tough reality. We're going to do the legal. And we're going to get to the legal, and we're going to get to Clay Thompson. Because he's been weighing on me. It has been. It, that image of him walking off the floor Tuesday night without getting a bucket. Not one bucket. <laughs> It just sucks that that's the lasting image for a lot of people here after a decade. And really after a solid season for him. He really changed his season. He turned it around and came off the bench the, the, the last game before the All-Star break. And he lit it up and he didn't look back. He had a really good end to the season. Until, of course, the playing game. And that was tough. You are listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM, and AC1 San Francisco. Don't forget that you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on to search 95.7 The Game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages. As we have added the QR code on both pages. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile text line. Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. Uh, Mike Dullivy is going to speak at noon today. Mike Dullivy, the GM of the Golden State Warriors, he'll be speaking at noon uh, for everybody out there. So I'm sure we will carry that live. Carry that live uh, right here on 95.7 The Game. Mike Dullivy, GM of the Warriors, speaking at noon. You can hear it right here on 95.7 The Game. But the first question was from Anthony Slater, who will join us in about, I don't know, 55 minutes. First question to Clay Thompson. And Clay's initial response, I want you to hear this. Your future with the Warriors heading into this offseason that, that feels obviously pretty unknown. We, we don't want to talk about the season first. You want to talk about the future? That was you, a lot of games played, man. That was a pretty big accomplishment. What's up with y'all not wanting to live in the present, bro? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, what was your question? <laughs> That's Clay. And then here's what he said about lingering on the court after the Sacramento loss. Some of the things going through my head. Hmm. Well, the first one, just disappointment because did not shoot the ball well, obviously. Big old donut, so that wasn't very fun. I did look up in the nosebleeds, though, and I did see a man wearing a number 11 jersey. And that made me happy, you know, considering my history in Sacramento from playing a state championship there to playing the Kings in the playoffs. That was kind of a full circle moment for me. So... That was actually a good moment just seeing that Warriors fan standing by his lonesome up in the 300 level, repping 11. That made me uh, made me grateful. Wow. And then let's just go back to the first question one more time. Your future with the Warriors heading into this offseason that, that feels obviously pretty unknown. We, we don't want to talk about the season first. You want to talk about the future? That was a lot of games played, man. That was a pretty big accomplishment. So with y'all not wanting to live in the present, bro? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, what was your question? <laughs> Clay, as I watched that live on the Zoom, looked very uncomfortable. He would answer a question. Somebody starts asking the question. He put his head down. I just wanted to give, I mean, there's one of the most moments where like, you want to give a guy a hug. <laughs> You don't score in the play-a game. You lose in the play-a game. Could be your last game as a member of the Golden State Warriors. He just didn't look like he wanted to be there yesterday. Looked like he just wants to get away. Looked like he's conflicted. He's just never been in this position before. He's not the same player. You know, you go 0 for 10 on national television, 0 for 6 from 3. Then he's talking about the guy he sees at the 300 club wearing a number 11 jersey. just reflected on it. Clay was salty. He was quirky. You can see the emotions on his sleeve. You can see it on his face. 
It just was. It was a tough siege, Jasky. You know what? It was I, tough for me to watch. Oh, I I, I want to continue talking about this, but you know, instantly what I was thinking when I when I heard him, both after the game, just all year, like before the game, you sent us some audio from yeah. him all year, all year, and I think even going back to last year, this is the song that was going in my head when I would hear Clay Thompson talk. He's in his feelings. I, I just the guy's been in his feelings yeah. nonstop, and he's all over the place. I legitimately feel empathy for him, and he's hitting the Pablo zone. Like I, I, I feel like he's in the Pablo Sandoval zone. In that, uh, I think he's got a lot of frustration, anger, whatever, whatever the word is you want to use to describe it. And I think he's going to look back at himself and just the situation as a whole. And I think he's going to, there's going to be some regret. I think there's going to be a lot of regret, whether it's the fans, you know, just things that have happened. I think he's going to look back at this situation with a different perspective. Well, he'll grow from it. He'll grow from it. He needs to grow from it. But B, B, I just, I, I don't think sometimes he understands how it's perceived. He, he, he comes off as angry and, I just think that there's a, a a lacking of reading the room at times when I hear some of the things that he says, and I think that it is perceived by a lot of people. And who I heard from yesterday, they're like, "Bro, why are you angry?" But but you know what? Though? And like, what? But you he, know he's what? Mad though? at Slater for asking the question. It's yeah. like, well, did you want Slater to start with? Well, you, yeah. you know, you didn't play well yesterday. Like, I, I don't know. Fair. Slater was fair, but you know what though? He listens and watches everything to a fault. Which is always, whenever I speak to teams or players, I say, please don't look at Twitter. Don't look at social media. Because here's the fact that these players do look at social media. And they do hear the things that we say. It's been proven. Draymond Green proved that to us all. One night in Madison Square Garden. Clay Thompson hears everything. And he's heard everything. He had to quote last season when he said, you know, all these bandwagon fans, they weren't here when we were down back. Remember that? And he had to walk that back. Yeah, he it, hears everything. It it's probably not the right. Look. It wasn't a good look, but it was truth in that. It was some truth in that. Yeah, but you don't but it say. it wasn't the best look. You don't it, have I to say it. everything but, that goes through But what I'm saying head. is, what I'm saying is he goes through it and he doesn't know how to channel that. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. He, the guy's a human being. The guy hears and he wears his frustrations after having two devastating leg injuries. And he's like, damn, my old fan base, half this fan base don't have my back, Clay Thompson? Make sure you don't miss that break, bro. We'll continue this conversation brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises, and get to Tim, Samita, and Big Kurt on the other side. Things are buzzing in Fremont. By choosing the bank with Fremont Bank, you're helping create a more vibrant bank.
105.7 The Game. All right, Steve. Good stuff yesterday with Willard Idibs. Check that out on the free Odyssey app wherever or wherever you go to listen to 95.7 The Game. Don't forget you catch every single Warriors game live on the app, along with all the views, all the music and news in the Bay Area. That the Bay Area needs, I should say. Catch amazing interviews you missed, too, like when Kerr joined Willard and Dibs yesterday. We're rolling out Clay Thompson. So we'll get back to Steph, uh, Steve Kerr because he says some things about the payroll and um, what they could do moving forward here with the payroll. And I think we got to have a come-to-Jesus moment. This payroll has to get reduced. It has to get slashed in half. And maybe that means not bringing Clay Thompson back. Maybe that's just a harsh reality. I'm really surprised and, by you even suggesting that. Um, just in general. Well, I, I think no, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. Like I, when I defend Clay, and I know people like to call me a Clay apologist, but I didn't. The facts are the that. facts. No, no, but the facts are the facts. The guy had a solid season. Yeah. You know how many other guys are giving you 18, 19 a game? When do we scoff at that? When do we start scoffing at 41 percent shooting from the three point line? But when you look at the cap, you look at the way that you finished the season. They were in 10th place. When it came to all the big boys, think about Minnesota. You went 0-3 against Minnesota. Mm. You went 1-3 against OKC. You went 0-4 against Denver. You went 1-3 against the Clippers. You went 1-3 against the Dallas Mavericks. All right? It, the Pelicans, you went 1-2 against the Pelicans. You tied the season series at the Sacramento Kings. You are 3-1 against the Lakers, but two of the games you really didn't have Anthony Davis. Or no, one of the games you didn't have LeBron, one of the games yeah. you didn't have Anthony Davis. They were not good against the big boys in the Western Conference this year. They didn't win those games. So you're in 10th place. You're getting older. This past season, you are already you're already at an athletic disadvantage. Hell, the Pistons came in a chase and looked more athletic than you. And they won night, what, 15, 16, 17 games? So there comes a point where you just need a little bit of change. You need a little bit of tinkering. And I don't know if this is the best situation for Clay. I don't know if Clay is the best situation for the Warriors. But at some point, if you do re-sign Clay Thompson, we all have to live with that, hey, we're going to let the core ride it out. We're going to be loyal to him. But there may be some dark days around the core because of the assets yeah, you can't bring around the core due to the payroll. I'm going to go, like, forget the money because I know there's a huge financial component. I, I'm just going to go to the coach. And, and I get it. As long as the big three are on the team, he will always defer when in doubt to the big three. Yep. And so to me, for the team to to change, to change its heartbeat and to change its pecking order and its hierarchy, I think they need I think they need wholesale changes. I think Draymond and Clay. Like Clay, I would allow him to, to right. walk this year. There's a financial component to it. Like if, if I could, I'd, you know, do a sign and trade or whatever to get something back. But it's it that doesn't help you much because then it just screws your finances and you're not allowed draft capital. I would move off both of those guys so that this entire heartbeat of the team yep. is is able to change. Because as long as those guys are on the bench, as long as those guys are available, the coach is always going to pivot gonna back to them. And, and, and I get it. Not, and that's a tough burden. It's not even his fault. And, and think about this. If you brought Clay back and say you started Moses Moody, Moses Moody naturally is going to be looking over his shoulder every single possession thinking, boy, am I playing well enough to get 30 minutes Boy, I may ball out this game, but what if I struggle the next game? Will he go back to Clay? It's just all the elephants in the room because you have championship players. And I can't blame Steve for that. I can't. You've won monster games with the core. Why we could go down a 10-year timeline of all the big games they won with that core. I would be loyal to a fault, too. Ask Steve Young what it was like having Joe Montana on the sidelines. Man. Man. And, and this is a different situation, but you, you know what I mean? Yep. It's very difficult. Yep. It's very, very, very difficult. You're looking over your shoulder every single time. I think all these things can be true. Like you can have tremendous love uh, for the legend that is Clay Thompson, but mm -hmm. also understand timing sure feels right. I thought the timing was right last year for them to move off Draymond. Yeah. They brought him back. And, I, I and think maybe, they, and maybe you, you, you're, maybe you should have maybe started a season ago. But that's, I think, if we're being real, I think everyone would feel like, I think we regret that decision regarding Draymond Green last year. Yeah. Um, let's go to, we you get into that. We're, we're going to get into all that. We got some calls here. Let's go to our main man, Tim in North Carolina. Always love hey, Tim. when Tim calls in, man. He knows his Warriors inside and out. What's up, Tim? What's up, guys? Yeah, I, what y'all were just saying, I, I want to go back to it, but we kind of, 
we blew it. And we all agree. We blew it two years ago when we leaned in to Todd Jerome and Anthony Lamb. We all know that that was a wasted year for Moody and Kaminga. And uh, we can't go back and change it. But y'all are absolutely right. And I believe I believe these guys can kind of go out together on their own. But they have to be big believers in empowering the youth and leaning into the youth themselves. I think it can possibly work if they are the believers and understand that these are the guys that are going to extend their careers. And I think, and I'm, and I'm talking about Clay specifically. I mean, guys, did y'all hear the comment? I don't know if y'all heard the one about uh, when they, when I think it was Kendra said to him how the team paid him when he got hurt. I mean, bro, it wasn't no gratefulness. He was almost like, yeah, they better had paid me. What would have happened if they didn't? Y'all didn't hear how he responded to that? Like this dude is always seemed like he just mad. He always seemed like he mad about stuff, but I just think, guys, we have to lean into the youth. Think think about what we just witnessed, right? This guy just right. called you talking about Miles Bridges. Everybody else players is always better than what the hell we got, right? <laughs> Keegan Murray just did what he, Keegan Murray just did what he did to us the other day after a terrible playoff series last year, after being believed in, empowered, allowed to play through mistakes, and he did and he came back a different player and balled out. Like, think about that game, guys. We would have lost by forty mm-hmm. if it wasn't for Kaminga and Moody. If it yeah. wasn't for Kaminga and Moody, and there wasn't no plays ran for them, it wasn't no actions mm-hmm. ran for them. That mm-hmm. was done on sheer talent and will. Imagine what we can get if this man believed in them. I mean, imagine if the leap that Jonathan can make next year, Moody can make. Next, I mean, they guys, y'all sitting there talking about pods and the crazy confidence. You know why? Because because uh, Kerr has instilled it in him. He got his head thinking that way. Mental confidence goes a long way. Yeah. And Kaminga and Moody, these guys have been self-made. They done had to come up and do it all on their own. Their coach hasn't instilled confidence in them. If anything, they've been chopped off at the knees. Like, I mean, they, they didn't get those shots against with, with right. Lamb and Jerome. Which had, that was the yeah. wasted year. Can we please Can we please not make the mistake again? Everybody else's talent... It doesn't have to be better than ours. Let's just believe in what we got and empower the young fellas. Guys, mental confidence goes a long way. I've been telling y'all from the beginning, if this young man is empowered and then given the confidence, Kaminga can do some damn good things next year, along oh, with God. Trace Jackson. If and we need a couple of more players that can be two way players. If Sacramento can find a Keon Ellis or whatever his name was, right. two way guy with athleticism and quickness that can play defense on both sides, guys, they are out there. We can do this. I mean, but yes, we, are, would they possibly be some dark days? I don't think they'll be as dark as we think, guys. I really don't. But. I just wanted to say that, Clay, yeah, Clay on that comment about, yeah, they wouldn't have paid me. Can you imagine how bad it was? Just, just listen to well, this, I, dude, I man. Hear, I hear it. anger. I, I, all right, we're going to yeah, grab it. We'll grab it. Yeah, yeah, we got to grab it because I listened to Clay. I don't remember that, but uh, we'll, we'll get that as well. Let's go to uh, Samita. Samita, what's happening? Samita down in Los Gatos. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. Um, so I guess everybody's in a bit of a morning stage after that shameful playoff performance. <laughs> um, uh, I'm, you know, I, I just didn't know what to do with myself during that game. But I wanted to talk specifically about the Clay Thompson situation. Um, and this kind of goes back to something that um, I think I've been thinking about for a while. And, and I think part of the problem is, and I don't know if the, if the front office thinks this way, but I know the fan base, we, we tend to reward loyalty a lot. Um, and I absolutely appreciate everything that the core has done for this team and for this franchise, you know, um, for the Bay area. But, you know, at some point you got to ask yourself, when do we stop playing people based on what they did for us? And when do we start playing people for what they can do for us? There's a difference. Um, and I don't think there's any doubt that regardless of the fact that Clay's going to be a future hall of famer, Maybe his ultimate days, his best days are behind him because, you know what, Clay and I had the same number of points in that playoff game. Mm. I just didn't get paid $46 million for that. Oh, man. Zero, zero out of 10, not a single shot in a playing game where you're fighting for your life. I mean, everybody's entitled to an off night, but you're not entitled you, to an off night. Samita, Samita, let me ask you this, because that, that, that is harsh. The 0 for 10, the 0 for 6, it hurt me watching. Yeah. It really did. It was painful. And that, that can't be the last image of him in a Warrior uniform, but it just may be. That's sports. Does that wash away 
the season that he had, in your opinion, the one bad playoff game, does it wash it away to see him struggle like that against the Kings? And heck, even against the Pelicans Friday night, he struggled after missing a game against Portland. Does that wash away the season that he had, Sabina? No, I don't think it does. I mean, the season is more than just the plan, but at the end of the day, you know, it's the results that matter. You could have a yeah. great season. I mean, that's where you're in James Harden territory. You get great numbers, you have a great season, and comes to the playoffs, you can't get it over the hump, right? Yep. So I think people respect that kind of performance. That's what makes the greats great. They turn it up a notch, you know? Um, and I just don't think Clay was able to do that this year. I don't think he's been able to do it for a while when we need him the most. So without, you know, anything negative about his season, I think he did a great job. I think he did a great job adjusting to coming off the bench. He had a good season, but it wasn't good enough for what it is that is the team is going to have to pay him. And I think it's time to look at potential and not what have you done before. It's like, what have you done for me lately? I agree. That's a great call, Sabina. It's a great call. And that's the enigma we're in with Clay Thompson. And after listening to Clay Thompson yesterday, and I've been kind of hinting at this all season long, Shasky, but this situation may not be best for him. Now, we're going to look at it from the Warriors' point of view because we root for the Warriors and not for the player on the back of the jersey. We root for the name on the front of the jersey. All go to State Warriors. We're going to be here. Before, we were here before Steph. We're going to be here after Steph. That's just, it is what it is. Now, some of you may be front runners and you may be Steph stands, whatever. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. That's whatever floats your boat, right? But watching Clay yesterday and just thinking about the team and where they're at with the cap mm-hmm. and what needs to happen, you got to, at some point, I know they tried a two-timeline thing. That's why it's so frustrating. Last year, we were on this. When they lost that five, when they went 0 for, 0 for on that road trip, and it felt like it was the veterans on one team and the youngsters on one team. It really felt like there were two teams. The veterans didn't really embrace the youngsters. Or maybe that was just Steve Kerr not playing them together. I don't know, but that was all murky. But at some point, you need to make change, and you have to start thinking about the future. And you start to stop thinking about paying the luxury tax and paying four hundred million dollars for a team that just finished in tenth place. So, with all that said, it may be best for Clay to move on. It may be best for the so, Warriors to move on and not pay Clay the money that he may get from another team. It's just, it's a lot. Well, so like the, she was talking about the results, and um, you were like, "Hey, well, does the couple games wash away a really uh, great season?" and Good season. I wouldn't say great. Yeah, because I, I, I would say it was an up and down season. He finished really strong, but it was up and down. And I don't think last year was great at all. Um, he's the 52nd best scorer points per game in the in the league right now. Uh, and, and that's what he's bringing to the table. He's bringing a lot of points. The defense has clearly slipped from what it used to be. Yep. Um, he does provide spacing, so it's beyond the numbers. I think his passing got a lot better this year, right? But there, there's an emotional component, and then there's the hierarchy and the pecking order, and and there's a lot that goes into it at, that you didn't have to account for when you were dealing with Clay Thompson prior. So let's get back to the results for just a second. And fair or not, this is the reality. You missed the playoffs in 2019, 2020. You missed the playoffs in 2020, 2021. You won the championship, all right? You made the first round, and you went to the second round last year. And you missed the playoffs this year. So three of the last five years, you haven't even been in the playoffs. Yep. And we're supposed to... I mean, by the first year, the first year of 2020, we know but, it, it but, is but, what it is. Be, you didn't have Clay. I'm going you to didn't results. Have Clay. No, but you didn't have Clay. The pandemic season, you won 15 games. Steph gets hurt in game number four. Season was a wash. It happens. But you're right. The result is they didn't make the playoffs. But we know... There's context to why they didn't make the No, I know, but what I'm saying is is that you've carried a heavy tax bill each of those years. And three of those five, you haven't been able to print any playoff money to offset those losses. I go back to penciling. Does it pencil? I'm looking at it right now, and clearly it doesn't. Just overall, it's not just a clay thing. I'm going Yeah, I I, I want to make sure that we're clear here. It's not just clay. We're not just picking on clay. I meant clay, clay, when it comes to issues on this team. I got 77 games out of Clay, And when he agreed to come off the bench, well, he didn't really agree. So it's just like, all right, fine. And he came off the bench in that first game right before the All-Star break. Right before the All-Star break. And in the 20-plus games since the All-Star break, Clay Thompson was not a worry. He was not a worry. He embraced his role. He put up some great nights. He shot at a very good clip. So, you know, that it is what it is. We're not here bashing Clay Thompson. I'm not going to do that off of one game. You know, at the end of the year, 
he does average 18 in 29 minutes a game. And he's not even supposed to be your second option. Should have been Wiggins. It yeah, could have been Kaminga. See, I want to stop you know? In his mind, he is. No, that's see, that's unfair. That's unfair. That's unfair. Clay understood I need to get my teammates involved. I understand what my role is. Now, Chase, Clay was chasing the old Clay. He was chasing the old Clay. But I think it's unfair to say he doesn't have the wherewithal to know that, hey, you're not the second option. He actually spoke about Andrew Wiggins. Remember when everybody was crushing Wiggins and it was Clay Thompson at the podium saying, nah, Wiggins is very important. He's taking the assignment. He's our best two way player. You know, he's our he's our second option. We need Wiggins. He's important. He defends at a high level on the island. He's taking a role that I used to have. And hopefully Kamiga gets that role. It was Clay Thompson when everybody was crushing Wiggins who spoke out about Andrew Wiggins and gave him love. So I think it's unfair to go into Clay's head and say, well, he still believes he still believes he's an effective NBA player. I'm just, that can that, impact that's the a game. different that's a different conversation. I'm going that, off of what I watched this year as a totality. And I, he got better at it, but but I, I when I watch him, there are times where it's like he feels like got the ball, gotta shoot. Got the ball, gotta shoot. I got I gotta get a shot up here. And there are certain lineups where it works, and then there's other times where it's like, come on, man, you, you missed like five in a row. Like Make the extra pass. Set well, your feet. Curry misses five in a row. We don't have a problem He's with Steph that, right? Curry. Right? But, but that's Clay's the problem. Just, They're not on the same Clay, level. But, but Clay's a great shooter. It's one of, these, he, one of the top three shooters in league history. I'm just saying, like, what you could get away with years past. I think that I underrated just the last couple of years how much of the psychology and the emotions went into. There's a there's right. baggage of stuff he, when it's well, dealing he, with Clay he right ended now. Up, he ended up being a second option because nobody else would shoot. Andrew Wiggins was not aggressive for most of the season. Well, I already talked to, talked to you about Draymond Green being at the top of the key, not shooting, and waiting off of Steph's screen, waiting for Steph to come off screens. Somebody's got to shoot the damn ball. When you got all these uh, non-shooting I'll, lineups. I'll, I'll buy know? that. I'll buy that. Right? That's, just, what, it, that's but, what it is. But the, the, the way I look, it's, just, it's, it's, I'm, it's sounding like I'm bashing them, and I'm not trying to, but there's a lot that goes into the Clay experience right now. It's not like it was. It's not low maintenance. Would you would you meet me there? Uh. Low mate. Uh, the team had a meeting a year ago uh, with him, well, and then I the coach was, had it, like four or five well, meetings. Well, I thought with him it was unfair because he they got beat in the Phoenix game, and they said Clay, you were shooting too much. When the biggest rift was, we need to get Jordan Poole and Draymond well, Green in a room together to have years. dinner yeah. and, and, and mess up. That was the top of the list. That was like that. Maybe Clay see that was like, wait a minute, I'm the issue here. Everything is going on with this team right now, and I'm the issue playing basketball. We got bigger issues here. Here's the uh, question that Kendra asked. If she asked Clay Thompson on if he feels the organization made the big three feel appreciated. Clay, last night, Draymond was saying that he doesn't see any scenario in which the ownership group of this team doesn't at least put forth the effort to take care of the guys that have taken care of this organization so much over the last 10 years. Um, do you feel that kind of effort and love specifically in this scenario, but then also over, I mean, guess since your entire career here, but since 2019 going through the injuries, the extension after that, just that they've put in that effort to make you guys and you feel appreciated. Oh man. Well, 2019. Well, could you imagine if they didn't pay me after I got hurt? That would have been really bad. Like, <laughs> Oh, went to five straight finals. You blew your knee out. Yeah. Sorry. So no, I mean, that was very nice of them. I try. I mean, every year I give my best effort, and the ownership group has been great. I have nothing but positive things to say about them. They treat us, they treat us with great respect, and do all the little things for us to do our jobs at the highest level. So it's been. Um, I mean, I don't really know how to answer that. I mean, it's up to them. But at the end of the day, whatever happens, it's all gravy. It's been such a freaking special run. I don't think there's anything bad with that. I didn't think so either. He just said the way he said it was like, boy, if they didn't pay me, that would have been bad. I would have been stuck with a torn ACL and no basketball team. Boy, I would have been in complete darkness. Uh, I, that's how I interpreted it. There was nothing wrong with that. Well, when I heard it, I was like, the NBA and the NFL are so different. Because <laughs> in the NFL, if you tear your knee, you do. Yeah. They will cut you. Yeah, they you know will cut I mean? you. Like, you're not playing anywhere. Yeah, you're yeah, not getting, getting a running back position immediately. Right. We're like, see ya. Uh, good. You're not getting the 100 plus million dollars. Bowman is who I think of immediately. Like, gotta go, dude. Like, 
Wow. I'm just, yeah, yeah, there was nothing wrong there. I didn't, there I was nothing wrong. Yeah. We're, we're nitpicking it. The toe was great. Clay was fine. And again, he was uncomfortable because he, he, he understood. Think about Clay Thompson and what he had to go through yesterday. Just I, Since we want to go inside his head and be psychologists here, what if he's walking to the chase center yesterday? He parks his car, he comes in on his boat, mm -hmm. and he uses a key, uses his key card. And he's in that facility. And he's probably thinking, this could be the last time I'm ever at Chase Center as a member to go to St. Warriors. That may have been running through his head. That may have been running through his head. It's like, damn, look at my locker. I've shared this. I've had this locker for 12 years. You know what I'm saying? He gets up some shots in the practice facility thinking, and he's looking at all the photos in that practice facility. It's him and Kevin Durant popping champagne. It's him and Draymond Green at the parade. It's him and Steph's smiling ear to ear, hoisting up the Larry O'Brien. And you're seeing all that, and you're thinking, damn, this may be it for me. That could happen. What if we we walked in this building before? We don't know if it's our last day. We walked into meetings before. We're like, what's going on here? So if we're going to use the human element on these NBA players all the time, and we're going to get, get into his head, what if we walked into Chase Hitter thinking, it's maybe the last day I'll ever be here? Like it's that's a, a fair, thing. It's a fair <laughs> counterpoint, but he also controls part of this. We're not like it's not like it's take it or leave it. Well, you're gone no matter what. Like you know, Joe Montana was you're gone no matter what, right? Like Clay Thompson does have some control in this situation, and and I don't know, I don't even know what I believe, but there wasn't the you know a, a report that they offered him a two year fifty million or so dollar extension before deal. the season. You know, I don't. know. Maybe he's feeling he should have taken it. I don't even know if it's real or not. He's also not the first player to to have a contract here, right? You know, like, but but of course I'm I'm empathetic to that, right? I, that's I don't why dismiss I'm like, that. But that but I'm just I'm I, I'm saying that because if we're gonna pick apart how we answered a question or what he looked like, well, maybe the guy was sitting there who's obviously very emotional. We've learned that over the last two years. I was he's not very aware vulnerable. pre injury how right. emotional like he's he was. very emotional. He wears his emotions on his sleeve because he's a baller. He wants to just hoop, so. With that, <laughs> he made me think like, damn, I maybe maybe last time I'm talking to Anthony Slater is a member to go to say worse. Who the hell knows what's going through his head during that time? Let's go to the lines. Uh, Big Kurt. Big Kurt's been on hold for a while. Big Kurt out in East Oakland. What up, Big Kurt? What's up, man? What's going on, man? Uh, first of all, I want to say I thank you guys in the whole station because I'm a truck driver and listening thank to you. the station. Y'all help me kill a few hours of drive time every day. And so, thank you guys for that. Thank okay, you. Appreciate okay, you. Now, most importantly, most importantly, uh, you know, the, 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 the reconstruction of the Golden State Warriors is what I want to talk about. I don't think that it's a lot that needs to be done. Maybe we need to come up off of Wiggins and maybe Moody. We could use them as a trade piece to most definitely get a six foot eleven, seven foot big man with a jump shot, fifteen to seven foot, seventeen foot jump shot that can help stretch the floor a little bit and keep Clay Thompson. I think. I think also, too, that the culture of the, uh, the Golden State Warriors management and the general manager and everything like that, I think because of the culture that we have and the way that Clay Thompson feels about the Golden State Warriors, I most definitely think Clay Thompson is coming back. So having him and Steph Curry still doing the things that they do and having a, a, a big man that can shoot a jump shot with Trey Jackson and Davis in the middle clogging things up for us, I think we'll be right back in playoff contention. And so that's what I'm hoping for. I hope that at the end of this offseason, when the start of next season starts, that we have some type of big man that can score the ball from the 15 to 17 foot mark. And that's what I got for you. Thank you. Good call, Big Ooh. Kurt. Big call. Good call. There's a lot there to unpack. Who who are the those bigs that would be available? I don't know. It's so hard. Like everyone's looking for Zach that. Zach Eady. So I had I had multiple people tell me that, hey he he could fall to fifteen Please. I'm like Ugh. big stiff I dude Sean Bradley is well who the I Warriors think of. the Warriors first round pick if I'm not mistaken is top gone. four protected protected yeah. right it's it's top it's four protected probably gone yeah meaning if it doesn't right. fall in the top four they're right. losing I think it's like a point eight. Like point zero eight yeah. percent chance. What if they take a top four? In this yeah, this draft? would be another. It's a one player draft, and then there'll be a guy at thirteen you'll regret. Right. You get the what's the guy from uh, UConn, Donovan? Uh, I am. Donovan, he's the big. He was going to get ZD. Uh, he's supposed to go top five. This draft is not a. He was at a all. very good defensive. Big. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Klingon. Klingon. Yeah, Donovan Klingon. Not a Klingon. Uh, Klingon. Klingon. 
Exactly. Good. I'm, uh, I'm more Star Wars than Star Trek, but uh, I respect them. Different. Let's go to Joe at eight one eight. Joe, what's happening? Monte, do you roast. know what a Klingon is? No. Hey, good morning, guys. What's good up, morning. Joe? You guys are dealing with a really uncomfortable situation and doing a great job on talking about it. So I just wanted to tell Thank you me. that you're doing great. Thank you. Um, you know, um, I, we really don't have a lot of moves and assets to do a lot right now. So when people are calling in talking about getting this player, that player, it's kind of difficult. But, you know, to me, you know, I'm a Warrior fan that has went through so many bad times. Um, that's just part of the game. If you love a team, you're going to have ups and downs. And right now, I think a lot of the Warrior fans basically agree that, you know, in order to get younger, you need draft picks because we don't have a lot of flexibility other than that. And trying to keep seconds look at the players that some of the teams are picking up in the second round now i you know we need to hold on to the draft picks and don't add them to move players especially wiggins i don't know why everyone's down on his case so much he's a quiet guy so they think he doesn't care if he has two off games in a row they they they, they almost hang him uh, other players can have games off and they don't say anything you know right now I think that one of the best moves would just be to keep him. He's 29. He's in his prime. He has three years left on a decent, approximately 25 mil a year. Uh, And he's worth more than a salary dump. Okay. It's just, you know, all the teams are licking their chops, figuring the Warriors are going to sit there and give them draft picks and players. And they're going to pick, they're going to do really well. I I just, I just don't think that's a move. So, so, but let me, let me interrupt you. Good. I want to keep draft picks too, but you have to let those guys play. I think we've kind of learned that. Have, have we not learned that as a society the last four or five years yeah, this in the situation, Bay? This situation, though, well, we have learned that in the Bay. But no, I'm saying if you keep different. draft picks, right. you better play them. You, you got to play them, but you don't. Go ahead, Joe, and eight, eight, because I got thoughts on that. Joe. Yeah, well, you know, I, I understand that, that you got to let them play, and so we probably didn't let them play quite as early as we should. But moving aside from the big three, you know, there's nothing wrong with keeping a base of Wiggins, Kaminga, Trace Jackson, Davis, Moody, and Pods as a core and moving forward. You know, I always think, you know, the, think of this debate all year long is the Wiggins and Kaminga can't play together. You know, if you've got a point guard that distributes the right way, can split up the, the ball, you, you could make that work. So I'm not 100% sure that that's, something that's in concrete and you can't make it work but you got those young guys they're a core so i you know you're i just like i said there in the draft you're going to uncover it's rare but yeah. in the draft you cover the steph number sevens the uh the clay number you also you also draft. discover the james wiseman's at number two you also and discover those picks. The Todd Fuller's at 11. You know, it happens. Good call, Joe. Um, and, and, and at eight. I don't know if I agree with well, Wiggins, because here's the deal. I'm seeing a text right now. What's that? Xfinity Mobile text line. And it's honestly, what do you think Clay Thompson is worth yearly? I myself think $10 million or less for Clay Thompson. Okay, number one, it's kind of disrespectful to Clay, but I'll play along with this. You're Clay Thompson. You walk into that building, and you brought up the two for 48. Well, why should Clay side two for 48? He just saw Draymond get four, 400. He saw Andrew Wiggins get four, 400. It's a million off. I, you, know, I I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 it's a million off, but it's two years instead of the four years. And Clay's probably but he also thinking, made max Clay, money the last did. couple years and Draymond didn't. The, so but he, that's what but, I would say. To but him. he was worth it, right? He was worth it. Well, I, but no, but that, we can't look at the past. No, but he, I'm just, I'm just he, trying to, I'm just pr- trying to present a case. He always made Clay more than Thompson, Dred, but he always, but, made but, more than but he deserved it to make more than Clay. He was a first round pick. He was a scorer. He was an all star before Draymond. All that stuff. Whatever you can talk about impact on the yeah. team. We can go back and forth on that. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't even have to be Clay Thompson. It could be Andrew Wiggins. Cried out loud. It's Andrew Wiggins, and he has a year like Clay, and he sees Clay and Dre. Get four for a hundred, and he gets off for two for forty eight. Could be any player. That player's going to say, "Well, how come I can't get four years? How, you gave Andrew Wiggins four years. How come I can't get four years?" And here we are at the end of the season. Who had a better year, Clay or Wiggins? Yeah, but it's I don't have infinite money. This isn't no, baseball. No, I, I understand that, but right? I'm so just, like, I'm, I'm just, no, 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 no. I'm just, this hypothetical yeah, though yeah. is Clay. What could be going on in his mind, and what his agent may be telling him, dude, you're worth that. 
Okay. Let's go get that somewhere else. But if and you want to stay here, like we can only afford X. And the other part of this is like, just cause I paid someone else. Like th to me, th what we're, what we're discussing is one of the biggest problems on the warriors. Currently we're all caught up in pecking order and how much I'm worth to the place versus uh, you. And, and that is a real dynamic is what, this, in every, this is what happens in pro sports. This is what's going on. In Brandon, I, no, Brandon, I, you right now is looking at guys getting paid mm -hmm. left and right. He sees Devontae, uh, the uh, Devontae Smith of Philadelphia mm -hmm. get five for ninety one and a guaranteed money. And Brendan Ike said, "Oh, give me that, rub me that." It, that's that. You know I, what I'm saying? B, I, I, I understand that. Yeah, I understand that's that. all I'm saying. But but in football, like I can cut anyone at any time. I can you move can. my money around. In basketball, once I lock you in, and again it's, for it's where fun. the Warriors are, like I'm I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And look. Cool. Let's say, let's say, hey, just gave I Wiggins, paid Draymond. I paid Draymond. I'm just, I'm they just gave playing Wiggins this out. to Draymond player yeah, options. Yeah, and I'm sure they kind of regret it. GP2 has a player <laughs> option. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm sure they regret those. Do you think they do? I don't know. I think they do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to uh, Malik in Union City. Malik, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to talk about the like Clay Thompson situation, man. I feel like um, uh, y'all seen that movie? Don't get, don't look up with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, no, I haven't I seen. Feel like don't look Leonardo up. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, don't look up. It's about uh the meteor coming on uh ah, Earth and that nobody that. believes yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a good movie. Y'all should look it up. Okay. Uh, but he's just sitting there telling people like, yo, this meteor is coming to destroy the planet, and you know nobody believes him. Everybody takes it as a joke, and that's how I feel like the Clay Thompson situation is. Uh, with the Warriors right now, I feel like you know it, it's you're looking at a situation in which if you get rid of Clay, you're not going to be competitive ever. And then what's the point of having Steph and Draymond if you're not going to be competitive? Um, was so this your point, competitive? You well was this your with them? Was that I'm sorry, Joe? Was this year? I'm I'm just asking. Did you deem this year competitive with them? Ten games over five hundred to me is competitive. It's not. Uh, a championship team, obviously, but yeah. it is competitive being 10 games over 500. Is it worth the, 200 the million conference. into the tax? No, and that's the thing. So, with the tax situation, we're already going to be in the luxury tax, even if we get rid of Clay and Chris Paul. Uh, we're Wiggs, Dre, and Steph cost 105 million already. So, we're going to be in the tax. That's 141, I think. We're going to be in the tax anyway. Um, and basketball is a really like football where it's like a restrictive cap like that. Yeah. Like you have some room to work with. And if you lose Clay and Chris Paul, which is $57 million, you have no way to get those salary slots back to make your team better to build a championship team. Um, you, also the lose draft, you also you lose, lose draft, draft picks yeah. and you lose the ability to trade draft well, picks. Like that's, We'll get Anthony Slater on here. He'll explain it well. Let's go to Ryan in San Jose. Ryan, what's happening? Kind of like a mashed potatoes guy. What up, Ryan? Hey, guys. How you doing? How are things? Um, Shasky, I, I reached out to you via Instagram. I'm one of your buddy Richie's uh, clients. So oh. I wanted to say, uh, hey, again, my condolences to you Thank and your you. father. My, mine passed away in, in December, so I feel you, brother. Hey, uh, I'm, much, I'm yeah, hugging you through the I phone right you. now, bro. Thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've been I've been you know listening to you guys forever and and you know the Giants baseball how long we held on to our dreams and hopes of these guys. I mean we're we're in the same boat again. I know you guys have been talking to forever and and we got to make hard decisions. I mean it's you know it's it's the tough part about the game is as much as you want to be loyal, you've got to also look back at the future, right? I mean there's yep. there's dollars to be made for the, the ownerships. There's championships to be won for the for the team. There's you know happiness for the fans and you look at these guys and. You know they're they're looking for out for themselves as well. I mean, if Clay's you know agent gets a sniff of something that where he's making fifty a year, you know he's going to put it in front of him, and Clay's going to probably think about it and not and not even think of, you know drop a second on the Warriors in his time here. You know he's got to make his bag, and you know and and you know and you know he has made the max for years. You look at what they're going to do. I mean, they got to do what's best for them. And 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 I'll always say, I mean, as much as Draymond's been great for us. We traded the wrong guy at the right at the wrong time. I mean, I mean, imagine KD on this team still. You know, Draymond is off doing his thing somewhere else. But imagine Clay, Steph, and and you know, and KD, you know, together right now. I mean, I don't think we have. I think our our, our yeah, you know, we're not playing to the ten. We're playing at you know the six or seven maybe right now. I mean, they are getting older, but 
yeah, we're holding on too long. And I think that's my thing. And yeah, I'll, I'll take your uh, comments offline. Thanks, guys. Ryan, good call, man. Maybe they are holding on too long. Maybe they are. I thought last year would have been a good year to pivot. Draymond Green was a free agent after the year he had and how it started and how it ended. And they gave Draymond $100 million. And now Draymond played well on the floor, but he also has $100 million in a player option. And then, you know, a lot of people are looking at the 10 seed to say, boy, what if you had Draymond Green for the 18 games he was out due to suspension? Maybe you're six, maybe you're five. Who knows? But that's where it comes to Clay. It's like, I look, I'm not advocating for the Warriors to pay Clay. I'm with you. I, you got to do something about this change. You finish in 10th place. I, is he a max player now? No, he's not. He's not. No, he's not. He's, he's just not. We get that. I get that. Hopefully everybody gets that. But if you're Clay, you're seeing the situation, you're like, well, these guys just got 4 400 I'm more, who had better years? Who had better years? Tough situation for the Golden State Warriors, man. No doubt about that. No doubt. It's going to be a spicy offseason, and it's just beginning, folks. 888-957-9570 is the number. What change would you make right off the rip? We, we'll play. Uh, we'll replay the Steve Kerr sound. We've got Chris Paul. We, got, we haven't even gotten to Chris Paul. I haven't got to Andrew Wiggins. We haven't got the pods. We've got all this out here. We'll do that over the next hour and a half. On the morning roast, but first the injury report. Ow! 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 The Miami Heat lost yesterday in the seven eight game to the Sixers, but Jimmy Butler apparently played this game with a torn ACL. I'm seeing here a sprained right MCL after colliding with Kelly Oubre Jr. ESPN is reporting that he played most of the game with this injury. Did it at the end of the first quarter. It's going to get an MRI today, but said after the game that it was not a good feeling with his knee. He's expected to be out indefinitely, and the Heat will try to look to keep their season alive on Friday when they host the Chicago Bulls in the playing final. But the Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler beat up, beat up, and it's going to be tough sledding for them, if, even if they get past the Hawks on Friday night. So Buckets may be out Friday. Looks like he will be out Friday. No Zion for the Pelicans. Kings and Hawks may be sitting pretty in advancing to the first round of the playoffs. We'll see about that Friday as the play-in final will be happening between the Kings and the Pels and, of course, the Hawks and the Heat. Injury report brought to you by Boxer and Gerson, Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm, helping get your workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's coming up in the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. The one and only Anthony Slater will close the book on a great season with him. And get the gist of what was going down yesterday at Chase Center as all the players had their exit meetings. Draymond and Steph spoke after the game Tuesday, so they didn't speak yesterday. Mike Dunleavy today at 12 o'clock. We'll carry it live right here on 95.7 The Game. Big Warriors offseason ahead. And we're all breaking it down here on the Morning Roast. I like my Warriors. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. There I was driving down the highway and a rock flies up and cracks my windshield. Are you kidding me?
Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. What is happening here on a Thursday morning? Thursday morning on the road. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. And you can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added a QR code on both pages, the Xfinity Mobile Tax Line. Shout out to our friends at Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call it to the roast, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Floyd Water, Plenty Good Drain. We'll get to Anthony Slater in just a second. Real quick, let's go to Amar and Sally Andrew. Amar and Sally Andrew, real quick, before we get to Slates. What's up, Amar? Yeah, th this loss this loss is super painful. I, I think I'm just now starting to come to terms with it, but what, it, what, what hurts even more is the fact that LeBron James, at the age of 40 or almost 40, is out there like the Dragon Slayer. While we took a loss, and that should have been us taking that win, um, but I, I think all all options need to be on the table now. Steph needs to consider all options. If Steph wants to go, we need to make it happen for him so he can get another ring somewhere else, or things practically need to be blown up so that Steph can get the support that he needs. But a very, very painful loss, and I'm still trying to process it. All right, painful for a lot of members that are going to say Warriors. Uh, this is a question that I'm sure we'll have throughout the offseason. But, like, chasing the fifth, is that just going to do – like, is that, is that a fool's errand, I guess, is what I'm saying. Are you going to exhaust all your resources right. and it makes makes the comeback up – like, because you're not guaranteed anything on either end, but – Exhausting all your resources to chase something that may not ever come to fruition, is that even worth the exercise? I don't know. That sounds stupid Steph Curry, to say out loud. Ask Steph Curry, we asked Steph Curry. I don't know what. I don't, I don't know what you do here. Let's talk to Anthony Slater, R95, 7 Game Insider, Warriors Insider for the Athletic. The Warriors are in a tough situation. There's no doubt about that. As the season ended Tuesday night in Sacramento, look, they were not a great team all year. Comes, some would say they were not good. <laughs> they were the 10th seed in the Western Conference. And I know they did win 46 games, but they beat up on some cupcakes. But when you think about the top of the standings, 0-3 against Minnesota, 0-4 against Denver, 1-3 against OKC, 1-3 against the Clippers, 1-3 against the Mavericks, 1-2 uh, uh, against the Pelicans. You're a 1-3 against the Suns. You're a 2-2 two two against the Kings. They were not good against the Western Conference this season. How do you get better against the West? Do you run it back? Do you get younger? Do you make moves here? Anthony, what's happening, man? Good morning to you. Sorry you had to hear all that. But, uh, yeah, very interesting all season ahead for the Golden State Warriors. I guess that's the understatement of the month. I think you could say two and three against the Kings, too. Two and three, uh, I guess. Yeah, not two and two yeah. when you had to play it. Yeah. A pretty pretty big three. Um, yeah, I would say, um, yeah, it is a large off season, but you know, I mean, and Steve Kerr, I know was on your airwaves last night. He's, he's going to talk today. Oh, my child is not uh, happy with the off season. Um, <laughs> who, who, who is your child trading right now? Uh, break it down for us. No, I'm teasing. Uh, you know, he, uh, he's, uh, he, he's still kind of assessing the team. That he's been here, but, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, like they're talking about trimming money. It's very difficult to get better while lowering salary. So I just think they're in a transition phase. I'm sure that's not something Steph Curry necessarily wants to hear, you know, just having just turned 36. But I don't hear a team, I don't hear a management that is like, we're ready to press fast forward salary-wise and, and keep going as deep into the tax as possible um, to compete for titles. I know they're not going to say it that clearly, but they're talking about trimming salary. How are you doing that necessarily while, you know, getting better? Yeah. Yeah, I want to play this for you. You asked Clay Thompson the first question. I thought his presser yesterday, you could tell he was very uncomfortable. He was quirky. He was putting his head down when you guys were answering questions. Looked very uncomfortable for Clay there. But I want to ask you about this interaction here. You asked the first question to Clay Thompson. Here's the response, Anthony. Your future with the Warriors heading into this offseason that, that feels obviously pretty unknown. We don't want to talk about the season first. You want to talk about the future? That was a lot of games played, man. That was a pretty big accomplishment. What's up with y'all not wanting to live in the present, bro? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, what was your question? <laughs> so that happens. The day before he's talking, right before the game against Sacramento, I think you put out the video where it's like, yeah, I don't know what the future holds. He just, it just does not feel like Clay is handling this upcoming free agency very well. And the way the game ended, 
Tuesday night going 0 for 10 and 0 for 6 and 3. Hopefully he doesn't put a damper on his solid season, especially since the All-Star break. But what would you take out of that interaction there? Were you surprised that he responded the way he did to you, Anthony? Not really. Um, I mean, you got to know he's coming. He's at that point like 14 hours off the most – maybe a top three most frustrating games of his career, right? You could definitely yep. throw the elimination game last year into it. He had a fat lip, too. I don't know if you guys could see yeah. that on the, on the on the broadcast. He clearly It was a physical game, um, and he just come off an exit interview. With, you know, and I don't even mean the one with us. I mean the one with Dunleavy and Kerr, where his futures, uh, you know, kind of started to, to come into the picture. Um, and I'm sure he was hoping he would get up there and, and we would, go, hey, you played 70-something games. Hey, you were fourth in the NBA in threes. Hey, you know, let's talk about the fact that you did have a great season. But the reality is he did not talk the night before. He kind of, like, bolted out of the arena very quick, which is fine because we know he's talking the next day. He's last on the list of players to go. He's talking at 3 p.m. Um, and every single media member there was there to talk to Clay Thompson about his future. That was the story yesterday. So it's like, boom, first question, let's go. And he knows it coming in. And I don't, I'm not going to necessarily say that was a prepared answer, but I do think there is a level of frustration with him that maybe we're, you know, there isn't uh, much of a look back, a, a legacy look at what's going on. All we care about from a society right now is, is, is he going to be around in the future? You know, he, we all know he kind of has these, you know, thoughts societally in general, and, and, and he's try, kind of trying to get his mind to live in the present, right? That was part of his season this year with, he was maybe thinking about the past and legacy and this too much. And Steve Kerr had told him, hey, just enjoy this season. Enjoy what you still have left. So, I don't know. Maybe it was a lecture to us. Maybe it was a lecture to himself, to, to society in general. But uh, And, you know, I guess his, his other point is correct. It is April 17th. Like, the decision doesn't technically need to be made till July 1st. But trust me when I tell you the conversations will be starting to happen, like, very soon. Is he coming back? We'll see. I, you know, and I think yesterday's press conference uh, only, you know, put it more into question. If he will come back, um, I, I think it's a market he needs to explore. I think the Warriors need to, uh, and I'm talking more management ownership, need to, to show him the love, not only financially, but just like, hey, like, you know, we're not necessarily trying to figure out 10 different mechanisms of, of who we're going to sign, who we could go uh, after this offseason, you know, your priority number one, will the Warriors do that? I don't know. I mean, that's something they, they need to look at and they're going to look at over the next few weeks. But I would say it is certainly not a, sh- a surety that, that Clay Thompson comes back. So, so I mean, I, I want to get into the specifics because, like, if they, you know, uh, right now, without doing anything, without adding Clay's to next year's roster, like, they're $3 million over whatever that top of that cap is. So let's say they waive CP3, and somebody else, Kevon Looney or someone else, hypothetically, really like it feels like the most they can give him is thirty million a year, and that would really leave them in a very you know compromised situation. What's the number if he stays here? From what I'm told, especially if you wipe Chris Paul's thirty million straight off the books, um, and and you know you like you mentioned, you can do some other maneuvering. Only three million of Kevon Looney's eight is, is guaranteed. There is a contract that. From my understanding, he would likely accept that would still keep the Warriors, you know, kind of under that tax line. Now everything's still kind of fluctuating. You don't get the exact numbers till till right around the free agency. So every every little dollar can take it upwards or downwards. But you know, we're probably talking in in the in the mid twenty range. You know, I think I think length matters a lot here. Length always matters to like these older stars that that want long term security. It mattered to Draymond Green, right? He took a lower annual value to get a fourth season. Um, so it's not necessarily are we talking about oh, 24 to 27 million. It's more are we talking, you know, two years, three years, four years, you know, yeah. player option on the back end, that type of stuff. And then it's also like, you know, if it's taken out to the market, what would an Orlando, a Dallas, a Philadelphia, like how, how upward would they go? And is it going to get to the point where the Warriors are sitting there, you know, bidding against others? Uh, or does it, or, you know, what's crazy? He could have signed an extension tomorrow. He could have signed one yesterday. Like, he's extension eligible right now. Yeah. Uh, just like, you know, I've talked to people about Harrison Barnes last year, about three days before free agency started, signed an extension. Um, so it could happen at any point. Like, the Warriors could not bid against them, uh, bid against others if they tried to get it done quickly. I don't expect that to happen, but it is possible. 
You know, the years thing is interesting because Chaska and I were just having a conversation. Now saying, you know, why would Clay take two years when he looked around and saw Draymond get the four years and he saw Andrew Wiggins get the four year extension? I know they're Draymond's younger than Clay and Wiggins is younger than Clay, but he sees that he's thinking, all right, now I'm willing to take four years too, or at least three with the player option that both of those players received. Now, speaking of one of those players, Andrew Wiggins, he spoke yesterday and he admitted he took accountability. I'll, I'll give him that said I was not good this year individually. What happens with Andrew Wiggins moving forward here? Because it's been two up and down seasons for him. Obviously, you see the potential. You see the ability to be a lockdown defender. But it's been too inconsistent. And not the same guy we saw on their way to a championship in 2022. What happens with Andrew Wiggins? How does this team or this front office feel about Wiggs, Anthony? Yeah, I think that's a good question. You know, they he, I would say he was the most available name at the deadline. Like, that wasn't really a secret. Um, I don't think the offers were that great. I, his his contract went from when he signed it right after the 2022 finals, you know, the league and pundits believed it was team friendly to player friendly at this point. Um, I, I think the, his future probably of the guys that are locked in long-term is the most unknown. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not, it, it kind of depends on what his value is. I know uh, we got, we got, no, kids, I love kids, it, bro. Kids. Honestly, this yeah. has been my life the last couple of months. So I'm, I'm so happy. I'm not the only one going through it. How old is this little entity? How old is he? Uh, Slater? He just, he turned one, uh, this month. Wow. So he's walking around. Yeah. He's doing all the talking now. Yeah. Yeah. As you can tell right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, the Wiggins answer was interesting. Yesterday. I to, to, Quickly answer your question. Yeah, I do think his future, like I said, about as unsettled as anybody. Um, and, you know, if we talk about needing to, to trim, you know, small millions of dollars here and there uh, to, you know, maybe open up some more cap space for, for a clay, for whatever you want to do, you can make some type of trade that maybe brought in a little bit less salary attached picks. I don't know. I His salary is maneuverable for sure. So, all right. So let's, let's break down Chris Paul. And I want to do this uh, quickly because there's a lot to get into. I read that if they uh, opt in to Chris Paul, he can only be traded with a pick, not with another player, and you'd have to get the exact same salary in return back. So will they opt in, and or, or is he gone? And then I have a follow-up on Chris Paul. Yeah, um, well, you know, it's interesting because these second apron rules are, are very new. So, like, I, I, I don't want to speak with certainty on, like, what all the new restrictions are. And, and the other thing is, like, when they – trigger because mm -hmm. a lot of them haven't triggered yet they gave every team like an extra year before they did um the one interesting thing about his deal like let's say you want to trade for a person that's 12 million make 12 million dollars you can actually guarantee him 12 of the 30 million um equal the exact salary send that out theoretically with a pick which would entice a team to do that right huh. and then they could take the player cut the rest of the salary they only spent 12 million on it so his salary is gotcha. actually really it's a it's a flexible vehicle to uh, you know trade, but it's got it guarantees on on June twenty eighth. So it's something that like it's a sped up process of trying to figure out his future. And Chris Paul's going to be a voice within that, right? I mean, like you know he's uh, he's just kind of got got a, a powerful voice within that. Um, if if nothing can get done, I mean, it's very possible it's just wiped off the books uh, June twenty yeah. eighth. Which, by the way, when they traded for Jordan Poole, or they traded Jordan Poole for him, that was part of the appeal, right? Because they want to duck the second half and they yeah. may want to duck the tax. Oh, but like, uh, okay, so I'm glad you brought it up because like they did, they traded Jordan Poole for this guy, you know? And all year they like managed his minutes and his time and everything to get to the playoffs. It was all about the playoffs. The playoffs was, this was a playoff game. Now, I, they were probably going to lose the game no matter what, all right? So I'm not here sitting here saying it was the end-all be-all. But when I saw pods go in, not just in the first half, but in the second half before CP3, when you needed to kind of stabilize things and slow things down and you needed another ball handler, I just threw my hands up. I'm like, what What were they doing? Did anybody clarify as to what the thought process was there? Well, I'd say two things. Since they made the trade, basically a year ago, things have changed. They've, they've trans, uh, you know, this transit team is transitioning. Yep. Pajemski matters for the future. It's probably more important to them to get Pajemski big playoff type minutes than Chris Paul because Chris Paul is not gonna, probably not going to be here next year. Uh, that's number one. Number two, like whatever they tried to pump, uh, you know, post trade, 
you know, and and the fact that they were going to go through a year with Chris Paul, they thought he was going to help down the line. They thought he could stabilize the second unit. I actually thought he had a pretty good season. Me too. But, I, I'm with you. But they made the trade for financial reasons. Yeah. They made the trade because Jordan Poole was making four years, 123 million, and Chris Paul was making one year, 30 million. And they made the trade for. And you know, I thought Dunleavy post trade was pretty transparent about it too. If you, if you go back to his press conference, I mean, optionality, right? I mean, I know they use these terms that are kind yeah. of. You know, ambiguous, yeah. but uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go again. Uh, I, I it was done because they're tr- they're trying to trim money as they get older. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to duck this stuff. Like it's they're saying it too. By the way, Joe Lake has yep. said this publicly. Yep. No, Anthony, I know you got the baby there, and I want to get you out of here so you can attend to him. He needs your attention. We don't need it as much. Uh, Tell him I'm, I'm mad, yeah. too. <laughs> uh, dude, lastly, got Moody and uh, Kaminga. Where are their psyches at, psyches at heading into the offseason? Kaminga had a big pop in his third year, but down the stretch. You heard, started hearing from Feds, and he was out of the rotation. We went out of the rotation, but out of rhythm, not knowing when he's playing. And of course, Moses Moody all season long, having to stay ready despite not having his number called. And he helped save the game in the second quarter. Where are their mentals at heading into the offseason? I wonder, Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga as they head into their fourth season. Well, Kaminga was, you know, I asked him about his extension eligibility yesterday. He's like, oh, I'm extension eligible. Didn't, didn't uh, realize that. I hadn't thought about it. Huh. Uh, that is, that, that, where his mind should be, right? This is future. He's in, entering that Jordan Poole off season. Does he sign the big deal? Now that's probably more October business than you know July August business. Right. Um, but that you know he played well enough. I think he showed enough that like he, you know, if the Warriors decide to take him to restricted free agency the following summer, like I think he'll be have a market in this league, right? I mean, I think we're talking about a potentially a hundred million plus type contract heading his way down the line. So that's where he should be at. Uh, Moody, I mean, did you hear his press conference yesterday? I did. I did. It was, it was deep. It was reflective. It was uh, within all the maturity that he continues to show, uh, about as mature as you, you can imagine a player yep. you know, of his age. He also, I think, you know, admitted, like, this needs to be figured out. I need to know, like, he is a rotation player in the NBA. Yeah. I think it's certainly fine with him if that's with the Warriors. He would love for it to be with the Warriors. But I just think... And, you know, he doesn't necessarily have enough power in the league to just be like, demand, like, guarantee me a rotation spot. But if it if Clay Thompson's coming back and they're running it back and Moses Moody's entering camp as, like, the ninth, 10th, 11th man, like, I don't think he's going to be too pleased about that. Again, I don't think he's going to be yeah. shaking tables. But but he's at a point, by the way, he's extension eligible yep. this summer. He's heading towards, you know, future, yep. what what's going to happen. Like, I think he just wants to know, like, I'm playing every night. Right. I'm playing 25 minutes because Boy. he's good enough to. Lastly, I know we, we've talked a lot about Clay, but I, I just want to circle back on it. I'm getting the feel of that. You know, when you look at it, Anthony, you cover this team, and you do it as well as anybody out there. Is it best for the Warriors to move off from Clay? And is it best for Clay to move off from the Warriors? It is style, just from a basketball standpoint, they're getting older. He doesn't move as well as he used to. It's obvious he could still get buckets. He's averaging 18. He got some great splits coming out of the All Star break. But is it a but is a divorce best for both sides here moving forward? It's a good question. I mean, Steve Kerr made the point post game that like they really still need his floor spacing, and you know that's part of why he will have a market. Like what he does still carries a lot of yeah. value in the league. I mean, just the gravity, the off ball stuff. You come down a, off a screen, you get double. The guy can flip for a dunk. Um, no, I think there's a grander question for the Warriors. Like, do you need to just revamp your system? You mm-hmm. need to revamp who you are. Are you going to just be like? Trace Jackson Davis, and maybe you get a center this offseason, and you're pick and roll heavy with Steph, and you just kind of you 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 change your ethos, and then maybe you know elevating Moody where he's a, he's kind of your shooter, he gets a lot of the Clay minutes. Like right. I can hear I can hear that argument from the Warriors side, from the Clay side, um, maybe. Like I do think he could go elsewhere for for a few years, especially if we pick the right system, a Philly next to Embiid in Orlando, where they desperately need shooting and really help like a winning team. Um, but then I also take three steps back and go like, do you want to see like the Patrick Ewing style photos of like when, when Ewing was wearing a magic Jersey or <laughs> Allen Iverson was wearing a Grizzlies Jersey. Yeah. I'm Chris not saying Mullen in a Pacers form. Jersey. All right. Yeah. Bullet was good with the Pacers. Hakeem in the Raptors Jersey. That was, that was fascinating. You see, you see him defending his guy yeah. Mullen right there. You yeah. Now nah, you got uh, to see with Shasky, but Shasky lost some I was rooting for him. and what everything like about? that. Yeah, Mully Mully, was, Mully, no. I'm a white Ewing, guy from San Francisco. Ewing was Mully's cooked. one of my favorite no, players. No, no, ever. what Anthony's talking about here, Ewing was cooked in Orlando. Well, Hecky was cooked but in I don't Toronto. Think Clay's cooked. Mully wasn't cooked in Indiana. That's all I'm saying. But, 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 similar to Clay, yeah. I don't think he's cooked. Yeah, I just think, all. you know, there's just. 
If you take a shot to my guy from Brooklyn, man, be careful. What? How was yeah. I taking shots? That's what he said it. Not me. Why are you getting so bad? Relax. I had to start where, crying where like I did his kid. Where Shasky's right is Clay isn't cooked, and I'm not yeah. saying that, but it's just like, I, you know, I could see in the moment why it could feel better for both sides to separate, and maybe that is the right thing to do, but also there is that legacy stuff at play, and sure, yeah. people, you know, can, can laugh at the Giants, right, for keeping a lot of their guys around as long as they did. Um, and maybe that wasn't the right call, but like, I don't know. Do y'all want to see Clay Thompson in a different uniform? Uh, should he, should this team, should this trio, you know, get to kind of like finish out its era together or not? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's part of the equation at least. Yeah. All right, man. I heard the Tesla. I know that deep. I know that beep. Is that what that was? I didn't that know what that, that was. Yeah, the I'm, getting, little... I'm getting beeped at from all angles right now. <laughs> well, Anthony, hey, uh, Hit good me stuff on all my season. Pager. Good stuff all season long. We'll talk to you. We'll, we'll make it work at some point during the all season. We always appreciate the time. You always are uh, willing to play goofy yeah, with us. Yeah, you should fill in for me and Bonte at the Warriors Summit. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. that'd be great. <laughs> Give me a date. Give me a date, and I can probably make it up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you, you can fill in for us for sure. Anthony, always good stuff, man. You do a hell of a job. We mean that. You're the best on the beat, man. I think you're a star. Hopefully, we can keep you in this market for a long, long time, but we always appreciate your insight, man. You know the game inside and out. We always appreciate Thanks, buddy. your time. All right, fellas, heading to New Orleans today for Kings Pelicans. I'm sure y'all fired up about that. I got my pole boys ready. Jambalai, gumbo, you know it all. I think the key, but you know what? I think the key's going to win, Anthony. I think they're going to win on Friday. No Zion. Look how happy you get talking about the Kings. No, I'm just hey, talking basketball. That is Kings Thunder. That is Kings Thunder. That'll be King, interesting. Yeah. It, it, man, the Warriors full of shot. It could have been playing on Sunday. Um, anyway. They had no chance uh, against uh, the Thunder. Hell, you didn't believe that a week ago. Yeah, All right, but Slater, then a week get out of here. <laughs> See hey, what I got to hey, deal how with? How about this? How about this Mike Dunleavy exit interview today? I'm going to that also. So, so that's more interesting. Ooh, double dipping. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Yeah. Cannot wait for that. All Thanks, right, Anthony. All right, fellas. Anytime. Monte, can we, just for a moment, because we've been spending a lot of time on Clay Thompson, I do want to talk about Moses Moody. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying. Like, I I, I just personally believe, and I, I, I'll, I'll, I will sit here and say I'd love to be proven wrong, but I have a hard time feeling like Kerr with Clay on the bench and Moody on the bench, he'll pick Moody consistently yeah. over Clay. And I get it. I'm not saying I'm even like I don't. I, I get where he's coming from, but like it's it is either or, and not that Moody is going to be a better right. all around warrior than than what Clay was that was. No, no, like Clay's one of the all time franchise greats. But if you bring him back, Moody's going to be looking over his shoulder all season long, and Kerr, when it it's comes down to it, is going to play Clay Thompson yes. a lot. So, he's so, going because he trusts Clay Thompson. But I do believe that's kind of a microcosm of what they've been in. Yeah, the like, last two years. Yeah, the they, last two years. They're afraid been that. to pivot. It's the last two years. Like, how much better would Moody have been this year and Kaminga have been this year running into the season had they played a lot last season? Over Anthony Lamb and Ty Jerome. And it's not just you know? Clay. Like, the, there's it's a Wiggins just, portion. It, there's Lamb, a, there's a GP2 portion. Wiggins missed two months last year and they got run and then Wiggins comes back and nobody gets exactly. You know what I'm saying? Who was it's, the it's other guard that he loved? Ty Jerome Ty last Jerome, year. Yeah. I mean, it's just. So the the point being is that I I actually was shocked, and we we're gonna play some of the sound on the other side. Kerr was talking about why he didn't play, and it was like passing and how they got to practice two hand, and he was talking about Kaminga as well. Like there's just so much yeah. to the Moses Moody not playing, and to me it was like, okay, what the hell is going on at practice when you guys say you don't practice that much? Because when the guy plays. I do see positive results. I'm not here sitting, yeah. oh, the guy's the next SGA. No, that's not here what I'm saying. But also, like, I just felt like he deserved also a little more Moody. I also want to hear Moody because Moody was very interesting. Moody was very, very interesting last night saying, I need to find out a role. And meanwhile, Brendan Pajewski's talking about, you know, naturally he's going to see the ball more. And Moody's trying to figure out what his role is going into his fourth year. It pauses a rookie going into his second year thinking that he's going to be handling the ball a lot more. Something's got to shake, man. Say, make sure you don't miss that break, bro. All right, more Warrior stuff. 888-957-9570. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Safeway. Head to Safeway this week for amazing deals for members. Signature Farms Chicken.
Back to the Morning Roast with Bonte and Shasky. All right, we're going to get to Austin and Redwood City, 888-957-9570. We're picking apart the Warriors all season. We left off with Moses Moody. Moses Moody. A lot of fans wanted Moses Moody to play more. He played well in that playing game against Sacramento, but he didn't get consistent playing time. He doesn't know what his role is. Spadoni, if you have it, Moses Moody was asked yesterday about his role moving forward or what he wants, but don't he take it away? You know, yeah, figure, figuring out what it is in the future, what it's been, yeah, that's something that's still got to gotta figure out, yeah. Got to figure it out. Got to figure it out. Meanwhile, Pods feels like this. Yeah, I think just naturally my role is going to increase. I think, I think the ball will be in my hands a little bit more and just be more efficient trying to take the burden kind of off Steph and Draymond's shoulders. How can the rest of our guys just impact things? I think a lot of times when we got into games that really mattered or we really need to win, we kind of just defer to Steph. And I think that's natural just because of the level, you know, that he's at and that he's been doing for for so long. But I think for our other guys, it's just how can we impact games that are meaningful and, you know, take the burden off his shoulders. So that's that's pods right there. Was that post game? Exit. No, that was yesterday in his exit interview. That was the exit that was yesterday. Okay, that was yesterday so after his exit interview. We went to go speak to the media. Gotcha, man. I, I don't know. I, I just um, every year it feels like well, the last couple of years. All the young guys have like, uh, you know, next year, you know, I would like to have a bigger role and this and that. And then it like plays out and it feels like it can either barely get a bigger role or they well, take a reduced role. They do like pods and they play them more so than it's any true. other rookie we've seen here. It's true. I mean, Jordan Poole played a lot of his rookie year because he had to. Yeah, Eric Pascal, he had to. Yeah. didn't have anybody. But for the most part, I mean, Wiseman played a lot of his rookie year during the pandemic season. Uh, Wiseman was starting to come along. Then he had some injuries. He had COVID. Then he had another injury. And he was out for the rest of the season. And he was done. He was done. He was a member to go to State Warriors, basically, because he missed all of the next season. But Paz actually got a lot of playing time. He actually finished a lot of lineups. <laughs> finished first half, finished fourth quarters. Paz played a lot. But if Pods is going to see an incre- increase in usage, how much better will the Warriors be? Because I like Pods a lot. But at times Tuesday night against Sacramento, he looked athletically overmatched. De'Aaron Fox, Keegan Murray wasn't even close. Keon Ellis wasn't even close. What is, let, me, let, me, let me just stop. What is he? A point guard? A true point guard? I would say so. Okay. Because if, if that's the case... Clearly, you need if if you're gonna if he if you have him in as your envisioned future right. guard at some point, then you're gonna need a six eight guy, oh, six seven cool. six, no uh, doubt, right? Defender, no uh, doubt elite about it. Athlete. Some of the problems I had, you know, some of the issues I had, not problems, but issues. Some of the lineups were a little interesting. When you go three guard lineups and you got Pods and Steph and you got CP three, or if you got Pods, yes, yes. or GP two and Steph, it's just you're just too small. You're just way too small for today's league which is something Steve Kerr touched on. But the Moses Moody thing is interesting because he's just looking for a role. He's just saying, I, I can I get 20 minutes here and there? Can I get my 25? Now, it may be open because Clay may have moved on. He may have moved on already. And we'll see about Clay Thompson. But if Clay's not here, then, yeah, you're running back with Moody and you see what you got. But we have to, we have to understand this, though. We do have to understand this. There will be growing pains with Moody oh, yes. and Kaminga if you move forward. Yes. And you may not be a playoff team. Well, and now Moody we'll may see. not be good. May, he may he, not be good. Like that, but, I think what I'm asking, element, but what I'm asking you know. the fan base, this is what you're asking for. Yeah. If you're asking for Mo Moody, Mo Moody, then you know what? You're going to get Mo Moody. And it may not always be pretty with Moody. Now, Moody's a professional. I like Moses Moody a lot. But what is he? We don't even know. Well, I want to like. Do you have the Steve Kerr cut like of him talking about about why Moses didn't get more planned? I'm just surprised because a couple years ago, it's like, oh, he's a more. Yeah, I got re- it right here. Okay, he's like Kevon Looney or whatnot. He's always ready. He always yeah, has that. And good then they soul. were like, but the way he plays, it fits what the older guys do, and he's a connector. Blah 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 blah. And then I heard Steve Kerr yesterday with Willard, and Willard and Dibbs was a great interview. If you missed it, it's on YouTube. And I was just like, what? Huh? I was surprised. He was probably the guy who went in and out of the rotation the most. Some of that was just the log jam in front of him, you know, between uh, JK and Wiggs and Clay and Harry Payton. You know, we had a lot of guys who were just in front of Moses. 
So it's not easy to, I mean, as a coach, you can't play all those guys. And so Moses took the brunt of that and handled it really well. But uh, he's, uh, he's a guy who needs his opportunity to, uh, to really you know, step forward and become an everyday contributor, maybe even a starter. You know, that opportunity, part of that comes from our side, but part of it comes from his side too, um, you know, emerging and, and grasping that role and running with it like Brandon Podemski did this year. I don't know. See, that that to me is not fair. What do you mean? Because I don't know if Moody had that chance to run that, with the role. That's what I'm saying. Pod's got that role, and I get it. But P- Moody, is he a two or is he a three? I don't care. The guy can shoot. The guy's a solid defender. Now, I don't believe he has the greatest lateral quickness, uh-huh. but I'm not saying he's not athletic. That's not what I'm saying at all. Maybe not the most athletic, but I think Moody, Moody and Kaminga may work well together, but... There's going to be growing pains, Warrior fans, if you have them in the lineup. Next to Steph and Draymond, that you don't bring back Kurt, uh, Chris Paul, that you don't bring back Clay Thompson, and you got GP2 with the player option for 8 to $9 million. Uh-huh. There's going to be growing pains, and you may be in tenth again next season. Are you okay with that? Well, yeah, no, I, I am. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, Warrior fans aren't happy with a lot of things right now. Are you now. sure? Because with the Giants, like... What we you, say that in mean? real time that, hey, we're okay with the team struggling to try to figure out who the youngsters are. And then we get into the middle of it. It's like, oh, we need to pivot. We need, like, are it's going to Are you talking about the Giants? I'm talking about just period as sports fans. I'm talking about period as sports I fans. I do believe what the tolerance teams, isn't as, yeah, it yeah. isn't as, as, as long. We, we say it, but then we, we don't but have But then that to, tolerance is rare, rare We're not patient, not folks. We're not, we're not patient sports fans. No, I agree. Society isn't at all. But getting back to, like, the Moses Moody thing, like, Everyone points to Clay, and I get it. Believe me, because you all two yeah, guard or whatever. GP two two, and like Kerr got asked a question by Willard and Dibs about height and and size, and he's like, "Well, we know we have GP two, dog GP two six two, and yes, he can get vertical, and he plays stylistically at times, like in the dunker spot offensively. He is six two, right? Like, so I it, this goes back to like." There are guys on the roster when I when I think when the coach looks down at the bench, yeah. he's like, "You go in." Yep. He always deferred to GP two yep. over Moody. Yep. And I thought that was a mistake. Yeah, it's not always Clay. It's not always Clay. I, I know why Clay's getting the heat. Trust me, there, there's some other guys who deserves a lot more heat than Clay Thompson, and we'll get there. We will get there. Trust me. But but don't but, you think but, that that's stylistically but, but, and that leads to also, three is, and four guard lines? This is why I thought lineups. they had too many players. Exactly. When they, whenever we talk about You're how right. deep they were, I always thought there's too many players. This puts Steve Kerr in a bad spot. All of a sudden, you have all these players and all these guys who can play and play spot minutes. But when you got 12 guys who can play spot minutes, you got too many guys. I know. I need a set nine man rotation. I need I need to know who my top nine guys are, and if these nine guys are performing, then I'll figure a way to try to maybe work something in with the tenth guy or the eleventh yes. guy. Yes. But having twelve guys on the team, this is the problem we run into. Pods is getting a lot of minutes, but Moody's not. Pods was able to earn his way as a rookie. Moody hasn't. Why? I thought he did enough his rookie year. He showed flashes in the Western Conference Finals against the Dallas Mavericks. We all remember the third quarter when they were down 15-plus and Loon Dong and Moody had some pivotal moments in that game. Like, Moody's got the sniff well, but- in big moments when he doesn't play during the regular season, and it's been a complete reversal for Jonathan Kaminga where he doesn't play in the playoffs but gets this leeway in the regular season. We got to figure this out. But the other part of it is, and I, I hate, like, I feel I feel like I'm pitting the two young guys again, but I'm not. I never understood the obsession with playing Chris Paul alongside Pajemski when both wanted the ball in their hand. I wanted to see Moody play more overlapping minutes with Chris Paul exactly. because he's more of a sniper and a shooter. Uh, not that he's on the level of a Clay Thompson in terms right. of efficiency, but like I thought he had a really good three point shot, and I thought he gets it out quick. Yeah, and I just so going back to the lineups, like, and and I don't think it's the seminal end all be all. I just viewed a lot of things different yeah. from Steve Kerr off that bench, yeah, and I some did of too. the combinations of I guys, and I. I, I would be blown away at the amount of times I'd see CP3, GP2, and Pods. Steph, too Pods, too GP2. Small. It's, too small. it's way too small. It's too small and he kept too referring yeah. to GP2 as a big I'm like, he, okay, yeah. yes, on some level I see what you're saying and how he has elements of a big... He's still 6'2". And you know what's crazy? And you know what's crazy, too? Um, <laughs> Moody, at times, you think about Madison Square Garden defending Jalen Brunson. 
He did as well on Jalen Brunson as anybody I've seen in the league. Jalen Brunson's been off for 30, 40. He's going to be in the MVP conversation. May not win it, but he's going to be in that conversation. We, Moody shut him down. Moody has done well as an individual defender. He doesn't, again, he's not the quickest when it comes to lateral movement, but damn, he knows where to be. He never seems to be out of position. Now, he may get beat for a backdoor cut here and there. Who doesn't? I've seen Steph do it. I've seen Clay do it. I've seen Draymond do it at times. It it's going to happen. It's NBA basketball. These guys are gifted. They're some of the sickest athletes we've ever seen. But damn it, Moody has shown an ability to defend at a high level, and he knows where to be. He's never a guy where it seems like the, the veteran's got to tell him where to go or point him where to be. It's He knows where to be. He's always ready. He learned from Eric Musselman in Arkansas. He used to be an NBA coach. So I'm with Moody. He needs to figure out his role. And that's another guy where he may say, and Anthony Slater's right, he doesn't have the juice to demand a trade. But boy, you don't think he's looking around at his peers saying, boy, what's else in that situation plan? Like, we just brought up Trey Murphy III. And the only reason why I thought about Trey Murphy III so good the because final he was five minutes picked of the three Laker picks game. After Moses Moody at 17 overall, who's 86, 9, 6, 10 with a long wingspan. But however, there is a question, would he even play with the go to State Warriors? Which is why the whole LaBella ball stuff, that's the Tyrese problem. Halliburton stuff, whatever people bring that up, Shask, I'm thinking, would they, would they even have played? Would they even have the ball but, in their heads? But I guess this go no, you're 100% correct. But it goes back to, like, I just view things different from Steve Kerr and, and from the team. He sees GP2 as a big. I'm like, no, he's a guard. Well, he plays at times like a big, well, that's why but he, you're employing him like a guard. Yeah. So I see multiple three but and you four you understand guards. why he says a big, though, because he only on offense, he plays in a dunker spot. That's great. Yeah, I know. I, guess I, what? Trust me, I'm two. with you. I'm, I'm with you there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm and, with you there. And best ability is availability. Exactly. And GP2's been so hurt a lot. A, a Trey Murphy the third, he's 6'8". I know. He's 6'8". Six, 6'8", eight. Six, eight, six, dude. He's tall. I was watching him. I watched him warm up for 15 minutes. He's he's six eight, right? That guy and, is a player. Like, and I look at like <laughs> Kevin Durant. Like, yeah, Kevin Durant. He's a three. Yeah, he's seven feet tall. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so w when you're a six two player, you're a guard. Yep. Draymond is an outlier to be a six five and if, power forward. And is an with, outlier. And even with Draymond, he looks small at times guarding bigs. Absolutely. Now. And the concern with Draymond Green, and we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it enough. Who went into game four of the Boston Celtics series in the NBA Finals? We talked to Chris Mullen that day, but we also talked to Mary Babers Green, mm. the mother of Draymond Green. And she was going, you know, we, we talked to her for like 30 minutes on that. I, I, I never forget the interview. I'll never forget all my interviews with her because she's such a great interview. And she'll always tell you something. And what she told us that morning, Shasky, was two things. One, the whole referee thing with Draymond Green, she had never seen it before. She goes, this is, this is different. <laughs> and then two, and then two, his back. Yeah. His back was in shambles that season. And it flared up again this year because he was defending bigs. He was defending fives. He was in the paint. It's tough for him to do that. But if he doesn't, but if he doesn't do anything offensively for you, then where is he at as a stretch for Draymond Green, that is? If you evolve offensively, where does that leave Draymond Green at? That's what it was a concern with when there was Chris Paul or Draymond Green, we always try to figure out, well, who's going to handle the ball? They both need the ball in their hands to be effective offensively. You know, to make the cuts, to make the passes, to play four on three, to throw the lobs, do whatever you got to do with a split action. So that's another conundrum with Draymond Green as a four. As Steve Kerr says, we need to get bigger and more athletic. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. But can Draymond Green get better and become a stretch four? He has shot a career high from three, percentage-wise. But to me, Shasky doesn't shoot it enough. But then, no, but like the irony is not lost on me. The dynasty started with them Tony Allen, Allening Tony Allen yep. by not guarding him. And it feels like the dynasty is slowly dissipating or, or dead on arrival because now everyone treats Draymond Green like Tony Allen. Yeah. <laughs> All of, everybody. And then they've been doing it for years. And he has a game like he did the other night where he scores the 15 points. And it's like, yes, that's what we need. 15 points. We're not even asking about 25. Yeah. 15. And and that's even a stretch. Give me 9, 10 consistently. I mean, he hit the Lakers for 5 or 7 from 3. And he doesn't take a shot in his next game against the Pelicans. Now, he defended Zion as well as anybody. And Zion was trying to get to his left. And he scored 26 on 26 shots. That is a load. <laughs> Draymond Green defending him. It was something else, one-on-one. -on -one. But damn, you're not going to take a shot? We all play basketball to shoot. He's wide open. We, we, you need him on his I team. Where, Clay, where Clay's getting suffocated, and he can't buy a basket, 
And Wiggins, you never know what you're getting from him offensively. He missed some layups early in that Pelicans game. And he missed some layups early in the Kings game. And we'll get to Andrew Wiggins in a second as well. Because there's a lot. We could This offseason is going to be riveting. There's going to be Warriors <laughs> damn near every day. Every day. We could do shells on each player all four hours. We're not going to do uh, that. Bonte. But we literally can. I just looked up Moses Moody's career minutes. It's less than Trey Murphy the third's second season in the NBA. Yeah, no doubt. His three years in the NBA are less than one season for your boy Murphy. Now, I will give the Warriors credit, though. And I'll give them the benefit of doubt here on Moses Moody. He had less. Yeah, I know. Just, I understand. I, I, but it's tough when it's, you have a core that is thinking championship. And you're trying to win games. Now, obviously, they haven't won a championship in the last two years. <laughs> yeah, They're yeah. not a championship team. And this year, they didn't even make the playoffs. But I understand why youngsters... It's tough for them to crack it, but then this year you see Pajipski crack the code and he gets all the minutes and he's starting games and Moody is the odd man out. It's just unbelievable. Hell, Jonathan Kaminga was out of the rotation, but you were down nine to Portland late third quarter and it was like, man, we need, we need to choke for somewhere and Kaminga saved his season with the great stretch of play in that Portland game in December. So it, what's interesting to me is that I'm not even sure Moses Moody is the player that I'm I'm willing to die on the hill of because right. like I, I I don't have these grandiose opinions that he is Michael Jordan reincarnated, mm -hmm. but to me it is a great look, a microcosm if you will, into everything that's ailed the Warriors hierarchy, pecking order, suppressing someone's minutes because you have a redundancy at a particular position, the inability to allow a young player to play through mistakes. Um, you're allowed this long runway, but you aren't. Like, there's so many interesting elements that have plagued the Warriors over the last few years. And I feel like the Moses Moody situation is a big microcosm of all of the things that they've fallen short on. I mean, all these youngsters may be gone soon. It's just unbelievable. Because the Warriors did catch a break with the number two overall pick, and now it doesn't work out with James Wiseman. All right, we move on. But you got the two picks. Got the pick from the Minnesota Timberwolves to get Andrew Wiggins, and that turns into Jonathan Kaminga. And then you have 14, then you get Moses Moody. You had the benefit of adding lottery picks to this core, and it just doesn't feel like that's been maximized due to playing time and rotations, and it's something they're going to have to figure out this offseason. Let's go to uh, Austin and Redwood City, then we get the Mystic and SF. Austin, Redwood City, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. I didn't know the most. It's got a little sour taste because of our loss that we just took. Well, but my you. question is, my question is, what did Chris Paul actually do for the big, for the big three or our core? I feel like Chris Paul only did more for our, our, our bench, getting the uh, younger organized on offense or whatnot. But um, with that being said, I'm still I'm mad at uh, Draymond Green for uh, you know, y'all said we needed another guard to assign uh, assign uh, Curry. Well, he, he didn't punch him all the way to D.C. Draymond is like a cancer. He's like a, a uh, he's, he, he's, you can't contain him. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get out of him. He's like a, a loose pit bull. You don't know. You know, he might bite you, he might not. <laughs> so, what, what y'all think, man? What y'all think about that? What think about what? Draymond Green being a pit bull or no? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, being a pit bull. Well, and, you know, he's... knocking another stuff. It kicking another star off the team, like like he Pitbulls did. Pitbulls scare me, even though I know that there are some great ones out there. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got, man. We need we need Drake, we need we need uh, JP back. That's all we need. You need so you need Jordan you know? Poole back. Well, guess what? I don't think you're getting Jordan Poole back anytime soon. I don't think that's happening. <laughs> Look, defense is a hard thing to quantify. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> it is. All right. Do you believe in the defensive win share uh, metric? It's not the end all be all, but. I don't know. These metrics, they, they, I just, I try to watch the game as much as possible. Some metrics, okay, I get it. Like, like Nate Duncan, for example, covers the league. Nate Duncan, I think, is really, really good at like assessing plays. And they were breaking down. I, was, I ran into a podcast where he's talking about the Warriors and how they're one of the worst transition teams in the NBA the last two years. Yeah. Those are things Their I look for. Transition offense, yeah, transition less offense, points per exactly. uh, possession. Yeah, I like that as stuff. Yeah, yes. I like that stuff. The metrics and stuff, how do you quantify it? You don't know because you don't know what the defensive assignment is. It's like us watching all 22 and watching Jimmy Garoppolo airmail it to a player. Well, we don't know if it's the primary primary receiver or the third option. We just don't know, but go ahead and cook. Well, no, I was just saying like defensive win share is a, is it's an interesting stat. Again, there, there's lots of different ones. You know, how much does a guy score on you? What's the scoring right. per, per 100 possessions when you're on the floor? 
by a lot of metrics, Moody was actually a better defensive player this year than, than Gary Payton II. Yeah, well, you know the top five defensive huh. players per metrics? Huh. Defensive efficiency individually. Yeah. It was TJD number one. Uh-huh. Uh, Draymond Green number two. Uh-huh. TJD was better by point one. Uh-huh. Uh, but it was, Sarge was on his list in the top <laughs> five. Looney was on there. And then it was Chris Paul. Really? Yeah. That, you know, but that doesn't surprise me because he's very savvy yep. and they, they pick their spots on, on who he was guarding. That, but, the, but Sarge being on there, it's like, oh, I thought he was a bad defender. You know, I, I don't. You know. Well, again, this is why you know there's large samples. Oh, so and so had the greatest war ever right. in an individual season. Great, yeah, it wasn't more impactful to winning than Barry Bonds. Get out of here. Right. Um, so look, again, and I'm using the GP2 Moody thing because I really believe adding GP2 at the deadline last year brought all the vibes back for everybody. But it was so redundant, and it crushed the development of Moody and Kaminga yep. to a degree because it was just another guy when he was available for half the games uh, that you had to get into the game ahead of these other dudes. Yep. Let's go to Mystic and SF. Mystic, what's happening? Man, I'm I'm crestfallen. I'm I'm very depressed. Uh, but let me just rattle off real quick the top three reasons I have for this failure. Number number three would be the continued failure to integrate the youth and give them their proper due. I'm so on board with what you guys are saying about Moses Moody, a guy who can defend, a guy who can shoot. There's no reason for somebody like Gary Payton Jr. to be playing over him or even Pajemski if he's going to be coming in to uh, replace a two guard. And of course, Jonathan Kaminga, your, your lottery pick, why are you sending him back to the bench at the end of the season? That made no sense to me. And Trace Jackson Davis. To me, there are times where you could Take him off, uh, take Draymond off the floor and put Trace Jackson in because he's going to give you some offense and replicate some of the things that Draymond does. Number three, or number two, the disappearance of Andrew Wiggins. The last two years, the man has had a precipitous downfall. I don't know what the hell is happening with him behind closed doors, but there's no way you can tell me that a player his talent should be scoring 13 points a game. And if that's happening, again, take his butt out and put Kaminga in the game. Hmm. Number three, and uh, number one, the, the top reason. Draymond Green, and he's not going anywhere, sadly, but Draymond Green, to me, is the weight that's destroying the Warriors. This dude is so mercurial and so out of control, and you know, as his play declines, what you're going to expect from him? I expect more outbursts, more bad behavior, because he will have less ways to impact people on the court, and based on his mentality, I can't see him just taking being abused on a nightly basis by different NBA players. And that's what's getting ready to happen to Draymond. He gives us nothing on offense. I'd rather have him gone, to be honest. I think that would really clear the way for development for the youth and for an overall healthier vibe for the team, man. It's interesting. Yeah, you would know, you would you be would you be able to stand the line? Would you be happy with they allow Clay to walk but Draymond stays? Oh, he left. He left. He left. Because that's that's, the, that's my next question. Because oh, okay, is I, it, well, well, it, it's I. I told you guys yesterday we canceled the show call. I say, guys, we got a lot. I got a I got a plethora of questions. Show call. Hey, we have like, like it's one call between it, the two. Yeah, of us. it's the one call between Lubman. It's between Lubman, Chasky, and I. What are we going to talk about today? What's our plan? Well, you know what? Our plan is we're going to continue to roll on the damn off season. And, and here it is. And here our it plan is, too. is to shed salaries. No, no. And, and, that's and, the and, Odyssey and, way. And, and, and like, gotta have a plan. I literally. As I'm driving around yesterday, I had to do some things, and oh, yeah. I'm driving around. I actually walked around Oracle Park. It was oh, a beautiful day. Just really? kind of getting my thoughts right. Yeah. Getting my Clay Thompson little that, on. that Bay Air. Yeah. I'm actually <sighs> excited about the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, man. I've got like 20 questions on each player and what you do. Like, it's just, Girl, I'm like, my, I mean, because you know why? You know down? why? This is why, this is why I love the way we structure our show. What's that? And anybody and, and, you organized know, chaos? No, it's organized chaos. But we tend to stay away from the all season until the all season actually happens. And then it's just a can and of then worms. It's just a explodes. can of worms. It's like, all right, we. But think about how much material we have by saving all the all season. Like you could ask questions or to say, what are they going to do with coming in next year? What worried about what they're doing in Game Sixty One? Are they going to get the ten seed or not? Are they going to be in the box? What's going on here? But there's plenty of questions, including the Draymond Green question, and. There are going to be a segment of fans who are going to say, which is why I'm, I'm sitting here saying, boy, Clay sees Dre and Wiggins get four years. I'm not trying to pocket watch, but how does that make me feel? I want to be here long term, too. But Draymond Green, the Warriors are in the 10 seed. Draymond missed how many games? Way too many. 
You know what my mom said? Wait, real quick. My mom came to watch uh, the little guy yesterday. Uh, did she tell you she cared about a gatehouse? She did. And by the way, I forgot to tell you. She was so happy. Like, it was unbelievable how like how happy she was. And she says, Festa Zeely is like the nicest guy ever. Yeah, Chris Mullen's is. so nice. Yep. Your ear-to-ear -ear smile. Yep. Her friend Connie. Mm-hmm. Literally texted her while we were having lunch, and she was like, "We met stars," as in Bonte, <laughs> yeah, Mully, and Festus. Yeah, I'm not a star. Her <laughs> jaw was dropped, she, like blown away. Stars in that other guy who's uh, gained his weight. But my mom, suit. my mom, I go, "Mom, what do you think the Warriors should do?" And she goes, "Well, they got to get rid of Draymond." And I go, "Why is wow. that?" And she goes, "Uh, uh, uh," and she choke was hold? doing the chokehold walk back so, of, of the Rudy Gobert. She's like, so, "You can't have a guy like that so, on this team." Anymore. So the vibes. Have not up? been the vibes have not been the same since what happened after Tokyo, Japan. It is not, and it's overshadowed his good play on the court. Draymond has been really good on the court. He really has. I'm not just saying that because of what happened between us. No, he has played. I said it last year. I was like, you know what, Sad Shasky, and this was last season. Last I, year. I never forget last it. Year. Last season, we're talking, and I was like, man, it made the second seed, and you know, we're going off about Draymond. I'm like, dude, he actually had a really good year on the court. But we couldn't see past that because of what happened in training camp. Because of the vibe of the entire team. Not him individually, but the vibe of the team. It okay. just felt off. He got kicked out of a playoff game <laughs> with Adam Silver there. Yes. And then and then cranked it up to a degree <laughs> where he know. got suspended for I a know. game. I know. It's Last year. Last in year. In the playoffs. In the playoffs. That we they go almost back, lost. But we, if we go back to the last five years, that's just been... It's, it just, it's, yeah. This is like... It's, it's almost like when we talk about Jerry Rice post-30 and before 30, <laughs> no, right? Was well, Draymond Green, the three-time the three -time chap, and then there's after 2019. And it starts with the season when they won 15 games, and it run people along, the wrong way where he basically was like, yeah, I knew we were losing. It was tough to get up for those games. And look, I understand you've been winning. You've been going to finals, and you got to go back to that. And there's no Steph. There's no Clay. You don't have Andrew Wiggins yet. I, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. But it's something you probably don't want to admit out loud. It's like John Lynch said, hey, man, we're at Pat Patrick Mahomes Pro Day. We're not really scouting him. We're just here for decoys. But, boy, let me tell you, Mahomes has a great arm. He looks really good, Possibly. Kyle. And it's like, we're really going to admit that out loud. We're gonna really going to admit that publicly. You bring up you bring up Jerry Rice, and what I think of is like, Jerry Rice's 40-plus yard touchdown highlight package. Right. 19 minutes, right? Yep. Draymond Green's shenanigans highlight package is like 19 minutes. Man. That, that, I don't know if you saw that mixtape that yeah, was circulating. I did. No, I saw they it. Trust the me. Green Dude, trust me. There I saw were it. things in there that I had completely forgotten. The DDT on Michael Beasley was like I mean, 54 dude, on the dude, list dude. of crazy. It didn't make one of the cuts. I watched. <laughs> I watched a five-minute video. That didn't even make the cut. It was dude, incredible. there's a couple videos I watched. I said, incredible. well, they missed this one. It they missed incredible. that one. It was, it was insane. It was incredible. It was insane. And I forgot how many times his leg just went flailing toward oh, an opponent groin. Dude, but this year it becomes the most important season of your career. <laughs> Again, these are his words, not mine. Draymond Green said it. This is the most important season of my career. And I was all in for it. You know me, Shaska, I'm a sucker. I'm like, boy, let's go win some championships. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah. I'm going to be working till June. Let's go. I don't know what to do now. I'm off NBC. It's mid-April. What the hell am I going to do with myself? Damn, <laughs> NBA playoffs, I can't take that photo no more. No NBA playoffs on the court at Chase uh. Center. But Trey Buck Green played 55 regular season games this year. In 18, he missed due to suspension because it was five games, it was 12. Then he needed the game to ramp up and get back into shape or whatnot because he didn't do anything while he was going through mm -hmm. counseling or whatnot. Look, maybe he grow professionally. Maybe he did grow personally. We'll see you. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? The guy's a very intelligent guy. The guy, the guy, Trayvon Green is, look, man, he's talented. He's talented in the media. He's intelligent. He's walking into the Hall of Fame as a basketball player. But he only played 55 games. And he missed 17, 18 due to suspensions. Okay. And you were in a 10 seed, and you missed out on the six by a couple games. I look at Trayvon Green. I said, damn. Hey, if, well, I got him for 18 games. You got to figure the Warriors are three games over 500 with Day Day in the lineup, right? Bonte, He's and that it, important to this team. And 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 look, whether people want to hear this or not, it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way that he had more downloads and episodes the week of the playing game than shots taken. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, what? It's, I'm just keeping it real. No, you are. You are, man. And so what's... And, and it sounds like Draymond's not going anywhere, according to Steve Kerr. 
Draymond is he's, uh, maybe the most competitive person I've ever been around, uh, maybe the most loyal. I will stick with him um, forever because I know yeah. I know who he is as a human being. And he's very complex. And part of that complexity is, is his constant quest to find the right balance between uh, being ultra competitive and, you know, walking the line and not crossing it. And um, he crossed it, you know, over the last year, he crossed it several times. And, and uh, if he could have it back, you better believe he would want to have it back and do it. Over. But life doesn't work that way. And then last one, he discusses Draymond's ejection in Orlando. Again, Willard did a tremendous job yesterday. They asked all the right questions yesterday with Steve Kerr. Here's his answer on that ejection in Orlando. You know, everyone was upset when he got kicked out of the game in Orlando. That didn't even bother me. Like, Draymond is so, is so competitive and so emotional. I'm fine if he gets tossed a few times a year because that's that's the price you pay for having the guy who is the driver of your defense, the driver of your your competitive fire as a team. Without Draymond, we have zero championships. I hope people realize that. But with Draymond, you've got a complex human being who is incredibly strong and loyal and emotional and competitive and also uh, can go too far. You know, I was asking before we get to the Lions, and we cancel Fleming. We we cancel Fleming. Uh, We're going to push Fleming tomorrow. We're going to get to all the calls. I see you, San Leandro Mo. I see you, you, Rob. I see you, Rich. I see you, Coach Hall. Hang tight. You to do the legal. I hang tight here. I'll get to the legal film on Mike. Trust trust me, I will. Because I have issues with what Kerr just said. um, Kerr's a damn good coach, and I agree with him on what he said about they don't win championships without Everyone Draymond agree. Green. No one that. That is true. That. Hold on, hold on. That is true. That is very, very true. But at the same time, when Draymond Green came back this regular season, they all had to press her. Draymond Green had the 45-minute presser, you know, when he came back. And then Steve Kerr talked after that. And Steve Kerr, what he said was like, we don't want him talking to referees. Wasn't that the quote? Basically said, I don't want him yelling at referees. I want him to stay away from that stuff. And then a few weeks later, it was... Yeah, we want him kind of doing that. He needs to play with that edge. We want him yelling at referees or whatnot. Whatever. That, that's that's his game. But at this point, after what's happened in the last two years, I disagree with, hey, it's okay if he gets ejected a few times. Not on his team. He's a leader. He's one of the big three. He's a champion. He's a Hall of Famer. That stuff can't happen. You, you think it didn't bother Steph? Steph was in tears in Orlando. In tears. Well, you're not a 61 team anymore. This is... this. This, again, is another microcosm of how this team view. They feel like it's 2018 all over. And that couple games here, couple no. games there, they don't matter. No, all the games matter because you're not as good as you once were. No. The margin of error is thinner and thinner and yep. thinner. What team in the NBA says we can have one of our best players get thrown out of a couple of games <laughs> yeah, here? It's all there? good. No team no, says that. No, and it can't I'm be sorry, this, that's but enabling it, but it, behavior. But it, but, it can't, but it can't be Draymond either. Draymond's one of the most important players on this team. Monte. It can't be him getting ejected. This, it just can't. But this tells and I'm me. And i like, hey, trust well, me, no, man. I get it. But, like, the, but Monte, the reality is, is that I, this I, is why they're stuck in yep. the vortex I, no, they've been I, stuck in. I don't see eye to eye with that. I agree with you. I don't you. see eye to eye with that at all. I don't see eye to eye with that. But this, it's but not the, cool. But this is it. They viewed themselves through the prism of 2018, rightfully, it's 2024, and it's going to be 2025. No, and, 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 you have to evolve. And also, you have to mature, and you and are it, not a 60 win team. Not only anymore. that, not only that. Also, think about what is Moses Moody thinking, and Jonathan Kaminga thinking. You're a new player coming into this team, or if you're a veteran coming into this culture, you're Chris Paul. Chris Paul had to calm it down in New Orleans. What the, the video Whitley said Jettle took for 95 70 game that went viral. Chris Paul's coming down Draymond Green because he's ticked off. They didn't challenge a play in like the first quarter. <laughs> like, if I see like, him do this, yeah, just, but, uh, but so the, so so I'm I'm I look Steve Kerr when he came out when Draymond Green first returned, he said, "Hey, look, and we we got the quote somewhere. Hey, man, we want we don't want him yelling at referees no more. We don't want him doing that stuff. We need to focus." Then about a month later, it's like, "Ah, it's okay." Blah blah. The enabling, we've got to control this guy. You need him on the court. He missed 25 games this year, and you end up in 10th place. You're telling me Draymond doesn't get suspended for 17, 17 games, they're not a top six seed, and we're talking about something completely different. We're getting ready for the Minnesota Timberwolves right now. It's hard to not sit here as a Warrior fan who's observed every second and say, one of the largest issues on the team the last two years has been Draymond Green. No doubt. 
It's just, it's just. It, it is show what me it the is. facts. I mean, you could say, Joe, they've gotten a little older. Yeah, yeah that's true. I think Draymond has had as big of an influence yep. as whatever their decline is. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I am totally with you there. They had to tell them last Physical off, decline. They had, to, they, they had to tell them about in the offseason, hey, you got to work on your three. You got to start shooting the rock because in that Lakers series, Clay's getting all the smoke from the Lakers series. If Clay was not good in that series, I get it. But part of the reason why is because there was no damn space to go to court because Anthony Davis was in the paint all day long saying Draymond or whether it was LeBron James, we're not guarding him on the three point line. Here's another element, you know, and, and I know that this like and that it, kills the offense, Chasky. No matter what, well, when he's schematics. not shooting the ball, that's when he's not shooting the ball, and you have a great I shot totally like agree. that, you're waiting on the, the other shot. I, that's I, not good basketball. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, how many times did you see in the Kings game alone where Dre's got the ball and he's trying to shovel it to Steph Curry, yep. and the guy leaves Draymond Green, and they blitz Steph, and then that third guy comes over, unbelievable, over and over. But here's the other part. How many guys want to go play with him? I, that's the question I have this offseason. Like, I, I look at the Andrew Wiggins situation, and I don't know anything. I don't know anyone on the team. I'm just asking out loud. Everybody says Wiggins' best friend was Jordan Poole. Yep. And I'm sitting here, and I'm saying, like, do I want to play with a dude who don't like who like did what he did to one of my best friends? And I'm just asking they, out loud. They, they were boys. You know, they I'm just were asking boys. out loud. Look, listen. That puts me in a very us. awkward situation every day. Right. Nothing is worse than showing up to work every day and feeling crazy anxiety. Well, Draymond said before the season that he had a hard time coming to work last year. <laughs> well, I mean, that was and that situation was created, whether you like it or not, by you. <laughs> so I, I just, I, I don't. We got to keep him on the floor. If he's going to be around, he's got to stay on the floor. And he missed 17 games due to suspension, and you're a 10 seed watching the playoffs at home. By a few games, you could have been a 6 seed. And you're telling me Draymond Green is not that important? That's the problem. That's why, look, we're not going to get upset over some player who averages 15 minutes a game and gets together. No, we're talking about a future Hall of Famer. We're talking about a guy who helped you win four championships. We're talking about a guy who's a DPOI, a guy who is important to this team and his brand of basketball. And he missed 17 games due to suspension. Am I missing something here? Is Steve Kerr trying to hype up his value? Because remember about a month ago, he said what Draymond did was unforgivable. Yeah, with the, with the ejection. And like now, a month later, the season's over, and you're like, oh, you know, we can't win anything without him. He's extremely important. It's okay to get a couple. Like, is this all just well, coach he talk? Just said, he, and he is said, this all get coach get talk? To oh, sorry. I hit a bad drop there. Oh, that was you? That was me. No, no, no. no. But se se PC, seriously. Yeah. He said it was unforgivable to Orlando, and he just mentioned to Willard and Tibbs that, hey, I didn't have no issue with it. Well, I watched the best player in franchise history, Seth Curry, bend over, put his face in his jersey, and look like he was wiping away tears so, over it. So to me, are, are they just setting us all up for Clay's gone and Draymond's going to get moved? I don't know what's going to happen with Dre. I don't know what's going to happen with him. I don't know. I don't know. But if we're talking about a reset, then we need to reset all the way. It can't be no half step and we need to reset. I'm with you. There's no you either in commit to it yeah. or you go the other way I, and try to coax out another championship out of Seth. I, I right. agree. We got full full line. Go ahead, Spadol. Real quick, uh, you guys just mentioned it was just funny. I was just thinking about it. Maybe this is, you know, out of left field, but Andrew Wiggins' best friend, obviously, you said Jordan, Jordan Poole. Poole. He's in Washington, D.C. right now. Kyle Kuzma, <laughs> does he interest in you at all if you were to do, move off of Wiggins for a guy like him? You think similar contract? Can score. I know he, he won a title. I know you guys think it's the bubble and stuff like that. No, he's been a part I of like it. Kuzma. He has I a like lot Kuzma of upside. Too. He's a big guy. But, but if Kuzma's been playing with Jordan Poole the last year, you think Jordan Poole's saying good things about the situation yeah. I'm here? It's a trade, like yeah. The, no, I know, I, but, but I'm just but 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 the culture. The problem now is you got other players who's played here. Yeah, and they played with Draymond Green. How, and that's what I was bringing up yesterday. You know, the Warriors I'm is a brand. The Warriors is a brand here. is very attractive. They're one of the most valuable. What Joe Lakeham has done to flip this thing, and Steve Kerr is a head coach, and yeah, Stephen Curry, this first, this organization is first class to the top. I can't thank them enough for what they've done for me personally, the Golden State Warriors, that is. But I do wonder, inside the NBA, when you hear from the Kevin Durant's of the world, and now you got Jordan Poole out there, Chris Paul, it sounds like he's not going to be back with the way he was talking. And it's I heard the same tone when he was in OKC after the bubble. I was like, oh, Chris Paul's gone. And what do you know? He was gone. And Chris Paul's been a total professional. But how appealing is the situation knowing that Draymond Green is here and these are going to be barking back and forth? Draymond's going to be Draymond. How many players want to deal with that? I, I don't know. I don't know. So it's a good point, Shasky. All the lines are getting to everybody. San Leandro Moe. 
Coach Hall, Rich, Rob, Richie, everybody out there. We're getting to you on the other side here. We push back Fleming. We're rolling on the Warriors. What are they going to do this offseason? Whoa, we're at a crossroads, folks. That's all coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. The Jeep Celebration event is going on right now with exceptional offers on a
Hey, Dub Nation, it's Chris Paul, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonta Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. Boy, we are rolling right now, full fall lines. We're going to get to everybody. You know what, Shasky? Let's do it right off the rip. Download the free Odyssey app and listen to 95.7 The Game wherever you go. Catch every Warriors game live on the app along with all the music and news the Bay Area needs. Catch amazing interviews you missed, too, like when Damian Barley, D-Lo, he joined Steiny and Guru on Tuesday, and he's always a good time. Casey, Casey and D-Lo, they were having some fun yesterday at the Warriors' expense, and they deserve it. And I'm, you know what? Sacramento's going to beat the Pelicans on Friday. I'm pulling for them. I'm pulling for them. Let's go, Kings. I'll pull for you guys. Where Shasky was right. <laughs> I'll pull for the Kings. Come on, Pelicans! I'll pull for the Kings because if the Pels lose... That means they may try to break some things up. <laughs> they got some trade assets. Zion? Zion! I'll settle for Brandon Eager. Uh, Saliendra Bowe. Saliendra Bowe. What's settle happening? settle for Brandon Ingram. <laughs> Saliendra Bowe. I'll Kmart settle KD. for Zion. <laughs> the Kmart KD. That's cold, man. That's that's wrong. You, 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 Spadoni, watch your mouth, like man. like ice tub, KD. I still haven't forgiven uh, Spadoni for a specific tweet he sent out a few weeks ago. Comparing me to a certain individual, the Sopranos. Oh, uh, no, that was just the joke. No, 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 Yes, he was. Exactly. Celia Ball. Ball. What's happening? Johnny Cakes. Grease in the Union. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, fellas. What's, What's up, up, man? I, uh, I, I got to do this real quick. When I was talking to Loveman, he already know what I'm about to do. Uh, he'll, he'll fill y'all in. You know, Hey, this is San Leandro Mo. Okay. And you're listening to The Morning Rose with Bonte and Shasky on 95.7 The Game. Now, now that we got that out the way, uh, I wanted to call in yesterday and uh, get this in, but I want to give all all the fans a chance to get out their gripes and whatnot. Uh, Willard pretty much, you know, uh, said this on uh, on his show. But Monte Shasky, everybody with the Warriors organization, just want to say thank you for a fan. Um, you guys brought us four chips right after San Francisco Giants brought us three and five. Here comes the Warriors and brought four. NBA titles to the Bay Area. So I just want to say thank you from top down, everybody who had a hand in building this 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 dynasty. Um thank you. And you know, uh hopefully uh the future is uh is bright as well. And um hey Warrior fans, you know all good things come to an end. Um if Clay does leave, thank you Clay. You know, and uh you know I hope for a a, a better, you know, if if New beginnings, you know. Hey, um, hey San Leandro Mo, you want to read the legal too? Some people hey, are suggesting hey, shoot you... it on, shoot it over here, brother. <laughs> hey, hey, you're listening to 95.70 game, KGMZ FM and AC West San Francisco. I already did that, but I was just saying. Hey, can you do, can you do it one more time with a little more like swag? Do do the me and B thing one more time, but with more swag. All right, all right, hey, check this out. This is San Leandro Mo. And you're listening to 95.7 The Game, The Morning Rose with Bonte and Shasky. I ain't mad at that. Not mad at that. Not We're going to clip that. that. We're going to use that. We'll we use should it. do that from now you're, on. Yeah, you're in a rotation. You're in a rotation. I'm feeling that. You feeling that? Where's Tony in Oakland at? She don't like basketball? <laughs> she on sabbatical right now? What's going on with her? She on She's ice? She's on right now. It's an election year. Sup, <laughs> James <laughs> Wiseman. <laughs> She's an election year. You, oh, know let's who, go. you know who we need next? Who? Hi, I'm Brock Purdy, and every single morning I wake up and I listen to Bonte Hill on hey, the morning roast. We may be getting Brock Purdy. There's a phone call I need to make. Well, um, you know I got his agent's number. Whoa, I'm happy whoa, with Brock whoa, Purdy. Well, that's fine. You haven't done anything he's with it yet. He's a big Shasky fan. Whoa, We're not hard on Brock. You haven't done anything yet with it. If he's a big Shasky, why, where the hell's Brock Purdy at? Because you don't need to use the connect until you really want to deliver the plug. Oh, oh. Is that you right? Know? You're usually not right about that. I need the you eagle usually, to land when I need to eagle to land. You shoot your wand very quick. You're not a patient fella. I paid for a couple burger dogs. They might as well be on that show. Oh, oh man. You know, I had to pay it forward, oh, though, man. man. Oh, but we may be getting Brock on. We may. We may. Did we you may, see the photo? May. No, I didn't see any photos. He was wearing a vest at a golf outing. 
It was an Olympic Club vest. Oh wow! Yes, and then did you see the commercial? No, I did not. He's see in the a commercial. John Deere I commercial. You, I, don't wear, I don't watch commercials. Colton McKivitz, and they're in somewhere in like Potrero. That's what it looks like oh. to me. Like I'd say, like twentieth in Tennessee or something, kind of near Jackson Park. Yeah. And he's in the the John Deere, and the phone keeps ringing, and it's all a setup so that somebody could be the social media king or mm. whatever of John Deere. It's Got really it. good. It's Got really it. well I done. Watched the video yet? And he can't drive the the John Deere because the phone keeps. Ringing. You know me and commercials. We don't get along. I tune out. Except for the ones you're in. No, I. A lot of those commercials. The only time I see them is we're in this room where we're playing it. I was like, wow, I never even seen a commercial yet. The one with Steph and Madison Square Garden. That's cool. It's me. It's Bully. It's Fitz. It's Bookie. It's Steph. How did they sneak me in that commercial, man? I swear to God. Hey, you know what? I got to hear Sarah so Solomon. This guy, I, hate, hear, I hate commercials, dude, dude, but this you know one what? makes gotta, me smile. I got to tell hear. somebody to save you. Know, know, I, need to, I, I need that in my role. I know. Right? I'm a humble guy. Hey, listen, no, I'm a humble listen, guy. That is as to a say kid something. shows up from San Francisco hey, State to do a report on you <laughs> no, as a Rizzotto, long feature. Steven, I've pushed his back so long. I don't even want the damn report. I want Steven to write about you, I make him. I'm hard to get. I make him work for No, 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 no. I try to push it back because I don't like pub. I don't. I get I'm enough pub. On this one. No, seriously. I don't watch the commercials. Hey, Steven, but I'll, give you the, cool. I'll give you the exclusive. But, but listen. <laughs> Come to me. <laughs> Come to him. Listen, Unnamed but it is kind of cool. Say that Bonte Hill is a hey, diva. listen, it is yeah, no, kind of cool. Yeah, some people he do think I'm a diva. He punched my lights out at one, <laughs> at one pregame show meeting. <laughs> he yelled at me five minutes before a show and it had me totally disheveled for the next four hours. Uh, listen, I'm having a meltdown. It, I did, Boy, I was having one during the Sacramento game. Listen, I, it is cool when you see Chris Paul. I mean, I'm talking to Chris Paul about acting. It was, it's, I don't lie. It's kind of cool. But I don't, I don't see you know, I'm just well right. I'm watching Bonte, the live feed. Monte's next role will be to take the State Farm guy's uh, spot. <laughs> and it's going to be him and, and Cliff Paul no. and Chris Paul who and Steph the, Curry. No, who's no. the guy in the last dance? Uh, Ahmad Rashad? Ahmad Rashad. That's going to be huge. Yeah, well, no, no. Ahmad's getting up there. Monte could take there. that job. And listen, I met Ahmad Rashad at the All-Star announcement. Listen. Uh, so Ahmad Rashad, listen. Michael Jordan, Bonte Hill, Steph Curry. Be, I see great. the comparison. Yeah, I don't see it at all. I don't see it at all. That's more Marcus Thompson the second. He's got the book. Got to get the gold but, earrings. But too. I do wonder. I do wonder because two years in a row I've done a commercial with Draymond Green. I do wonder if we're going to make it three years in a row. What are you looking at, Sasky? Well, some caught your eye? Rob and Sam Bruno, what's happening? You're on the road. <laughs> Dude, you're just, speaking of running someone over with a John Deere. <laughs> you know how to do it with the best of them. I was looking for my shot. I finally got my opportunity. Rob and Sam Bruno, what's happening? Hey, Rob. The downfall is <laughs> near. Oh, yeah, they signed Trent Taylor. You know what I'm saying? That's part one. Oh, yeah, I forgot no. the night. I, hey, Rob, real no. quick. I did see that yesterday. He's back as a kick returner, right? Someone check in on yeah. Greg Papa. How happy is he? <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm I'm just like you know what does that do for the Forty Nine? He's not really that good of a football player, but hey, he's just the culture. So all right. But anyways, look, look, the culture. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, look, uh, you know the Warriors, the, the the Warriors. You know they they got behind in times. You know a few years ago they was they they dictated pace, they dictated style of play. Now they don't do that no more. It's you know it's, the league then got bigger. They got bigger and they got more skill. You know you got the Yogis, you got the Wimbies coming up. You got AD, you got, you know, everybody's big, you know what I'm saying, and B, so it's time for the Warriors to get a big man, and not only get a big man, utilize the big man. You cannot throw the big man out no more because you're not that type of team no more. Steph and Clay cannot be other teams who just shooting anymore. Everybody's shooting threes. Every, every team has the opportunity for a person to go 10 for 12 for three. Everybody's doing that. So you need to do something that makes your three-point shooters better by allowing them to get easy buckets. I watched LeBron throughout his whole career play with Bosh and AD and get easy looks because they got a good big that can just get an easy basket. Warriors can't do that. They got to work hard. They're working hella hard. So at the end of the day, Draymond, he is who he is at this point. It's time for the Warriors to go big. That's all it is. Get a big man that can score. And, and, and tell Curry to stop being biased towards the, to the to, to big fellas. Hey, Rob. Big fellas can play too. Rob. Yes, sir. Would you be mad if Brandon Ayuk got traded? Um, I mean, I know how, I, I know the coach with the Forty Nine ers, so I wouldn't blame Brent Ayuk. But yes, I will. I would be mad because I, I would. I would be mad because I like Brent Ayuk and I like I like that Debo combination. So, but I'd be happy for Brent Ayuk because you know, you know, Cal gave him issues a few years ago. You know, what I'm talking about he wasn't doing this, doing that. So, I'd be happy for BA, but I would love to see BA be here. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, with you on that. I, I get you on that, but I, I would be I would be irate if BA's gone. Good to hear Robin San Bruno's to, voice. Yeah, it always is. The downfall is near. It is coming hard. I, you can use that for downfall is near and it's coming hard. No, you the can downfall, use that literally it's, for any team out here. It's not it's not here. <laughs> we are in the downfall. In and it. let me tell you right now, I listened to Guru's voice yesterday. <laughs> it's not good. Guru drank away all his anger at that game in the suite. But you know what, oh, though? The man. good thing for Goo but is everybody's happy. One, of his 17 o- one of his 17 other teams is still available. <laughs> yeah. The Kings, the hey, Lakers are still hey, alive. Listen. I'm sure he's got an hey, East Coast no. team that you know he, what it was? he roots for in the month of May. No, no, listen. In all Toronto's seriousness. nothing. In all seriousness. Because <laughs> what's happening to Guru is going to happen to a few fans. It may have already happened. What's that? And I realize it, but... This is where Steven Risotto comes in. And I can tell my fellow journalists, this is why you become a journalist. You can be objective. You know how to keep your emotions in check. Look, when I was driving away from Shut the show you yesterday, talking to me. <laughs> when I was driving away yesterday, I realized, like, boy, you may be some deep dude right now. <laughs> Go to St. Warriors. I've, no, okay. but no, but I've been there too. Okay. But I get, I understand where they're at. I felt You're like a hater back. acknowledging <laughs> no. that we were flying off the cliff. A year and a half ago. No, but they were. But you come back with a championship team. You owe it to the I players to come no, back. I get it. And the vibes are, bro. Before they went to Japan, Shaska, you texted me about the two man game. I know. You're like Kamiga, Kamiga and Wiseman. Great. You were. I then and they I was went with on the you. road. And then they, well, then the TMZ no, video. The TMZ got released. video got released. Well, and Bob was crying. Then that was that. Yeah, Bob was crying. We're thinking, why is Bob crying? Stop. And then we had the crossover with Willard and Dan, so they're talking about, oh, it's just an open hand side. I said, guys, you don't know what you're talking about. Just, just stop talking. I'm, I'm, I'm now convinced. Whenever Bob Myers is on television, he should wear two clocks around his neck like Flava Flav, because that man's timing was impeccable. It was. He saw what he was saw going on down the line, and but pff, listen, hit the eject but, button. But you owed it to the team to run it back. So then they say they maximize the group last year. So you make the trade for Chris Paul. We're all like, man, you got older, not athletic. It's tough to, when you trade away a young athletic piece, and I know Jordan Poole struggled last year with the turnovers, the slipping, the three-point percentage. He's still getting you 20 a game. And now all of a sudden, two days after after the game against Sacramento, and I'm hearing, boy, they could have used Jordan Poole. I don't want to hear all that. I, I, I We're done with that. Don't want to hear it. After all the disrespect he got last year for getting punched. Like, this guy got blamed for getting punched. Unbelievable, but anyway, now's the time because you lose to the you lose to the Lakers. You could dress it up and say it's six games. Lonnie Walker, yeah, no, no, no. we know, yeah, they were a fifty burger away from not beating the Sacramento Kings last year. But you come back this year, and now the reality is set in. You didn't make the playoffs. You're a ten seed. You're a ten seed, and the vibes were great to start the season. One of the main calls got suspended, and it threw everything else for a monkey wrench. All of a sudden, you had inconsistent rotations. Now, there was a blessing in disguise with the suspension, and Draymond Green actually mentioned it, and we actually mentioned it on air. He saw what Jonathan Kamiga was, and we haven't focused much on him today, and maybe we can do that tomorrow because there's a lot of Kamiga sound, and we'll get to all the calls. But you unlock Jonathan Kamiga, and we saw the third-year leap, and I don't know if Jonathan Kamiga could carry a team. He's 21 years old. That's asking a lot. But that's a player. Well, That's a guy who's going to play hard. He may not know everything he's doing, and he's still raw. But he's a raw talent who's giving you 20 a game. Bonte, do you believe that it can always get worse just in life? Yes, absolutely. I do too, right? When do the Olympic practices start? Uh, So, so <laughs> I know where you're going here. I know where you, I know what you're doing here because uh, you're telling Steph to do some recruiting. Well, no, I'm worried oh. that they're going to recruit Steph, and oh. depending on how this well, off season goes, what? Yeah, well, no, what? no, no, because 2008 no, no. Honestly, happened. Honestly, the no, no, no. Oh, I know, I know. Because listen, so Ryan Miller, my former offensive coordinator, mentor to me uh, at Washington High School, he was texting me yesterday. He goes out of nowhere. Ryan always he's he's so good at this. He's like my Yoda. He's like my Jedi. He's you like, don't even like, know who Yoda is. Yeah, but I wear the T-shirt all the time. But I, I, I he's like my, he's like my life coach. Give me one Yoda nowhere. line, just one. Oh, I don't have any Yoda lines. Is it the Force may be with you? <laughs> That's close enough. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> Young Skywalker, like the beam. 
Use your sabers. Who is this voice? <laughs> Use your know. sabers. I don't know. <laughs> Lightsabers. You're an accountant I don't know. from New York City. I, I, I don't even know who you. Like. I don't know who I thought it was Yoda. Anyway, Ryan Miller. <laughs> that was embarrassing. How can you think you're Yoda when you've never yeah. seen Star no, Wars? Listen, man. Listen, listen, listen. I do have the T-shirt though. I'll wear it tomorrow for you if I can still fit it. Is it Baby Yoda or real Yoda? Uh, I think it's uh, it's the real Yoda. It's like four. It's like the fourth shot. Oh, it's like the collage. Okay. Like it's OG Yoda. And he's yeah. like. Doing this with his eyes closed and he's making he's magic doing. happen. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Looks like he's meditating or looks like he's high for crying out loud. I don't know. Probably both. Does Yoda he, smoke he weed? Probably was. Yoda probably, probably was smoking well, weed. Yoda I don't know. He looks like he was high. He was staying in a swampy area, so I'm sure he was licking some mushrooms. Yeah, Should maybe. Maybe it was the psychedelics did. Dagobah. All right, psychedelics did. Yoda's all psychedelics. That's good to know. Maybe I'll watch Star Wars now. Listen, Ryan Miller always comes out of nowhere with these texts. I don't even know if he's watching, but he comes out of nowhere. He may be listening right now. He goes, time for Steph to go shopping for a disgruntled star at the Olympics. Possibly Giannis or Embiid. Yeah, see, I'm worried Super they're going to do that to him. And then he goes into boxing about Baval and yeah. Bitter Beeve, and yeah. that's a big don't fight care happening. About that part I know you it. don't care about that part, but he's just like, maybe it's time for Steph to go shopping at the Olympics. Now, I know there's some people mad about Steph playing the Olympics. Go get that, go get that gold medal, Steph. <laughs> like, uh, seriously, who's he going to recruit? Is it Embiid's player for Team USA? Hey, they're saying in the chat, Spadoni, only you would laugh at this. Tony in Oakland is in the Dagobah system trying to sell crystals to Yoda. Oh, God. That's a five. That's a five. That's like a five times five. I wonder if Yoda knows the zone well. I mean, he has to. Come on. That's what the whole the force is Yoda about. Is. Yeah, I don't like inside jokes about Star Wars. With that said, I'm going. Tony's like the Tony is the, the one lifting the X-Wing out of the fog. <laughs> Coach Hall is said, Oh, real quick, real quick before you go, oh, Coach oh. Hall. Um, so their first exhibitions for USA men's basketball yeah. start July 10th. That's going to be, they're hosting Canada at Las Vegas' T-Mobile Arena. So that'll be pretty cool. I, like I just that. worry, I worry about, like when 08 happened, that's basically the beginning of LeBron yeah. and Dwayne Wade and Bosch saying we're well, going to team together. Apparently, the international championships, KD, Steph, and Iguodala hit it off. Well, there you go. So, I, I just I, I worry about it in both ways. We just go, oh, what about the Warriors recruiting guys? What about them recruiting Steph? Well, Steve Kerr is the head coach, though. That is a good Eric and Spolstra bad thing. And Ty Lue also. On yeah, staff. Ty hey, Lue. Hey, yeah. Kawhi, we're gonna load manage you. <laughs> hey, dude, we're not gonna play you. <laughs> you will love Kawhi on the Warriors, huh? What? Oh, he'd be sick. Steve Kerr playing Pajemski <laughs> over all of these all of these Olympians. No, would be stop! Just, stop! Don't go there. I'm teasing. Don't go there. They better win gold. Oh, I want color to win gold so bad. Make sure people people are rooting make hard sure against Ty Kerr. Jerome isn't on that roster. They are rooting hard against Kerr in the Olympics. It's terrible. I can't believe how many people can't stand Steve Kerr. It's kind of wild to me. Guy's a great person. It's a damn good coach. How many egos you got to manage? That's a tough. T the NBA may be the toughest job to coach in all the sports. Well, I think Sam Lubman trying to coach us too is right up there. Well, he, we don't need coaching. <laughs> like Kyrie Irving said with KD, we don't really need a coach. We're all coaches. Because well, that worked out so well for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was not really working out for us. Huh? Coach Hall, San Diego, what's happening? What's You're up, on the We're the Brooklyn Nets of radio. <laughs> hey, what up, fellas? <laughs> what's up, all right, man? Joe, you kind of stole my thunder because. I was thinking just like you. I'm like, damn, who is going to recruit Steph? Because when he said, I, I think I the other one. See, you guys think too negatively, Coach Hall and Shasky. Bro, I'm we're in a who dire situation. Get? Who can Steph and Steve Kerr get? <laughs> you're, you're right. You're right. But I'm looking at it from like like an emotional stand. Okay, so let's go back to the pod when Dre asked Clay that stupid ass question the week of a game, and when Clay took a deep breath and said, "Man." You know, of course, the money, this, that, and the other, but my mental health is priority. I'm like, Dre, read the room, man. You are the problem. I think Steph is tired. So it's it's only two options. Either you're going to have to get uh, out of this box superstar like Giannis or somebody and keep an eye on the Bucks. They might lose the yep. first round. Or you might just have to get a whole bunch of veteran role players because I don't remember Dre acting out like this when D. West and crew was here. Like, I remember him getting sex and stuff, but not like this. You know, I just think he he's a bully. He don't he don't check you know real people that's gonna check him back. So I think that's our only two options. But I'm going down with the shit, man. I'm going down with it. I hear that. I hear that. I think a lot of people think he's a bully. I hear that. Uh, let's go to Mike and Berkeley. Mike and Berkeley, what's happening? You're on the roast. Morning, fellas. How are you today? Oh man, never better. I'm so good. Never better. We 
the wound start to heal a little bit? No, I mean you never get over it, but no. it, I got it. it's a lot of fun. Just like kind of you know going through the grief with all of you guys. I got gotcha. you. I got. Gotcha. Hey, I called you guys last week when you guys were talking point guards, and I I brought up Walt Frazier. Just a just a reference point. Oh, that was a but, great. Was that the game I, seven? Game seven, yeah, against that the LA was Lakers. Such a great call. Yeah, yeah. That, that that triple double, near triple double, is one of the best game I, sevens in history. And I and I, I referenced your call when Bonte FaceTimed me with Chris Mullen. It oh. was uh, my bonding period. You know, I just have to. Just uh, he he it. stole it from you. It was I like, did. He I did. To act like I he knew Walt Frazier. Well, I told Mully afterwards. I was like, he just learned that from Mike and Berkey today. <laughs> That's, I did. Hey, you know, you know what's interesting about that? This isn't what I wanted to talk about, but since we're there, is. What a dichotomy that Walt Frazier was. He was simple and old school on the floor and about as flashy of it's a true. person off the floor. Oh, have you ever seen some of the, some of the uh, threads that guy used to wear? Oh, man, unbelievable. But my point is, uh, for the Warriors, it really comes down to two things. Either you build a team and you coach a team like you've won four championships, or you build a team and you coach a team like you haven't won four championships. Mm. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it, there really is no middle ground because, you know, I don't, I don't think Steve Kerr coaches a team like they haven't won four championships. And if he does, then, you know, Steph cleans his act up, Draymond cleans his act up. You know, it, it, it's a reload at the beginning of the year. So it's either one or the other. And if it's going to be – Hey, we won four championships. We're going to go out and have fun. Then, you know, just tell the fans so we don't get our, our hopes up that high and we can honor these guys, you know, how they should be honored. Can, can I ask a question to everybody here out loud and right. thinking out loud? And How did the Popovich big three thing come to an end? Was it graceful? It's never graceful, but like were but they, they just they were, got old. But no, but when it comes to their contracts and their playing time and all that, how like what was the tug and pull? Because this feels, I, I feel like where the Warriors are at financially, where all the guys are at in terms of yeah trying to get money, it just feels well, the rules very were different. Just, and the rules were so different, right? The cap structure was different. I, I guess that's what I'm the saying. The salaries were different. Um, everything about it was different in that situation. But I don't remember how they. I remember they bowed out to OKC, I believe, in the second round of 2016. And then, obviously, the next year, they met the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. What happened in 2014, 2015? That was with Kawhi. 14, 15. 14, 15. I think they were the number one seed and lost in the first round to Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I I, I gotta I gotta recall yeah, what they. I'm were, looking up there. Were their big three, uh, Parker. I know Parker well, ended up leaving. Ginobili and Duncan. Well, at that point, 2014, 15. Not to not to pause you there. Yeah, yeah. Give it to me. Kawhi was a leading scorer. Duncan only averaged 14 points and nine rebounds. But Manu what, Ginobili was down, and the minutes were down. Duncan played 29 minutes a game. Parker played 29 minutes a game. Ginobili played 22 and a half minutes a game. Kawhi was a leading minute getter with 32 minutes a game. But but was Ginobili, he was always out of this six-man role, so maybe things yeah. were just very different in terms of hierarchy yeah, there. He, yeah, he came Their up the was different. Role. Yeah, it was the different. The players are very different. But that's the only thing I can compare it to in the last 20 years. Yeah, I hear you. Is is the Spurs situation, and it just feels very different. Every, and every dynasty is different. No every was that Like the Celtics got old overnight, but the Celtics were trying to do what the Warriors did. Lynn Bias, right? That was supposed to be the extender of the dynasty for the Boston Celtics. He was supposed to prolong the life of Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Pears. Mm -hmm. And also, who was the other guy he passed away to? I think it was Reggie Lewis, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with the Boston Celtics. That was a little later on. It, that may have been late 80s, early 90s as well. I thought you were going to go Reggie Theus. I was like, I no, no, don't Reggie think Theus. he's no, passed no, no. on. He's, he, no, no, he's, he's still alive. Reggie Theus is still yeah. alive. I think it was Reggie Lewis. Let's go to Justin in New York City. Justin, what's I'm happening? I'm sure Steiny will You're text roast. you. Hey, what's going on, guys? How are you guys doing today? Good, good, good. I'm doing great. Um, the one thing I want to say is that they better not the off um the coaches um office the whole thing they better not trade um or put um Clay Thompson in the free agency and put Chris Paul in the free agency as well. I want Clay Thompson and Chris Paul in the free agency. I want both of them to be in the Warriors. I want them to stay in the Warriors. I want them to. To win a championship, so, I want Chris Paul to win his first championship. Do you believe? Hold on, Justin. Do you believe this team right now, with Clay Thompson, this Chris Paul coming back, are able to win a championship? Do you still believe they're in championship contention after yes. what you saw this past season? 
Yes. Okay. Where's the because evidence I of that? Want, because I want to see, I want to see Chris Paul win a championship. I never seen Chris Paul win a championship in my whole entire life that I've been. I've been wow. watching him since since uh, since he was in New Orleans. Well, I hear you. Chris Good Paul wants to win a championship too. Good call. But here's Chris Paul on the possibility of returning next year. Man, I'm open to all you know things. I think right now, what's on my mind probably is getting back, spending some time with my family. Seeing them, I'm forever grateful to the organization or whatnot and how much they allowed me to get back and see my family as much. It's a big summer. Our team came up short, but I, you know, it was a, it was a tough season. You know, another hand surgery, hand surgery num number five. All in all, it was, it was fun battling with these guys. I just hoped and hope at some point I can get out there and uh, play and uh, try to make a bigger impact. He yeah. wants to have a bigger impact. Yeah, he's gone. <clears throat> he's gone. I have a better chance of dunking from the free throw line next week right. than Chris Paul does <laughs> he, coming back to the Warriors and suiting up. He, he's gone. Here, he, here's Chris. I think he bit his lip all year. Yeah, no doubt he did. And he wants to play. You heard him. I still can play. I'm not retiring. I can still play. So Chris Paul's going to be gone. He was, really, he, he was solid this year. Here's Kerr on CP3. The issue for, for Chris, I, I think he's still a starting point guard in the league. I think he can still play 30 plus minutes and run his own team. And, you know, on this team, on our team, that's just not available. I know he loved it here and we loved having him. And I, I think uh, we would love to have him back. And I think he'd like to be back. But, uh, you know, there's a financial component. So Steve Kerr's hitting at it. The financials just don't add up. And we weren't mean at the caller. The caller said he wants Chris Paul and Kelly Thompson to come back and he believes they can still win a championship. I don't agree with him right now. I don't even know if Steve Kerr agrees with him. It would be hard for me sitting here with our season over on April 17th, whatever it is, to tell you that we are a championship contender. That, that would be not the brightest comment I could ever make. You know, I mean, you, you, you have to prove that. You can't just say you're a contender. You have to, you have to prove it. So, you know, right now we're not, but um, we have, that's why you have an off season. That's why you talk to other teams. That's why, that's why you look at every possibility to build your roster back up. Every year, you're, I'm always surprised at the deals that happen for any team. There's, you just don't know. So you, you have to go into the summer with an open mind and, you know, who knows? There might be some deal that, that Mike and Joe feel like, you know, gets us back into, intention maybe there isn't if there's not then you know what's uh, what are we looking at what are we uh what's the goal what are we trying to accomplish and see what I, what i don't understand he said that chris paul can start and play 30 more minutes and lead his own team and lead his own team then, then why didn't you go to him and set up a gem in, in a must win game and again i'm not saying that's the main reason they lost they were going to lose probably anyway but we text at the same time tuesday night saying pods ahead of CP3. Instead, it gets pods. And not once. He did it twice. It's a winner-go-home game, and it's a playoff game, and Chris Paul has nothing but playoff experience. It was just it's guy, a contradiction in thought process yeah. and execution. It's, this is the first time since 2010 Chris Paul would not be in the playoffs, or the postseason would not have a player named Chris Paul. That is it. Like, we're talking here today on April 18th, and the Warriors have no more games left. I've gotten accustomed to having playoff games around these parts. Hell, I was just talking to Sacramento Stacy. Stacy Kaufman's in the building. I said, man, you may have to get me up there for one of those Kings playoff games as they play OKC. I'm going to be in town. Hi, I'm Bonte Hill, and Kyle Draper took the night off. <laughs> 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 Say it with me now, Mo. Light the beam. Light the beam. Duh. Light the beam. You, you know, I was all credibility. You know, I'm just well. You think I would do that? Yeah. I will be up there in my Warriors hat. No, you That's won't. what I do. Why would if I? If they paid me enough money, I would pretend. It's called acting. Got to get that bag. Absolutely. Don't worry about Don't worry about my bag. Lovey. I'm worried about don't what worry I'm going to get bag. in the offseason. Hey, don't worry about that. The price, in the words of Bonte, hey. the price tag is going up. <laughs> what did Fat Joe say? The price tag <laughs> no, is going Matt, up. Hey, Matt DeHegan, our program director, he texted me yesterday. He's like, you look good during the positive culture of the Lions Awards at MC. And I almost shot him a text saying, yesterday's price ain't today's price, Matt. But I can just picture it now. Hey, Shasky, <laughs> Orlando needs your services. <laughs> Orlando. Hey, Orlando hey, needs honestly, a loud mouth. You know, you know what Orlando does? What? Hey, 
going out with Fredell. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Paulo Carroll is down there. I know. We got a star. There's listen, a lot listen. of young radio talent. They need a loud mouth. Hey, listen, listen. You know, Quentin Richardson does the pre and post for Orlando, but he also does it for Miami. There's like a contract where uh-huh. he has to do both. Uh-huh. How cool would that be? Me and you doing both? We, we're in the Orlando and Miami market. We I got the Gators. That. We got the Seminoles. We got Central Florida. Disney we got World. You, you got uh, South Florida, the yeah. Bulls. You got Disney World. You got yeah. Harry Potter Land. We can your get, your favorite team, one of the great rivals of the Yankees of all time, the Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays at the catwalk <laughs> in Tropicana Field. We are going hey, way Steven back. Steven Rizzo knows baseball. You know the rivals. Dog, the Yankees that. and Rays have Just a little rivalry up. going on. They can't shut stand up. each other. People, Just because you guys are five stuck. Rivals in sports. Hey, Yankees, Rays. Then, too. Listen, listen. Your hands are so far up the Giants' butts, you don't watch other baseball. One of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Come on, man. What what did I do wrong? Exactly. Hey, if the bag is right. John Sterling, name the Yankees' rivals, the Rays. Hey, if the bag is right, we go down there with me, O'Brien. I think you're doing a hit with her, or somebody's doing a hit with her. Me, O'Brien, down to Jacksonville. Hey, we're already setting it up. We're getting off the ship. Titanic in the iceberg. No, seriously. I would bring my golf clubs and we would golf every single day. Listen, there's a couple things. There's a couple things that I am thinking about with this fan base with the Golden State Warriors. It's 90 seconds yesterday. Oh, I thought it was some TV opportunities for me. No, I would never bring that up. I want you to get into my world, taking my money, getting in my pockets. All of a sudden, you're in my... I got to see you 24 hours a day? No, thank you. Oh, Big Sean just dropped off. Sean in Oakland. All right. Oh, I thought it was the real Big Sean. Yeah, he's going to perform at the draft in Detroit. Um, you know I don't... We, you... And it is Reggie Lewis who passed away with the Boston Celtics. Oh, but thanks. in all seriousness... Thank you for closing but, that. Yeah, nah, I had to. I, I like to get things right. I'm a journalist. Steven Risotto, le- le- learn this. Accuracy matters, Steven. Hey, Steven, he when just you're writing the for the ex- hey, When you're writing for the Express, you know accuracy matters. Yeah. Cite your sources, young man, and crack those damn books and hurry up and graduate. Listen... <laughs> We've already told them multiple things are off the record back here. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. The no, first no, no, one. No, great. That's gone too far. Great. Now he's going to air out my dirty laundry at SF State. Now I'm the fall guy. No, he's on the morning off the record. Rose. It's all good. No, no, I, don't believe, I don't believe him. I don't, I don't believe these young guy. journalists. These young journalists, they get something off the record. They can't wait to tell somebody. You know how much off the record things I've been Sources told? Sources are telling me and Adam Schefter that Brandon Ayuk is getting traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I hate, I love and hate off the record stuff because it's like, oh, this is so juicy. So I just tell Anna. You know how many who, times Monte <laughs> does this? He comes into the studio and he goes, oh, oh, if you only knew what I know regarding X, Y, and Z. And I can't tell Shasky because Shasky's going to tell everybody. And Shasky admitted. I do. Shasky admitted. He goes, I, I will tell everybody. I can't keep a secret. <laughs> it's it's in Shasky. Uh, all right, Fast Five, because I got some thoughts on Fast Five. I feel like Kirk Cousins. <laughs> oh my God! Did you see? Did you see the recent George Kittle post? No, you didn't see it. No, George Kittle it? and Claire, I believe, did. Uh, you know when you do like a uh, combination post where like I'll post, but you also post it yeah, on yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if she did it, but he reposted it. Somehow it came across my Instagram feed, and it was Kittle. And you swipe on all the pictures, you get to the end, and it's Kittle hugging. Kirk Cousins at Augusta. Oh, that's cool. Kirk Cousins. Yeah. He's ready for the Atlanta Falcons. Take over for Kyle Pitts. Is that what you said? Go get Brock Bowers. That's what you're, that's what you're alluding to. Well, Shasky. you gave me the Are Kirk Cousins drop, drop and so this was the drop you played. Is, is that what you're wasting on your final thought, Kirk and Cousins? A, NFL draft a week away. Oh, is that no, what no, you're here, wasting your final here's thought? Here's my on? final thought. On. All right, I, I went and saw Doctor Joe go to a shift movement uh, yesterday, or maybe it was two days, two days ago. They cupped me. For the first time, well, no, like what, third time. What, what, what do you mean by cup? It's like they do this like suction cup Excuse thing. Me? It's what, like suction cup what, therapy. What pause, dude. I know. Pause. I know. This is actually called. It is, legit, it is called cupping. Thank you. It's, it's not please pause. Two girls, one cup. It's a weird game. Oh, whoa. Oh, now you're just being whoa. Weird. whoa, whoa, whoa! We're getting pause, fam. It's getting a little out of control. Don't, don't talk about that. I have Stop. purple circles all over my arm Stop and back. It. I look like I belong near 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 Market Street. Were you foaming at the mouth? No. So what? But I did do a great workout this morning with a hot tub in, and I was feeling lovely. <laughs> Pause, dude. Pause. My final thought is this. There's two things. Warrior fans. How would you feel well, if you did thought. see? Final Well, I'm giving thoughts. Thoughts. We got time to kill. We Bonte still Hill is we burning. Got, listen, this is how you feel time. <laughs> this is Jonathan Sackley, my producer at NBC. 
We will have nothing. He goes, we're dancing here. We're dancing 45 seconds. It's like, this is what I this is what I do best, baby. I can fill up I've time. I've seen Bonte dance on stage yeah, it, with it was, cheerleaders. Well, Festus was like, you dance at the Super Bowl. I said, I was in front of 50 people. I'm not dancing in front of 18,500 at Chase Center. I think that's the exact capacity. Listen, final thoughts. What were your fans? How would you feel if you did see Clay Thompson in another uniform? Would that be strange? Would it be as strange to see a Ronnie Lott in a Jet uniform? Or Jerry Rice in a Raider uniform? Roger Craig in a Viking uniform? Yes. But also, how patient, how patient are you willing to be with this organization if they do reset? Because I'm willing to reset. I'm, I'm willing to do whatever Joe wants to do. He's done everything. He's paid over $700 million in luxury tax. He's helped him hang four banners alongside Steph, Dre, and Clay. They've done everything we wanted and much, much more. But if they want to slash payroll and reset, I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that, Dub Nation? That's something we could get into tomorrow. We didn't even get into Kamiga as well. So much stuff going on this Warriors offseason. Wow. We didn't even get the Giants. And they won a series in Miami. Well, speaking of the Giants, <laughs> I know, shocker, loving with the Giants take. It's not really a bold take, but I, at this point, Giants, I don't win? care. Yes, they're all must win, Shasky. Let me do my final thought. My final thought is Giants, I don't care what it takes, whatever it takes, just go get Mike Trout. I don't care about money. I don't care about prospects. <laughs> That's Mike Trout. Get Damn. Mike Trout. So what? Go offer up anything. <laughs> what are you get getting Mike up for Trout. Mike Trout? <laughs> you have the 19th best system. I don't system. care about what the details. What are you giving up for Mike Trout? <laughs> I just want it to happen. I don't care about the details. Don't tell me how you do it. I don't care who you need to pay off. Just do it. How many years does Mike Trout le have left on his contract? I do not Seven. care. Seven? He is off to a great start. They might make you take Rendon with him. I, I, fine. I may he can do come that too. too. He can sit on the bench and watch and be like, yay, Mike Trout. <laughs> I wouldn't want him sitting on the bench near fans. He might argue. Well, then great. Then you acquire him and DFA him. him. I don't care. Hey, right. does Risotto and, and now Spadoni, you've got final yeah, thoughts? Yeah, Risotto, get on the microphone. Get a final thought in here. Hold what on, are you thinking? Get him set up. Yeah, get quick. him set up. Go ahead, Spadoni. Um, I am sick for Jimmy Buckets, Jimmy oh. Butler. Hurting his MCL, going to be out for a few weeks. That and Zion's injury really has made these uh, final playing games a little just eh, not great. But you know what? Chicago Bulls. You mentioned all these young players out west, Kobe Bonte. White. Kobe White. Who? Is that the most excited, exciting player in Chicago since Derrick Rose? Right? I mean, Caruso. Well, uh, <laughs> well and Caruso's <laughs> playing. Real quick on Caruso. I'm so happy he's somebody came foot. around. I'm I know, boy. but you asked me. I just, there's a Caruso high. Another guy that the Warriors should keep their eye on, Alex Caruso. Well, see, I wanted Kobe White. They've got like five Alex I wanted Caruso's. Kobe White very early on, but he's I realized he's only making $12 million. He's the best market in the NBA right now. He's making $12 million dropping 40 burgers. Well, I mean, right, Steven besides Rizzotto. Wemby. Yeah, besides Wemby right now. Uh, Steven Rizzotto. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? How you doing? What's your final thought, buddy? Well, I mean, Lubman is in here making this entire room shake, so I don't know if I could follow that up <laughs> with anything of significance. But uh, Trout's interesting. I guess my final thought would be big four-game set for the Giants against the Diamondbacks. Is it a must-win? It's April. I mean, I, I guess the common saying is you can't lose... A post, or you can't win a postseason or a World Series in April, but you could lose one. Dude, let me give you, let me give you, let me give you one on one. Dog, it's a must win. Every <laughs> game's a must win. We're fighting for Bob Melvin's life. I don't even know if he knows how to use the bullpen yet. <laughs> they gotta win this series for Bob. So there has twenty, 20 walks. Bob. Twenty walks. Oh man, oh, man. possibilities. By the way, Ayuk's uh, agent is tweeting again. Uh, this guy Chase Senior, who keeps popping up with the 49ers. I don't know who this guy is. He's infiltrating as if he's a 49er reporter. I see all these people. Hey, who the hell is this guy? Reports Pittsburgh aggressively pursuing Brandon Ayuk in a trade. He would be surprised if they don't land Ayuk. Ayuk's agent just came out and said, another quote-unquote report that couldn't be more incorrect. Fictional journalism should really stop. Monte, make sure you don't miss that break, bro. That was Fast Five brought to you by Xfinity at home or on the go. You'll get the fastest internet to all your devices. Great calls today. Great show. We'll do it again tomorrow. More on the Warriors all season. It is just heating up. Don't forget, Mike Dunleavy, 12 o'clock today, live right here on 95.7 The Game. Mike Dunleavy will speak about the team and his plans for the offseason. That is coming up at noon with Starting Guru. I'm sorry. I hate to break the narrative.
of a kind. That is wild. Oh, my God. Oh. And he's doing a great job. I okay. need you to man up and say what you really want to say. Simon, you're doing a great job. We got a little cop to you. And together, they are Steiny and Guru. Yeah. On 95.7 The Game. Hey, what's up, Goo? How you doing? Nah, I'm a little irritated. Well, you should be. Now, why? You should be. All your takes of the last six months oh. were flushed <laughs> down the toilet like that new sponsor we got, uh, Flojo. Yeah, look at my guy. Flowing water, plumbing and drain. Flowing we water. We love them and their partnership. I love they're, They've been great early. Good start for them. Spadoni, who's What's the, the new guy in the lab? What's the matter? Uh, tell the people, who's the new guy Steven in there? Steven Risotto. Ah, of SF Italian. State. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Newspaper? Golden Gate Express. Golden Gate Express. I want there. I should probably know. What's that. the circulation? <laughs> it's great. Going to need the circuit. That's what Reggie Jackson used to ask. Reggie Jackson, when he was a major league player, you'd go up to him and say, uh, "Reggie, no you, get, way. you got a you got a minute?" And he'd be like, "Who do you work for?" I work for the uh, San Francisco Examiner. What's the circulation? Wow. <laughs> Next question. What are you so mad about? Uh, I leave the boss. We're starting office. on a new era here in Golden he State. He goes, oh, God. is your voice like that because of the rant? Yeah. And then Shasky says he's driving around with the lovely Michelle yesterday, and I sound like I'd been partying all night. Mm -hmm. I coughed up a lung for a speech for the Warriors. Put some respect on my name. How'd that go? Oh, boy. I watched it again last night. The Warriors or your speech? The Warriors. Yeah. They were slower. More pathetic on offense. A lot than the like first your speech. Time. Wow. Apparently. Wow. Now that speech had way more juice than the dubs and sacks. No, oh. Evan, you didn't post it. You didn't like it. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna harbor that for a while. <laughs> I'm just tomorrow. Evan in for you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't like hey, dog. You know what? And, yeah. and, and, and shame on you, Warrior know. fans. Shame on well, not all of you. I mean, I come in, I'm in a good mood today. We're going to embark on a new era. Yeah. We're going to figure this thing out. What happened? And I'm looking at the text line, and the first text from the five, what, Clay is cooked. <laughs> Let him not, go. He's not cooked. I do wonder where this thing is going, man. Yeah, so do I. So do oh, I. No. Uh, we got a lot of sound from yesterday that we haven't played. Steve Kerr was on with Willard and Dibbs. Clay was on uh, meeting the media after the uh, after the season yesterday. He got on after we we uh, got off, but uh, I mean, it, it all starts with Clay, right? No doubt about it. I mean, Clay's the big. Even though that come on, no speak. matter what they do, yeah. what happens with Clay is going to be the 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 big thing this off season, right? Because he is a part of the big three. And I know you're not a fan. I'm the fan of the show, Steiny. I would like to ask you what do you what do you want to happen? But you may not have anything as far as that. But if for me, the fact that Draymond Green, who is not Clay Thompson, got that four four hundred, I just again I'll die on this hill until we, we hear otherwise. I just don't see how the the bottle stops spinning for Clay. Now they offered him what was it two for forty eight? Mm -hmm. That's that's a little less than twenty five, but I think they know that was wrong. I expect Clay Thompson, the Warriors, to covet him, but I do wonder how much is he irritated about going to the bench, and maybe the organization thinking he he wasn't a starter for however long that 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 was. Here's a couple questions I I was thinking about what it, as it relates to Clay Thompson, and that is. Should the rules change this summer? Mm. And sometimes circumstances change, and it's not Clay's fault, but circumstances change. I mean, if the rules stay the same, Clay's got to be back. Because two gotcha. years ago, they had Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins, and they extended both those guys. Last year, they had Draymond Green, and they extended Draymond Green. If if they follow the same th thought process of the last couple of years, they've got to find a number for Clay, and he's got to come back. He's got to want to come back. Well, I would assume he would want to come back if the number is right for him. But that's not the way it is anymore. They're they're not operating under the same situation. I don't think Goo that they were two years ago. When they gave their contracts to Poole and to Wiggins two years ago, they were coming off a title. Last year, 
They were coming off a 44-win season, but they still were in a mindset of being a championship team. And here's what, here's what Steve Kerr said yesterday with Willard and Dibbs. Take a listen. It would be hard for me sitting here with our season over on April 17th, whatever it is, to tell you that we are a championship contender. That, that would be not the brightest comment I could ever make. You know, I mean, you, you, you have to prove that. You can't just say you're a contender. You have to, you have to prove it. So, you know, right now we're not, but um, we have, that's why we have an off season. That's why you talk to other teams. That's why, that's why you look at every possibility to build your roster back up. Every year, you're, I'm always surprised at the deals that happen for any team. There's, you just don't know. So you, you have to go into the summer with an open mind and, you know, who knows? There might be some deal that, that Mike and Joe feel like, you know, gets us back into, intention maybe there isn't if there's not then you know what's uh, what are we looking at what are we uh, what's the goal what are we trying to accomplish and so if they don't think they're a championship team that's got to alter their thinking going into the off season i would think well he didn't say that he said he would be a fool to say that and put that out there being that they didn't qualify for the playoffs donnie i believe if we were having a budweiser with them you know he would tell us he thinks more than and i respect what he did you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, how the hell? We didn't even make it. And I'm supposed to sit here and tell you we're a championship team? That doesn't mean he doesn't think. He didn't answer how far they are or far off he thinks they are. No, but if, again, if the Steve Kerr said a couple things yesterday that were, to me, pretty interesting. Uh, the one that... Uh, and then what about the money one? They asked him, Willard asked him about the money. He was like, well, you can't spend a lot of money on a non-playoff team, but you... I didn't say a lot, but you could spend... You know, it was pretty funny. I don't know if you see that one. Here's what he had to say about this offseason. <clears throat> this offseason is going to be different. It's the first time, I think, that I've really felt like there's there there needs to be you know some change but um, I don't know what it is. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know that Mike knows yet. I, what we do have, though, is a lot of evidence and a lot of clarity on this year's team and some of the things we lacked and some of the things we need to improve upon. Wow. That, can I can I ask a question? Yeah. Don't we? Aren't they setting the table for what we think is going to happen? Yeah. Well, I mean, what does it mean? We're the, Things are going to be different this offseason. Well, what would make this offseason different? Trades. Before you even get to Clay Stoddy, he that to me, that was trades I heard maybe. Like, how many people are off limits? That's what I got from that. The Clay is the right on the table. We already know that. That was like change, change. 888-957-9570. We're going to play a lot of the Clay Thompson sound today. Uh, you can draw your own conclusions about how he sounded coming back here and what the possibility of that is. And, and what then, do you want to see happen? And then at, uh, yeah, and, and then at noon, we got Mike Dunleavy, uh, general this manager of the Golden State Warriors. He's going to be talking live at noon, and we're going to take that live at noon. Yeah. Uh, but right now, we're talking about where this team goes. Uh, how close was it to being uh, a, a six seed? How close was it to being a championship contender? And if you're not, if you don't think you're a championship contender, how do you expect Joe Lacob to pony up $25 million for Clay, then pony up $30-plus million for Kaminga that'll kick in at the end of next year? I, that, that's the part where they keep saying they need to change. Well, the two, to, the two moves they have to, to make or the two moves that are laying in front of them are Clay Thompson and Jonathan Kaminga. And two years ago, they would have just simply given them both contract yeah. extensions. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Like I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But just hearing everything that I've heard, I would be surprised if they re-sign Clay and extend Kaminga, yeah. Clay for let's say over twenty and Kaminga for over thirty. And if they do do that, I think that that means somebody else has to go. Yeah. And so, I appreciate there that. There you go. I've been telling you and the listeners, you, you've you been looking slim and trim, but that's your gut feeling. And I'm right behind you, Stiney. So hearing Kerr say 
he'd like to see some change or lobbying for change. You know, a lot of times when you hear professionals talk, sometimes they tell you things without even saying it. And that's why I'm excited about Mike Dunleavy today stepping to the podium. Not to see if he slips up. It's not about that. But, Steiny, if you're smart enough and you got intellect like me, you can the guru computer will go off and you can hear something being said on the subliminal. Now, I will say this to Warrior fans, and you can be like, oh, goose, stop. If you think the pain is over for this team not making the playoffs, somebody tweet or text me, IG me, Saturday afternoon when the actual playoff games start because that's when it's going to hurt. And I'm looking at you right now with your nice shades. Steiny, I just cannot believe this team will not be participating in okay, this so year's playoffs. Why not? I, I, because that was the bar was that was a. Why are you laughing? It was a given. Because you're funny. Because you're funny. Because I, you went six months. <laughs> you went six there? months with reality, and you you spit in it. And every time somebody tried to tell you, maybe but you what you're seeing, said the playoffs was ridiculous. Getting the date with Beyonce, that that's when you laugh. Yeah, but you're not right. this yeah, no, you're right. team. You're right. I, the I, wasn't the guy, I wasn't the guy who, when they were sitting at 10 and everyone's saying, well, they can make a run in the playoffs. No, I wasn't the guy that said, no, that. they're not in the playoffs. I'll give you that. They're not in the playoffs. They were never in the playoffs. But the biggest skeptic from J- Jump you, Street, do, Stiney, do thought you this do, team was going to make the playoffs. Who? Everybody. No, Vegas. There was no not make the playoffs with Steph, Clay, and Dre. I okay, just came on. so you're okay, so you're not over it. No, it's just starting. And Saturday will hurt more. I can't do this. <laughs> now, what would you describe do this? Would, no, I'm hurt. That's all. I'm being real, Stoney. Saturday is going to really I mean, how long, how long is it going to last for you to not believe what has just happened, oh, do you may, think? Maybe the first round, when the first round's complete. All right. <clears throat> do I sound as bad as I think I do? You, you sound like the most delusional fan that I've come across now in a that, while. Okay, I, and I'm, right. I'm trying, no, I'm trying see, to... Now that hurts. And well, me, I know you're not I'm, doing it on purpose. No, I am. I'm actually trying to kind of hurt you. Do you see where... Evan, no. There's no, you're, how many you're people oblivious. do you think would have took the bet of I'm doing a show with the a guy Warriors who's would oblivious. not make the playoffs at the start of the season? Just focus they on that. They were 19 and 24. Why did you think they were making the playoffs? Right, before they they never got out games. of nine. Right, before 43 <laughs> games, Stiney. They never got higher than nine. How did you just assume they were going to make the playoffs? Uh, because you thought, you thought... Oh, well, we'll just win a road game against the Sacramento Kings. And then, oh, we'll just win a road game against the New Orleans Pelicans. And, oh, we'll just win a series against the Oklahoma City Thunder. When all season long, the evidence was not supporting that no. kind of thinking. Now, that's that's a factoid. I but, mean, look. Yeah, but. Feel free. And you know what? I can tell you're on. You're, 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 Feel free, and you've done this before. You can think of this team as a fifty-five win team. No, no, that's no, fine. No, no, that they were yeah, fifty-five no, and twenty-seven that, this, this year. No, this now, who could have believed that no, a fifty-five no. and twenty-seven team you. wouldn't get to the postseason? Now, listen. See, this is, I, I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> yeah, like this is the kind of denial that will prevent the Warriors from any kind of meaningful progress. No, Steve Kerr told mm-hmm. you he's not on my island. Yeah. He said. Well, he didn't take the bait. He would not comment, and he said it would be foolish, basically, to think of this team, you know, through through championship lenses, and I get that. Then he said he would be a proponent for changes. What I'm doing now, Stiney, the smoke and the dust has settled, You need, and and I got to get this off. I saw Brandon Pajemski play in college, 10 games, because of my son, and... Everything he did in his rookie year, he went above and beyond. But the fact that a rookie led your team with three Hall of Famers, hold on, let me get this off, with plus minus, if you're into that, but to me there's something there over 82 games, 
I think that's an indictment on well, not pods, on everything well, else around them that you, a rookie okay. could come in here and basically, I'm saying surprised. it, have the biggest impact of anybody else. And for the then I thought about it. Well, what about the night Steph got 30 and then Wiggins got 25? What was happening with his man on the other end to where pods huh. led the team, a rookie, right. in plus minus? <laughs> Right. That is not a good for Pods. Well, why it are you is. surprised? It's not a good thing for the team. Why are you surprised then that See, they didn't make the playoffs? Because I was blinded by all well, that. I know, and I, and and so so. But after I'm letting six, it out now. It, well, I, I, it, it, it ain't it ain't a Pods problem. He's great, but it's everybody else around him. The OGs let a rookie come and have a bigger impact. That's a problem. Why don't you just make no, it, it is. Make I just it easy for me night. and apologize for not listening to, to me. For four uh, months, see, because this is the now, 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 now it's like you said. He said yesterday. Goose said, "Steiny, they looked old." Uh, it, now, first game last night, they looked old. It wasn't just old, Steiny. It just discombobulated, man. They looked pressured and bothered. The Kings were in their space. That's happened all year to the Warriors. They're turning Steph over more and more. Clay's getting more inefficient. <sighs> Draymond's putting together fewer and fewer great games. I mean, the yeah. idea, like, here's, I guess, and I know, I, no, I'm just and this, is, out, this is Gary Radnich. Oh. Hey, we're having fun on the radio. Yeah, we're just having fun on the radio. But Ready? for you for you to come to some kind of major conclusion after one game on Tuesday, after watching this team play 82 like they've played, I right. I don't know if I can help you today. I don't know if no, I can this help is you. Ther therapeutic, just letting it out, man. Yeah. Uh, Patrick's in San Mateo. What's up, Patrick? How you doing, man? How you doing, guys? Hey, hey. Help Guru out. What up, Pat? He watched his first game on <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you, you know what? I, look, you know what? First of all, I'm going to say you nailed it from the very first day of the season about the <sighs> age thing. and how, You nailed it, man. I remember. I remember the day listening. But you know what? I'm calling to put a positive spin on all this and look at this objectively. And here's what I, I, I really think. Be patient with me. Number one, you can't blame Joe Lake up for rolling the dice for one more year and seeing what would become, you know, if this squad could put together a hell of a run this year. Right. You can't blame him for that. You can't blame him for that. But the good news is, if you let Clay walk, which I think they should, you get rid of, you, you let Chris Paul go, you let Looney go, you know, you, you're looking at over $100 million in saved payroll. Now, with that kind of money, assuming he wants to spend that much, or maybe 70 or 80 of it, there's a good list of free agents out there that the Warriors can pick up. The first thing you try to do is to go out and try to snag a superstar to go with Steph. It, like, you know, at a high, a high level superstar. If you can do that, great. If not, there's a very good list of players that you can try to snag to put it number two next to Steph and spend the rest of the money putting some good role players on that bench. I don't think that Lakeup's going to spend 30 million a year on Clay for a player that you're going to bring off the bench whose defensive skills have diminished. I just don't think he's going to do that. Yeah, I, but, and, but 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 the bright the bright thing is here. There's going to be a lot of money to play with. No, there's not. There's that's a lot of, that's, oh. that's that's the problem, Patrick. There's not a lot of money to play with. You have Steph under contract for fifty five. Ooh. You got Wiggins and Draymond under contract for fifty between them. So you're already over a hundred. Yeah. Right there. You get and and that's you, you lose Chris Paul. You, you just got to lose Chris Paul. But then what are you doing with Clay? Are you paying Clay 20? I mean, you still got you still got Gary Payton the second making nine. Wow, man. You, you the, the best you can do from what I understand is somehow get below the second apron, which will probably cost you Clay and Chris Paul, and then you might have access to the non mid-level taxpayer non-taxpayer mid-level, which is a $12.9 million contract exception. But the idea that the Warriors are going to be able to get a lose Chris Paul and maybe Clay and get in here a $45 million player, that's not going to happen. Well, nobody didn't. Everybody would be feeling good if they could do that, you know? Right. Yeah. They they can't. Um, the, the other thing I was thinking, and, I, and this is where I really want to uh, 
ask Warrior fans about this. Because, you know, I just watch this team, I observe this team, and then I obviously keep track of the fans. But the one thing that I think would bother me if I were a Warrior fan, and it's nobody's fault, it's just the way it worked, but the idea of a dynasty coming to an end is tough. We, we know that. But we also know, it, okay, it's, it's coming to an end. At some point, it's going to come to an end. There's just something about the possibility that it's Clay leaving first. That Clay is going to have to be the guy that the rules change for. And Clay is going to have to be the guy who gets squeezed out. And it's Clay Thompson who's going to be the guy playing for another team. Wow. I do think if you're a Warrior fan, you have the right to say, why can't it be Draymond? Like, why can't Draymond be the first one to leave if the big three is going to get broken up? I, I feel like, unless I'm wrong, and you can tell me I'm wrong, I, I think you I think Warrior fans, well, th- this is just this is just how I think some Warrior fans might feel, but I'll, I'm happy to hear that I'm wrong. But just, you know, Draymond gets the contract he gets, and then he does what he does, and he did what he did for the last two years. And then Clay's in a contract year, Goo, and struggles, and they put him on the bench, and he overcomes that, and he, he finally gets to a place at the end of the year where he's in a good spot, and he's the guy. He's the guy who's got to go first. That would annoy me a little bit. You know what? I, I totally understand that, but we can't put that, and I'm not saying you are or any fan, at the doorstep of Draymond Green. No, I am. I am putting it at the doorstep of Draymond Green because it is. there's an unfairness to the fact that Talk to he me. may still be here and Clay won't. Like, that, that is because of a set of circumstances that really Clay didn't have a lot to do with, right. and it's unfair. Now, how about Draymond, too? It sucks. It sucks. Clay shouldn't have to be the one to go first. Yeah. But I should be Draymond. Uh, it should be Draymond. Now, why would you say that? Because of all the big three, who has devoted themselves yeah, the uh, most to the big three? Who has tried to do the right thing? Who's more loved? Who, all those things. Yeah. Who do we have more of an emotional attachment to? And maybe more important, who do we think has more of an emotional attachment to the team? Now, what if Joe Lakeup offers or the Warriors two for 60 and Clay says, you know what, I just need to change the scenery. You still feel the way you feel, but you, we can't say that's a Draymond. It, again, you know, I, again, I just think it sucks if Clay's the first one that has to go of the big three after we've watched the last two years and seen Draymond's act for two years. And then we saw Clay this year yeah, I, I battle that. through some stuff, work through some kinks, all those kind of things. That's all. I mean, again, it's no, I, I hear nobody's that. fault. It yeah. just sucks. It just sucks. Uh, 888-957-9570. I see full phone lines. We'll get to your calls uh, on the other side. We'll also get to more of, uh, of this sound from yesterday. That segment was sponsored by the Order of Malta Clinic. Watch the game again then, Tiny.
was funny. What are you doing? Oh, man. <clears throat> if you really want to know, I'll tell you. Sure. So I came in this morning. Evan and I were having a little hip-hop Bible study. We are talking about the state of rap. And, uh, God bless the I, game. Yes, I like that beat. So I was kind of, if I were freestyling what I'd be saying, and you happen to catch me. Tomorrow. Can you offer Clay Thompson less money than Draymond Green makes? No, you can't. You can't. And I think you may have already done that. If the two for 28, if my math, shout out James Logan, is correct, Stoney, that would have came in under that, right? I mean, that would have started resentment for me. I'm not trying to start anything. I'm just telling you how the goo would feel. And I went third person. Draymond Green's got two more years and a player option. Okay. Won't, won't it just take two more years from Clay and then a player option for his third year? You would think. I, I'm. I mean, who's more valuable, Clay or Draymond? And if it's if it's Draymond, well, then how much more valuable is Draymond than than Clay? And is that okay to not pay Clay as much as Draymond because Clay made more over the course of his career? I, I don't know, but I do know this: of all the things that Steve Kerr said, this this is the one that hit me. Personally, I don't think it makes sense to have a, a massive payroll right now. So. With, with our team. Um, it just doesn't, you, you know, to spend that kind of money, and Joe has been incredibly uh, generous and, and um, you know, so uh, aggressive and, uh, you know, really attacking, looking for championships. But at some point, you, you can't spend this much money for a team that didn't make the playoffs. So we have a lot of decisions to make and a lot of, uh, a lot of questions to answer. So, they're, you know, those things are all kind of thrown into the pot and you have to figure it out. So they're cutting payroll. Wow. Essentially. By the way, we have a super chat from... Uh, <laughs> what we got? Uh, who, who's it from? Uh, who's, who's you got it from? your glasses on. It's from Rich Mitchman. Uh, hey! <laughs> I'm just saying it is. Uh, Rich Mitchman oh! is paying $1.99, and he says, trade Kaminga and do not overpay Clay Thompson. Wow. They, well, I'll tell you what. I don't want to see Kaminga in another uniform, Stani, but that boy, that man, along with something else, because you'd have to dress it up, that man could fetch you something. Let's put that's a right on the table. We all know. I now know. what? We'll I don't see. know. We'll see. But if I got to do this, I mean, if I'm Steve Kerr and I only got two more years here, and it's not my money, the owner's spending. And I'm gonna be judged on how this team does. I don't think I'm telling the local and this more power to him for being real. I don't think I'm telling my owner on a radio station it doesn't make sense to invest in the team. I'd probably be like, yeah, spend and keep spending. You do that when I'm out of here, whenever that day does come. Well, I don't but think I, don't I was driving around listening to that, and I gotta be honest, Donnie, I felt like Kerr was saying we're not close. They're not. They're not. I don't know if you know this. The playoffs start this weekend, and the Warriors I won't be in it. Saturday, dude. What did I said? Four hundred million payroll dibs. Would said it was about three eighty, three eighty five. That's still four hundred, and you didn't. Your team didn't qualify. Like I'm. Nobody's coming at Joe Lake up, Stani. It's about family. It's about the big three. You know what? It's about, I, okay. You know what? You I, I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Just. Just to get into it, just to get into a debate. Yeah. Do you realize the first thing you just said there? Give it to him. It's about family. If it's about family, pay Clay, and there's nothing to see here. I want to hug you. Okay. Well, it's not about family anymore. You can't. Well, we're about they, to find. Oh, well, why no. would you say that? If they if they find a number for Clay to come back on, it's because they like the number. And they think it makes them better. You're, you're like, you don't think any part of that money would be because I believe Dre's. Was, so, so let me just get yeah, this straight. Come on, man. You, it, you're just coming to the conclusion. Oh my God, we're not even a playoff team. But you want to keep everything I, together. I, I like, told you, I think this team's a playoff team. Okay, they make it. This so year. then, so then, you want to pay Clay twenty five mil a year to keep him around? Well. No, that's why I brought up family. It's the right thing to do. No, it's not. Well, it, I mean, w there's not a right decision and a wrong decision with Clay. Was it the right thing to do to extend Draymond Green? I think you get half and half. Yeah. 
So, but half of but, the, but I believe like, the owner. You know what? But no, answer that's to that question was again. He wanted to see Dre retire in a warrior that's uniform. Great. Okay. So, so, do you think that does not apply to Clay I Thompson? I do not think it applies I, to Clay what Thompson. What if I told you and the I don't ball's think it applies in Clay's to... court? That's all I guess I'm trying to say. Not for fifteen million. It's not. No. I got family. That's like, awesome. Like I and like they're not going to offer him the hey, ball him like that. The Sorry, that's all I'm saying. He thinks they lowballed him already, or he wouldn't, have or he would have taken the contract. And you know what? You're 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 making it clear that you're not ready, and that's fine. Now, because you, you say I'm not ready for it's, what? Steiny, it's all about family. Okay. Well, then we know what we're doing. We're getting Clay back here. When it comes to those three, I I, I believe okay. he's coming. And All right. So real quick, and, I, and you know what? If okay. you want me to say it, I'll say it. That's no. not the best thing for the Warriors. Uh, no, 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 it's not no, the best thing for the and Warriors. And if you said that, I wouldn't fight play. you. Okay. But you don't find it odd. So you still want to pay timing. guys? You, you don't want to pay guys for what no, they've done I'm, in the past? I'm telling you, Stani, look around and read the room. Kerr said after they lost and they're bleeding, we need Clay back. Right. Uh, Curry said it. Dre said it. Now it may not happen, but I believe at this point that that's. It's going to happen, Stein. Nope. That's all. Okay, and it won't. It might not be for the right. If you're I, signing I, him, for, you know, we're a f but that was with Dre. I met you halfway. It's on a Dre. year later. Like that's what I'm saying. Everything's changed. You thought they were a championship team two days ago. Now you realize they're not. So now we're operating under different circumstances. Like that's the I, I, but like the I middle can't, ground. Is I a, can't make it any more clear. This is the way I think. Yeah. They won a title. They re-signed Wiggins. They re-signed uh, Poole. Jordan Poole. Yeah. Why? Well, because we won a title. Okay. You went through last year. We won 44 games. Yeah. Right. But guess what? They looked in the mirror, Joe and everybody else, and said, we still think we can win a title. Okay. Go sign Draymond for $100 million. And what I'm telling you is, so now another year's gone by. If Joe Lacob looks in the mirror and says, we still are a championship contender, then go re-sign Clay for whatever it takes. But I don't believe anybody believes that. And if you listen to Steve Kerr, it sounds like he's bracing for big changes, whatever they may be. Yeah. You, you want to just pay Clay? No, I'm under the realization that Clay's money, if you don't pay him, you can go get another superstar with that money. I'm just telling you, Stani, if if Steve Kerr is telling us we're just an average team or it's going to be some down times here, they would rather do that with Klay Thompson around. That's 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 what I'm reading. Do, do you do you allow for the fact that having Klay Thompson around may prevent you from transitioning into something new? Just the mere fact he's here. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. I still believe with, with again, 0 for 10 was 0 for 10, but I can look past that, Stoney. I still think he brings something to the table. A championship level? No, I don't, that's bigger than him. That shouldn't just okay, be at so, his doorstep. So, okay, so it's not about championships anymore. And I'm all for I mean, that. Apparently not. They didn't make it this year. Okay, well, then why? And the coach is talking about bringing Clay back. So is Curry and so is Dre. All right. But then on the other hand, we hear big changes. So I don't know what it is. I'm just telling you I want Clay in a Warrior uniform. I think he does more for you than Draymond Green. That's just me. And Dre, I know you're going to say, Goo, it was a year later. But I don't think they're going to say, I don't think Lakeham's going to say, damn it, I gave Evan that money, and now I got to pay Stiney, and we didn't but make the a playoffs family. a year after. Right, and that's why I think that's not going to happen. They've well, never shown tough love. They've never, oh. you know what I mean? Clay is going to come back if he wants to come back. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, D's in D.C. What's up, D? How you doing? Sinatra, Sinatra Steiny. What's up, brother? What's up, Goo Goo? <laughs> What's up, baby, know. Sinatra? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I'm depressed. I'm depressed about what happened to the Warriors. But, however, it was predictive. I mean, we're too small going into the season, too old, uh, uh, just to agree with Steiny, and then, and then we were not good enough. That's number three. Moving forward, um, a lot of the blame must be placed at the feet of, I would say, Lakeup as well as Kerr, because after the punch, Draymond should have never been re-signed, right? Man. 
moving forward, we need to find a way to get rid of that dude, man. Because because of him, he's keeping a lot of free agents away from the Warriors. You guys are not addressing that. However, yeah. Draymond is the hindrance that will continue to be a thorn in the tail of, of the Warriors until they get rid of him, right? That's it. Um, get rid of him in the, any way possible. Just if you get, if you have to package him with, with JK, do it. If you have to package him with whoever you have to package him with, with do it. Because Draymond is the problem. And I blame Lakeup and Kerr for that. Mm. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah. it, D. Uh, that's a little heavy, though, don't we think, Snotty? No. Saying that Dre's keep, I agree with no. him. He shouldn't have came back. I'm, I was an advocate. We don't know if guys are staying away yet because of Dre. Mm -hmm. Would you want to play with him? No, I already told you. I, no. Okay. Well, and we got one more super chat. Nine ninety nine. Uh, Miguel Kerr is more concerned with being besties with the core than developing young guys. Remember last season when he overplayed Lamb and Ty? He hasn't learned. Would have loved you Udoka accountability with Kerr. It's amazing how people could see one thing and just have, well, we're all different. I got a buddy, Jason, who texted me this yesterday, and it's right on the money, and and you, it's you need to listen to us. Warrior fans need to accept the fact that we are now in a period where our ceiling is being competitive as we transition out of the big three. We need to understand, I'll say it again, that our ceiling right now is to be competitive as we transition out of the big three. We don't have the stomach to trade Steph, so the best case scenario is we develop into the next core. But we don't know if the there core they have now, I'm not even mad at that, is superstar worthy. No, you don't. No, you don't. So you're well, saying you so, need to find so, that out. So you would rather go with an old core that has proven the last couple of years it can't get it done as opposed to giving the four young players more run to see how good they might be in three years. I just don't think it works like that. I, how, I how does it work? When you say old core, the guy, the guy that leads that old core, his name is Steph Curry. Right. Still, out, still right. can play to me. Right. Okay. At, com at a competitive level. That's it. That's it. But their ceiling yeah. is competitiveness. But Steiny, sorry, yeah. we've seen it for two years. You don't have surefire, and I'll just say Pods, TJD, and Kaminga. Okay, you don't know. You don't like that, so. In other their, words, their intrigueness okay. you, th that ain't gonna supersede Kerr. Okay, and Dre, so, Curry, no, Dre, so, and Clay playing. Okay. That's all. So, so that's, that's unrealistic. Okay. And I'll tell you what's more, more unreal. Like, do I think this four? Young player core is super style championship. Yeah. I don't, no, I don't. But I also don't know what they're going to be in three years. I know what Steph is. I know what Draymond is, and I know what Clay is. So what? And they're not the good enough anymore be? to get it done. So what should the? So you're saying let Clay walk, let Chris Paul walk, get a couple guys in here under the cap if you can. If you can trade Wiggins, trade Wiggins, and you run next year. And you say, Trace Jackson Davis is our starting center. Jonathan Kaminga is going to be a starting forward. Mm. Pods is going to be either a starter or a sixth or seventh man. Can we get it? Like, there it is. But you know what? That's not good enough, even though it may be better than what was this past year. Now, when you say to who, though? Who, who, for the fans, that might not be good enough. When you say that might not be good enough. What's I the, agree with this. What's the I, goal? I I agree with this statement. Because where are you if we find out? We need you know, to. That, I agree with uh, this statement. We need to accept the fact that we're now in a period where the ceiling is we want to be competitive in the transition. That's the ceiling. Not we can win. You can't win a title if you're in transition. Yeah, but but Stein, Michael competitive? Jackson is still Steph. They're he, they're coming out. We're coming out to okay. see him. Okay. Do you not account for the fact that you missed the playoffs three of the last five years? Like, That's if you bring the same team back, you may miss the playoffs for the fourth time in six years. You, you'd rather, like, do that than, than open up a, uh, more playing time for the young guys? Didn't the young guys prove this year that they could elevate you? 
I would say, and where did that get us? So you, I rest my case. Where did it get you? Yeah, it got you forty six wins, as opposed to a team that might have only, like, if Pods and those guys don't show up on the like, it's no shade at those guys. It just feels like you're ready to. Yes, I am ready. I'm not. Okay. Yeah. So you still are thinking that this team can capture something and win a title. I mean, three days ago, Stani, you and I had a conversation, a stellar conversation about had Draymond not got suspended, you could see how somebody could be thinking maybe this team was a fourth or fifth seed. And now it it sounds like like you're ready to flood. No. Did it uh, look like a fourth or fifth seed? I never thought it was a fourth or fifth seed. That was one game. And for anybody thinking that, okay, that was one bad game. But are you, you going to let can, one bad game? You I'm can take an one bad game or you could take the whole season. I don't care well, what you would, take. Yeah. Like, you want to use one bad game to, to move off the core? I would say, go ahead. If you want to use the whole season to move off a core, like, go ahead. If you want to use 27 and 12 to stay on the core yeah. and give it another shot, and maybe enhance go ahead. it somehow go ahead. with the trade. Good you, luck. You know? How's it worked out the last yeah. two years? I mean... To me, bringing Clay back and just having those three guys be the centerpiece of next year, I like. I just think that's the leader in the clubhouse right now. I could be totally wrong. You know what? What if I said like, I I, I wonder if there are any fans out there that would piss me off. Actually, uh, man, I would love to hear from them. That would piss me off. Everybody, everything I'm hearing from the whole team is we're not good enough. But you're going to bring back the same core. Like that to me is. You, you can't do that. Yeah, that was you at I, least I you at least have to say cursed, Donnie. Yeah. It was real, but like, do we know if that's what he was saying? Like, I couldn't believe he said it. Said what? Like, you don't you're spending too much money on this team as it is currently constructed, and he, and they three hundred eighty five forever. Million. Like Joe Lake have said forever. If okay. We're not a title team. Right, I ain't but, spending. But that doesn't mean million. you can't facilitate a trade and swap something out. Raising San Rafael. What's up, Ray? How you doing, man? What's going on, gentlemen? Hey, hey. Uh, so listen, Clay stays. Okay. We gotta, I think we all know where. Here's here's what's inevitably going to happen: is we got to go nuclear at some point. Dunleavy's got to make a statement on what kind of uh, you know GM he is, but uh, and so, but we can't go nuclear yet. I mean, like, in our future is rebuilding, like, real, real re- mm. rebuilding. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, we are going to be like, everybody's gone. Steph's going to go play in Charlotte or whatever. He's going to retire. But for the next couple of years, or next year at least, like, let's we, we add a few players, and that's it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. We, we're, just, we're just, that's our swan song. That's what I got to say. Appreciate it. What did you say? What was your verbiage yesterday, Snotty? Uh you mess around with the edges, but the you know. Okay, okay. I mean, I I don't. I mean, I I'm just surprised that we've gone through two years like this and we've seen what we've seen, and there's actually still people that that think that we're going to come back next year with the big three, and they're all going to be better, and then we're going to be better. I mean, he, and here's the other here's the issue with Clay. That I think is is again, it's not his fault. Steph's a starter; he's going to be Draymond's always going to be important to this uh, team. But the problem with Clay right now, with the with as he fits in the Warriors, is and people might not like to hear this. He's not good enough to be a starter anymore. And you think that you can be a championship team? Like if you're gonna if if Clay comes back, he's probably he, he's either going to start yeah. at that point. Okay. <laughs> and that could be the deal breaker just from him if he's saying, all right, okay. I'll sign this. At well, you know what might be worse You're than coming Clay's, off the bench? Yeah, that might, okay. He might be out. And I'm I, just saying. Like, the that point could is, really it, even if he comes off the bench, he's playing 28 minutes a night. You're not, like, Clay's not re signing here and playing 15, 18 minutes a night. I don't care if he starts. I don't care if he comes off the bench. He's playing 28 or 30 minutes a night. He's going to. And I just don't know if that's good enough anymore. I know it wasn't good enough the last couple years. I mean, to me, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you do, but but I'll tell you what I don't do is I don't re-sign Clay and think, well, now we're going to win a title next year. Like you re-sign Clay, you're making a deal that says, 
let's just kick the can down the road with these three guys as long as we can. But let me tell you, that's going to get old. And did you think he got that way when he signed Dre? You you still think there was a little piece of... He thought they could win a title. And you know what? Maybe he's like you now. He still thinks they can win a title. And if that's what he thinks, then, then go get Clay back here and tinker around the edges. Uh, Nickel and Dimes in Fremont. What's up, Nickel and Dime? How you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you guys doing? Hey. Hey, I just want to, I'm hearing, uh, you know, people calling in and you guys just, the way I look at it is we got to understand that, you know, this dynasty is coming to an end and we have to accept it. You know, as much as we would want to see them together and, and all this, it's affecting the whole team around. You know, those rookies, they're not developing how they need to develop because we're st- the team is sticking to the, the big three, okay? We just got to understand that for the past two years, Draymond Green has dragged this team down. How? With his demeanor, his actions, showing the rest of the team that he could get away with anything he wants and he still be in the team. So I, I think that Clay... Steph and everybody around him are not playing to the level they need to play because his actions has affected them mentally. He's became a drain for them, and it shows now. Everybody, all the other teams are building, and while the late, while, while the Warriors are stuck with the same team, so it's time to cut it. For me, if they got to get rid of one of the three, it has to be Draymond first. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I hear you, nickel and dime. I mean, I mean, if well, you said that earlier. I mean, I, you I said think, it, yeah. I mean, I think most warrior fans. Well, I don't know. I don't know what warrior fans think. I don't know what warrior fans think. If it, if, but the reality is, Dre was second. You know, with this deal last summer, so now we'll see what happens with Clay. If the young players played like they did in the second half of the season and Draymond didn't get suspended, we'd be a top four seed. All right. Well, then re sign Clay and run it back. But that's not what I'm hearing Steve Kerr say. It's not what I heard Joe Lacob talk about months ago. They're in a tough spot. No, that's I mean, they are. I I mean, I hate to say it, but like I'm of the opinion. If you re-sign Clay, that's not necessarily good. And if you let Clay go, that ain't necessarily good either. Because they re-signed Draymond Green. And what did that get them? Like, what did it get them tangibly? Yeah. I mean, everybody... Oh, we got to go. 888-957-9570. Reminder, you can catch all four hours of Steiny and Goo on the free Odyssey app. You can download the Odyssey app directly from our QR code on both YouTube and Twitch, brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first-class money market today. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replay.
if I were your program director, I would fine you every time you make a reference <laughs> to a Pennsylvania high school. That's really important. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Oh, we're talking Warriors off season. Yeah. Figure out Clay Thompson. Figure out Kaminga. You pay him. What do you do with Chris Paul? Anything going to be done with Kevon Looney? Uh, Evan has uh, something that he would like to share with wow. us. Yeah, so there was a column written by Zach Lowe, famed national NBA writer for ESPN, and amidst his observations of teams and off seasons heading into the postseason, ones that are eliminated, there was an observation or, I guess, a report from the Warriors that, quote, Draymond Green's volatility has worn on members of the organization, end quote. So that was from Zach Lowe, but it, I feel like it's the first piece of, mm. I don't know, inside information in a long time that's come out about Draymond and his antics. Like, I, I know he's done stuff in the past, but I don't know if there's ever been, I don't know, like, I can't like remember breadcrumbs either. that have leaked you know, from inside that have said that, that it's worn on him, right? Well, I could play devil's advocate and say Give it, it leaked against Orlando. When Steph Curry was affected, like he was. Oh affected. no, that that's where I go ahead, Stanley. So because that's where I was going. Like apparently that didn't go away. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Unfor oh, it's unforgettable. But Stanley, that's where I went. I, again, this is just a report. But now we're talking about game on in regard to what's feasible and what's possible if if this time could be up. But this is the first time in forever I feel like we've heard something like that or read something like that in print. And you're right. Don't tell me that day in Orlando, Curry getting emotional didn't mean something. But I thought Steph said he couldn't. Just yesterday, Steph said he couldn't envision himself playing without Draymond or Clay Thompson. Well, he did. So how do you put this into the equation? Uh, Zach Lowe saying with one sentence, uh, Draymond's volatility has worn on the organization. I mean, that's one of those, duh. Well, I mean, how could it not? not <laughs> how could it not? But it's not even to see that in print. Yeah. I mean, I saw, it, a big I saw it in real life oh. with Steph Curry. No, like, we that's did. the thing. Sometimes you see that. things that are bigger than a story. And when Steph Curry's crying... No, you're or despondent in the middle of a game. I think it's pretty obvious that Draymond's volatility volatility is worn on Steph Curry and the organization. But you thought it always goes back in the same bottle. Though. I know. I Dre never being Dre. Hey, we're playing better no, after Orlando. No, I'm with you. But now, now for the first time in a long time, Stanley, I feel like could they be okay. Hey, Curry, you feel how you feel, but could the organization be saying to themselves, there is life without Draymond? Well, why wouldn't they be? Hmm. Why, why wouldn't... I mean, again, if, if if the Warriors are looking at big changes, that's every player on the roster other than Steph Curry. Just has to be. And that includes Draymond Green. Uh, Brandon's in Oakland. What's up, Brandon? How you doing, man? Brandon. Doing well. How about you guys? Doing right. well. Good. Uh, so I'm a Warriors fan first and a Steph Curry fan second and watching the pre Steph days, obviously. Um, and I think one thing is clear as you look at the top four seeds, especially in the West and then the up and coming teams is they're all younger. They're all faster, bigger, more athletic. And Steph Curry has given everything to this organization. I want what's best for Steph, for Steph, but I will be a Warrior fan forever. And I think that the quickest way that you can start this rebuild, as Stiney said, you're hoping for competitiveness right now. And that's just not enough considering what Lake of promised us all those years ago. So I think that at the very least, you have to entertain what Steph could bring back in a trade package. You don't resign Clay, obviously. And then you hold on Draymond to see what happens around trade deadlines over the next two years. But the one thing that you need to compete today is assets. Thank you. Yeah. Right now, that we got a super chat. Let me read this, Donnie. Never go full, Jeff. Five dollars. What's up, brother? Special team, special player, special plays. Tuesday, Tuesday. 
Five dollars. It's Thursday. Wait, what? <laughs> What's up, brother? Special team, special player, special plays. Tuesday, Tuesday. What does that mean? I, <laughs> I have to, and what, what, you know? what, what team is special? I've, they're not special anymore. I, that's I, why we're having this conversation. But what's the Tuesday? You think they're still special. Oh, he's saying Tuesday was when team. they lost. Oh. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Help us out, Jeff. Uh, let's go to Nico. Nico's in uh, Nico's in Buenos Aires. Where is that? Argentina. Yes, Argentina, baby. Wow. Iris. What's up, man? I'm, I'm from I'm from San Francisco, but uh, nice. my mom and her family are from from South America. So I came down here. Tough couple years, man. We talking about? Um, there's action in Buenos Aires. I think um, I think what stuck out to me, what you guys mentioned, is you had to choose between Dre or Clay to get rid of. And the biggest thing for me has been I feel like the last couple years, starting with after we won the 22 tip, was the salary issues. Yep and overpaying for the level of performance, right? So for me, that brings up for what, uh, you know, Dre's offensive and defensive value is. Clay, to me, is kind of the inverse since his injury. So he, uh, where, where Dre is great defensively, Clay kind of holds up that end offensively, and they, 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 uh, they have the lack of the other. But if, for me, like if defense wins chips, then what would you rather keep? What Clay brings offensively and Dre defensively and typically, you know, in that case, like, does Dre have more bad defensive games, if that's his purpose, or does Clay have more bad offensive games, and, like, which one hurts more? I, I love the way you talk about it, because that, that's the way I, I look at Clay, too, now. I mean, the bottom line is Draymond Green, let's look at just the last game. Draymond Green was, eh. Yeah. He didn't do anything. No, not at all. No, but Clay was terrible. Like Clay actively, uh, yeah, uh, and helped get you beat. They were going by him too. But but that's like that to me is a big thing with Clay. When he's not good, he he causes you to lose more than Draymond Green does when he's not good. That's the biggest issue to me with Clay in terms of finding his value right now. But when they're good, it's not even close, then, Donnie. So he's bad more than he's ever yeah. been. Like do. You, I can't argue like, that. Again, if and I've said this before about Clay, if he's a 40% three-point shooter and he goes 4 for 10 one game, 4 for 10 another and 4 for 10 another, then he's a 40% shooter. The problem is he's going 2 for 10, 2 for 10 and then 8 for 10. And that means he's had two bad games. Like that's the the the, the issue to me with Clay is when he's not shooting the ball well, he really hurts you. He, well, he just hurts you. To be fair, though, okay, so Clay plays and he can hurt you in a game. Draymond misses games no because of his own yeah. accord. That's so fair. it's the same result, That's just fair. different ways to get there. That's fair. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with you saying truth. that. Yeah. And then, then I would just take it a step further and say, and there, therein lies the problem. But you are right. When they're both on the floor, Draymond does add more. And look, Clay, Clay's become an unreliable player. Draymond's become an unreliable player because of his because of his demeanor the last two years, and Steph's just taken a step back. So, I tough decisions. Mike's in Oakland. Hey, Mike, how you doing, man? What do you got? I, uh, I'm taking some stuff. This is this is my feeling, my take on right. on the whole thing. I would like to see since they all want Clay to stay. I want to see Steph. I want to see Draymond take some of their money and give it to Clay. Yeah, I would like to see that if you want him to stay. Also, um, I think, my opinion mm -hmm. now, you take all the rookies that we have and you start the rookies and you bring all the starters off the bench. You got to just move stuff around a little bit. Just shake it up just a little bit, stir it up just enough to where I think that it would bring something out of both of them, the youngest will get developed, and the old guys will be like, I'm not going to let these youngsters whoop me, and it'll and make them strive. They'll have something to strive for to get back into the starting line if that's what they want. But if you want to preserve them, then that's the way you do it. And you develop these kids over the summer. Kaminga's week in dribbling, teach them dribbling. Kaminga's week in rebounding, teach them how to position himself. Uh, you got Brandon Brzezinski, who just 
uh, needs to develop his three. You got um, uh, 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 who am I? Lester, who gets who needs to develop his offense and his defense. And I'm leaving out one more. Trey Jackson needs to develop a mid range and also how to dribble with the ball and cre- create uh, for himself. So you need to go. You need to have a, a, some kind of round robin for these guys to make them better. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Yep. Five one zero. How can you look at only the last game to assess? A, nobody's looking at the last game. Looking at the whole season. Clay was up and down, but he was down bad and had better results at the end to give you somewhat of hope moving forward. But the bottom line, Stan, I know this is our job, 10 to 2 every day, five days a week. It's what Joe Lacob's going to offer and what Clay Thompson wants to do. And we'll see. And there's just a part of me, if I were Clay, Stan, I'm being real here, I would lightweight be irritated that the first offer, which I've never forgotten, that bothered me, and my daddy knows, my mama knows, my brother knows, I'm pissed off. And maybe that led to him getting off to a slow start. But maybe he said, you know what, that's just part of doing business, nothing to see here. And now he goes 0 for 10 in his last game, possibly. I do wonder where he's at. Like he may want to change his scenery, and we would all understand. I mean, I've actually, I look at it from Clay's point of view and say, why would I want to come back? And man. But, and I get that stuff. But the one thing that, that I'm not going to, Take not less. gonna. I'm not gonna say that 24 million for Clay was a low ball offer. If that offer was two I, years I, for 48 million, I, like that's an offer. That's not a low ball offer. That's that's an offer. He thought it was a little bit too low. That's fine. But it's not a low ball yeah, offer. 24 million for Clay Thompson. Now I remember every clip that Evan puts up from our show on socials, and about two weeks ago, Stani. One went up from you, and these words came out of your mouth, and I agree with them. But let me just check that temperature. Clay Thompson has earned him some money. So th- you wouldn't be shocked if another ke- team comes Ooh. with, see, and that's where I'm at. And, like, I think we're going to see that that offer come from somewhere. Why Whether would, it be wh- Orlando, the Knicks. Two teams see. with a better championship window. Well, that too. Like, they do. Like, they just do. Damn. Uh, Cheesehead in Oakland. What's up, Cheesehead? How you doing? By the way, Mike Dunleavy, Warriors general manager, speaking at noon. We'll wait. take that live. Mike Dunleavy, noon today. That's in 45 minutes. What's up, Cheesehead? Well, I just want to say that uh, as as far as who you keep, I think you got to keep Draymond Green. Despite his on-court antics, he's the one player that brings the toughness that, you know, the Warriors need. And, and um I think without him, they're soft and they don't have any uh, floor manager on the defensive end, which, you know, they've got enough firepower on the offensive end if they hit threes. But that's my other point is that they used to have a huge advantage at the three-point line 10 years ago when they were the only team hoisting threes at a record pace. Now every team in the league has that. And some teams are far better at it, and they've got guys who are six five and taller, who are you know able to hit threes. And right now, the the the, the recipe for beating the Warriors is stick a tall and or stronger uh, player on uh, Curry. Exactly, and yeah, it just what? it doesn't it, it, it they don't have that that huge advantage at the three point line to make up for the turnovers and all the other problems that they have because they're the smallest team in the league. I mean, great call. And I'll ask you and the caller this real quick, Stanley. Who makes Steph's job easier? We know what the antidote is to make life difficult on him. It's been that way, no, but I'm asking I got, you, I, I gotta who be on honest. this team? I gotta be honest. But you say, I'm asking you no, a question. I'm not, I'm not you answering. You answer the question. No. Why? Because I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. This is, and this why do we talk about Steph Curry? He's like the only, he's a top 10 player of all time. We've never, we never asked Michael Jordan. Who makes Michael Jordan's job easier? Well, there was an answer. The Scotty su- Pippen. No, the superstar makes the job easier for others. But he had a top 50 guy next like, to him. The, the bottom line is your superstar Steph Curry is declining. Like, to me, you could make a case 
uh, is Clay coming back? Yes or no? It's it's less important than the fact that Steph Curry had a tough second half of the year. What if he? What if that's who Steph Curry is? Okay. Then why are we? Why would we pay Clay Thompson if this is who Steph's going to be? Maybe because we I, can't go anywhere yeah, if if he's not better and the team around him's not better. Yeah, I'll, I could give you a list of, and you you say you don't care, and I get it. I could give you a list of ten superstars you that are getting worse. Okay, but it's not as fast as it seems like it's happening here because what's around him is rot is rotten. Okay, so Steph's getting worse. Because, it, okay. No, they, there's a natural stop, evolution like, to I, stop what? You blame everybody but Steph. But give him some help. You're too smart to, it's not, what, 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 can't you just echo those words? No. Give him some effing help. We don't talk you about stars like that. You know he doesn't have any help. And you're just ignoring it like just, the dude needs a cane in a wheelchair. I just he never, has no effing help. You well, know it, but you won't say it. I've never Why? heard. I, because I've never heard people say, Got to give Magic Johnson some help. He Got to give Larry help. Bird he some had help. help everywhere. Oh, at the end of his career, he had help everywhere. Stop living like he's thirty six. Okay, there may not be enough help out no. there for him. Well, I'll tell you what. What's around him right now ain't suffice. And that's a sinner that can't get you 10 points every other night. Another guy that needs well, a therapist because yeah. he don't, but he they don't were make, show up but and they were do making his a job. run two days ago. And you got a rookie leading in yeah. plus minus, but yeah. everything's good here. Same guy Let's thought they were a championship 30. team two And years then you're going to allow his ago. ass to go spin miles in the Olympics. What sense does that make? He don't come out here like you're Abraham Lincoln. Don't be no fraud. His ass ain't got no business in the Olympics. He's tired. Now you want to be Abe Lincoln. He's going for the country. You can't tell him not to play in the Olympics because he needs to check that box. No, we need to get back to the playoffs. And if you're tired, rest. The F with the Olympics. You, you do realize... That if Joe Lacob were an owner who said, my guys aren't playing in the Olympics, they would be a team that players wouldn't want to come to. All right, okay. Go, sure. You got to let that sure. one go. Sure. You, you don't mean what you're saying. You like, I'm you, just, don't be Abe Lincoln to me. And who the I'm hell are you tell, to tell him not to I'm play in the Olympics? You you're being a phony. I'm being a phony. Yes, because I think you're a joke. Yeah, I'm and not I a joke. You, I'm not a joke. No, 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 no take no, that I'm back. Mad. Because Put I think you're being no. On. Because I think you're being ludicrous. Well, saying Steph shouldn't play no, in the Olympics. I'm just saying what's I think being that's real. ludicrous. I'm saying what's real. If he's tired and you're telling me he's altered, Good. maybe you sit this one out, Skip. That's all I would tell the chef if I saw him in the mall. It's the one thing not on his resume. It got nothing to do with the Warriors. What the hell are you talking about, man? One day it's about the team. Now it's about him chasing gold medals. It's about getting back to the playoffs. But you're not a fan, so you don't care. I don't want to hear about a gold medal. What? It I'm worried about getting back to the playoffs. And if you're telling me he's tired, you don't need to be playing ball. Let me just stop. I, I just... Let me just stop. I'm good now. I just, I think you can't. He's got to play in the Olympics. It's he, it's the one thing that he doesn't have on his resume. Whether well, I, he doesn't I, have a rookie of the year, most improved, most improved player. He doesn't have a lot of things. But the, the the point is not about Steph. It is about the team, right? I mean, people may not want to. Not hear about this, him playing or not. But people playing. may not want to hear this. But. It may be, a gold medal may be a higher priority for him now than it's ever been because he's 36 and because he's never been further from a title. Well, and also because like he that, was injured the last two times sure. that he had a chance to play in the Olympics. Like sure. that's that's the rat on the table is that he doesn't have a gold medal because he was hurt the last two Olympics that he could have competed. Nevertheless, like it's you can't ask him not to play in the Olympics. Can you? I would go no. to my boss and say, look, if I'm aging or you think I'm slipping, it's about the Warriors. And maybe I don't have a gold medal. But if you think it's best for me and our bas this team that I rest, 
I would go to my employer and say that, especially after spending $400 million on a payroll that didn't manifest in a playoff berth. But if Steiny, but you're, I'm not saying, I just can't believe you're putting, now you're doing what you accused me of doing. So No, his, I'm just realistic. You're not asking Steph Curry medal. to not play in the Olympics. Right. He's 36 right. years old. Right. He's one of the greatest right. players who's ever played. We know that's a void on his resume. I would look, they just got eliminated in April. So it's about his agenda. It's about him getting a gold medal over coming back. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't well, I don't look at it like that. I don't look at it like that. Like, I don't look at it as though if he goes and plays the in the Olympics, he's guaranteeing we can't be better next year. I, I, I'm just, I, you cannot ask Steph not to play in the Olympics. I, uh, can, I don't want to read something if it's, not it ain't derogatory read it if guru has a million fans i'm one of them if guru has 10 fans I i'm like one this. of them if guru has one fan that's me if guru has no fans that means i'm no longer on this earth thank you guru you're the goat i appreciate that god i'm being real man i'm just saying what people are thinking and i would hope steph would I, say i, I need to rest I know you want it. I know you want it. But man, so is gold medal before being a why? Why, did, why does it, you're telling me? And why are you pitting gold medal against the? Why, no, why can't I'm he do pit, both? I'm pitting rest. I'm pitting rest. You're telling me he's aging, and you're acting like it's fast. I don't think it's as fast as you're making it out to be. The team didn't make the playoffs. Maybe I missed this one. But hey, that's just but he, me. But. That's just me. The reason he's doing it's because he's missed a bunch of them. Because of uh, Andrews in Pleasanton. What's up, Andrew? How you doing? Oh, hey guys. Hey, how you doing, Danny? Hey, uh, doing well. Hey. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, Guru. Uh, just a quick thing. Like, uh, if uh, Steph plays in the uh, Olympics, uh, you know, he's going to. That means he's going to stay in shape. Uh, during the summer, and uh, we'll come in a better shape next year, right? So that, that's that. So I basically wanted to talk about Clay Thompson. Clay, uh, obviously, uh, he's been uh, drafted by the Warriors. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Uh, the one person uh, I think will go is uh, Andrew Wiggins, because uh, I think we'll probably sign Clay for like three for seventy or something. Uh, and uh, Andrew Wiggins is probably going to get traded, uh, hopefully for a point guard, uh, maybe somebody like Dejounte Murray from the Hawks. Ugh, he stinks. Uh, like, I like, him. like, he stinks. I mean, you know, I'm just basically kidding. we need a point guard and like uh, have Steph move over to the shooting guard. Position. That I mean, that I agree with probably, Andrew. Like, that that yeah. I agree with. We we're we're up against it, but that I do think they got to move Steph off the ball more. I do. What about? What about this? And you, you may laugh. What about not winning the gold if Steph doesn't go? Is that important? Like, I take it Steph's going to the Olympics to help the Warriors win a gold. They'll be or help. fine without Steph. Who? The team. I don't know that they will. Like, I don't think I don't think they're a lock to win it. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, we got Mike Dunleavy coming up in 30 minutes. General Manager of the Golden State Warriors. He's coming up in 30 minutes. Uh, what's coming up next on the game is presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. Hey, Bay Area, find your fill at Jack's Restaurant. As a brother-owned...
obviously pretty unknown. We, we don't want to talk about the season first. You want to talk about the future? That was a lot of games played, man. That was pretty big accomplishment. What's up with y'all not wanting to live in the present, bro? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, what was your question? Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. I was Clay Thompson from yesterday. Him and Anthony Slater of The Athletic. Uh, Clay wanted to talk about the year, but the question was about you, uh, about what's going to happen with the future. Warriors got to figure it out. They got to figure it out. That was the first do. question that was asked to Clay Thompson. I wonder if he was, do you think he was mad? I don't. I think it was a little bit of a bit, but that's also who Clay is. He's kind of passive aggressive. What'd you think, Gil? I hadn't heard it, but wow. I think he was mad. Uh, Mike Dunleavy, general manager of the Golden State Warriors, coming up at noon. And um, obviously, the Warriors players talked yesterday. We'll listen to some more Clay Thompson sound. And we'll get Mike Dunleavy in here live. Uh, he's meeting the media at noon. Uh, we got calls. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's start out with, he's been waiting an hour. Oh. I guess we'll we'll get to him. Joe's in San Jose. What's up, Joe? Thank you guys for taking my call. All right. I look, I'm looking back. I'm looking back on the Warriors season. They were in some really good competitive games that went down to the wire. Um, I know they are older team, but there, there were some really good entertaining games, and I enjoy watching them. And me personally, I, I agree with you, Steiny, that what Steve Kerr said was this ridiculously stupid. Because my, my point is, if he's going to say that about the salary, then why do they need a high-paying coach if they, if they can't make the playoff? Because he has to be included, too. He can't just uh, exclude himself from that um uh, the salary because why do they need a high paying coach if they can't make the playoffs? And the other thing I just, the other point I wanted to make is that um, a lot, I think the Warriors keep the big three and they get a new coach that can be more defensive and more in, in c- c- control. Maybe, maybe they need a different year. Yeah. You know? I think they owe it to the fans to do that. I mean, the problem with that, Joe... Oh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate the call. Appreciate you listening. Yeah. I mean, I just don't know how much sense there is talking about Steve Kerr when he's got two more years left in his contract and they extended him within the past two months. That's off the table. So, but I do think that that extension probably means they're more likely to bring Clay back or the odds are a little higher they'll bring Clay back because... That's who Steve Kerr wants to coach. Yeah. So um let's go to Heva. Heva's in Danville. What's up, Heva? How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for taking the call. Sure. I just wanted to really quickly make two points. First of all, can we please stop talking about getting rid of Draymond Green? We literally are nothing without him. He's our defensive QB. Well, we won't even you know- compete. We talked about competing earlier. We wouldn't even compete without him. Wow. I, he's like a necessary vice. Unfortunately, he is wow. what he is, but we can't replace him with anything. Yeah, uh, I, the second point I wanted to make is is Clay Thompson. I love the guy. I even named my son after Clay, spelled the same way. But wow. if he wants to stay in the big three, want to keep it together, I would be all for it. But they have to kind of do it within their group, right? Like, as long as they know, hey, you're, we're not going to be able to spend $400 million every year to keep a mediocre team. Like, they got to shed the big contracts around them, and if they, if those three want to run it back with the young guys or some, like, ancillary pieces, go for it. But they got to have that expectation that, hey, you don't expect us to sign some big, you know, Kevin Durant signing if you three want to run it back and get paid all really well at the top of the market. Those are my two points. Thanks for your uh, for your um, show. Thank you. He wow. appreciate it. Named him after Clay. Yeah, I like my days of saying this team can't go on with a certain player are done, unless his name is Steph Curry. Right, and there it is. I mean, again, I I just think when you say something like 
Well, we can't get rid. If we get rid of Draymond Green, we've got no shot at anything. Oh, well Come then. Now. Oh, I mean, those days are over. Is what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's how I feel. I thought they were over last year, but look, the the team up until this point has made it clear that they want Draymond on it. We'll see if they want Draymond on it over the course of the off season. Um, but. You know, how can you sit here as a 10th seed and say, well, if we lose Draymond Green, then we won't have it. Well, what did you have with him? Like, that's the thing that that these players, are they're all becoming more expendable because they're all getting older and they're all getting less effective. Uh, D Money's in Hayward. What's up, D Money? How you doing, man? Yeah, what's up, Stiney? What's up, Go? Hey. Hey, lo- loving that uh that emotion to that goo, man. I feel you, brother. But uh, look, man, I'm a big Clay Thompson fan, man. I probably got more Clay Thompson jerseys in my closet than I do Steph Curry, man. But what's real is real. I mean, the Warriors gave you a hundred million to rehab your knee, man. They gave you that contract as soon as you tore your knee, and you need to do the front office a solid by taking whatever contract they're trying to throw at you if you want to be with the big three. I mean, there's tons of free agents out there right now that can fill in a role right now for the money that we're going to throw at Clay. I mean, you got DeMar DeRozan, you got Buddy Heald out there. I mean, you got Gary Trent. You got tons of players out there that could fit the mold of the Warriors' offense. This emotional attachment that Steph got with his guys, man, needs to end at some point because if he doesn't, I mean, it's gonna, that's where he's going to stay at is four titles. I mean, why do you think LeBron has won titles with three different franchises because he has no emotional attachment to anybody. I mean, he let he was cool with letting Kyrie Irving go. Yeah. Stoney, can you tell the folks you can't go spend Clay's money on a player? You can't go spend Clay's money on a player. That's that's what a lot of people seem to forget. I mean, the... Because that's a whole different ball game if you could. If you get rid of... Uh, that's more of a personal thing, you know, you so lucky, you pal. No, they can't. They'll... They can't. They they can't go spend. Wow. They can't lose Clay and then go spend twenty plus million. Uh, this is an interesting soundbite from Clay from yesterday. Uh, I don't think so. Because when I came back, you know, I was a second leading scorer on a championship team. And when you've experienced that, you're like, I'm back. Then even that next year, led the league in threes, forty one percent from from three, like on three hundred makes. That's very hard to do. So the moments were there, but maybe my burst wasn't what it was. And that happens. But at the end of the day, you know, I still feel like I can do it at a very high level. And I did have times where I did. Obviously, the way it ended this year wasn't what it was the last couple of years. But I'm not going to let one sour night or beer ruin a decade plus of great work and success. Uh, that was Clay Thompson talking about uh, rehabbing with the Warriors and the last two years he's had and uh, what the future holds for Clay Thompson and the Warriors. Very prideful right there, Stani. Absolutely. Uh, let's go to uh, Ricardo and Tiburon. What's up, uh, Ricardo? How you doing, man? Mike Dunleavy All coming right, up at guys. noon. Mike Dunleavy. Uh, what's up, buddy? How are you? All right, guys. I just wanted to join the postmortem and talk All a little right. bit about how we got here in the first place. You know, I think that uh, Joe Lightyears and uh, what was the general manager's name? Whatever. Myers. Uh, left, uh, Myers. Myers, the left the cover dry. The problem is that you never build around Steph and Clay. You were very fortunate. This group inherited Steph. They lucked out on Clay. If you recall, he wanted to trade Clay. And, he, and so there's this, this thing about strength and numbers, it never became a reality. You didn't build around those guys. You know, you bought into this paradigm that you can't win without Draymond. Of course you can win without Draymond. Not to mention, what what were our draft picks? You know, my goodness, this they never built around this team. They never built strength and numbers. So now you have an aging core and you have a dire dire circumstances and a lot of that i think that you keep steph and clay because they can age it's shooting you can shoot you know at my age i can still shoot you can shoot you just got to build this team around you around steph and clay and try to do that 
in a way that you get back to the system that was the Warriors. You know what was most frustrating about losing to the Kings? Mm. They ran motion offense better than the Warriors did. They ran that system. Coach Brown took them, and they just beat the, the Warriors at what they used to do. And this thing about not winning without dream, there's many guys in the league that could play defense. Look at the, look at just, oh, it's just so frustrating. Missing on Wiseman, never building around these guys. They now probably have missed that window. I mean, Wiseman draft, you could have had Maxi. You could have had uh, Halliburton. It's just, it's just ridiculous. And it's just, Thanks, Ricardo. Appreciate the call. Points on the draft. Uh, we're going to take a little breather right now, uh, and it's to accommodate Mike Dunleavy, the general manager of the Golden State Warriors. He's going to be talking at noon today, and we're going to take that live. Uh, Mike Dunleavy, general manager of the Golden State Warriors, he's going to join us today at noon. We heard from all the players yesterday. Uh, Steve Kerr was on with Willard and Dibbs, so... Uh, Golden State Warriors season is wrapped up, and now it's time for everybody to talk about it. So Mike Dunleavy coming up in uh, 15 minutes. A reminder, you can catch all four hours of Steiny and Goo on the free Odyssey app. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our QR code on both YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first-class money market today. Coming up in 15 minutes, Mike Dunleavy, General Manager of the Golden State Warriors. Don't go anywhere. And it's sponsored by In at the Tides. Guru, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Experience the one...
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Our guy, your camera. You can say your voice. Don't worry, Steiny. Nobody could see what you just said. Because, <laughs> you know, you didn't have the camera on you. I'll let you down, Steiny. Our, no, you didn't. Our guy Pittman? Yeah. He's the um, man. PA announcer? Yeah, yeah about. <laughs> That came, <laughs> hey, that came over the radio, Evan. Dude, <laughs> you saying I'm out came over the radio. I'm out. They're just all, you said how, how fans say, uh, you said, you know, it's, uh, it's hard, uh, whatever. Uh, how about this, though? How about this for a positive? We got Mike Dunleavy coming up in 10 minutes. I'm excited about that. The Warriors right now have more functional young players on their roster than they've had at any point during Steph's, well, at any point during the dynasty. Like, that's got to be a positive. And whether you think they're a championship core in three years or not, do I think they are? No. But the reality of the situation is Jonathan Kaminga's the starter probably in the NBA. Trace Jackson Davis started for the Golden State Warriors second half of the season. So did Pods. Pajemski started some, came off the bench some, and Moody is a rotational player. Like, you you do have, I'm not saying they might not need a star. Maybe they'll need a star in three years uh, to play with them. And it maybe that star will be somebody other than Steph Curry. But, like, that's a that's a positive as far as I'm concerned. Because you you haven't been sitting with four guys. I mean, they're, they're NBA players. They, they are NBA players, and they all might be rotational NBA players. Two of them may be a start, maybe starter. So, like, I'm not taking that lightly. I'm not taking that lightly. And the reason I'm not taking it lightly, Goo, is why I'm not here saying, well, trade a bunch of the young guys for a veteran. Like, you got to give Dunleavy credit for, and, and Myers to an extent, that they found a couple guys for that this team can move forward with if they want. No. And, Stani, I hope I sound like a dude. I know I sound, but I understand that. But if you were speaking to diehard Warrior fans that are just dreaming and hoping Steph can get number – the Warriors can get number five, it just sounds like you're telling them – and you might be. Let me know. Hey, our young guys got potential. Forget we didn't make the playoffs. Curry's here and just deal with it in a sense. Kind of. And like, that's where the – and it's nobody's fault. It's not the youngster, but that's where the pain comes in. We got another super chat, Stiney. You want to read it from Atco Pescatrol? I don't believe Monty said this, but maybe he had. No, he said something. Uh, Gio wow. Monty Poole on Dubs Talk say the Chris Paul, the CP3 tray, yeah. uh, was a fail and that he wouldn't bring Clay back. Now that's strong. Chris Paul the second. That's great. Uh, we have a, no, Monty, Monty said that if wow. they don't make the playoffs, it's an absolute failure. No, that he did. For sure. Yeah. I, I think he said that. Uh, Jacob's in Fremont. What's up, Jacob? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Appreciate you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I, just re- I just really had a couple questions for you guys. I had, uh, I'm not as in tune with uh, some of the exact uh, rules with the contracts and everything like that and some of the free agents out there I really haven't paid too much attention for. But I just wanted to kind of put it out there. With Steph aging and his numbers obviously going down a little bit, he's putting, he's obviously, you know, he's still putting up great numbers for his age. He's, put, uh, he's, leading the league in threes. I'm not, I'm not discrediting everything the man's doing. He's still one of the best in the league. But there's other players that are doing it better than him. He's not the best in the league anymore. But if I'm not mistaken, he is the highest paid guy in the league. If he's so concerned with playing with Clay and playing with Draymond and playing, the, playing it out with these guys, and it's obvious to everyone, and probably including themselves, that they're aging and declining, could they not restructure a uh, an extra year out of his contract and maybe maybe drop him ten million dollars. I understand that's an ego hit, but if everybody wants some gold, why not everybody work together here and make everything work? That's just I I'm not exactly in tune with it. That's a question for you guys. If you could answer that question, I truly appreciate it. Call's been great. I've been listening to you guys all day. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean break the news to him, Stoney. It's not gonna happen. Yep. Man. It's not gonna you know, he's He's paid what he's paid, and he deserves he deserves what he got. 
let me ask you this. Yeah. So a lot of people say the NBA implemented these rules, you know, the second apron and all the, the Joe Lacob rules. What would be different had they not done that? Well, what would be different for the Warriors had they not done, I believe it's a couple of years, a lot of people say they did it to hate on the Warriors and stop what Joe Lacob and Bob Myers and crew were doing or had mastered. I mean, to me, it did, it's not a huge factor. And oh. the reason I don't think it's a huge factor is because what the, what the league did is they implemented penalties for teams that have a payroll that's too high. But, and, and the Warriors have felt that. But, I don't believe that if the rules weren't there, yeah, that they would just go sky high into the like. Like before they changed the rules, there was still a penalty for going over the luxury tax. They became more stringent in the last couple of years. And he kept going through it, plowing through them. But he's, he's kudos to Joe. But even but he has been saying for a couple of years now they can't continue to do what they're doing with their payroll. Steve Kerr indicated that yesterday. So, and like, not make the playoffs. Exactly. Kerr said, not, and, but that's the other thing. It's it, making the playoffs. I don't think's enough God. either. They got to be a championship type contender. Uh, Don's in Hayward. What's up, Don? How you doing, man? Hey, Stadium Goo. Hey. Thanks for taking my call, man. I appreciate it. Hey. Hey. I wanted to make a comment about uh, um, Steph Curry going to the Olympics. And uh, I think you might like this, Goo. Um, going to the Olympics would actually, because I think Steph uh, Curry is coaching the Olympics, right? Yeah, and Steve Kerr. I don't think, I think, yeah, I don't think that they're going to be using uh, Steph Curry as the main focus of that offense. So mm. it might actually give them a, a different look of how they should run their offense next season. You know, not using Curry as, uh, the number one option, maybe, and, and use somebody else because he is getting older, you know. So I don't know about what you think about that guy. Yeah, he's playing some load know. management in the Olympics. Steiny, they're not going to need him. I know you said that. Earlier, I right? I don't know why people think like I don't know why the you big think boys the, are playing. Yeah, but I don't know why you think the war the U.S. is just going to win a gold medal in the Olympics. Like the other teams are pretty good. <laughs> wow. But we're sending the big boys. And so are they. We ain't, we ain't who we used to be anymore. <laughs> well. Uh, uh, big D's in the hospital. What's up, Big D? How you doing, buddy? Lunch time. <laughs> hey, what's up, fellas, man? I was, I was just, you know, I listen every day to you guys about lunch. Hey, hey, it's all good, man. You know, uh, I kind of predicted this was going to happen to the Warriors. And I'm going to put everything... All my eggs in a basket for Joey Lightyear, baby. You know what? He needs to make it happen. That's their that's their prerogative to get that man Curry some help with some new people. And I can't go out and say get this person, get that person, get this person because that's their job. And these players make millions. You know what I mean? They make more money than I ever see in my life. So I don't feel sorry for none of them. But you know what I mean? I love cheering for them. And I got family in Sacramento that's teasing me. So I was Joey, Joey Lightning to get it done this year hey, because they asked me, was I going to the award ceremony? And I said, what was that? And they said, Clay Thompson's retirement. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, they got me good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Guru, What's up, baby? Toddy, baby, get a hot dog. Okay, I got you. I'm on it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thank Big you. D. Appreciate the call. Uh, uh, to real quick, yeah. to right on the table, the Kings have not made the playoffs yet. <laughs> they lose tomorrow. They're going home. Well, and I and – Kudos to the Kings because what they happened? didn't they didn't act like they made the playoffs the other night. Saw the interview with De'Aaron Fox. He was very composed. But the city did. Very yeah, composed talking about how we still have work to do. And no Zion tomorrow. Jimmy Butler out and Giannis won't be. Injuries stink. Yeah. And the Warriors didn't have any. God, they could have made a run. Uh, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM. In HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Uh, Mike Dunleavy's getting ready to talk to the media um, any minute now. So when he takes the podium, we're going live to hear Mike Dunleavy, the general manager of the Golden State Warriors, talking about what's sure to be a very interesting offseason for Golden State. What you looking for? 
I guess the clay thing for me. I mean, and I know you'll give us what he wants to give us, but it's what, the clay. What's thing. he gonna say? Man. We want clay back. We no, hope, the, we hope the he season wants was back. disappointing. Season was disappointing. All right. All right. Uh, we did see a lot of growth. We did see a lot of growth from our young players. Uh, I think we need to get bigger. I think that'll be a theme. Getting bigger. Uh, move. Uh, no, let's go to uh, let's go to Jimmy in Bayview. Jimmy is in Bayview. What's up, Jimmy? Hey guys, hey. great show. You got Doc. You got Doc Rivers on. Sounds oh. like. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. hey um, I wanted to say something about Clay. Um, as far as a fit for Clay, Orlando might be better. Uh, they got the third rank defense. They're taller. They're younger, and uh, they'll probably offer him three years, and they probably got a spot for his boat. And and the other thing is with the repeater tax. Um, does it reset if they get under the first tier? Because, you know, they have the rules now. You have to be under the second year, two out of five years. Right. So, I mean, they have to plan for that if they're going to do like a mini rebuild. You know, I, I would just kind of get under it for next year. And All right. We got Mike Dunleavy. He's taking the podium at the Warriors facility in downtown San Francisco. Let's take a listen. Mike Dunleavy, Golden State Warriors. We'll get that for you in a sec. We're efforting Mike Dunleavy. Uh, he's talking to the media uh, momentarily. Supposed to meet him at uh, 12 o'clock. It's for, for a season. Here we uh, go. That, uh, unfortunately for us, we feel like ended ended too soon. Um, disappointed in our year. Uh, even though we finished with more wins than last year, uh, I thought overall we came up way short in terms of what we thought talent-wise, experience-wise, um, all those things that, you know, an ownership group, front office, coaches, players all signed off on the roster to start the season. And, um, you know, we just got ourselves too far behind the eight ball, frankly, uh, as the season went along and chased it down at the end. And it's just too little too late in a, in a tough Western Conference. So um, a lot to figure out, lots to improve on. But, um, you know, disappointed to be here today, frankly. Um, yeah, so Steph and Draymond and Steve have been you know, vocal about wanting to bring Clay back, wanting to keep that core together. Um, how possible is it for you to build a championship team around them if they do stay intact? Well, considering they won four before, I I would say it's well within the realm of reasonability. Um, but we got to, you know, certainly we want Clay back first and foremost. I expressed that to him yesterday. I think our players have expressed that, our coaches, front office, ownership, Look, everybody wants Clay back. Um, he's still a really good player. And I think we have enough good players in our system. Um, we have enough assets to acquire good players. And we have the ability to keep getting better. So given that, um, as long as those guys are still really good, like, yeah, we can, I think we can contend and compete, but we just unequivocally have to improve. How how much will financials come into play this summer and how reasonable is it to improve the roster, make the moves you want while, I mean, I guess, it's, do you guys want to duck the luxury tax entirely? Um, I, you know, the the financials will always come into it. It's, it's part of the puzzle. Um, I wouldn't say we're at a point now where we're saying we got to be out of the tax or we got to be under a certain apron or anything like that. We're going to look at everything. Um, I think if if you've got a team that you feel can contend for a championship, you, you do what it takes financially. So um, we'll look at everything. Um, we'll balance it out. And it's hard to say right now in terms of like what it, what it's going to look like and all that, because this is April and this stuff goes into June and July. Um, but you know how Joe is with his willingness to spend and compete that I don't, I don't think there'll be any restrictions, but we'll also be prudent. I mean, to put a team out there that can't make the playoffs, like we spent $400 million this year, um, I, I wouldn't recommend that. So we'll we'll figure it out, but I don't think we have anything set in stone in terms of parameters we got to live by. Do you feel, you mentioned uh, expressing to Clay that you want him back yesterday. Do you feel like that's likely? Do you feel like, I mean, reciprocal, or do you think this is going to be like potentially a thorny negotiation? No, I think it's a mutual feeling. Um, I mean, the guy's been here a long time. He means so much to the organization. Um, you know, we really, really value him. And so there's nothing that would make me think that he wants to go somewhere else or we don't want him back. And for that reason, I'm hopeful we can make it happen. But 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's a deal. Both sides got to be, be good with it. And, um, we'll work through that, but I think, you know, hopeful and optimistic I am about it. You're listening to Mike Dunleavy. It's his season ending press conference, general manager of the Golden State Warriors. Um, can't live with him at times. I can't live, can't win without him. Um, what is your feeling of certainty that he's part of this going forward? And how do you navigate that if he is, if he's, sometimes he's just not available to you? Yeah, I think um, in terms of having him back, I think very, very high likelihood. I can't imagine a scenario where he's not back. Um, could be wrong, but man, he's signed up under contract. We value him. He's a core piece of what we do. So um, fully expect him to be back. I think we won over 60% of the games he played in this year. So you know how meaningful he is to winning and he'll continue to do so. Um, as far as the other stuff, part of it, I think, is managing him, Steph and Clay as they age. Um, these are, these are long seasons. These guys have been through a lot. So we've got to manage the emotional, the mental, the physical stress and, and, and the fatigue these guys take on. And that'll be a part of the process moving forward. But I think Draymond, um, I think he's in a great place mentally, um, you know, just evaluating and observing him over the season after the suspension. Um, I think he's learned from it. Um, I think he's better and, um, we'll continue to work on that stuff and, and have it on top of mind. But, you know, I think, um, we're in a really good place with him and excited to have him back. Uh, how would you assess this season for Jonathan? And then being that he's extension, uh, extension eligible this summer, um, how do you see his future here in Golden State? Yeah, I think really good growth out of JK. Um, you know, frankly, put a ton of time in this off, this past off season, came in, had a great preseason and got off to a little bit of slow start, um, but found his way and was, you know, had a stretch there in, in the middle of the season was, you know, not only one of the best players on our team, but in the league. And, um, that's where we see the potential with him. Uh, and like with him and our other young guys, vitally important that these guys take another step because, um, you know, that's, that's how we're going to balance this thing out with, you know, our more mature legacy players with, you know, a younger core of group that can push us forward and help us win. And, um, like Moses, JK, those guys are extension eligible once, you know, we'll get down the road with that, but unequivocally we, we value them. We want them here. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Mike, earlier you said, um, you have the assets to acquire good players and Joe's never been afraid to take big swings, whether from Durant to the reports of the inquiry in LeBron, whatever. Um, I realize you can't talk about specific players, but how realistic, given the position you're in, given your roster, how realistic is it to take a big swing to add a, a marquee player? Yeah, I mean, I think the premise of getting better, um, that's what we got to look at for sure. So that'll be taken into consideration. Um, we also got to be mindful of the player, who it is, um, the age of the player. Uh, the skill set of the player, it's, it's all got to fit to, to be able to put the chips on the table to make a move. So those are the things we'll kind of look at and, and, and evaluate. But um, yeah, there's, there's multiple ways to get better. And that's certainly, certainly one of them. Moses has had a kind of a, you know, a strange first few years from a rotation standpoint, every time it looks like he's broken through DMPs um, as he enters year four, as you rebuild the roster this summer, I mean, is there, a desire to kind of clear the path for him a little bit from a rotation standpoint or figure out his future, you know, get it more settled than it has been. Yeah. I mean, I think the good and bad of the situation with Moses is first, you know, he's improved. He's gotten a lot better. Um, and on top of it, I think any issues with him playing, frankly, as a result of our depth, um, which is also a good thing, but at the end, you're right. He, he hasn't probably played as much as we'd like, and there hasn't been a clear enough pass. So, That'll be something we'll look at. Um, I think it's really important coming into year four for him that there is there is some reasonable playing time available for him where he can impact our team and and be out there and continue to improve. And I think that's a I think that's a fair thing. Mike, you've seen eighty three games now, uh, knowing what you lack, knowing how the West is stacked up. Uh, in hindsight, could you have improved this team at the deadline? Was there something that was out there that might have helped? Like looking back on it. I think knowing what I know now, um, there's not anything I w on the table that I would have done um, or gone through with. I think it was good to see this team out. I think one of the best things about this year, frankly, is there are no catastrophic injuries. There's no, hey, Steph only played 40 games. What would this team be like without him? Thing like that. We know clearly what this team was. It wasn't good enough. And so there's, there's no doubt about that. There's no what ifs if we had made it. 
a, a move at the deadline. Well, maybe that wasn't the right move. What if we had kept this guy or that guy? We answered all those questions. And so now we can move forward with clarity. And um, but but going back on it, now I feel good about this team. We 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 really put a lot into it before the season started and, and a lot of thought. I thought it could play multiple ways. Um, pretty versatile defensively, offensively. Do we do those throughout the year? No, but to be able to see that out after the deadline, I thought was important. That's what I get the feedback I got from the players, the coaching staff. And frankly, we were 27 and 12, you know, the, the last half of the season. So I'm good with how, you know, we went after the deadline. Just don't like maybe the, the earlier part of the season that got us too far behind that we couldn't make up. Mike, kind of, I guess, following up on that, then moving into this off season, what do you think your biggest roster needs are? What did you guys really lack uh, this season? Yeah, I mean, look, it's like I said, we got to get better in a lot of areas, but the ones that I think immediately jump off the page is, you know, defensively, we got to be better. This is an organization, a team that uh, when we've been really good and won championships, it's been mostly with defense. And then you got some great, exciting offensive moments that uh, everybody thinks about, but it's really the defense has been the core of the thing. So, um, you know, improving defensively within, getting better defensive players. And then from there, you know, I think as Steph and Draymond and Clay, those guys, you know, kind of age, um, you know, shooting is important. Shooting is important in this league. It's important to have guys that can shoot around them. So I think addressing that will always be a thing. Um, but I think there's a, and, and, and honestly, size, size, and not necessarily at the center position, but positional size across the board, which has been a, strong point of the teams here um you know whether it's shooting guards wings small forwards whatever it is always had good size and length so um like to always keep that in mind and address that but those are probably the biggest areas that i'm, I'm thinking about right now and you mentioned shooting how much uh, this season there wasn't like a, a consistent secondary scorer that you could consistently rely on do you think that was an issue kind of throughout the year yeah sure i think so i think a lot fell on steph's shoulders um I think he he would probably tell you that, and you could notice it in the, in the wear it took on him. Um, in fact, it really with some of his decision making at times too, and it's just a lot for him to burden. And we've got to find a way to to help him out in that. And, and frankly, I think we've got some talent on the roster that can do that. Um, and maybe we got to just be a little bit better about uh, bringing that out. And so maybe maybe there's some improvements from externally, but I think we have some ways internally to do that. Mike, after Mike one year in this job, what's the Golden something State you wish you? Oh boy, great question. Um, you know, I think with with this thing, um, as the season goes along, you you put together the best roster you can. You try and manage it. You go through it, and then you just find yourself just sitting there observing, feeling like a fan. And there's at times where just not much you can do, good or bad. Um, but, you know, honestly, I, you know, I've been worked here for a few years and I, it's not like a surprise. I don't think there's anything that surprised me where there's some things that were completely off the radar that happened between, you know, maybe Draymond's suspension or what happened with Decky, those types of things. Yeah, hope, hopefully those things don't ever happen again. But, um, you know, there were learning moments and situations that we probably, um, you know, that, that I wasn't expecting. My, my, what kind of presence in your mind is the managing of the these extra years, these maybe the end years of a dynasty? You know, how much are you thinking, okay, let's just maintain these guys and as Draymond said, do right by them for what they've done? And how much is it, you know what, at some point, you're going to need a roster that is past those guys. Maybe, you know, not for a while, but uh, how how much of a weight is that? How much of a responsibility is that for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's certainly a responsibility just because this team and organization means so much to the Bay Area. So you can feel, um, you know, what it means to the fans and even the people within the organization, the players. But it's kind of a cool, it's a cool opportunity. Um, like normally you're trying to build a team from the startup and there's an ascension and all this. This is a little bit different. And so... You know, I relish the challenge. Um, and, and by the way, those guys aging out, like it's Steph Curry, it's Draymond Green, it's Clay Thompson. Like those guys are, 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 are great guys to, to go out with. And so, um, and, and they're really, they're, they're still good at basketball. So I, I think it's a manageable thing. Is it challenging? Yes. But, um, you know, I, I do. I relish it because it's unique and, um, you know, I think it's somewhat doable. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Mike, uh, you touched on Decky, and that was actually on my mind too. Just how Steve and your coaching staff and support staff navigated that um, 
the unthinkable for for everybody and and Steve also tried so many different rotations this season and and starting lineups and got traced such good experience I mean how, how did he navigate that with with support from everybody else too yeah I mean Steve's masterful that that stuff um you know the decky thing was new new for everybody so I can't say he was quite very experienced with that but he handled it masterfully um it's a lot an NBA season is a lot to navigate and I think coming into it the biggest thing our group um wanted to push and focus on was our connectivity and frankly you know I thought we were great in that area um that showed up with the stuff with decky the stuff with Draymond some just unthinkable losses that we had on the court with you know blowing big leads or you know, having games in hand that we gave up, this group never wavered. They stuck together. Um, I just thought in the end, we came up short, like from a basketball standpoint, too many mistakes, um, just not enough discipline, the small things, getting back on defense, um, you know, not turn the ball over, not fouling. Those things did us in. And, you know, we're sitting here today with the season ended because of it. Steve said something the other night that kind of stuck out. He said that he needs to be better specifically talking about the offense, getting the offense into more rhythm and more flow. Um, how do you think he was over the course of this season? Obviously, off the court stuff was one thing, but on the court, how do you think that went? Yeah, I think it went well. I mean, that's I think hopefully that's um, that shows in the, in the contract extension we gave him. I, and I think if there's anything I look back on and think about and question is I think we built this team with a lot of depth in mind because some of our players on the roster are older. We've had some injuries, so you want to be able to – survive those types of things. And frankly, we had great health this year. And because of it, it kind of created a log jam with minutes and rotations. And maybe that made it difficult on Steve and the coaching staff at times. Um, I had to look back at it, evaluate it. Not sure that the answer is to go the other way and have more of a pecking order and less depth because if you get hurt, you're in trouble. But, um, you know, I thought overall, Steve, you know, Steve had another really good year, but um, I think we've almost in some ways not to take away from the basketball part, but we, we value him and the way he can manage a team throughout the season and hold a team together. I mean, man, we had some tough stuff go on. And this, like I said, this group never wavered. When you talk about what you just said, this team never wavered. They were healthy all season long. And you mentioned sizes needed. Um, and you said not necessarily at the center position. When you're going up against guys like Sabonis, AD, Jokic in the Western Conference, is size not a remedy? Size inside at the center position, not a remedy for the troubles defensively that you kind of mentioned there? And I have a follow-up after. Yeah, I mean, look, that helps if if you have the type of size that can combat those specific players who are like all NBA Hall of Fame players. The, the, to me, the worst thing you can do is try and just bring in a tall guy and say, hey, go guard Jokic. And that's not the answer. So we try and do, we try and beat it with speed, with quickness, with smarts, those types of things. And it's been pretty successful here. Um, but overall, like, yeah, if we can find somebody that's seven, three and like highly skilled and can play both ends of the floor, like sign me up. Uh, but those guys aren't really growing on trees. That is true. The follow up, um, being that the young, the league is getting younger. Yeah. And obviously guys like JK really helped you guys to speed up the game. Is there any emphasis on getting some more athleticism, younger, quicker guys to help to build around? Of course, Steph. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think of this modern NBA, um, the game is played so fast and we got to be able to play that way. You know, we struggled this year in transition both ways defensively, couldn't get back. Um, you know, which is a speed, athleticism, effort thing. And then going the other way, we didn't create a lot of turnovers and we we're unable to get out and transition and um, use our athleticism with Wiggs and, and JK, GP, those guys. So we, we got to solve that. We got to be better both ways in transition. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll look to do that. Um, like I said before, not only like free agency and draft and trades, but like, you know, can our, can our guys that we have now be better at that? And, you know, I think it's doable. Uh, just overall, you know, assessing the the landscape of the West, how close do you feel like you guys are to closing that gap with some of the top teams? Yeah, I mean, I think um, we still got really good players. We've got good young players. Um, for me, we're closer to the top than we are the bottom, even though we finished 10th in the standings. Um, you know, that's kind of the way I see it. But, you know, that look, that can change. Next year will be tough. Um, the teams that didn't make the playoffs this year, um, you're looking on the outside end with Houston, Memphis, San Antonio. I don't see a way for those teams to get worse. They're only going to get better. So this is a tough conference, and this is why we we got to improve. We got to get a lot better, too. 
my Kaminga and Moses obviously made significant steps of progress this year, but you also got big contributions from Brandon and Trace. Overall, how encouraged are you by that young core that you have on the roster? Yeah, I think we're excited about it. You know, to have four young players that we think can really play. Um, a little of it now is finding how it all works together and getting the, them the appropriate time and making sure that they, they can properly impact winning. But um, I feel a lot better about that group and just our overall direction of the team sitting here today than I did a year ago. Um, and a lot of that's, frankly, because of the, you know, having Brandon and, and, and Trace, a couple more players that, that, that make sense. When you talk about... <clears throat> Uh, developing a better roster and, and being better than this year. W what does that necessarily entail? Do you start looking at the playoffs now? Do you go back and look at games that you feel like uh, other teams, you know, competed better? Um, when you talk about the center, it, obviously Kayvon lost minutes and, mm -hmm. and lost kind of like his motivation there a little bit. Um, and when you're looking at new talent and you're talking to Joe, at what point are you like, this is kind of most important. Let's, let's work this first and then get to everything else later. Yeah. I think that's kind of what we're going through now, kind of post-mortem on the season, evaluating everything and really identifying the areas that we have to be better in. And then how can we get better? Is that, you know, working with our current players or is it something that we need from the outside? And so kind of taking all those things into account and, uh, you know, evaluate, making the decisions. Those are, that's, that's the way that we look at it. How, how would you assess your ability to make whatever tough decision you have to make uh, coming up here? Is, 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 is this difficult for you? Or do you feel like your decades in the NBA and around NBA life makes it, a little bit easier to pull a trigger on something that is probably going to be difficult to do. Yeah. I mean, I think I probably operate off the saying there's never a bad time to make a good decision. So, um, doesn't mean it's not tough and you, 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 you stir over it, but, um, I'm, I get, my job is to have the best interest of this franchise and the direction of this franchise. And, and when I make a decision or we, we make a decision. So, um, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Chris has a very um, flexible contract situation and you guys have also expressed maybe wanting him back. Uh, how do you view his future and then just how do the financials of it all kind of complicate that? Yeah, I mean, I think overall I was really pleased with Chris having him on this team this year. Um, what he gave us in the locker room, on the court, off the court. Um, you know, I think admittedly he probably wished he had a, a larger role and could help the team a little bit more, but um, I think moving forward because of his production and the guy can still do it and what he means to, to, to winning and all that stuff. We, we certainly have interest in bringing him back, but like a, the, the puzzle stuff we got to look at and figure out and see. And, um, there's definitely a viable path to do that, but, um, we're not really down the road yet of like specifically what we can and can't do. You're listening to Mike Dunleavy, general manager of the Golden State Warriors. Uh, delivering a season-ending press conference to the media. Well, it doesn't make sense when you look at the other night. Um, right. As Steve said, you guys are kind of overwhelmed physically. W was that sort of jarring to see the way, not just that you lost, but the way you lost? And how does that sort of color your view going into the offseason? Yeah, honestly, not a lot. Um, I don't take that game into consideration too much. I just... That was the worst game we played all year. Give credit to Sacramento. They did a great job. But, you know, I watched this team for 82 games. I mean, the amount of times that we've been ran off the court, um, very few. I think there were a couple of home games in January. Um, obviously the Boston game where that was a different scenario, but you know, that was, that was a game last night where I think you got to, or the other night where you got to be careful of like overreacting to how it went. Um, I don't think that represented our team on the whole for the season. Uh, but that being said, um, it kind of put the stamp on what the reality of this year was. So uh, here we are. And um, I would say going into that game, whether win or lose, no matter how it happened, we, we, I knew we had to get better. Steve said the other almost early this season, actually, that that they needed to really kind of get the best out of the, the athletic guys like Wiggins and J.K. and Gary. And obviously, you know, Wiggins missed a few games and J.K. came along. Gary missed a bunch of games here and there. How you look at especially Gary and Wiggins and, and what they can give you going forward, given the situation that they're in? Yeah, I mean, I think those are the type of players you need on both ends that can defend, 
Um, they can do stuff offensively. They can finish at the rim. They have the athleticism. So um, we need those types of guys and we need them to, we need to bring the most out of their talent. You know, that's, that's really important. And I thought there were times this year where, yeah, they struggled individually. Um, and then we, but, but is, I think it is like a two way street where we, we got to be better at helping them. And I think those are guys that if we talk about helping Steph and taking a load off him, those are guys moving forward that can do that offensively. And we got to find ways to do that. We didn't get to talk to Steph yesterday, but what was your message to him in the end of season exit interview? And what did he want to get across to you? Um, I don't think there was any two way messaging. It was just a discussion dialogue of how the season went, um, what we need to do to get better, um, how, where he's at, you know, hearing from him after 83 games and being 36 years old, where, where he's at. And I think he's in a really good place. Um, you know, and I think uh, he, he's a player will continue to lean on both with his leadership and his play. And um, man, that guy's as resilient as they come. I just, my biggest thing was I'm disappointed for you, for Draymond, you know, our veteran guys, as well as our younger guys that you won't be able to play in the postseason. Like that's what everybody wants to see, not only here in the Bay Area, but frankly, around the world to see those guys compete at the highest level. So for them not to be able to do that, it's really disappointing. I feel for them, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's our own undoing and, um, we got to live with it. And then in terms of, you know, you mentioned some internal options of, you know, possibly taking some burden off of him. How much of that, um, needs to come with a scheme change rather than players developing? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, that's a good question. Maybe a little bit more pointed to Steve, but, you know, I think that's something that he'll look at and be open to. Um, I thought we did some stuff this year that was, that, that changed differently from what we have done in the past um, to help those guys. And I think we can do more of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's something we'll look at. And, um, you know, I think everything's on the table in terms of, you know, how we play, how we want to do things. Um, you know, when you have a couple of years, you know, we, we've missed the playoffs three of the last five years. So, it's fair to evaluate and make changes to things. Actually, as a follow-up to kind of what you just said there, to just summarize the emotion in the front office right now, given what you said about the consideration of the last game and how they lost, what you've said about having the pieces here, um, is there an overarching emotion that something has to change in this offseason for next season or something drastic or no? Yeah, I mean, I think the overarching emotion right now is disappointment. We're still sort of, you know, settling in on what happened. Um, but on the whole, you know, we knew this season, no matter how long it went along, uh, was going to end at some point, probably disappointing us. And so not a shocking surprise. Um, but I think as far as, again, what we need to do is is just, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's to get better. And um, I think that presents a really good challenge for everybody, you know, whether it's the players, the front office, the coaches, the performance staff, like everybody rowing in the same direction and figuring it out. Yeah, I just wanted to get kind of more clarity on the, on the financial aspect of the equation because, you know, wanting to get better, but also at this point, it sounded like you guys need to trim salary. Um, how do you decide, well, this is worth, paying this amount because we're going to be a playoff team whereas like you just paid 400 million not for a playoff team like like i guess take me through the mindset with the money right now and and how needed it is to trim regardless of the moves available yeah i think um you know the way we'll look at it is you know seeing what we can do what's out there um seeing what we project of the guys we have on our roster um how they can improve talking through it with you know, Steve and what he's looking to do to change things and really getting a hard look at like, okay, this is where we can be. And then to go to Joe with my recommendation of what the appropriate spend is on all that. Um, you know, that's what it's going to come down to. And frankly, that's probably not going to happen next week or next month. It's like a lot of this stuff leads up to the draft and right up to the bell of free agency. So there may not be a lot of, um, you know, conclusions and solutions um, in the short term, but that's what we'll lead up to. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mike. Thank you. Have, uh, no problem. Coach will be in here coming around. All righty. That was Mike Dunleavy. He talked to the media yeah. uh, starting at 12 o'clock, so he talked for a half hour and uh, addressed a variety of subjects. And uh, what was your takeaway, Goo? I'm going to be honest, Donnie, that's your line. I think he really feels like that team was more of the 27 and 12. And because of the Draymond suspension and other things, 
I'm not speaking for him, but he feels like it was kind of a fluke that they're not in the playoffs. I'll say that. How about that? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I heard him say everything. Well, he did, that he did. I mean, and... He said he's not going to overreact to that game. That kind of basketball bothers me, but it's kind of what you said. Goo, is one game. But he also said, we knew the season was going to end at disappointment. So that tells me they didn't think they were going to make a run. Like, they knew they weren't going to be able to make a run. Um, I mean, to me, just having covered Mike Dunleavy as a player for a bunch of his career, like, he knows how to play this game. And he left every option, thank you, he left every option open. And he said a lot of nothing, really. No doubt. I, got I mean, you. I got you. I mean, we, we, we need to get better. We need to get better. We got to get better. We want Clay back, too. We want Kaminga re signed also. And there's a viable way to bring Chris Paul back. I mean, no, we don't believe that. Come on. Yeah. We, we, we don't, nobody believes that, that they're going to bring those three guys back. I, I don't believe. How much do you listen to his final press conference this year with last year's tone about Jordan Poole's future in mind. Yeah. I, like, he said all the right things last yeah. year, too, and then he made the moves he needed to make. Yeah, I mean, I didn't... I, I mean, uh, other than it making me smile, I didn't think much about it in terms of Dunleavy saying, well, Jordan Poole, we hope, is going to be around for a long, long time or forever. Or yeah. We wanted to retire a warrior or whatever, and then he was traded a short time later. To me, that's just kind of what GMs do, and that's kind of what he did. He set it all up. He said, if Clay, like, if Clay walks... He allowed for that. If Chris Paul comes back, he allowed for that. If they don't extend Jonathan Kaminga this offseason, that was part of the um, that was under the umbrella too. So he, you know, he, he covered all his bases, yeah, no, he did. oh, yes, and he, he, did. he didn't. He made sure not to offend anybody, and right. and uh, I don't know how much I pudding, believe though. him. Yes, yeah. Donnie, right. You know, he was a poly, he was a presidential. But I will say this: What about the question about how the offense is ran? Could you ever see a scenario to where the Warriors change what they try to do offensively because of age and attrition? Well, what? I'm, I'm what like, should they change from and into? Take Curry off the ball. I mean, to me, he's been playing half on, half off not, the last couple not. of years anyway. Um, so no big deal there because I, I don't know. Like, I like, I'm not sure what that means to tell you the truth. Because I I when I look at the Warriors, I look at a team that tries to utilize ball movement and player movement, and then when they're not doing that, then maybe they'll try to run some high pick and roll with with Steph. Which is, I mean, I don't I'm not sure what else they can do in terms of stylistically when the best player in your team is Steph Curry. Um, the decision's simple. It's how much do you put the ball in his hands and how much do you want him to play without the ball? And you kind of figure out that percentage and you kind of go from there. Let's put a rat on the table yeah. that I deem a rat. I believe through Moody, Kaminga, and Wiggins, and I'll throw pods in there, and he couldn't say it, but Monty asked, Stiney, somebody's in somebody's way, right? Do they got too many of the same thing and is something going to give to where there's a removal of quote unquote a roadblock of one of these guys in the other's way to to get to optimum level? I mean, to me, Wiggins and Kaminga, Stani, it's it's time, right? They got to know they can't coexist, and for Kaminga to be the best he can be, and you break him off some change, he has to be in your starting lineup. I, d I mean, these are good questions. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I can make the case he's earned that. Who? Kaminga. But then you take... I'm just... Like, there's a lot at play here, man. Um, Yeah, 888-957-9570. You just heard Mike Dunleavy. I see somebody on the uh, Xfinity Mobile text line. What a discouraging pre press conference. Uh, now looks like more of the same. Word. Yeah. Well... I mean, he said he's disappointed because they didn't make the playoffs. And he, he didn't say for the youngsters getting experience, not that he doesn't mean that. 
He said for the OGs not to be playing on that stage. I kind of wish you to do the youngster, but we know he probably. Uh, let's go to Anna. Anna's in uh, Anna's in Florida. What's hey. up, Anna? How you doing? Anna in Florida. No Anna in Florida. Oh. Uh, 925 on the Xfinity Mobile text line. Hey. Do you think Mike Dunleavy thinks we had enough to win a seven-game series? No. No. Or not more than one. I mean, that's the one thing that he said that, well, there was a bunch of stuff he, he said. One was... You know, we kind of knew the season was going to end in a disappointing. See way. that? I, I missed that. That wow. I, I mean, Mike wow, Dunleavy's Stein. been around for years. I mean he he probably got a sense this wasn't a uh, a championship team. What what are the if you're a Warrior fan, what are the what are your off season priorities? I mean, what what do you think needs to be addressed? I think obviously, what do we do with Clay Thompson? Is that is that the number one thing? Is that the at the top of your list? Then two, do do you have to? What about Wiggins and Kaminga? Do you have to do something with Wiggins well, or Kaminga? That's where I'm at. Then what? Me. So you, you're and you got to get and more and athletic. But if you got to care, if one of those dudes is leaving, there goes some of what you need out the door. Exactly. Think about that. Well, that's that's the issue. Is they they want to get more athletic? They want to get younger. So then, why would you trade Jonathan Kaminga? And that's why I brought up system. You may scoff at this. Do you think the system is making is so complex to where Wiggins and Kaminga are not getting the best out of each other? I just don't, I I don't, I don't think they could play that, in any had system nothing to together. Tie there it is. I mean, I just, I I I agree with Steve Kerr. There's, they have too much overlap. The issue is, what can you get for Wiggins? Probably not a lot. He's got almost eighty million left on his deal. He's got three more years left with a player wow. option at wow. the end. But here's the problem with Kaminga. Even if you think you're going to move Kaminga, you got to move him with somebody. He only makes seven million a year, so it's going to be Kaminga and somebody who's got a salary. And then you got to be careful about whether you might attach a draft pick or two to that. By the way, guys, on yeah. the Andrew Wiggins front, this is from Logan Murdoch's piece okay. in the Ringer today. Quote, league sources believe Andrew Wiggins will be included in trade talks this summer as the Warriors look to improve their roster. Wow. I... And what is what and my question is what will Wiggins realistically get you after the last couple of years that he's had? You know, that that and that's Well it's how you look at it, Stani. If the glass is half full and Andrew Wiggins mentally is there, you gotta be excited. You'd want to pay something for that. But if you think you're going to get the guy that 50-50 and that's where you're going to Well, I, I mean, I'm looking at Wiggins his whole career. Oh. I mean, e even if you think you're going to get a good Wiggins, you still have to put that in context of of who who, who he is. I got to feel like I that's mean, 18 just, points a game, right? Well, it is selling low. I mean, he's never had a worse statistical oh, season than man. this one. It's absolutely terrible. The team didn't make the off. And, I mean... The one thing that I do allow for, and I probably should throw some names out, but I don't have any right now. Yeah. But there's a chance the Warriors could let Clay walk, and they could move Wiggins, and they could acquire a low-level free agent that, when they get him, will say, you oh, big deal. But they might be better. Like a Dante DiVincenzo. They, they might be better. Like Let me, let me, let me just him. throw this out. And I know DiVincenzo got paid. But if 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 you replace this past year, just and I don't even know the answer. Let's say the Warriors did not have Clay Thompson this past year, but they had DiVincenzo. Are they better? Are they worse? Are they the same? I'm gonna say better, Evan. No, probably shade better. Clay. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I, I think in regards to Wiggins, like one of the reasons the Warriors were able to get Wiggins in the first place was because they dumped Iguodala's salary. Yeah. Right before I think the pandemic season, so you might look at it as, and then they, they ended up flipping D'Lo for Wiggins, but they were able to do that because they kept Durant's salary at what it was. So, in a way, you could you might have to attach something, but you could move off of Andrew Wiggins, and then that could set up a big trade with Chris Paul 
or maybe there's a sign in trade somewhere else that they could negotiate. I mean, th- there is flexibility, but they're obviously going to have to. But he's saying if you didn't have Clay and you had DiVincenzo, would this team have been better? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't think that much better. Mm. No, and, and I don't either. I don't either. But what I'm get what I'm getting at is wow. Clay Thompson's a monster name in the Bay Area. He's a monster name. He's our Hall of Famer. Andrew Wiggins, whether we like it or not, he's a big name here in the Bay Area. Um, helped his team win a title two years ago. W- what I'm getting at is that one of those two guys might not be on the team next year, but you have two guys that maybe we're not as familiar with, but the team could be better with lesser names because they fit better yeah. on, the, on the team. Well, and maybe like, there's less decisions for Kerr to make, and then you don't run into all these rotation problems well, that everyone was... Mad that, about this that's year. the other thing. Like, and, and I shouldn't use this name, but let's just say hypothetically, like Keon Ellis. I mean, let's say he's a really good player. He's got a long way to go, but I'm talking about more of a guy with his name recognition. It's not a lot of people know who Keon Ellis is, and I'm not here to say Keon Ellis is the next great superstar. Well, we know now. But yeah. all I'm all I'm going to say is, like, there are Keon Ellis's out there, maybe that you bring in here. And they fit better, and they're better defensively, and your team becomes better. Like, there's a chance that if, you know, if Clay Thompson's an eight out of 10, you might be able to get a six or a seven out of 10 in terms of a player, but they fit better on this team, and then w- their strengths are more of what this team needs that maybe yeah. Clay can't provide right now. I mean, they need their two. To guard a perimeter player, they got they they right now the Warriors' defensive issues are if they start Steph and Clay in the back court, those are two below average defenders. They, they were, just they, were they just going are at Clay Stoney. I love Clay. They were going at him exactly. I watched it again. They were going at him, man. 888-957-9570 is the number. You just heard Mike Dunleavy talked to the Bay Area media. The Warriors season is over. What did you think on what Mike Dunleavy said? Did he say anything uh, that stuck out to you? 888-957-9570. That segment was sponsored by Pacific Coast Termite. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light Repair.
Kaminga will be uh, will be able to do his thing, and and and, and Curry will be amazing. We have wow. got to do something great to be continue to be great, man. Thank. You. Appreciate it. Because Ingram didn't look happy on that bench against the Lakers, Daddy. What do you have that New Orleans wants? Andrew Wiggins. No, I'm just saying maybe. I mean, call me crazy, but. And he'd get back with, what's our guy, Willie Green? I mean, call me crazy, but in a way, I could see the Pelicans wanting Wiggins more than Ingram because no, Ingram I, I needs to do it. more. I get it. Like Wiggins could just go play with Zion and McCollum. Wow. And kind of blend in as the yeah. third guy. And Could you imagine? Ingram. Yeah. Um, we'll put that in the cap. Anthony's in Richmond. Hey, in Anthony, Rich how you doing, man? Man, I'm I'm doing good, man. My boy Guru over there fighting for his life. Yeah. Get him some weed, cola. But um, come on, Stanley, what, what what kind of wingman are you? He needs some some tea. He, no, he's uh, carrying me right it. now, man. Yeah. I know you do. Honestly, Guru, you're doing a great job, man. I, I I probably wouldn't even came here today, but um, I'm out here, you know, dumping these trash cans. I'm a garbage man, so there you go. um. I, I would like to say this. I think the last couple of callers actually raised some good points. Um, I actually would agree with the boys, my, my men's in New Orleans, that I definitely would like to kind of keep some of the things the same. But I just want to say this. We're talking about, you know, Clay being a liability defensively. And I really do understand that his lateral quickness is not the same. But we also have to realize that besides Clay, we don't have any shooters on our team. Stephen Curry is the only reliable shooter that we have, and if we don't, if we're, if we're, if we're not able to space the floor, then getting rid of Clay, you know, isn't going to make that any better. Now I understand that Clay had a, a, another bad, like you know, elimination game, and it sucks. But we also have to realize that he has some really good games this season as well. And I think if we were to put uh, another solid scorer around him, the last caller said Ingram. Now, I don't know if Ingram is ready to come all the way out west. And I know people always throw out Siakam. But someone like those two, someone that can play the three or the floor, excuse me, the three or the four, and get their own buckets. Because we thought we had that with Wiggins. He's not doing it anymore. But I just kind of want to temper everybody. Like, I understand that Clay didn't have a great last out. But we have to remember, if we're going to get rid of a shooter, we have to replace him with a shooter. And I think if we just got another shooter or two, then, you know, we all need, we, we need wing defenders, right? So, like, let's let's not try to get rid of Clay for his defensive woes. Let's try to bring something about something else, somebody else in that can kind of relieve that, and then Clay right. can be out on the wing and get his shooting off. So, I just kind of want to let fans know, like, let's not try to just throw the baby out with the bathwater just yet. Appreciate the call, Anthony. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. Mike Dunleavy, the Warriors GM, just met with the media. Uh, we heard that right here on 95.7 The Game. We're reacting to that. If you want to jump into the conversation, 888-957-9570. That segment was sponsored by Pacific Coast Termite. Americans pay about $5 billion to control termites and repair their...
I just busted in his office this morning. The door was closed. I didn't. <clears throat> it was all bad. I'm busting wood. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right, Warriors General Manager Mike Dunleavy talked to the media an hour ago. Uh, we carried it here on 95.7 The Game. Uh, he addressed just about every subject. I don't know that he said a lot definitively. Um, he said a lot, but it's just tough to make out the direction of this team from what he said because I'm not sure the Warriors know right now either. I mean, the one thing he said was, you know, we, we just got to get better. And then when he got more specific, he said, well, we've we got to get better defensively. Okay? Then why would you bring Clay Thompson back? If, you, if, if, you're, if one of your big emphasis uh, points is getting better defensively, then... Well, that hasn't happened yet, though, partner. What? And uh, Clay coming back. But what, what, all and I'm saying would is, tell me actions speak louder than words. No so doubt. All of us, I wanted to hear, but that ain't what, even if you thought you heard what you wanted, the proof's going to be in the pudding. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's one thing to say you want Clay back, and it's one thing to say we think Clay wants to be here. But, you know, when I when I look at this team, the to me, you know, four years ago or whatever before Clay's injury, they had a backcourt of Steph Curry who four years ago had turned himself into a pretty good defender or at least had, had become an average defender in the NBA. And if you want to say above average, I'm not going to fight you on it right now. So you had, you had Steph Curry was an average defender, and then you had Clay Thompson who was elite the, the joke was Clay guarded Curry's man, Steiny. That wasn't a joke. That was a fact. <laughs> so, again, like it. again, it's yeah. easy to say, well, uh, you know, these guys are still this, that, and the other thing. But the reality is the, the you have great defensive deficiencies in the backcourt. <sighs> and Anthony just called in, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with him. If you lose Clay, you lose a shooter. There's no doubt about it. Oh, my goodness. But... You may upgrade your defense. You, he, he can't really guard twos anymore. And so, like, that's the one thing when, when we look at this team. Like, how do you go from a team that had a defender in Clay Thompson who could absolutely positively neutralize elite ones in the game but unfortunately, he's not that player anymore. Like you just don't, you you, you just don't get that back, right? You, but you, you can get it from a, other places. Not, no, you can't. No, you can't. Like Clay was a top five offensive two, and he was a top five defensive two. And Dre like, was defensive player of the year. Right. So those days are gone. Bye bye too. Okay. So, so if it you, all comes so if together. it's all bye bye, if we all if we understand those days are not coming back. I just don't understand why the reluctance to acknowledge that this team may have reached its ceiling. 888-957-9570. Let's go to, uh, who's been waiting a Hi. long time? Let's go to Miles. Miles is in, is in uh, Wisconsin. Hey, Miles, how you doing? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Hey. Um, so I put out a Twitter thread recently, but... I was thinking about how um, the Warriors have been looking for that front court star, and I just had a feeling today that it might be Zion Williamson because it seems like things with the Pelicans have not been going well because they're in the same situation as we are, except that their stars just can't stay healthy. And we've seen the Pelicans do damage without Zion there more than they do damage with him there. And I feel like a trade with... Um, you included Wiggins or Kaminga and draft capital, you could get the trade done, and it would be the most realistic way to um, do that. Also, I would, what I got left of my voice, Donnie, I do leave it all out on the field. I would stay away as much as I like Zion, but the other night was the reason I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole and why I was mad. Not that Chris Paul wasn't the baller or the point guard, but his body always let him down at the most inopportune time. Remember, they had the Warriors up 3-2. He got hurt. But I'm going to say this. Stani, I would not want to sign up for Zion because I believe this. I hope I'm wrong. 
his body will give out. Something will go awry at the worst time. And we're talking about him being a baby right now, and it just happened. So I don't know if you're different, but I would not want to sign up for those problems. If I had a chance to get Zion Williamson, I would get Zion Williamson. Absolutely. I, absolutely. And deal with it? The, it I, I, absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's there's just no doubt. And the reason I say that is because the only stars, the only stars or slash borderline superstars that ever come available are mostly flawed. Like, mm-hmm. they're just not perfect. Like, I know, I guess, you know, Jokic is not going to be available. Is Giannis going to be available? Well, let's see Some if Giannis is going to be available. He ain't even going to be ready for the start of the series. But but the reality <laughs> of the situation is when you're like I I remember the one move that turned the Warriors around was when they traded for Baron Davis. Man. Guess what? He had an injury history. He had a reputation uh, issue, but he got to the he wanted out of New Orleans. He, he got here. And he and he played. Took off. I like, was gonna say it's yeah. either flaw or a player, a star player asking out. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Anthony Davis didn't want to be in New Orleans anymore, that and the Lakers out. were able to get him. Yep. And Zion, and that's why I do think there is basketball worth watching in the postseason, specifically the first round. There's flameouts. We're gonna hear players that are not happy with their situations, and those are the guys that the Warriors would try and get. Anything on the Clipper roster that would interest you guys. Do they have anybody under 35? No. Well, no, Paul George is 34. But he's I mean, a young 34. I mean, I like I'm not against Paul George, but he can deal. What's he gonna cost you? Well, you know, lot. the other thing is if you if we're talking about guys like Paul George and Zion Williamson. Because that's all it's gotta be if you guys are talking about big change. Not you like big changes, Donnie. Give me some more names. Well, it's gonna be guys with that on that that number on the birth certificate. I'm just saying I'd be very careful. You know, you're gonna have to decimate the team. Well, well. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to go forward with, you know, Steph, this unnamed player, Draymond, and I don't know who else you're gonna have if if you go after a guy like that. Uh Omar's in Oakland. What's up, Omar? How you doing, man? Omar's coming. Man, I can't complain, man. It's good to hear Guru lost his voice again. I wanna say the Warriors need to stop kicking the can down the road, and they need to embrace a full rebuild. Look at the Boston Celtics when they had KG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen. They went to two finals. They went to four Eastern Conference finals. They were on the cusp of taking down the heat with LeBron, D-Wade, and Bosch in 2012, up 3-2, and then obviously LeBron went crazy in game six. We remember that. But the fact is, it resembles the Warriors situation. Right after that, Ray Allen left and went to Miami. He couldn't start no more. A.B. Bradley took his starter spot. The same thing that happened to Clay Thompson. Uh, Paul Pierce, who was the longtime Celtic, is the same situation as uh, Curry. Obviously, he never won an MVP or finals, uh, four finals, but obviously, Paul Pierce is a Hall of Famer. He ended up getting traded with KG to Brooklyn. And KG, same situation as um, Draymond Green, all-time great defender, former MVP with Minnesota. And they did that trade, and you see what it netted them, Tatum and Brown in the future. I feel like the Warriors, they're not going to contend, and they're just really they're just putting a Band-Aid on it, and none of these players would solve the situation. I think they just got to do right by Clay, Dre, and Steph, and they got to ship them out and get some young core and just rebuild like Oklahoma did because they're not going to win a championship like this. There's no way they're, they're not even better than teams – like Dallas and New Orleans and Sacramento, and those teams are not even contenders. So, how are they going to realistically become a contender overnight? I think they just gotta, they just gotta realize the truth and the writing on the wall and just embrace a rebuild. Well, I'll say this, Donnie. You might come hug me, Evan. Stop him if he does. But just hearing you and Evan talk about the flame out and a flawed player, Donnie, for the first time in my life since we've been doing radio. I just thought about Ben Simmons. Congratulations. The f- no, the fit for this team. I mean, I, I'm... What but what would, how would that... Just, like, where would you start with that? What do you mean? Like... I, like, I, you know, I mean, I liked Ben Simmons five years ago. How hard would it be to pry him away from probably, the Brook? Probably not very hard. And I think Andrew Wiggins would fit perfect. You, you know, like, 
But when you guys just said that flawed, I'm thinking like in the Baron Davis, a rebirth. Well, flawed, not <laughs> the most flawed player in the league. A scared yeah. dog. I mean, you can't. Yeah, Benny. But I don't know why I just thought of him. I mean, you can't. I'm desperate. You can't bring a guy in here who doesn't love the game. So you'll say that about Ben. I hadn't heard you say that. Well, I'm just right. Look, I. I'm I mean, realistic about Ben Simmons right now. You, you could probably go get him, and he might help you a little bit. Because you got a guy that doesn't love but, the game. But the he idea would help that you it, because he's a $40 million expiring. Well, that's that, That's and why that, he'd help you. Man. Not on the court. Right. And even if he... Got out there. But even if he does help you on the court, he, he, I don't, he doesn't transform you into something. So does something. he have some... No, I can't... Andrew Wiggins, no disrespect, because you, you play... But the Warriors have already dealt with the guy that, you know, you don't kind of know what's going on on a daily basis upstairs. The fire. I mean, the other thing is, we you, you, you can't can you you can't bring Ben Simmons in here and Draymond because then you just have wow. two guys who can't shoot or can't score, and you still have Trace Jackson. I, I yeah, mean, JFA on the YouTube chat said the same thing. No Simmons and Dre. Uh, MPs in Hayward. What's up, MP? How you doing, man? What do you got for us today? Hey, hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, uh, hey. Uh, so, Guru, you need some Ricola. But okay. uh, what I wanted to say is that speaking of flame outs, you, um, all Warriors fans should really be looking at the Cavs series because uh, they got Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is done with the uh, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. <sighs> and another guy that we should be looking at is uh, Carl Anthony Towns. And I'm I in on that. The second thing is, we already sold, also we already sold uh, uh, also Jordan Poole at an all-time low, and all we got back was Chris Paul. Now we're trying to get rid of Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins could be a great four, uh, also he could be a great fourth option on the team because the guy tries, he could play defense, and his offensive game is actually decent, but he can't be your number two. He could be your number four. So if you have uh, uh, Steph, Carl Anthony Towns or Donovan Mitchell or someone like that. Sure. Now you got Clay as the number three. The whole team comes together, and I think you got to get rid of Jonathan Kaminga because Kaminga has upside, and we all know about potential. Potential is exactly where you're at, right? And we can't trust the ball in his hands. He looks great against sorry teams. Anytime there's a uh, team with a good defense or like a, uh, a smart game plan, the guy looks lost, right? That's like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, so that's I think, my line. Yeah. But I uh, uh, but I wanted to throw that uh, also throw that in there because there's no point in making a bad trade after a bad trade just to get rid of people. We already did that with Jordan Poole. The guy's balling out now, and now we're trying to get a Andrew Wiggins, and he's going to be at an all-time low level, right? Like an all-time low value. Why not, like you know, or to get rid of Jonathan Kaminga at a high level and get someone right now? And as far as rebuilding, forget all that. Also, we should go sell out. Because we have Steph Curry, one of the greatest players of all time, right? And, and mm. you probably got two of the two good years left. Sell out for those two years or the rebuild down the road. Yeah, I'm yeah. out. But Stani, never go full Jeff again on YouTube. Tell the caller if you're going to get a number two, you're going to have to trade Wiggins. Yeah, exactly. Night, night. I mean, yeah. I think the Warriors would be a lot better if you could just drop Donovan Mitchell onto their team. Uh, I, I tried to fight you, but man, oh man. Well, they I, need him now more be better than if, ever. Yeah, but he you, would be the energizer. Brandon Ingram, Carl Anthony Towns. Like we keep you, you talking don't just about, drop them on the Warriors. All right, no doubt. Right. You've you got to give something up. But i got to say this to you and Evan and the listeners. Are people really ready? Go ahead. Go. No. I watched that game again last night, and I know we keep focusing on the defensive end. Stani, it was the first time in forever offensively. I felt like the Warriors, the 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 gear, the turbo button didn't work. It was like, where is Kevin Durant or a Donovan Mitchell or a Brandon Ingram? They were suffocated. And what have I been saying about young Kaminga? When he goes up against Kaminga, guys that have possessed what he has in regard to the body type and length. Stiney, how many times was he knocked on the ground? No foul. And, and, and he, he can get that better. But you need something now, a guy that you could step back and watch me cook. Yeah, I, I, the more and more I think about it. I never saw that happen. I'm, ab I'm absolutely like, what if I told you it's not just you're going to trade Kaminga, it's you're going to have to trade draft picks along with him. 
And I, I'm just not, yeah. like, I'm just not going to go into next year doing things. You, you, you just heard Mike Dunleavy say, you know, and Steve Kerr, we're not, it, it would be a stupid statement to say we're a championship team. Well, to me then, to think you can get back to championship level in one off season with the core you have right now, I, I'm not more, I guess what I'm saying is I'm thinking damn hard about mortgaging any type of the future. Wow. I, I'm not, I mean, listen, it's, it's bad enough you don't have a pick this year. It's bad enough you don't have a pick this year. And well, I thought we got some action with the if it's top four. Y- you do. Well, th- that, but that pick was worth it, though, because you used it to get off of Iguodala. No, I, I get that. But what you I, used to help win a championship. But what I'm saying is, if the Golden State, what, what would their pick be now? It'd probably be like 10. And if you think, like, Mike Dunleavy has done a great job, like, if, if the Warriors had the 12th pick in the draft this year, I think you'd feel better about them. Yeah, so, but if that future pick could help you get a player in their prime, then in 2032, I mean, I'm, I, like, I would be less inclined to move future capital at, in a wholesale fashion, but if you only have to move one, that's not a huge asking price for a guy that might be able to help you now. But, like, you were, you were talking about, like, when the Utah Jazz traded... Donovan Mitchell. Yes. How many picks did the Jazz get? Four first rounders and four pick swaps. Damn. Right. It, we 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 and I say we. we and you we sent Markinen. We can't be doing that. Okay. No. But, and you sent Markinen. Yeah. Uh, the well, the captain. Yeah. What a, what about what you said about them not making the playoffs with this top four prote- uh, protected pick? What about it? So they do. In, they they don't have a pick. They got like a four percent chance to well, get the pick. I, you, well, you know me. Well, you're right. I got you. But could you imagine if that 4% hit? Then they have a top four pick. And a draft that they say is not that deep, but man. Neck deep. Uh, Suge in Fremont. What's up, Suge? How you doing? I mean. Oh, I'm doing. Hey, Suge. I like Suge. Hey. Hey. Hi there. Hello. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Suge. Is it me? Oh, okay. Nice to, nice to speak to you all. Finally, yesterday I tried, but I couldn't get through because you guys are too popular. Um, you know, I just wanted to ask you, I actually agree with uh, signing. We shouldn't really be trying to touch Jonathan Kuminga because there is potential. And even I like Moody a lot. I'm a Moody fan. But my question to you all, is anyone talking about just keeping one um older person, namely Stephen Curry, and then don't have Draymond, don't have Wiggins, and and try to get, and, and sign and trade Clay, and try and get um, a really good second scorer. I mean, I, 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 this is how LeBron James, James operates. He doesn't care about friendship and all those things. He's chasing those rings. And I'm not saying... Curry, it's nice that Curry has the loyalty but and he wants his friends with him. But the thing really it boils down to is, is it his money? It's not. You know, it's the owner's money. Companies do this all the time. Do they keep all the friends together? No. They just lay off people. And that's how businesses work. And I feel like they can convince Curry that they need to put certain other people around him in order for it for him to have less um, less of a burden and play better. I, I, this is something I've been thinking about way back when we were down to game 40 because I knew this is where this was go- going. But then I tend to be a little bit pessimistic, so I try to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> no, we love you, Sug. I, I just want to say this to you, Sug, and the fans, Donnie. LeBron James and Abu Guru take your curry underwear off. I'm being real with what I'm about to say. He's no dummy. He's always had a bona fide Robin. If it wasn't Kyrie, it was Anthony Davis. That goes a hell of a long way. Steph Curry won a chip in 2022. The Warriors did with Robin being on rotation. So all I want to well, say what, for the well, people in, fairness, in your right, it the, wasn't. Okay, they but they had Wiggins. You can't. Uh, this is this is kind of what. But I, I guess I'm saying, where's that now? That well, Wiggins. That, 
I don't He's know where it is now. For two years, but, almost. But this is what, like, this is what I that mean. That affects him too. Yeah, though, two Stoney. years ago, we had a championship team, and now we're screwing Steph Curry. What, like what that? This? It's just so. It's just such a no, bad I'm just way to look to, at I'm things. I'm trying to paint the picture of Steiny. Lay off him a little bit no. because you are right about Get, there's you, some you slippage, but right. his number two just vanished. Like, has anybody ever looked around and said, that's what's killing this? There's n And Monday, Tuesday night was another. I'm not saying Steph was great. There, That was Kaminga's I, I not can't. ready. There's not an Anthony Davis outlet for St Steph Curry. And he when he had one, they won a chip. That's so I'm just okay, gonna so fight to the end of time when I he's not Larry Holmes. He's not old. He no, needs okay, he's help. not old. But no He's not I, old. You okay. know what I mean? He's he thirty six yeah. years old. He needs help now. He more had than a ever. That's subpar all second yeah. half of the season. Second like, half, right, gotcha. Like, I don't even want to get That's into true. this, but like oh, yeah, was the, the biggest challenge the Warriors are the biggest challenge the Warriors have, it Give might it not. Oh, Steph, uh, yeah. what, what are we doing with Clay? Yeah. You know what? That's small potatoes. What are we doing with uh, can we, Wiggins yeah. or Kaminga? That's small potatoes. The biggest challenge this team has right now is that Steph Curry is 36 years old, and he's not the player he was two or three years ago. And now, what do you do? Now, what okay. do you do? Stani, real quick. Because I'm telling yeah. you right now, Here's what I would say. Yeah. You can't get a team good enough around him in this short period of time for them to be a champion next year. Okay. That's a uh, that's a I joke. You. But Stani, and yeah. you know what? And the hard part is maybe Steph's not that player anymore. If he hey, I'll give you that all day. The two year ago Steph, but he's still damn good. And the right on the table, he's your best player that you're paying 55 M's right. next season. And you so can't he's win going like nowhere. Right. So okay. But we can't stop operation. Okay. Let's try to make the playoffs or or find some magic here. He needs help, Stiney, more now than he ever can could. Thank before. you. Thank you. And there's nothing so, wrong with so that. So he needs more help than he's ever needed in his entire career because he's 36. And you're willing to do whatever you can for one or two years to hell with 2025 through 2030. I'm 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 not there That's yet. That's the Lakers model. Well, the Lakers are different. Tell me why. Because the Lakers have a history wow. of signing free agents. That's part of their mo. We don't know that the Warriors can do that. Mm. We don't know that the Warriors can get a superstar in here to sign as a free agent after Steph leaves. But I hear you. I'm not fighting you on he's not getting older. I'm just saying he's still damn good. He's not what he was two years ago, but he's still spectacular. What he if, Mike, has no what if Mike Dunleavy came in here and said, you guys, yeah. Steph's not good enough anymore to be the best player on a championship team. What if that's the conclusion they're coming to? Then what do you do? Do you still mortgage everything for Steph? But it's for something no, you don't believe in. I would tell you, Stani, if that's and I don't, I don't believe that. But if that's it, then you're effed. I, you are. That's what. That's what I'm worried about. Like Steph is 36. He's declining. You, I don't believe you can put a championship team wow, around Stani. Steph in one off season. Well, I, I How? That, you know. How? And. You're shedding payroll. You don't have money to go shop for a free agent. I I mean, it's one way to go about doing it, yeah. but I think it's... I'll tell you some old... We got to go. All right. uh, what's coming up next on The Game is presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. Hey, it's your boy Guru. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike any other app, on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money during basketball season. Prize Picks has something for every sports fan, from basketball to hockey and everything in between and you could pick LeBron, Connor McDonald, June Bellingham all in the same entry. It's so simple to play. I can make my picks
to submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Tonight is Logan Webb with more than five and a half strikeouts. So what are you waiting for? Download the app today and use my code GURU957 for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code GURU957 on prize picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Do it today. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepick.com for details. Your health is important.
I know everything. He deserved it. You're ready to unload on me. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. I think there's two things going on. Here, here's and here's where I'm I'm out. And you can't say it unless you mean it. But whenever when when people say, "Well, you owe it to Steph. You you got to do it for Steph. Everything for Steph." No. That's that's not how it works. The the loyalty that Joe Lake of owes is to the Warriors organization and the fans. Are you are you like when you say that you do realize you're putting Steph Curry above the team. If if you're saying we need to make every single move right now to maximize Steph Curry's opportunity, it's not the, the Warriors, okay. not the Warriors opportunity next. Oh. Steph Curry's opportunity next year to win a ring then that comes at the expense, possibly, of the long-term well-being of the franchise. That is that is where you lose me. Because I would say this. You want a title. What did Steph want? Well, we, we, we sign Wiggins and we keep pool. Okay. We don't win a title. Well, it's still all about Steph. What do you want to do? Steph. Steph wants to re-sign Clay Tom, uh, Draymond Green. Okay, so Draymond Green's back. Like, I could argue, okay, he lost. You, you, you were a 10 seed this year. Like, you don't owe him anything except your best effort to make the team as good as you can, as fast as you can, without being irresponsible. Like, I feel like fans would rather be irresponsible for one long shot swing at it as opposed to thinking about this team a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Well, I don't disagree with you, Stoney, but I do to the extent of Steph Curry built this. I'm not saying, well, let me finish. I'm not saying he, you're trying to differentiate Steph and the Warriors. That's He's you are. the Warriors. No, you are. Is he not your best player? He's your number one commodity right, right. now. And to me, right. if, my, if I were Joe Lacob, I would try to do everything I could to maximize his window, which is our same window, okay. and try to get number five. And Steiny, yeah. you talk, and so, I gotta say this, you talk like you know for a fact that if you chose to put him, you know what, Steph, you're gonna be priority C. Yeah. We we got A and B in the future. The future, just because you put it number one, doesn't mean you're going to hit it out the park. So there is no guarantee. My thing is, I I pay this man all this money. We still are in debt to him. He's still playing at a high level. Yeah, Steiny, you said he ain't what he was two years ago. Either is LeBron, but his team okay. and, and organization. You answered the question. And, and, and give me this. Me, you me answered the question. I wouldn't Steph's be the only one doing more important it. than the Warriors. Uh, like seriously, there's no other way to look at He's it. He's our best player. That okay? Does that mean that every organization just caters to whoever their best player now, is? Now, what does cater look like? Give cater some help. Cater looks like going for a title when everybody knows it's pretty much out of the question. Just for one guy. No, Steiny. You're prioritizing one Curry, guy. Curry had nothing to do with the Wiseman pick. They blew that. Curry had nothing to do with his partner, who he rode for, punching Jordan Poole and getting him up out of here. And the bottom line is the Warriors were not good enough to withstand that. You can sit here and laugh at what Jordan Poole ended up being, but there was a reason, and they didn't check him. They let Draymond Green do whatever he wanted, and Jordan Poole's gone. And now you want to sit up here and blame the state of the Warriors, it sounds like, on Steph Curry? He needs some effing help. Yeah. And if the Warriors would have been doing their due diligence, he would have some young, infused help. That's the truth. You keep blaming everything on Steph. No, I'm not. He's their best player. Right, so give him the some help, Steiny. Is that so? The Los Angeles Lakers never put Kareem Abdul-Jabbar over the Lakers. Yeah. They never prioritized Magic Johnson over the team. So what's that look like here? Like, what am I saying to you to make you feel like I'm doing that to the ninth degree because, just to try to get him some help? 
Getting him help is one thing. Thinking that you can put a team around him in one year and and go ahead, mortgage the future for another year. Like uh, that's what I I just you don't owe Steph Curry a damn thing. You owe him fifty five million next year and fifty nine the year after that. And what you owe him is to try to make the team as good as it can be, short term. And long term, all right. I agree, totally agree with that. Well, no, you don't. If you're saying it's all about Steph, it's not. It's got to be all about the Warriors. Like well, to kinda, me, yeah, the moves are the moves. You know, regardless of what they choose to do. But again, Andrew Wiggins is up and down. He's fifty fifty. That doesn't help. Can you can you move him and get something possibly? Steph was fifty fifty this year. He had a good first half and a subpar but, second. But half. he had no sabbaticals, and he was always pretty much available. Well, Wiggins only missed yeah. four. Wiggins missed less but games. You never than Curry. knew. You never. We never knew night in, night out. Steiny, him playing Wiggins. I, I'd love you. What he was dealing with, and he's been dealing with something for a couple years. My, and I, I won't even stop there, Steiny. The whole you owe the fans to improve. That's all I'm. At. I don't know what you think I'm saying about Steph. You, you, well, like again, you keep if we keep talking about the number one priority being getting Steph his fifth ring, I, then that saying, changes a strategy if you want to get back on track in two years or three years. So I mean, what is your what if, what's your standing and this would frustrate whatever is best for the team. What does that look like? I don't know. So you but it doesn't Steph, mean take, it doesn't mean go, Steph, whatever you want to do, we're going to do like according well, to you. That's what we did that. last year. Well, let's be honest. They're, you're, they're running out of that. It ain't a much you can do but some trades. Well, that's what they're going to try to do. All right. But and I'm they're telling you, gonna, they're going to try to do it to get better. Right. I'm telling you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't trade Jonathan Kaminga uh, for a 30 year old that may not make you better. I I just and you might be right. They might not. Do and it. you know what? Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. We're again like <sighs> I pity this franchise when Steph's gone because three fourths of the fans may be gone too. Apparently, because it's like. The organization is bigger than Steph, as great as Steph is. And Why not, is it so big, though? What's that? Why is the organization or franchise as big as it is? Because of Steph Curry. That would be the reason to prioritize him. My point is, is we act around here like Steph Curry is the only superstar who's ever aged. And we act as though every superstar who's ever gotten older, their team... Their team said, to hell with the future. We are going to go all in for this guy right here because he's the most important thing we've got. I, and I, I think you got to start thinking bigger than Steph Curry right now. And what would that look like? Because you have nothing bigger than him What it right looks now. like is not trading picks in 2026, And it may look like not missing out on with the number two pick in the draft, which you effed up. Well, that's irrelevant. That's not Curry's fault, though, but that's why we're here, too. But, okay, so what? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what to do with that information. They blew it yeah. on Wiseman. 888 yeah. is the number. We got the uh, crossover on the other side. And uh, that segment is brought to you by the Alameda County Probation Department. Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits?
now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right. It's a crossover, but it's an abbreviated crossover. Guru's left. That does not. Baby. That is means it, you stay he, uh, twice as long okay. as the way that is he, goes. Is he out of the building? Somebody broke no, sure, yeah, I don't think so. But, out, yeah, the oh, way it you, works is that if he leaves early, okay. you stay late. Oh, That's, I mean, according to my uh, crossover contract. Okay. That's the way I remember we'll, it. We'll but see. We'll see. Fine. No, we sent Goo home. His voice is shot right now, and he's got to be here tomorrow. Yeah. So we want to get his uh, his voice ready. Yeah, tough uh, one. Tomorrow. I mean, and I, I feel bad for Goo because uh, his speech was so passionate, and it was <laughs> way more passionate than what the Warriors showed. He he came harder than they came for forty eight minutes, and that's a shame. Maybe it's just a that. fact. Maybe it's just semantics. They're, they're both left early. Anyway, go wow. ahead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and and maybe uh, it's just the way it hits me. But when people talk about you know the Warriors in the off season, what they're going to do, you know, to me it's okay. What are the Warriors going to do? But then there's this other thing about well, wh whatever we do, it's all got to be for Steph. And mm. I'm just trying to figure out if those two things are exclusive, or if you're presented with a move that you think can help you right now, but it's going to cost you in three years and you know it's going to cost you, and you don't like it, do you still do it anyway? Like, not because Steph says do it, but but for Steph? You know what I mean? Like, is there a move out there that would be a great move for next year, but a terrible move for three years from now, but you say we're going to make that deal with the devil because of Steph Curry? I think that <clears throat> move exists, but I don't think that you make that move, and I wonder how Joe Lacob looks at it, because in three years, let's say five years, just to be safe, he's uh, still going to own the team. Right. And Steph won't be here, and Draymond won't, and Clay won't, and Wiggs won't, and whoever else you want to name won't. Steve Kerr, he probably won't. But right. Joe will. Does Joe want to go through a Kohanian run of 19-17, wins? I don't think so. That's not going to happen. Right. I, I disagree with you guys completely. I don't think that, I mean, yes, an organization always has to think about its future. Um, but I am not going half, you know what, half baked into next year because I'm worried about 2028. I just don't think you run things that way. Um, do you guys eat chocolate? Yeah. Not anymore. You don't? I do. Okay. Why? <laughs> That's his weakness. It's good. Okay. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it good for you three years from now? Why do you do it? Because I have no self-control. Great. Neither does Joe Lacob. Well, Let's have fun. This is this is the National Basketball Association. I, you, you know what fans do when you keep telling them we're doing things for three years from now? You get a Padre hat. Like, you get a free Padre hat. Second place. With that, with that idea. Like... There are so many fan bases across America that have been told for 28 years that they're two years away. Like, I, I'm not saying you just do something entirely irresponsible, but the idea that you want to not be embarrassing three years from now, so therefore we're going to go kind of half-baked into what's now, which has already been proven for 12 years to be beyond special, I don't, I don't understand that. So, like... I don't know if it's, is it for Steph or is it because Steph? Real quick, Vince Galvin, $20. He's paying for this. Okay. okay. Super chat. Let's Buy go. Goose some hot tea for his voice. Oh, there's tea. All right. Thank you, Vince. Yeah. Appreciate it's it. Good. Yeah. And well, I heard some hot toddy calls earlier, too. Let me, let that's, me just, uh, that's always a good move. What about, let me just throw this hypothetical at you. So last year, Draymond Green is a free agent. And everybody said, well, if Steph wants him here, he'll probably be here. All right, so Draymond's here. What if hypothetically, Steph's like, Clay stinks. Hey Joe, get Clay out of here. We need a we need a better defensive too because I'm 36, and when we were at our best, our two guarded the one, and Ste and Clay can't do it anymore. So let's get off Clay Thompson. Okay, would you? He's gone. Yeah, He's you would. Gone. Yes, probably. And and I don't know that I'd 
I don't know that I'm giving a guy that much but, power. But I think, I well, okay. Or even if he said stay, but he must stay. There's a split the difference there. I Like, I firmly believe that Clay Thompson should stay, but not in his current role. You have a team that needs more outside shooting, and it feels like half of you would like to start that process by getting rid of Clay Thompson. That well, doesn't make any sense to me. Well, He's I'll, your second best shooter on your team. And it sounds to me... Like, this team needs youth and athleticism. That too. So why are we trading Jonathan Kaminga? You're not. Okay. Oh, God, no. No, you're trading Andrew Wiggins. You're trading Andrew Wiggins. Clay Thompson is a financial puzzle piece that needs to be figured out. Um, his role needs to be diminished. I think all of their roles need to be diminished. Um but I, I just don't know if it's as cut and dry as you're saying. It's not if Steph says it, then you do it. But I, but I do think that when you have a player that special, even on the downside of his career, you, you maximize it. Because why wouldn't you? Even if, that, even if that makes you do things that you think down the road might create some challenges for you. See, I, I, I just, like, I don't think you can look at it one way or the other. Like, if there's a move that presents itself, let's say, and it's a move where you think you're... How do I want to put this? If if there's moves out there that can make the team marginally better, or just you think better, you got to do it. Like, you have to do it. But it sounds to me like people don't want to do it if it's just an incremental thing, because that's not enough to get you right back to a championship team yet. And what I'm saying is, if all if what you're telling me is you're only going to make a move because it gets you back in right away, then you're limiting yourself to obtaining a player who in three years may be at his peak as opposed to right now. And I don't want to limit myself like that all under the thought process of it must happen next year. Yeah, but that's like draft stuff. Who's who's making a move with the thought that this will help us in three years? Well, I don't know. Well, nobody... whoever trades for Kaminga would, for example. Well, he may, he also makes you better now. But I'm just talking about if you're looking at if you're looking at a move for the Warriors. Let's say they had an opportunity to get a, another 23 year old, but it would cost them, let's say Wiggins. Would they do that? They might do that. Even sure. though it might be a step they, back in the in the short term. I mean, yeah, I step know. back. See, I would do I, I that. Think, I, yeah. And based on what we heard from uh, Dunleavy today and also Steve Kerr, the idea of clearing the way for Moses Moody and for Kaminga to play more. If Wiggins is out of the way, then those guys get a chance to play more and develop. And even if you're not going to necessarily take that big step next year, it would help you in the future. And I don't know if you can you can make any move between now and October to take you from the 10 seed to the 3 seed, I don't think that that exists. I guess, let's let's say hypothetically, uh, you could trade Wiggins, who's 30, for a guy who's 22. I, I wish you'd... Bowl, bowl. Okay, <laughs> bowl, bowl. All right, he's a young player. So a lot of people are high on him down the road. Like, you wouldn't do that trade right no, now. No, you wouldn't. Right. And you I'm wouldn't. saying oh. that I might. I'm not that saying, I might do that trade yeah. if I'm the Warriors, even though I realize, you know, we might have gone from a 2% chance to win in it next year to a 0.5% chance. I don't think that they would because of where Steph is, and yeah. Steph has two more years, and so I, I think there is a sense of alienation, and that would be an alienation sensation mm -hmm. is what, what it would be. If you suddenly try to, like, not Cha think about next year, but you okay. think about two or three years down the road, and Steph's deal is up in two years... Maybe that would motivate him to finish his career elsewhere. Here's why I disagree with that. I, I do think the Warriors would do that, potentially. And the reason is, is the idea of keeping Andrew Wiggins is not in some way translating to Steph Curry as, okay, we're still trying to win a title. They had Andrew Wiggins this year. They were the 10 seed. They didn't even make the playoffs in the NBA. So they're not close. So to me, I look at this, and I thought Steve Kerr said this to us yesterday. I look at this offseason like a staircase. So option A would absolutely be, is there a trade available? Does Carl Anthony Towns become available, right? Is there a trade available 
Can the Warriors get involved in the discussion to where you actually think you could acquire a player that could get you back competing at a high level in the Western Conference? The answer might be no. Okay. In fact, it's probably no, but that's where you start. That's option A. Now it's a staircase. If that's not available to you, now you're going to go down the next level on the staircase, which is where maybe the only thing that you could get that's a positive in any way is trading Andrew Wiggins for a younger player or somebody who does something different on the court. Even if it's a lateral move, it's a big guy, something that clears the, the, the path for Jonathan Kaminga. And then let's see if that's available. Then you start going down the staircase even further to things like, well, hell, nothing worked. Let's get under the apron. Right. Or let's go all the way down and just do, as Steve said to us yesterday, lean on our young guys more. You could get there. That's not option A, though. It's like option D. You're listening to the 95.7 The Game KGMZ FM. NHD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union. What'd you think of, uh, did you guys listen to Dunleavy? Sure yeah. Did. yeah. What'd yeah. you think? A few things stood out. Um, interested by his comment, and I won't have the exact quote. Grandy maybe could help us with this, but it's always the right time to make the right decision or something like that. Well, what was the exact way that he said it, Mark? You guys just want to hear it? Yeah. He was hear asked, it. Uh, Dunleavy was asked if he's prepared to make a tough decision if needed. I probably operate off the saying there's never a bad time to make a good decision. So doesn't mean it's not tough and you, 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 you stir over it. But um, I'm, I get, my job is to have the best interest of this franchise and the direction of this franchise. And, and, and when I make a decision or we, we make a decision, so um, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Plus, I think Mike Dunleavy licked the Oreo. I think I have his tell. What does that mean? Well, here's it's a what reference it means. to uh, Rounders. Thank you. Teddy KGB, uh, played by John Malkovich. He had the uh, big showdown with Matt Damon. Matt Damon playing for his best friend's life, and he's in trouble. And then Teddy KGB, <laughs> he started to open up his Oreos and he started to eat them in a certain way when he was going to bluff on his hand. And so Matt Damon saw it. He saw the tell, and he realized when he went to the Oreo and he would like lick the cream side, right? He That's would right. split the Oreo. That mean, that he would he lick the hand. cream. Yeah. That would mean he had a good hand. And so Matt Damon started folding, and then Teddy KGB said, "You keep hanging around and <laughs> hanging around." And Matt Damon waited for the Oreo to not be split, and then he went in. He turned the tide. He won the pot. Saved his friend's life. It's one of the great movies in history. Yeah, that is. It, it is great. And and so I'm wondering if we have found a tell on Mike Dunleavy because days before Jordan Poole was traded, Mike said, well, he's under contract. Mm, eat that Oreo, Mike. So when he was asked about Draymond Green, and do you have this one, Mark? Here, listen Throwing to, him some hot potatoes listen back Listen to what there. he oh, says I know. Okay. when he's asked specifically about Draymond Green's future with the Warriors. In terms of having him back, I think very, very high likelihood. I can't imagine a scenario where he's not back. Could be wrong, but man, he's signed up under contract. We value him. He's oh. a core piece of what we do. So fully expect him to be back. I think we won over 60% of the games he played in this year. So you know how meaningful he is to winning and he'll continue to do so. I think he's in a great place mentally, um, you know, just evaluating and observing him over the season after the suspension. Um, I think he's learned from it. Um, I think he's better and um, we'll continue to work on that stuff and have it on top of mind. But, you know, I think um, we're in a really good place with him and excited to have him back. Okay. So I, I believe everything he's saying there, but I do wonder if he licked the Oreo, which is anytime you ask him about the future of a player, when he answers by saying, well, he's under contract, that's licking the Oreo. That at least means, oh, we're willing to talk. When you combine those two answers, that it's never the wrong time to make the right decision, and he says it's very, very highly likely that he'll be back, and, mm. you know, yeah. he's under contract. You would never, hey, is Steph coming back next year? <laughs> well, he's under contract. He is, yeah. You wouldn't say that. So all I'm saying today, I'm not saying Draymond's about to get traded, but I do think that their ears are open. And if that's the right thing that comes along, then yeah, 
that's the right thing. Did you see Zach Lowe of yeah, ESPN? Sure did. Exactly. Said sure that did. Combine that into this the conversation. The Warriors too. are wearing thin of Draymond's volatility. There are people in the organization who have worn thin. How could of, they not? Right. How could I mean, you all have? We all have. I, how could they not? Let me ask you this. Because I, I was thinking about this. Because let's say Draymond's uh, future isn't certain either. Do you think most Warrior fans, if you told them, we got to break up the big three, would prefer to see Draymond be the one to go first as opposed to Clay? No. 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 Uh, oh. I think they'd be more willing to see Clay go, even for all Draymond's warts and all the headaches huh. he brings. Draymond is more of a winning player right now than Clay Thompson is. I agree with that, but it's an intricate response because I do think there's two ways to answer that. If you are really like thinking like you are, Dibs, where it's like, well, what what makes the better basketball team? Draymond probably affects winning more so than than Clay Thompson right now. But if you're asking Warrior fans on an emotional level, that's what kind of who, who do you love the most? Yeah, Draymond's third, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Like it'll just, even though I'm not a Warrior fan, if Clay's playing in Orlando next year and Dre's here. And they're having another year like they're having. Eh, that, that just that would suck. You know what I mean? That, that would. Uh, that that like that would stink for a Warrior fan. I, I think about it this way though too. You know, um, anybody out there ever been married before? You ever been, you ever been married before? So yeah. It's hard, right? It's hard as the years go on. I think you got a collective five in the room right now. <laughs> just why, and Steiny with watch a lifetime a party. Yeah, I mean, watch him out. Seriously. Watch him out. But anyway, um, <laughs> no, my next one's going to be great. I, I know it. So <laughs> I promise. Any, anyway, point being is it's hard sometimes just for the sake of itself. So when I look at these names on the team for this long, I'm starting to sense for a lot of Warrior fans, like Steve comes on yesterday, and this is just this is a small sample, but half our YouTube chat is like mother bleeping him after every answer. Right. Um, Clay Thompson goes 0 for 10 in the last game. Let him walk. Get him out of here. Draymond Green, I'm sick of him. Even gotten to the point where 98% of us are like Steph forever, but there's a few people that are like, eh, Gosh, would you right? Would you think about this? A lot of what's going on is just fatigue. That's all that it is, and I think that it, it it's interesting because even with the all time greats, we got there with the Brandons and Buster, for sure. Even with the all time greats within an organization, sometimes you get to a point where people are just done, especially if you are in a moment where you're not succeeding. So right now, a 10 seed and a loss in one game, I think is triggering up a lot of things for people, and they just want like they just want to move on for the sake of moving on because they feel like they're in uh, year 15 of a marriage. Yeah, kids, they, kids just left for college, and good God, we're just staring at each other like, what now? All right, here let's let's go through it. Uh, will Will Clay Thompson be a warrior next year? Yes. Oh. Yes, I, I think so, but yeah. the price to me is the big uh, <laughs> it's the big sticking point. And so I could see him getting a deal elsewhere that is more lucrative. And we talked about this yesterday and just Clay, the way he came off in his exit press conference. I don't feel like he's going to give uh, a hometown discount. So if the Warriors offer him three and 60 and he can get three and 75 elsewhere, he's gone. So let's say they find a number. And so he's back. Okay. Okay. Fine. You paying Kaminga? Yes. Okay. Then we got to move Wiggins. Yes. Oh, for sure. That, they're going to move Wiggins. And that may be it. That might be it. That might be it. We'll see if we get there on the staircase. When Moody's the other, to me, Moody goes as a part of the Wiggins for me. Okay. If, I mean, because I. You may need to make some money work one way or the other. Yeah, and I don't think that they are completely sold on giving Moses the chance to become the player that he needs to be. I don't think if you keep Clay and you keep Kaminga, I don't know how you can develop and you have Pajemski already ahead of him. How does Moody get the minutes to really become the player he wants to be? I it's think I think fair. Moody Moody could be involved. I think GP two becomes a a a salary slot type of a trade piece. I think their picks. Could potentially be on the table. 
Like, that's the first thing I would try to go do if I'm the Warriors is I'm going I'm going Wiggins, Moody, potentially GP2, and future picks to see what I could get in return in terms of a really good player and offer that team to give me their bad salary. That's where I would start. And can you possibly trade Chris Paul? And I think we're going to have Bobby Marks on today, right? Yeah, to- we'll try to... We try to figure this out. I mean, the Chris what, Paul thing is complex. What can yeah. you do with the Chris Paul contract? Much like, and I think about the genius of the Warriors with what happened with KD, and KD begat D'Angelo Russell, which begat Wiggins and Kaminga. You got Wiggins and Kaminga for Kevin Durant, essentially. It's incredible. Which is how could you get two of the same players? Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, you should have known in four years totally, there'd be overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, I mean, but you want a chip, Christ. so you can you can forgive them. But I, I wonder if they can't turn the Chris Paul uh, contract, which is an albatross. And Ramona said there well, is no albatross, and it's, it's not really an it's albatross. It's not because it's only one year or no years, right? So it's not an albatross. But if you, you could turn that salary away. slot into something, then I think you'd have to let Clay walk. You know what I mean? Like if, if you, you got a thirty million dollar player yeah. coming back, and and then. Maybe even do something else um, in terms of you know get if they get under a certain apron then they have a, then they have access to a twelve point nine million dollar exception mm-hmm. that they could build off of. So, but in order to do that, you may have to let Clay walk and Chris Paul walk to get under that. You you still might do it. Yep, you still might do. I it. mean, I like to me that the takeaway from li- now that we've listened to everybody. Yeah, Dunleavy was the bookend. No lake of yet, but well, I'm sure no it's lake. coming. Now that we've listened to everyone and watched the season end, um, my takeaway is obviously Steph is still the the Earth's core, and and Jonathan Kaminga is not going anywhere. All right, and that's the end of my TED talk. Like everything else is possible. Well, then, if you're telling me Kaminga's not being traded, then that would lead me to believe that, not that they don't necessarily don't think that there's a quick fix, but that Joe Lacob is taking a longer, not, I mean, he's taking every kind of view. He's taking, how can we be good next year, but how can we be viable in three years, which I think is what, what you got to do. All right, what else you guys got coming up? The show, yeah, Steiny. Always. We're going to do yeah. the show. Bobby Marks is going to be on it. And uh, and let's talk thank you contracts. Okay. Let's talk about it. Not for you. Yay. Yeah. On 957. <laughs> All right, Chance. Have a great show. All right. I just saw your voice. They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be bright days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you stay. It's Willard and Dibs. <laughs> On 95.7, the game. So Brandon Crawford, DJ BC Raw, used He's to... He's tearing it up in St. Louis. Is he? I haven't even looked. He's had like eight at-bats, <laughs> something like that. He doesn't even play. Well, what are they doing? Uh, who, the Cardinals? Yeah. Or, or the, the Crawford Cardinals. family? No, the Cardinals. I mean... Well, they didn't get him to be a... Like, he's just a piece. Like, he's just a backup. That's if all that, he, though. Yeah, but that's all he was going to be here. Right. But I bring him up because... Um, I used to be in the Giants clubhouse almost every night in their one, 107 win season. Um, you know, things haven't gone well for them since. But anyway, um, DJ BC Raw is in charge of the music. He's and, one for 11. Um, Sorry, oh, 11 at best. So he now has one career hit not on the Giants. Correct. Okay. Two walks and five punches. Was it a single or a double or a triple? He has no doubles, no triples, no homers. Okay, so so I will a, extrapolate. It was a bingle. Yeah. So Brandon used to have a specific song that would start his playlist whenever the Giants won. And it was by Ariana Grande. And I bet you know damn well which song it was. Yeah. Go ahead, Dibs. Probably Thank You Next. That's exactly right. Yeah. This is his way of saying, we beat you, thank you, next. And as we have now graduated into the post-Brandon Crawford era, because he is one of the examples of what we're talking about today, um, what an appropriate song to be played by a guy who ended up being one of those guys. Thank you, 
Next. So Crawford, Posey, uh, Belt, Steph, Clay, Dre. Might we get there soon with Kittle or Trent Williams? Trent Williams. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm mostly going homegrown people here, but no, but he'll he'll be you know there. What I'm saying, yeah, like these are really hard decisions that you have to make, and sometimes I come down on fan bases ourselves because we do build an unfair puzzle for the team to figure out, which is when we win. You just want everybody back. Two years ago, we sat in the parade, and everybody wanted everybody back. There were tears in the audience because G to the P to the 2 was leaving, and oh, God, how dare they? How could they let him go? He's a champion. You want everyone back. And then they do it, and they stink, and you yell at them for bringing them back. And that is the cycle that happens. So to me... That's where we are in Warriorville right now and the number one conversation for us all to have. Thank you, contract. Yes or no? Steph, put that aside. That's been signed for a while, plus he's Steph. Yeah. Draymond, it's too late. You already signed it. However, there are ways out of it. Yeah, and Clay I was against it from the start. Yes, you were. And Clay Thompson sits here right now at the fork in the road. Thank you, contract. Yes or no? Well, it depends on what it's going to uh, be, and it also depends on what it either allows you to do or prevents you from doing. Well, that's if the it's important part. Well, yeah. Who if, cares how much it is? Not my money. Well, it, it matters if they can't sign anyone else. Correct. So if Which they, they're not going to do. They're right. not going to do that. Well, then, then it's a no on the thank you contract because Clay is going to be able to get more than what they could pay him and still allow themselves to do in the open market. So... If you wanted to keep Clay and have the ability to go out and sign somebody else, he'd make twelve million a year, and he's not signing for twelve million a year. That's not happening. Well, I don't know that he's even going to get the offer he reportedly already turned down. Elsewhere, anywhere, two and forty-eight. I don't know if he's going to get that anywhere. Oh, I think he will. Maybe I think he will. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, is Bobby at three fifteen? Is that what we're doing? Okay. Bobby Marks, for my money, is the foremost NBA contract expert out there, period. So if you want to know what the Warriors can do, in addition to what the Warriors probably should do, what's the going rate for XYZ? Who could you trade Chris Paul for? How does that contract work? If you want the answers to all of those questions, one hour from right now on this station, on this show, Bobby Marks. There is no voice I would rather have today in the world than him, and he's here. So that's exciting. Plus, we have everything that's been said, not only by Steve Kerr on this show yesterday, Mike Dunleavy earlier. All of it is very, very important. And so we'll be talking it out, and we're always open to you, 888-957-9570. And I do think that this is one of those days, one of those times, um, an organization rarely is doing things because the fans feel a certain way. But make no mistake, uh, organizations dip their toe in the public waters to know how people re will react to things. Like, why do you think sometimes when there's a suspension, like take Draymond Green, why does it take till 5 o'clock the next day? Right. They all got to work at 8 in the morning. It's the first damn thing they're talking about. But part of it is they want to know what's the discourse. Okay, what if we do this? What will people say? What if we do that? So the Warriors are definitely, and they've got extra time this offseason as it turns out. So the Warriors are in information gathering mode, which is what is available to us around the league. And how would our customers feel if we fill in blank? So I think that, to me, historically, if you look at the idea of thank you contracts, it is a very difficult question to answer. I know a lot of you will act like it's not. It really is. I know a lot of hardcore Warrior fans right now are like, we're hardened. We're ready. Yeah, let Clay walk and trade Draymond to Detroit. I, I hope you know the second that happens, crying in the streets. Oh, my God. They're, not, they're, they're wearing another uniform. 
And we'll go through that. Nobody gave a rip about Brandon Crawford. And the second he went to St. Louis, his articles in every single paper in the Bay Area, how could the Giants do this? They let him go somebody who's one for eight. One for 11. One Martin. for 11. Yep. Yep. Four weeks into the season. And it, you know, it's different with this group. And I know that uh, Brandon Crawford won the two World Series championships and he was a forever giant and all the rest of it. But for the Warriors, there is box office involved. Sure. And, you know, Steph Clay and Dre for sure is something that you would love to keep intact. But at the same time, if you bring them all back and if you pay Clay 24 or whatever the amount's going to be, and Draymond's already making 24 and Steph's making 55, well, there you have 103 million of your 170 million to stay below the tax threshold. So you're paying those guys more than 60% of your total. You're not going to be a championship team. Now, can you be a championship team without them? I don't think so. So then you have to decide what's more important to you. Is it keeping the big three, quote-unquote, together for box office and letting them play out their, their time here while also letting the young players develop? And, you know, you're probably still not going to be a top-four seed. You're probably still not going to be a championship-caliber team, I, <sighs> even if you bring everybody back or if you trade Draymond and Wiggins and you let Clay walk and... You bring in new players. Does that make you a top four team? I don't Probably know. not either. I don't know. I like I to me that's getting ahead of ourselves. It's getting well, ahead of ourselves. For me, that's the conversation. Well, but but there's no way to know that yet. You you can't say well trading them's not going to make you a top. Well, you don't know who you got back. Of course, maybe it will. Right. I don't think being really good next year is off the table. I'll say that right now. I think they're more likely to be really bad next year than they are really good. Maybe, and that's fine. But I don't, if I'm the Warriors, I don't deal in likely. None of this is likely. Like, you, sure, you have to make smart decisions, but if you're going to be in entertainment and pro sports, you also have to be a little bit of a dreamer, I think. You got to go for it. It's all we ever ask of our owners. And Joe Lacob is not scared. He is not scared. And you have to be willing to go out there and make the move that totally blows up in your face. Um, and if you are, you might strike gold. And so I'm not saying it's likely. That doesn't even really bother me. I'm more interested in what's the effort, what's available to you. Does it at least intuitively make some sense? If you're not great, like, I mean, take the Giants as an example this year. You're not going to get a huge drumbeat, not the same drumbeat of angry fans even if they continue like they are now and stink. 8-11. and 11. They're 8-11, and 11 and they they don't look exciting, and their big signing, Blake Snell, his ERA is a bajillion. But why is nobody mad? Because on paper, what they tried to do, people went, okay, I'm in. I get it. That's different. Like So you to me, you have to be willing to do that, and, and, and if it works, awesome, and if it doesn't, you can deal with that and, and take the ramifications. But I, I am not sold on the idea that the Warriors are totally in jail. A tough spot, but being good next year is possible, I believe. And what do you mean by being good? Like I, being a top four seed and being a team that is a real well, threat to win the title? Because I, I, don't, I don't see that. But I don't know how I could answer that because just in the last two years – uh, 44 wins meant the six seed, and then 46 wins meant you don't even get to come to the party. Right, so but both they, of those led to you being, you know, one time you won four games in the playoffs, you won six games, and then you were knocked out, and then one time you were a play-in game, and that's more recent, and yeah. next year you're going to have your best player who is, it looked like he was getting tired this year, He's going to be 37 Gosh. during the next year, and uh, uh, the rest of your your veteran core, I don't think they're getting they're not getting younger. Every, they're not getting better. But every year is different. Like I'm not, you know, when people go Western Conference ain't getting any worse. I don't know that. Well, it's getting better. We don't know. I that. mean, Memphis I is have, getting their their young star back, and Memphis is going to be better. Are they? Houston's on the come. So OKC you're sure. and Minnesota are are certainly going to be. So you already know. Intact you already know who's healthy next year. You know their journey. Health, you know their you story. You never know, Mark. That's no, an unfair way to put it. It's not. I think you it's never the, know about health. Right. You've got Jimmy Butler, who's not going to be able to play in the playoffs that, now because he got hurt. That's my point. So if you ask me, can you be a top four seed? I, my answer is going to be, well, you got to tell me what else is going on with the rest of the conference. Did John ja Morant brandish a gun? Did Carl Anthony sure. Towns get traded? Did your 37-year-old get hurt again? I mean, 
Did yeah. Draymond get suspended right. for 50 games? Did Nikola Jokic tear an ACL? I have no idea right. what the framework of this thing is going to be. What I would be interested in, because we're not going to know that until everyone comes back and the journey unfolds. Can you actually make a move or moves that builds a roster that when you look at it, you go, that can compete? I don't know if that means top four seed. Maybe right, it does. Right. Maybe it means the six seed. Maybe it means the one seed. Maybe it, maybe they're the 10 seed again. I can't tell you the seed. I want to know if this offseason you can build a puzzle and look at it and go, yes, that 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 could compete. I think that's the best you can do this offseason. Yeah. You know that what you have right now cannot. Right. And I think you look at what you have and you think about how you can turn that into something that can compete. It is a series of dramatic moves. And I don't think that it's as simple as, you know, you trade Wiggins and some picks and maybe Moody and you suddenly get one or two really good rotational players who take you from where you are now, a 10 seed, to being a team that can compete. I don't see that move. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm in, encouraged to see what Mike Dunleavy thinks he can do. And you bring back Clay and you make that move. Well then, I'd be I'd be thrilled to see that. I don't know, man. I just look at the whole thing like a big pot of stew. I, I have no idea. Like to say, like I don't see that move. Like the the whole thing is such a massive ripple effect. So it's like it, it's not just one move. It's a series of moves, and then how do those how do those people all fit together and blend together? And then there's the finances, and do they do 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 they have cohesion? Do do they not? You know what I mean? Like I, it, it, this off is going to be significant now. I don't like. I don't see a way where there's not dramatic moves. Right? How how could there not be? And I wonder about dramatic moves. Like a Wiggins trade to me. That's is, dramatic. That's a starter. You're sending yeah, off your. Okay. You're sending off someone who has scored between fourteen to nineteen points a game for you for a number of years and won a ring. Like that's significant. That's a big deal. If if they trade him. Right? When they trade him. Yes, I agree with you. He's getting traded. I agree. And I think Mo uh, Moses Moody's on the move as well. And Kavon, I don't think, will be back. And GP2 will be interesting. He can opt in. But I, I think maybe he'll be a part of something. And Chris Paul will be gone. So that right there is five players on your team this year who probably won't be around. So that would be dramatic. I I look at it this way, too. It, you know, you could say, oh, it could be as simple as Wiggins leaves. You move Kaminga into that starting spot and your starting lineup next year is Steph, Clay, Kaminga, Draymond, and TJD. Oof. That's like as non-dramatic as it could get. Yeah. I I wonder this. Like, do y'all think that the Warriors have a starting lineup player who right now is not on the roster? Do you think that happens? Next no, October, I don't, is no. there a starter yeah. who's currently not on the roster? I don't think so. I'll say yes. Yeah. I'll say yes. Um, but I hear you. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. This is going to be super challenging. So, um, thank you, contracts. When it comes to these moments, which way do you vote? Do you vote thank you or do you vote next? We're sponsored by Robert Half. The important things that Mike Dunleavy said are coming up next to go with your phone calls. This is Weathered and Dibs. Robert F. Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty.
the job. Not everything is as simple as selling your car with Kelly Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. Price it, fix it, trade it, sell it. KBB.com it. I probably operate off the saying there's never a bad time to make a good decision. So doesn't mean it's not tough and you, 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 you stir over it, but um, I'm, I get, my job is to have the best interest of this franchise and the direction of this franchise. And, and, and when I make a decision or we, we make a decision, so um, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. You know how mu music takes you places. Totally. And um, so now when Grandy's playing this, I feel like the Giants just won. Uh, but that hasn't happened. It did yesterday, but that's what this song now does for me. I'm like, ooh, are they in first place yet? Nah, not quite. Ah. Only three back, though. Uh. The Dodgers overrated. Yeah, they suck. They're terrible. 12 and 9? Are you kidding me? No problem. I thought they'd be like 19 this, and 2 right thing, now. <laughs> this thing is gettable. Very. Absolutely gettable. Uh, gosh, my brain. Are they 12 and 9? Is, uh, that, yeah. is that right? Yep, 12 and 9. My, I, I am such a degenerate. Like, <laughs> you, say the, you say the numbers 12 and 9, and I immediately am like, oh, 21. Like, that's just from being at a blackjack gotcha. table and knowing that when you get dealt that stupid 7 and the 5, and you got a 12. You got to hit it. And of course you got to hit it. Unless the dealer's got a five or six, or even a four, or even a three. I but, don't know. I mean, no, the dealer will tell there. you. Dealer will tell you if they've got a two and you've got a two, you hit it. You hit that thing because the two is called a dealer's ace. But the book, if once the dealer gets to a three, oh, you stay. All you third base players, you Matt Chapman's out there. You don't do this wrong because it ticks everybody off now. If you're over there hitting on twelve when the dealer's got a four showing. You got to go take a break and go to the bathroom. Take a lap around the casino. Even when the dealer has a three. Even when the dealer has a three. Okay. Those are bus cards. Good to know. Okay. I haven't played a hand of blackjack in probably 12 years. I have not played a hand of blackjack in 12 days. 12 days since I've played blackjack. You were just in Vegas 12 days ago? I was in Tahoe. Oh, that's right. You were yeah. in Tahoe. We had a listener walked by at, uh, at Harris. Uh, didn't say hello until Twitter later. Like, just tweet. He goes, right. I get a tweet. It's like, did I just walk by you in the Harris <laughs> Casino? boy. I'm like, you did. Um, uh, but anyway, yes, my brain. 12 and 9. Okay. You got a 12, yeah. you hit, and you're just like, not a face card, not a face card. Not a face card. I get a 9. Right. It's 21. So anyway. Giants 8 and 11, where you get dealt a 5 and a 3, you hit it, you get the ace, and now you're... It's also good. It's a good hand. 19. 19. If the dealer's got a king, though, showing, well, then you gotta you, hit that thing again. No, you don't. <laughs> hit that S again. Let's go. Get aggressive. Dibs is over here hitting on 19, but like, but. It's off 19. But let's get under the tax apron. Um, right. Like, come on, man. <laughs> no, I, think I don't the, play blackjack. I think, the, I think the Warriors can be plenty aggressive, at least in spirit. I don't know if that deal exists. Neither do they. But you got to start there, man. You have to start there. Like, there is no... And, and by the way, I'm beyond confident that they will. There is zero parts of Joe Lacob that are going into this offseason like, I just think we should save some money. Like, that's that, that cannot be their first thought. I'm sure the apron and the tax and all of that is very much a part of their thinking. They've all admitted it. But... There's no way that their starting point is lacking aggression. They're 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 going to try to be good, and I and, and I don't think that that's crazy. I do not think that that's off the table at all. Well, I don't know if it's off the table, but it's probably on the corner of the table or the side of the table because when you get into repeater tax penalties, and we'll ask Bobby Marks about that NBA cap expert coming up here in about forty five minutes. And he'll remind us what those penalties are. And they involve, you know, the loss of draft picks down the road. And they involve a lot more of a punitive measure than maybe we all think about. And so, yes, you want to continue to be good and compete. But to just blindly go above the second apron again no, not to be blindly. the 10 seed yeah, no. is foolhardy. And I don't think that Joe Lacob is going to do that. And when you look at a year, you take a year and you get below that threshold 
then you can avoid some of those penalties in the future. And then maybe in two years, in Steph's last year, in Draymond's second to last year, maybe then you can be more aggressive after you've gotten out of the repeater penalty. Yeah, I just think that um, that Joe Lacob has shown us something over and over and over again, which is that he he does not want to spend a lot of money unless you present something to him that looks like competition, and then he will. So but I don't. That has netted championships, and now it's netting a ten seed. So right. I wonder when you. So you're going to present something when else you go to Susan him. Powder and you stop the insanity. No, but you're going to. You're, you're not going to present him the same thing. Nobody would ask him to go spend four hundred million dollars again for this group, but he might spend on another group. Right. What if the group looks different? Like I guess that's all I'm really saying. When people, oh well, how can they get better? By getting different players, and and I I find it funny that that people don't think that that's possible. Of course, that's possible. The the Warriors have been monitoring that for two years. Three months ago, half of you believed that they almost got LeBron James, and today they just can't find anybody new. Of course, they can. And never forget that in the NBA, when you've got a great player who decides it's time to move on, or a team that looks at that player and says, this this ain't it. We got to go a different direction. You'd be shocked sometimes what the deal looks like. You can't play player for player in the NBA. It never works. When Anthony Davis went to the Lakers, who went in return? You all remember Brandon Ingram. Give me the rest of the deal. Brandon Ingram is not Anthony Davis. And most of you, there's, you won't even remember who else. I think else uh, one of the balls was involved. Lonzo Ball was in that deal. Well, that worked out. Yeah, Barely, barely played a game since. Yeah, Grandy. I was no. Josh Hart was also in that. Josh deal. Hart. This is a bunch of so what. Brandon Ingram. Now the Pelicans are considering moving on from Brandon Ingram. Julius Randall was in that deal. Julius Randall. Good call. Who is now on a different team, and they don't like him anymore. So, like, my, my point in saying that is when you go, oh, Minnesota's not going to give you Carl Anthony Towns for that, they might. They might. They want picks. They want assets. But you the think Warriors, they've soured on Carl Anthony Towns? I think that their playoff run this year is going to be real interesting. It better go really well. I mean, he's a guy making, what, $45 million? He's a guy making the max. It better go really, really well. Yeah, I just don't I don't see that the Warriors would be a team that would be able to take on that contract. Joe Lacob's going to take on Carl Anthony Towns and no, have a payroll of 225 no, million you're, and you're sending that amount of money out also or more. Right. So it's not hard. You're going to send out Wiggins and and Draymond, the Wiggins thing, and Clay. The hardest thing I to mean, imagine is Wiggins going to the Timberwolves. That's actually the problem yeah, there. I don't know. I have I believe me. Like if if you it, it, let's say Chris Paul that option got picked up and then there was there was Moody and Pajemski and two first round draft picks like my, I I'm just spitballing no, huck and stuff I, I all over the are. place but the point is I know you are. is those assets that's what teams are looking for when they are rebooting Utah's not going to send Laurie Markin uh, out and get a, a new budding 26 year old star. That's not how NBA trades work. You're just going to get assets. You're going to get stuff. You're going to get a big bucket of stuff yeah. that may or may not turn into something. And the Warriors have a bucket of stuff. They can send you a bucket of stuff. Yeah, a lot of first-round picks that are going to be in the 20s as opposed to another team who might be able to give you picks that are going to be in the lottery. It's funny that you think that the Warriors' picks are going to be in the 20s in one breath, and in the next breath, you don't think they can be any good. If you're going to get Laurie Markin in, if, if I'm Utah and I'm sending my best player to Golden State, yeah. a team that has been in the playoffs pretty often, not three of the last five years, but a team that's shown a track record, and I'm thinking about what first-round picks I'm going to get back, I'm less likely to send my best player to a team that is going for it than I am to a team that's probably not going to be going if, for if it. If Utah thought Laurie Markkinen was such a perfect, uh, like, well, boy, you're definitely going to be good with Laurie Markkinen, they might go, huh, I wonder why we're the 13 seed every year. We have Laurie Markkinen. So I, I, these other teams' belief is not really necessarily going to be about, oh, God, if we send the Warriors... This guy, the oh, Warriors are going to be great. 
You've said it. I've said it. We've all said it. People aren't afraid of the Warriors anymore. There, 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 there is no like, oh, God, that's going to be the 28th pick in the draft. Not necessarily. I mean, it's a lottery team right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about it? Like, let, that's something I haven't heard come out of anyone's mouth yet. They're a lottery team right now. But likely picking 14th. So still, lottery still. and, you know, the lottery, the top of the lottery is different than the bottom of the lottery. And if you're the Warriors and you're thinking about next year's lottery, I know that next year's draft is a lot better than this year's draft. So yep. I think if you're the Warriors, you'd be as willing to take a year and maybe swallow it and know that you have your first round pick next year and look at next year as a chance to maybe rebuild as opposed to this year. Listen, again, I, in, in no way, shape, or form am I sitting here telling you, oh, easy peasy. Just, you know, make phone calls and get another star and let's do this again next year. All I'm saying is it is possible. And that is where I believe their heads are at. I believe that that's what they are thinking as a starting point. You can't make too many calls yet. You certainly can't call Minnesota. They haven't even started the playoffs yet. But, like, I absolutely believe that there are a handful of much younger, productive NBA players that the Warriors have been monitoring for a couple years now, along with everybody else. You know, Steve said it to us yesterday. For those that caught this one, he said... It surprises me every year, the trades that go down in the NBA. I, like, this is going to be their starting point. I don't know if they're going to be able to get it done. But they'll try, and if something excites Joe Lacob, you think he'll pay? I do. I do. I wonder, because, you know, you've paid. You've paid the last two years, and it's gotten you next to nothing. You've paid this year. You paid three hundred eighty million, and you're the ten seed. So last year was something. wasn't wasn't Last year was not no, what he wanted. No, last year you, was you know one playoff series win, and then you know you were the six seed, and you know you paid. I don't even know what the total was with the tax, but you paid about the same, and so you run it back this year, and you pay three eighty, and you don't even get into the playoff series. So I wonder, and he's not the only owner, by the way. He's the CEO of a group of owners. I wonder when they say enough is enough about paying $380 million to be a 10 seed. Might be this year. But again, I, th I, that's why I look at it as a staircase. You start with my kind of golden goose scenario. If that deal's not there, then yes, you start going down. And could it lead to a spot where the Warriors go, let's just start highlighting younger people and let's spend a whole lot less because we do need to build this thing back up a little bit. First of all, that would obviously be very disappointing to Steph Curry. But is that possible? Sure it is. Here's what Dunleavy said today about whether or not uh, the finances would be big, small, or somewhere in between. Um, you know, the, the financials will always come into it. It's, it's part of the puzzle. I wouldn't say we're at a point now where we're saying we got to be out of the tax or we got to be under a certain apron or anything like that. We're going to look at everything. I think if, if you've got a team that you feel can contend for a championship, you, you do what it takes financially. So um, we'll look at everything. Um, we'll balance it out. And it's hard to say right now in terms of, what it what it's going to look like and all that because this is April and this stuff goes into June and July but you know how Joe is with his willingness to spend and compete that I don't I don't think there'll be any restrictions but we'll also be prudent I mean to put a team out there that can't make the playoffs like we spent four hundred million dollars this year I, I wouldn't recommend that so we'll figure it out but I don't think we have anything set in stone in terms of parameters we got to live by yes he's the, I think that's what he's saying is Joe still willing to spend if this thing looks pretty sexy i think so if they can't pull off something sexy then no it's it's no different than the way we shop try something on look in the mirror does it look amazing ah let's spend a little more than i thought actually this looks like crap i can't breathe i'm not spending on that. or it looks good and you look at the price tag and say wow i'm not uh i'm not gonna spend that maybe on that yeah maybe and if i'm minnesota and i'm looking at Next year, I'm much more open to trading Rudy Gobert than I am Carl Anthony Towns. Well, and I, I know Rudy Gobert is not a player that you would want here in Golden State, and I wonder what team would want that. I just the, like that. I bring up Carl Anthony Towns not because he's the more desirable one. I bring him up because there have been league voices talking about this for weeks, if not sure. months. Like if Minnesota does not do really well in this playoff run, then. 
I think that that relationship may may be ready to come to a close. Yeah. I don't think Gobert is part of the conversation. Um, we'll go to the phones here in a sec. This is what Mike Dunleavy said on the idea of chasing a marquee player via trade. The premise of getting better, um, that's what we got to look at for sure. So that'll be taken into consideration. We also got to be mindful of the player, who it is, um, the age of the player, uh, the skill set of the player. It's, it's all got to fit to to be able to put the chips on the table to make a move. So those are the things we'll kind of look at and and, and evaluate. But um, yeah, there's there's multiple ways to get better, and that's certainly certainly one of them. Okay, age and skill set. I got it. He needs to have a two in front of his age. It'd be nice. And he needs to have a uh, height. He needs to have a a ten or an eleven or a zero or a one in the second part of his height. Chris Paul's got that. He's got a one. Right. If he's got a zero or a one, it has to be paired with a seven. Ah, gotcha. If he's got a ten or an eleven, it's got to be paired with a six. Not a five. They're okay. playing poker over here. I'm looking for certain certain things to fit with other cards. Right. Yeah. You gotta be tall and you gotta be twenty something. And you gotta be good. Yes, and, and there are well, obviously. Well, and if you look at how many of those <laughs> players there are out there, it'd be amazing if he was like, "We're looking for some bad players." Well, Javale McGee is, is a way. guy who would fit, and you know yeah, that's cheap, so you could do that whenever you there's want. There's a lot of that's big stiffs a, out there that you could bring in. That's not a marquee player. He's talking about marquee players, right? And it's always funny to hear Mike Dunleavy and anybody, yourself included, talk about that because a lot of times these players are players that teams like. Like Carl Anthony Towns, I'd be surprised if Minnesota moved off him. And I know you've heard whispers from your league sources and you've looked around the league. And, you know, if Minnesota's going to sour on Carl Anthony Towns, then that's a Minnesota problem because this is a seven footer who's got some guard skills. He's averaging 22 a night for a team that's a three seed. And you're just going to cast him out because. Think about what you're saying. You, you though. gave him a max contract and now all of a sudden you got good. And you've got Edwards, and you've got Nas Reed, you've got the Cat. You've got a good team, uh, and you're the three seed, and now you're just going to be done with them? I'd argue if, I don't you, get if that. you wrote down on a list right now the top 30 players in the NBA, what percentage of them have moved teams within the last two or three years? What percentage of those players, though, have moved when they're at their peak? I mean... Probably a lot fewer. But, but no, not fewer. I mean... From Anthony Davis to Donovan Mitchell to Jimmy Butler to... What's um, years ago, though, for these guys? Butler's been in Miami for three years. Okay. The, Donovan Mitchell's been in Cleveland for at least two. Kawhi Leonard and James Harden and, hell, I mean... The older you, players there. Kevin Durant and an older guy. Kyrie Irving. Yeah. And, I mean, we go on and on and on. Like, Give me players in their 20s. Like, Carl Anthony Towns is 28. He's Donovan at the Mitchell. peak of his but of We're his talking career. about marketing. Utah just did this with their best player already once. And marketing has been on three teams in, right. uh, in six years. Yeah. But, to my point. But that's Utah. This is Minnesota. Right. The three seed and a team that's had the best year that they've had since Marbury and KD. Uh, and they're going to move off of them? Let's see how the playoffs go. Which, I that's get the that. premise. Let's see how it goes. Because if they don't do well in the playoffs this year, yeah, I could see them being pretty discouraged. It's not going to go better than this. Well, and Anthony Edwards goes from 13.5 to 35.5 next like year. Every, he goes up. The Warriors story that we're sitting here telling, all these teams have their story too. They've got their own aprons on. Yeah. You know, like it's they've all got a story. Hell, we talk about Giannis changing teams every damn six months. People and yet he's been on one team, right? His but, whole pe career. but people don't poo poo it, like you know what I mean. Well, Milwaukee poo poos it. Jo Joel, and they've never traded him. Joel Embiid's name comes up all the time. Julius, Another one team guy. Julius Randle's a two team guy, and it feels like his team wants to dump the hell out of him. Wasn't he on New Orleans too? For a time, or no, he just got straight traded to uh, New York. No, well, Randall, no, Randall was he? Yeah, he was from the Lakers, and then in the in the AD trade, and then ended up in New York. So three team guy. Look at that. Yeah, these guys move addresses all the time. So to think that that this off season would be different, I I don't. Uh, it it won't. There's going to be some address changes now. Sure, so sure. You got to try to get in on that. Well, and you want to get in on that as far as a young guy in his 20s, 6'9", yes. 6'10", six, six, or above, highly skilled. And yes, if Carl Anthony Towns is a guy who's available, do you have the assets needed to 
to ship them out to Minnesota, players that Minnesota would want? I'm not here to say that it's likely. I'll I'll admit that it's unlikely, but that's our starting point. Well, you got to take a that's swing. What, that's what you try to do. And we've got two yeah. months to talk about it because free agency is not. Unfortunately, we're done with basketball games, and now we're left with basketball ideas until July first. You're not one of these guys that when the prom is coming, you look at you look at all the ladies walking down the hall, and you're like, "Well, no, nah. she'd say no." Go ask. Dude, shoot your shot was that's all, all I had. You got. That's like, all go, I had. Go ask. Believe me, I got. I struck out more times than Brandon Crawford don't, in a Cardinal uniform. Don't be falling in love while she's walking away. Go ask. If it doesn't work, all right. Now what? That's all I'm saying. I fully acknowledge the pickle that the Warriors are in. But you, you got to try. You got to see. We don't even know yet who's going to be available. You know, that's one of the things Dunley be said. Like, it's April. That's the other thing. We're so conditioned to when the Warriors season ends. It's like, all right. Let's talk about what you're doing. It's two weeks away. Now right. this time. Or four days away. It's two months away. So, um, I don't know, man. I definitely got the vibe off the last two days that the Warriors do not see themselves as not players on on in this market. I think they see themselves as players. Got to see who's available. Got to, gotta, like, puzzle pieces all over the floor. Put it together. I don't even think they know if Clay Thompson fits. Their PR machine is just, oh, God, we want him yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you do. You do. You want him back. But I don't know. At what price? At what role? Who else is on the team? All this stuff's got to go in a certain order. So I think it's possible. That's of course it's saying. possible. It's possible that the Warriors are really good next year. I think it's uh, highly unlikely that they're really good mm. next year. I think it's more likely that they return mostly intact and they are the same kind of ball club, 40-something wins and 8-11 to 11 seed, and that's just the way it goes. Uh, presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. All right, straight to the phones coming up next. And then, as mentioned, in 20 minutes at 3.15, if you want the questions that you have answered, if you want to know what's possible for the Warriors, what are the contractual constraints, what's out there and doable in terms of trades and signings, there's nobody better than Bobby Marks, and he's on this show in 20 minutes, 3.15, Willard and Dips. Oh, gotta hit it. Of course you gotta hit it. Hit that S again. Business. It's all the things that keep this world turning, and behind every one of these companies is a part.
aggressive and uh, you know really attacking looking for championships but at some point you you can't spend this much money for a team that didn't make the playoffs so we have a lot of decisions to make and a lot of uh, a lot of questions to answer so they you know those things are all kind of thrown into the pot and you have to figure it out hey dub nation it's steve kerr and you're listening to willard and dibs on 95 7 the game did he say pot did steve kerr say pot yeah splash the pot totally trade him teddy kgb trade him that man did he lick the oreo you tell me mike dunleavy on draymond green's future in terms of having him back, I think very, very high likelihood. I can't imagine a scenario where he's not back. Could be wrong, but man, he's signed up under contract. We value him. He's a core piece of what we do. So fully expect him to be back. I think we won over 60% of the games he played in this year. So you know how meaningful he is to winning and he'll continue to do so. I think he's in a great place mentally, um, you know, just evaluating and observing him over the season after the suspension. Um, I think he's learned from it. Um, I think he's better and um, we'll continue to work on that stuff and have it on top of mind. But, you know, I think um, we're in a really good place with him and excited to have him back. Dibs, let's go live to Mark Grandy, who has just completed a snack. Well, and I think and, I know where he's going and I'm not going to say where I think he's going, but I will say <laughs> after if I'm wrong, what I thought that the two of you were communicating non-verbally. Okay, so, well, Grandy, there's a specific phrase in what Mike Dunleavy just said that's really got Grandy's attention. Yeah. Which, which one is it? Could be wrong, but <laughs> huh, I mean, you know, you never know. No, you oh, yeah. just could you, be wrong. You did it when I thought you guys were gonna <laughs> talk about because he did a little bit of the Farhan well, in that as well. As well, <laughs> well, and for me, the licking of the Oreo is when he says he's under contract. I, I honestly think it's one of the most not like purposefully dismissive. Those are facts. Yeah, but it's like it's a way of of like how formulaic can you get? How much do you love that guy? Well, he's under contract. I mean, it's like, hey. Uh, how much do you love that much, guy? Well, I'm married to how him. How much do you love your wife? Well, I'm well, married to I her. Mean, we're married, so. I mean, yeah. I mean, right? I would assume we'll still be together next you know, year. Yeah. I, mean, I mean. I've got her under contract. <laughs> yeah. What else are you offering? Right. <laughs> you know, I mean. Don't like, maybe did give a little for honey and chuckle in the middle of it. That's and, what I thought you guys were going with. And there are two things here. In the first 10 seconds. <laughs> Very, very unlikely. <laughs> well, very, very unlikely is not a Draymond's not going anywhere. Right. And then he follows up with could be wrong as if it's like totally out of his hands. Dude, you're the general manager. So listen again to the way the first 10 seconds of this goes when they ask him about Draymond. In terms of having him back, I think very, very high likelihood. I can't imagine a scenario where he's not back. Could be wrong, but man. He's signed up under contract. We've had uh, <laughs> very, very could high likelihood. Wrong. Could be but wrong. But it could be wrong. But man, you know, he's like under contract. That sounds like an answer that Steve Kerr would give because it's, wait for it, not his job. Mm -mm. So if Steve said, well, there's a very, very high likelihood that Draymond comes back, but I could be wrong, that would make more sense than if the general manager, whose very job is to make that call, said, but I could be wrong, right? Am I right? You're right. I mean, the only way that it would be out of his control that he would be wrong would be if Draymond decided he didn't want to play basketball anymore. Then, well, then you know, it's not Mike that Dudley, crazy, actually. Well, I mean, <laughs> he's just one flail punch and a choke hold well, away. Yeah, but I, again, like all, at minimum, you take from that look if someone makes us an offer we can't refuse. And, and that in and of itself is a new dynamic for the big three. That in and of itself is a new dynamic yeah. for the big three. Um, they sounded more firm about Draymond last year when in theory Draymond could leave on his own than they do this year when they've got him under contract for three more years. So... I just I find that interesting. That again, I would predict that the all big three that are still in Warrior jerseys next year. I think that is north of fifty fifty. You had it at sixty five thirty five. I think yesterday just or sixty forty. Well, yeah, and was that just for Clay or was that for big three? Well, that was big three, but it yeah. was really. I mean, if Clay is gone, Clay. it's all based on Clay. Yeah, I think Steph is at a hundred percent, zero percent. He's not. Draymond, I would probably put at ninety five percent. He is something five percent. He's not. 
And Clay, yesterday I had it at 50-50, and I still believe that. Okay. Uh, Bobby Marks in 10 minutes. Let's go out to you. How about uh, Ben in Oakland? Hi, Ben. Uh-oh. The mouse doesn't work. Mark, can you do this? Uh, okay, thank you. Hey, Ben, what's going on? Oh, not much. Um, I have just some, you know, I listen to a lot of uh, sports talk radio, national media, and I've yet to hear one even proposed maybe scenario that leads us to be a title contender next year. Not, not one that makes any sense based on salary cap assets, blah, 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 blah. How so? And I also think Lakeup is willing to spend um, if he thinks we can win a championship, but he's not willing to spend for two rounds of the playoffs. No, but let's, so let's I, go, I I let's go to your, Ben, let's go to your initial point. Why, why do you not see a scenario where, where the Warriors can contend? You don't, you don't, you don't think that if Laurie Markinen or Carl Anthony Towns and, and uh, and and some younger rotational three point shooters that maybe aren't twenty one but they're more like twenty six. Like you, you don't see that as even being potentially on the table. I don't see how it would happen given the cap, salary cap constraints, um, what assets we have to trade, um, who would want Andrew Wiggins. Uh, it, I just haven't heard the scenario. Which hey, if this happened, then this could work. Um, maybe Bobby Marks will tell me in a few minutes, um, but I just have not heard it once, even in a maybe. So I just don't see how it could possibly happen. Yeah, well, Ben, appreciate it. Here's what I'll say. I think we got it figured out, guys. But uh, here's what I'll say: it's possible. That's all you need to know. Now, if you don't think either of those players do a damn thing for the Warriors, you can have that opinion. But if if your premise is the Warriors' salary and assets are like they don't have what they need. All I'm telling you, and don't take it from me, because by the way, it's never from me. I'm not a reporter. I am not on the inside. I'm only on the inside from the standpoint that we've got access to people who are on the inside. And so from a number of conversations, the Warriors are not wasting their time when they are monitoring these players and moving things around and feeling like that if major names come on the market, they've got a shot and that they would be in the mix. I have not just heard that from one, not from two, but from every single NBA insider I've talked to. Not five, not six, not seven. And so have you, because a lot of them have been on this show. And they're sitting here telling you that the Warriors hunt at a big game level. So if big names are available, the Warriors are calling. Can they get it done? I don't know. I don't know. But to say that the scenario doesn't exist, I think is incorrect. Well, the scenario exists, but I, I do think it's a long shot. Sure. And, you know, it depends on what you want to part with. And everything we've heard is that they don't want to get rid of Jonathan Kaminga. And so I think about if you want to make a big swing and you want to expend assets, and you're not going to include Jonathan Kaminga, and you are going to include anybody else, I don't know if that is enough to really bring back the kind of a big swing you're looking to bring back. You had a guy on your team last year who averaged about 20 a game, and you were able to get Chris Paul back for him in a basically a like-for-like -like deal and he's a guy averaging 20 a game. And granted, he was a flawed player, yeah. <laughs> and he's turned out to not be the player that he was here. But in terms of assets at the time, he was as good of an asset as Jonathan Kaminga is now. Oh, I don't Maybe agree Maybe not with that the same all. level of upside. I don't but agree with that at all. I mean, he had, that, he had already done more in the association than Kaminga has done. Yeah, but you're just talking. And about, I think that you're overestimating what the league thinks about Jonathan Kaminga. I think you're underestimating what the league knew about Jordan Poole. The, like, like this is not a numbers game where you're just like, well, he's averaging 20 a game. Everybody knew about Jordan Poole. They knew that the Warriors had absolutely had to get rid of him. They knew that the Warriors wanted to get rid of him. That in and of itself changes an entire structure of a deal. The Warriors are hell-bent against the idea of trading Jonathan Kaminga. So that already makes him a better asset than, than Jordan Poole. So I get what you're saying. Um, but I'm not underestimating the asset that Jonathan Kaminga is because I'm not putting Kaminga in these conversations. 
I don't think the Warriors are interested in dealing him at all. Right, and that's why I think that if you're not going to deal Jonathan Kaminga, then all these big swings that you're talking about them trying to make, I think it becomes a non-starter for a team looking to part with their number one asset. Ramona told us otherwise two days ago. Right, and I... So I, do they have the assets outside of Kaminga? Unequivocally, yes. And I disagree with no, that's, her yeah, that's assertion. That's She's fine. not a GM, and she knows a lot more than I do. But I'm entitled to my opinion, you sure and are. I don't think that uh, I don't think that the assets that they have are good enough to command back the names that that you've thrown out. Uh, we're sponsored by the Alameda County Probation Department. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy. Stay right where you are. We keep going on the phone calls, but also this is really important now. Okay, I can't wait for this conversation. What is actually available to the Warriors? What are the numbers? What would a Chris Paul trade look like? Uh, what would an, a Wiggins trade look like? The financials, all of it. There's nobody better than Bobby Marks. And he joins us next on Willard and Dips. Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits, and a promising future?
Bay Area, it's Draymond Green. And you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Will we be using that next year? The way we use James Wiseman. Oh, boy. Hey, Bay Area, it's Draymond Green, former Warrior. This is James Wiseman. <laughs> Man. <laughs> too I don't soon. Uh, no, you know what? It's actually not too you're soon. Right. It's you're not, right. It is it's right it's on time. <laughs> it's been a It's minute. right on time. Uh, back to your calls in a little bit. Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Thrilled that you're here with us and really thrilled for this next guest. We've been waiting all week. I, I, I don't even think that that game was over yet. On uh, on Tuesday night, when I texted the thread and I said, "Bobby Marks, now let's do this because we got to figure out an off season here." He's the best NBA front office insider for ESPN. Bobby Marks with us on Willard and Dibs. Bobby, how are you today? I'm good, guys. How are you? Yeah, uh, we're great, man. Hey, listen. First question right off the uh, off the bat: um, How viable? are the Warriors in terms of acquiring a big name should he become available? Well, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's it's a matter of where you are salary-wise. Um, this is different than years before. You know, this is different than combining two salaries and going out and get a $45 million player or a $50 million player. Um, where they are right now, it's not viable. Where, where they are right now, from now until um, uh, June 30th, it's not viable. Um, if you're basically kind of in a frozen transaction period um, where you ended the season with your finances, these new uh, apron rules that started on Monday, uh, the inability to take back more money, the inability to aggregate contracts, meaning combining salary. So if you wanted to go out and get a $48 million player, you wouldn't be able to combine uh, Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green, for example, here. So for now, you're kind of in a holding pattern until you figure out, what you're going to do with Chris Paul and what the price tag, if the goal is to bring back Clay Thompson is. And then, it, then you can start figuring out as far as, you know, where your salaries are, you know, do some of the restrictions that are really strict right now, start to loosen in everything right now. But yeah, I mean, you've got from a draft equity standpoint, you've got, um, you know, you can trade your first round pick starting the night of the draft. So you can move 25 and 27 or 26 and 28. You can also move that pick that's owed to, the Wizards that you can move that's in the um, you know it's in the in the top twenty here. So from an equity standpoint, you know you've got pieces. Um, it's just a matter of loosening um, you know some of those restrictions, and I think that's a big reason why you know Joe Lacob has been on re- on the record saying that there's there basically has to be some type of budget here, and the budget has to come to pass before June thirtieth in order to get below the apron and have that flexibility. The way I'm reading it, and how much does the Chris Paul contract play into that. Is there a way that that contract could be used as a resource in a trade by guaranteeing it and finding somebody to take it on? Well, that's what you can. Sure. I mean, that's what happened last year with, uh, with, with Phoenix um, when they wound up moving um, Chris, his, his contract at the time was only partially guaranteed and they wound up getting Bradley Beal in the deal. Um, you could do that. I think it's just a matter of is, is ownership in the front office willing to absorb more salary. Um, you know, if you're moving $30 million, um, are you willing to take back a $30 million guy that's, that's guaranteed? Um, you know, I think that's, that's, that's the kind of the unknown right now, because if you, if you, uh, if you take, um, if you take, if you just wave Chris, um, yeah, you have, you know, you know, the flexibility to, to get under the luxury tax or get under the, you know, either apron, even if, uh, even, if, even if you bring back clay. Bobby, how much is Clay Thompson worth on the open market? I think he's, you know, I heard somebody say the, mid, the non-tax mid level. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, like, I know he was bad the other night in Sacramento. And I think that's the shame of it all. Um, he wasn't good in Sacramento. And I thought, but I thought he had been really good up into that point, you know, kind of since the all-star break here. I still think he's a $25, $30 million player. I really do. Is he a three year on for three years? Probably not. But if, um, if the magic fall, I'm going to just give an example. If the magic falls short and, you know, they need shooting desperately, would you pay Clay two for 60, two for, you know, 50, somewhere in that range? And I I think he's still, um, I think he's, you know, a north of $20 million guy. Can the Warriors afford him at that price, that price point that you're laying out? If it's two and 50 even, can Joe Lacob afford to bring him in and still stay below either apron, let alone the tax number? Yes, 
they can because if you take um, if you take Chris off, that gets you down to um, about 141. Um, you you add 25 million there, it gets you 166. The apron's like 177. Um, you, you still have you could still add a couple minimum guys here, so it, it is certainly doable as far as and that gives you you know as I said some of those restrictions that you have right now uh, begin to get lifted and it gives you the more the more flexibility to go out and and, and do another deal if you wanted to. Bobby Marks, ESPN, with us here on Withered and Dibs. Bobby, let's go back to what you were saying about how, for right now, you cannot combine two salaries to get a to b- get a bigger salary. So, how and when could they? So, in other words, when they when they were able to get to a point to get into a conversation about acquiring a bigger player, how in in you know dumbed down terms can they go about yeah. doing that? July first. That's when, that's when basically the clock resets as far as where you are financially. July 1st is the, is the, is the date to circle. And I think, um, you know, certainly Chris's contract gets guaranteed on June 28th. Um, so you'll know by the end of June as far as where Golden State will be going into, into free agency as far as from a flexibility standpoint. When you look at assets they possibly could package at that point, how is Andrew Wiggins viewed around the league at 26.2 next year? Yeah, it's a little bit of a rich contract. Um, you know, there were moments when, when he was, you know, pretty good. And then there was moments like, you know, the Sacramento games and there were probably more moments like that, um, that this season. Um, you know, three years at whatever, $75 million, for example, um, what, what's left is, is a rich number. Um, but it's, it's a matter of, okay, what else is coming back with us? Right. Is it, is there, um, is there another player? Is there a young player? Is there draft picks here? Um, every team needs a 20 to $25 million player to, to put in a deal if the goal is to go out and get a, you know, 35, $40 million guy. So it's a, it's a, it's more of a, um, I don't want to say trade asset, but it's a, it's a trade component that a team could use. The value of it as far as on the court is probably not where it was, you know, certainly from two years ago. Bobby, this is what I. This is the one I think a lot of Warrior fans struggle with, especially, and this is an extension of that that Wiggins conversation. If the Warriors get to a spot where they can get into a conversation about a big name player, do they have the assets that another team would want without including Jonathan Kaminga? Well, I mean, it's it's a matter of yes. I mean, you got Podzinski, you've got Moody, and you've got draft picks. And Trace Jackson Davis, right? Those are your, th- you know, take coming out of the, out of the equation. So what are those three draft equity? And then, you know, you add that big contract there. So I, I certainly think so. I think that from the young players perspective, you do. I don't think you have to put coming in. I mean, it's just a matter of kind of who that player is who's available. When you look at the aprons, the various aprons, and Joe Lacob has been very adamant about trying to get out of that second apron. What's the big punishment that lies in the future for Golden State if they continue to be a second apron violator? Yeah, so what will happen is if you finish next season over the second apron, your your first round pick in 2032 gets frozen. Okay, so what that means is that you won't be able to use that in a trade. If you're in the apron, um, you know, basically three years in a row, so you're starting with the 24-25 season, um, your draft pick in the seventh year, so all the way out, will get moved from wherever it is to the back of the first round. So let's say, you know, seven or eight years from now, Golden State's got the first pick in the draft. Well, that all of a sudden becomes the 30th pick in the draft because you've been over the apron for three years in a row. Bobby, let's talk about Chris Paul specifically for a second because I know this one is a little bit intricate. Can you explain to our audience what exactly the Warriors can do with with that contract, other yeah. than as you said, obviously just waving him. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, in any other probably season, um, you know, I think it's a it's a it's a trade asset here. What you can't do is um, because it's not guaranteed. You you can't trade Chris Paul out right now and, and take back a thirty million dollar player because you're basically sending out zero as far as in, in salary because there's no protection to it here. So it, it, it's 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 a matter, and this comes down to ownership. You know, how much is ownership willing to kind of absorb if there is a player out there um, that they can go get? And if it's not Andrew Wiggins, if it's Chris Paul, and it's now you're adding draft picks and you're now you're adding um, your young players here, you know, that's a big trade asset here. But, you know, there's certainly a big cost to guaranteeing that. There's a cost to um, running back the same group. And I, and I said that 
before the Sacramento game, I thought you could have made an argument that, you know, hey, based on how they played at the end of the year and, you know, 10 and 2 and 27 and 12 in the last 39, like, you know, you know, good on really good on the road. But since Sacramento, now it's like, okay, now who's going to be the odd man out? And I do think it's going to be Chris, unless, as I said, ownership is willing to take back more money and take back more money means another player and also bring back Clay Thompson. From a practical standpoint, is there even a suitor out there that would want Chris Paul at $30 million to give up their $30 million asset? Probably not, unless you're getting something back, something good. Um, you know, I mean, we saw it last year. You know, we didn't, um, you know, there was the likelihood that Chris was going to get waived in Phoenix. Um, and then all of a sudden, Bradley Beal becomes available. Um, but the difference was, last year you were able to combine salaries. This year you're not. So that makes it a little bit more challenging. So if there was a $50 million guy out there, the, to go out and get, you know, put him and Wiggins together, the likelihood is that you still exceed that second apron, and that won't be allowed. Interesting. Bobby Marks with us. Uh, ESPN here, Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Bobby, I wanted to follow up on your comment about, yes, the Warriors can afford Clay Thompson at $24, 25000000 million per year. Can they afford Clay Thompson and also find a way to trade for a younger big name player? No, they can't. They can't because basically what will happen is Clay would replace if you waived Chris would replace that. You're basically right at the luxury tax. You know, you you sign you sign um, you you sign Clay and you move Chris and you take back a thirty million dollar player. Um, the likelihood is that, you know, um, you know, you're going to be deep in attacks. You're going to be in the apron and, and, you know, um, and that's something, you know, as you guys know, ownership has pretty much said no to unless, you know, Hey, things change. I mean, things are pretty fluid. Um, we don't know who that next disgruntled player will be. Um, but as I said, the challenge as far as going out and you basically got to go dollar for dollar on every trade, um, you know, certainly presents a challenge. So then, then let's take the warriors at their word. Cause they've all said in the last 48 hours, they want to keep clay. Yeah. When, when you hear them say that, what does that mean to you as far as their roster reconstruction? I think what it says is that they want to keep them, but there's a price to keep them at. Um, and they're probably not willing to go back over a price. I, I think it's, listen, there's, you know, you've got Moody and, and, and Brandon as kind of fallbacks if things don't work. And eventually, and I know you've got you know, Curry on two more years and Green's got three more years. Eventually, like, you're probably going to have to rip the Band-Aid off this. Um, and if he's step one to doing that, the, the challenge comes with, you know, if, if Curry was in the last year of his deal, then you could say, well, may, you know, maybe you do it one more, you know, run it back one more year and stuff. You know, Steph's got two more years left and you still want to put a competitive roster. And it's, it's a matter of kind of having faith in those two young players that, that you can do it. Um, as I said, if the price is too steep to bring him back. When you talk about ripping the bandaid off, when that actually happens and Jonathan Kaminga is still here, what does that extension look like? He's going into his last year of a team option at 7.6. If he gets extended this offseason, how much do you think he gets and for how long? Well, rookie extensions are the, the, the most challenging ones out there because, you know, Kaminga and his agent aren't competing against anybody. There's nobody with cap space. It's really just the, the day before the regular season starts. Um, basically, uh, Golden State's got all the leverage um, in, 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 until next offseason. So I always thought, you know, the, the extend, rookie extensions, my good friend Brian Windhorst always says it's kind of like the fun extensions, right? Like you're basically buying upside. It's a stock. You're, 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 you're hopefully that that player can take two steps and he can become an all-star. I think his number is probably in that, in that five for 130 range. I don't think he's a max player, which would be five for 225 or five for two, yeah, five for 225. But I do think he's probably a 25, um, probably 25 to $30 million player. Um, because I do think the upside is there um, to be a you know a top starter slash all star type player this in the, in the league. All right, Bobby, let's stop messing around. What's up with Laurie Markkinen? What's going on here? Well, you know he's re- renegotiation eligible in Utah. Um, they can't do it until um, until early uh, August. It's going to be interesting as far as um, what approach uh, Utah has, has taken. You know, Danny Ainge went on the record the other day and said, you know, we're, we're willing to go big game hunting this, this offseason, um, which is rare because that team basically has punted the last two trade deadlines here. So he's in the last year of his contract. Um, certainly if he does not renegotiate or even extend, um, you know, certainly that's a guy to kind of circle. Any chance that Warriors uh, dream of a LeBron James uh, 
taking the minimum comes to Golden State. I mean, Bobby, fans here, are, we're, we're delusional about Giannis. We dream about LeBron. Well, maybe LeBron will just, his son will get drafted here in the second round, and, and he'll want to take the minimum. He might play for free. Pick 52, circle that right there, right? Yeah. 52 or 53. Listen, who, you, you never, you know, I, this is the, the beauty of the playoffs is that teams that lose, it changes like the, what your plan was for the offseason because someone's not going to be happy. Someone's going to be asked to be traded. Someone's going to opt out of their contract. Someone wants to go play somewhere else here. And that's why I think we're just kind of, we just sit back and wait, see what happens in the first round, see what happens in the second round. And then all of a sudden, come early June, there's going to be one guy not happy, two guys not happy, and then all of a sudden you try to figure out who, how you can go out and get him. I mean, some names, Bobby, even just possibilities. Like what? Who, well, I, who yeah, could, listen, you know? I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what happens in, in with the Clippers, right? Like, you know, Paul George has been eligible for an extension since last June. Uh, Kawhi Leonard signed one. Um, what happens if the Clips lose in the first round? Mm-hmm. You know, that's 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 interesting, but. But it, but it, then it comes back to um, you know the, the you know the challenges of kind of getting your finances in order and being able to have the ability to go out and, and get a guy like that if he did become available. Is Minnesota one to watch too with uh, Edwards' contract exploding next year and the cat and Gobert already making north of forty for next year? Yeah, I mean they're they're uh, they're deep in the um, in the second apron. And I think it's interesting what happens with that ownership. Um, you know, what gets resolved there as far as who's going to be in charge? Um, do they have to slash money? Phoenix is not an easy first round series, certainly for them. Uh, McDaniel's uh, extension kicks in. Edwards extension kicks in. Um, they are, they are deep, you know, a team that's never paid the luxury tax. This is kind of rare territory. And what happens if they lose in the first round? Um, Bobby, this is all great stuff. What, what if we just pull back, uh, from, from these specifics and ask you this? What with the finances as they are, and yeah. and the names as they are, in your opinion, w- what are the chances that the Warriors find a way to compete at a high level next year? Well, you know, here's the thing. You know, forty six wins. I know not by Golden State standards and not by their own fan standards and bear where they were. Like it's basically like you're you're three or four. You're gold. You're Draymond Green suspension away from being the four seed. I mean, that's the reality of it or the three seed because how good they were on the road and how good they were in this, in the second half. And that's, I think that's the struggle you have, right? Like there is, you're, you're not like a rip it down and build it back up. Your 46 wins. I mean, tomorrow night, New Orleans wins 49 games and could be sitting home just with, you know, with second most wins in franchise history could be with golden state. Um, So the West is brutal taking two steps back in the West will set you back for a long term. So I don't think you, you know, this is a teardown thing. I do think you can compete in the Western conference, but it's going to have to make, you know, it's going to make some hard financial decisions and, and probably a, a, a big step in development with your young players. Mm. Bobby, thank you so much. Though the boy, the, you really helped everybody out today. Thanks a lot. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Okay. Bobby, Bobby Marks, ESPN. He laughed at me, but I was kind of going for You're laughs. funny. <laughs> well, yeah. Just because I was speaking for Warrior fans. Bobby, Giannis, and LeBron, or, or LeBron. We'll just take one of the two. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Great answers, are though. You, are on, you allowed uh, on to play for free? I don't think you're allowed I to play just, for free. I mean, whatever. The vet man, who knows? Great insight, though, on the the idea of Clay's number, because if it's, if it's what Bobby's talking about, 25 or so million, can the Warriors afford him? Yes, but. That kind of precludes you from doing a lot yep. otherwise. Yep. Yep. So if you're willing to give Clay and, and, and he reportedly already turned down twenty four. Right. Now I That was admit, before he went over ten in Sacramento. It was also before he had a really good second half of the season. Right. right. So what plays here? Our last memory or most of the memories. If you if you re offer him two and forty eight and he takes it, let's just say hypothetically that Clay's like, you know what? I'm in for the two and the forty eight. I'll take 24 this year. I'll take 24 next year. I played this team. I love this team. (laughs) Uh, That pretty much takes you out of the running for almost everything else. I've played this game. I've coached this game. I love that guy. That's pretty strong. And the other thing that I took away is uh, all of these conversations we're having, which are great, see you on June 30th. Yeah, June 28th. Well, the, that's what he yeah. said. June twenty eighth is the Chris Paul deadline, 
And that's yeah. when you're going to get an indicator. The Kavan is June 24th. And the, so. but, but the Chris one is the is like an indicator of other things. You know what that'll so be. It's an indication sensation. That's right. And so you're going to know Cha-ching! if the Warriors feel like they can bob and weave a little bit or not based on what they do with Chris. That's the first domino, June 28th. Right, and between now and then. We're going to talk about it every day between totally. now and then. <laughs> and they will ask other teams between <laughs> now and then. So, Chris at 30. If we uh, we guarantee it, what do you think? Will you yeah. take it? I mean, they're going to have those conversations today. But if you do take Chris Paul's 30 and guarantee it and trade him for a $30 million player coming back, that means Clay's gone. You're not getting a $30 million player back for Chris and keeping Clay at 24. Clay might be gone. Like, like, okay, hold on a second. Two things. First, Mike Dunleavy was asked about that game. Forget everything else, that game, Tuesday night. Oh, God. And how much that shapes what they're going to do. Yeah, honestly, not a lot. I don't take that game into consideration too much. I just, that was the worst game we played all year. Give credit to Sacramento. They did a great job. But, you know, I watched this team for 82 games. I mean, the amount of times that we've been ran off the court, um, very few. I think there were a couple of home games in January. Um, Obviously, the Boston game where that was a different scenario. But, you know, that was... That was a game last night where I think you got to, or the other night where you got to be careful of like overreacting to how it went. I don't think that represented our team on the whole for the season. Uh, but that being said, um, it kind of put the stamp on what the reality of this year was. So, uh, here we are. And I would say going into that game, whether win or lose, no matter how it happened, we, we, I knew we had to get better. Try to tell you before the game that the decisions had already been made. I tried to tell you that all day that the decisions had already been made. And then here's the second thing. I want everybody to spend some time, whether it's today, April 18th, or June 27th, or any of the days in between, spend some time with this. Clay might be gone. Like, really, I, really, really, I really, thought so, um, really might be gone. Yeah. I just don't. I look at the financials. There's two things in play. Actually, three things. One, I think the owner wants to get underneath the apron. And Bobby did a good job of laying out the penalties if you stay in that apron and you don't want to be there. And I know seven years from now is forever away, but you don't want to be there when your team's not very good and win the lottery and and wind up at the back of the draft. That's a worst case scenario for a team in seven years looking to rebuild. I also think that when you look at the financials, they don't want to pay Clay as much as he's going to be able to command on the open market. And I don't think that he's going to settle for, hey, Clay, you know, you've seen our numbers. We can afford to give you yeah, but- $12 million, Clay. Would you would you take a 50% pay cut to stick he's around? No, he's not going to do that, but they're also not going to offer that. I mean, it's not. he doesn't want to go play in Timbuktu for for, for 13 seed. Um, but he also doesn't want to stay here and, and play for $13 million no, for a 10 not. seed. Presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Okay, people want to talk on this. 888-957-9570. Let's do it. And again, are we at a spot where it's thank you contract time for the Warriors? And if it is, do you vote thank you or do you vote next? We'll take your calls coming up on Weathered and Dips. I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time, my parents had to round up the whole neighborhood to track me down. It was a mess.
Can they afford Clay Thompson and also find a way to trade for a younger big name player? No, they can't. Holy cannoli. This is crazy. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95 7 The Game. <laughs> Very good. Downer. Very good, Grandy. Yeah. Very well good. And, and Lucas, did you have anything to do with that? Probably not, right? Yeah, no. Thank you, Grandy. Um, that was awesome. Moral support from the from the L man. No, I bet Lucas was probably heckling him the whole time he was doing that. You Is call that, that a rejoinder? Yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, fight on, Grandy. Good job. Is you that doing great? Much? Keep it up. You're doing great. <laughs> great. Uh, you're doing great. Oh, Captain gosh. Bring Down and the Buzz Kills joined us. Well, uh, no. Look, and I loved your question. That's so, that, Bobby. That, <laughs> so. So here's no, what I'm thinking, they Bob. Can't. <laughs> yeah. No. no. They can't. They can't. Well, I love how direct he was with that. And um, I think that you can start to see what the Warriors are dealing with come together. Now, one thing Bobby also said that I bet brought a bunch of you ready to punch your car window. You know, I mean... You're probably a Draymond suspension away from the four seed. Oh, I was about to make Bobby. Bobby, you watch your mouth because those are fighting words in this town. You know, they're still right there, Dibs. Well, <laughs> and it, I'm not going to oh question Bobby's oh rationale boy. because Bobby has done a whole lot more in the association then you, me, Grandy, Lucas, and our whole audience combined. Yep. He's done some things. And when he looks at it, and you look at Draymond Green, and he was, I think they were about a 600 club when he actually was, <laughs> when he actually was able to play basketball. So <laughs> if you, that. I know I can't help it. Come on. He played 55 games. <laughs> Let's say that he plays another 15. Let's give him 70 on the year. Okay. So he plays 15 more. And if they win at 60% clip, that means they win nine more. Well, but no, because you're acting like they lost all 15 of those, and they didn't. What clip do they win without him? They won uh, less than 600. And well, I'll sure. But in other words, if you got the take the 15 games that he didn't play in. Right. If they win at a 40% clip without him, but they win That's at a, six 60, they, a 60% right. with him, that means you're only going up three wins. Okay. Yeah. And three more wins get you... Still in the play-in tournament. It does? Pelicans, three more wins. Still in the play-in tournament. By tiebreaker, granted. Gotcha. Phoenix also 49 wins. Chin of their chinny-chin-chin into the top six. So, but I I mean, I get your premise, and I get his. his premise? I'm not trying to get people (laughs) mad at me. (laughs) And I love Bobby Marks. Yeah. Great appearance. No, I... like anyone who says that is not wrong, Draymond's suspension lowered their seed. Sure. But does Draymond's non suspension mean that the seed goes up high enough to matter? And can you just run around assuming non Draymond suspensions? Because no, you can't. <laughs> so I like I get where everyone's coming from on this. The Warriors don't suck. Like we get, like, I, I, you know, he said it. He goes, I understand your your standards out there. You've been through a dynasty, but I do think we got to stop that. The Warriors don't suck. Like, chill. They went forty six and thirty six. They don't suck. It's off. It's not good enough. But they're not a disaster. They're not a tire fire. Like, geez, chill. They yeah. went forty six and thirty six. You get what I'm saying? I do. So. Here's what I think they're going to do. And this is why Clay might be gone. What I'm talking about at the beginning of the show, when I think there is the possibility to be on the on the market for big names, I do think they can be on the market for big names. If they get one, Clay's gone. This is what I don't think they would ever say publicly. And they obviously could never say to Clay. Clay Thompson might be a fallback option. So they're going to say we want him because they do want to talk to him this summer. They do think there's space for him on the team because, as you point out, going big game hunting for Laurie Markinen or Carl Anthony Towns or anyone else who might become available is unlikely. 
by definition. We don't even know who's going to become available. So it's unlikely. Should that happen and become available, though, you'll be ready to move on from Clay. If it's not available, then, yeah, you can re-sign Clay and add more players, just not high-level players. It's interesting the way you lay that out because you're making it seem like all of this is going to happen over a long period of time, but all this will have happen maybe over the course of an hour because when you get to these deadlines, and the big one you mentioned is you crack that open, <laughs> uh, June 28th for Chris Paul, mm -hmm. the $30 million decision. Let's just assume that they decline that option. Chris is, because, Chris is probably gone. Right, yeah. unless you have another team that's willing to make a trade for their player and that would preclude you really from signing Clay Thompson. Let's just assume that on the 28th of June, you decline Chris's $30 million, so now you have that spot to potentially give to Clay or go big game hunting. Well, Clay's free agency would start July 1st, and between now and then, he would have already gotten some feelers, and so I would imagine Clay would know what he's going to do pretty soon after that, that window opens. You, you have done like 54 July 1sts in your life. You know damn well how this works. 55 of them. Yeah. Well, I, I, I skipped Actually, the you know, first 54. One. Yeah, Because exactly. I'm, I'm an August baby. Yeah, My bad. Exactly. So you a zygote. 54 July 1st, and you know damn well how this works. Signings get announced at 1201. That does not mean they waited to 12 to start talking to each other, even though that's when you're supposed to wait to start talking to each other. Exactly. My point is this. These conversations are already happening. They're already happening right now. GM to GM is happening right now. Hey, what's your framework? What's your salary situation? Yes what, and no, because you some of the about? players you want are still playing. Some but, of them, yeah. right. But if you want to know what Utah's thinking about Lori Markkinen, call them. Go to the beach together. None of you got anything to do. Figure out where everyone is. And they know that. And, and, and the same will happen with free agents. You can talk to the agents. All of that. It's all happening. Bobby Marks indicating that Utah might be in a, like an in-go mode. Maybe. Danny Ainge is maybe looking to add, not subtract. Or he's lying. Right. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. Mike Dunleavy might be lying. Yes. And he's lied before. Mike Dunleavy is definitely lying. Well, cut that and send it. He's definitely Sorry, like, no, like, of course he is. Of course he is. Or at least being, like, not for, you know, not forthcoming. Like, there's a very, very high likelihood that Draymond would be back. I mean, I could be wrong. Right. I mean, listen to that statement. You're he the couched G it. <laughs> You're the GM. Well, this isn't happening to you. It's happening by you. So, um... Of course, anybody at a press conference is almost always lying, at least partially. So anyway, yeah, you're right. It has to happen in an hour, but it's happening now. It is. Yeah, but you don't have the ability to really know who's available. As Bobby was saying, you know, depending on the, the playoffs, you may have a disgruntled star who emerges if their team gets knocked out early and all of a sudden yeah. Paul George or, you know, Carl Anthony Towns or whomever I want out. You know, Giannis is the dream. I don't think they have the assets or the money to make that work. But the other interesting thing from Bobby is you can't really do salary match. You can't aggregate salaries. We're going to take this player and that player and that player and go get Giannis. You can't do that until you get under the apron, and that's not until after the Chris Paul July, uh, June 30th deadline goes. Exactly right. Exactly right. So um, I guess I would look at it this way. If you're a Warrior fan that wants change, you want a 20-something-year-old star, the first thing you want to see is the Warriors decline Chris Paul's option by June 28th. Right. They do that, and that would only be step one, but that's, that's an indicator that, that maybe they're having some conversations at a bigger level. Right. Step two would be Clay signs for a very small number, or or Clay. It, it becomes a magic. clear that yeah, Clay yeah. Is, Clay goes elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk skills and Vallejo on Willard and Dibs. Hey, skills, what are you doing? Hey, what's up, Willard and Dibs? Uh, well, while well, I was on hold with you, I basically just got done cussing out my neighbor, and when I got off the phone with you, I'm going to cuss him out again. Why? What'd your neighbor do? Well, I'm on hold with you, waiting for you guys to go to me. I'm trying to hear. I got my door getting banged on, bang, bang, bang. And who knows I call this show sometimes. You can't be just doing that. 
Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah. You got to tell him to knock on your door before 2 o'clock. You could do it during Steiny and Goo because you can hear them over your knocking. Well, I tell you what, I'm, he's going to get a piece of my mind because I thought of a few more things about him I don't like. So I'll I'll go back it. to when I'm done with you guys. All right, let's go. Get him, Skills. Okay. Anyway, I called, the reason I called was because the other night when the Warriors lost the sack, I was enraged, was pissed off, called everybody I knew, telling them that the team needs to be blown up top to bottom. Everybody, players, <laughs> coaches, on down the list. <laughs> now, a couple of days later, kind of think. I realized I was absolutely right. They all got to go all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Bus drivers, everybody. I was right. Like, and because this, this lack of preparedness in that game was unacceptable. The effort was unacceptable. And, you know, like you said, I hope Dunleavy was lying that he's not going to bring back all this whole team back next year because they they run their course. I love them, but they run their course. And now um, I'll, I'll try to get to the end of my point real quick. So after two periods where the Warriors were just got off of winning, like, what, 20 games a year. And honestly, at this point, I would rather have that than have them spinning their wheels right now, getting 10 seeds getting number 16 picks in the draft and going nowhere because at least if we bottom out, we have the, we have the chance, we have a hope of getting a great franchise player to take over and give us something going forward, not just spinning our wheels and like, like we are right now. But right now, because no, we're not going to get a big free agent right now. No one's going to sign here right now. We're not going to get a Kevin Durant, even you know tax problems aside, we're not going to get a Durant of anyone of his caliber right now because, number one, they're, they're not going to be a winning team. They're not going to attract anybody because they're just not a good team. And number two, Draymond's going to jump on him and choke him at some point. Well, and that's it. But, but, but Skills, you're talking about free agency. Free Are we agency. talking about your neighbor again here? <laughs> <laughs> free agency is a different animal. And Skills, you're right about that. They're not going to go sign a big-time free agent. However, I do think that there are possibilities on the trade market depending on how a bunch of things go, and we don't know those yet. But to answer your larger point, um, I get it. I totally get the frustration. You can start with the Warriors don't agree with you. So I get it, but they're not going to fire everybody. They're not going to start over. Joe Lacob has no interest in being a 20-win team ever. <clears throat> but furthermore, I would say, I don't want to speak for you, Dibs, I don't agree either. Um, I'll, I'll stand by the point that, that Bobby Marks just made and that I was just talking about. They're not a dumpster fire. They're a dumpster fire in your mind because they've been so good. They're not awful. So are they that far off? Maybe you can answer that a bunch of different ways. But to say that this is so disgusting that we should cut everybody and start from the bottom and let's be Charlotte for a few years, no. Not like, like We're nowhere near that. And why would you do that? Well, even, even if the last few years of Steph Curry's career don't work, why would you do that? And if you to did what that, end? well, if you wanted to do that, what is the path to go from that approach to being a champion again? There you go. The path is to find another Steph Curry. And while you're at it, find a Draymond. And if you could come upon a Clay Thompson as well, then yeah, go ahead and do that. And you look at teams who have done that in the draft and gone on to be champions. It's very difficult. San Antonio did it because they had one year where they tanked because their best player was injured, and they got Tim Duncan, a top 25 player of all time. And then you fell upon Kawhi Leonard early in his career, and he caught fire in the postseason, and you won another one. So you won a, a series of titles over 15 years, and a lot of it was by great roster construction, but also a bit of luck. So even if you wanted to be in the blow it up camp what does that look like as far as a path to get successful again it's a long shot you'd have to be really bad and get really lucky in the draft and then maybe you could find I, <laughs> generational players yeah. and i think about san antonio now they've got a lottery pick again and they're fresh on the heels of getting a player who could be generational in victor Wembanyama. so you got Wemby coming back next year You've got a probable top three pick this year. Does that mean in five years you're going to win an NBA championship? Of course not. Almost assuredly not. Right. Yeah. Even though you have already one piece and you might get another piece. Uh, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first class money market today. Uh, let's keep going. How about... Uh, Oh, Jasmine in Alabama. Hey, Jasmine, what are you doing? 
Hey, how you doing? Just got off work. Good for you. Oh, yeah, it's like 7 o'clock out there, huh? Yeah, it's 6 o'clock, actually. It's only 6 o'clock in Alabama right now? Mm-hmm. Well, that's news to me. We'll, 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 yeah. we'll, we'll explore later. But anyway, go ahead, Jasmine. Well, I was just calling to say that they probably need to get off of clay. I think the Warriors need to get younger and athletic and kind of build around Steph a little bit. And probably Draymond, because I don't think Draymond got a big market, and Draymond is still useful when you're not acting a damn fool. Okay. Hello? <laughs> yeah. Are you still yeah. there? No, I thought yeah. you were going to keep going. <laughs> no, that was material. She's yeah, running yeah. material. Got it. But, but I, I think um, Clay should, it's just time. They need to get younger athletic. They look the old and slow um, when they played against Sacramento the other night. They need to get bigger, more athletic. And I keep hearing war fans saying, trade Kaminga, trade Kaminga. You don't trade a 21 with that type of potential. I know everybody want to be with Steph timeline, but I think he can get better defensively. He's too, and I know he's very athletic. I just think if he ain't getting guidance for him, don't trade him. Uh, Jasmine, yeah. I think you make Thank a whole you. lot of sense, and I learned that Alabama's in the central time zone. Yep. I did not realize the, that. The uh, easternmost state in the central time zone, and you've got half of Kentucky. I've learned. I'm sorry, half of Kentucky, about two-thirds of Tennessee, okay. and just a tiny bit of the panhandle in Florida. Oh, no Cent way. Central time zone. Really? What kind of a state? Splits itself time zone wise. You got to make a decision. No, those states. Yeah. <laughs> Indiana's got a little bit of a high low as well uh, in the central. You're damn right it does. But anyway, I like I could listen to Jasmine talk all day and I think she made a whole lot of sense. She now, did. Except for it's Her a joke. Uh, it fell well, a little flat, but we just well, no, I thought it. she was. Yeah, I that when I was over here on the world clock. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. Jasmine made a really, I think, a bunch of good points, except for two firm with one of them. And this is just where I sit. I get that a lot of you don't. I am not black and white, pull out Sharpie, Clay's gone. I'm just not. Like, again, the Warriors need more shooting, and a lot of you want to get rid of Clay. He's your second best shooter. So there is, there are a number of scenarios where with a reduced role, Clay makes a lot of sense. I get that it does not make sense with the responsibility he has now. I don't love listening to Clay talk about how, like on that Draymond pod uh, that, that he did a couple weeks ago, he's like, you know, I'm used. It, it stinks to have tough games when you're used to scoring 37 in a quarter. I'm like, you're not used to scoring 37 in a quarter. That happened one time. You also one time had zero points in a huge postseason game. So you're equally as used to those two things. I think that's the hard part with Clay. Clay is still not fully out of living in the past. It's time for future, and that doesn't mean he can't be on the team, but it does mean he can't be on the team in the form that he's been on the team before. I don't know how you make his role be befitting what it should be and still be able to add somebody who makes it so that his role is now different. Because if you, you pay him whatever you're going to pay him, I don't think you're going to have the money. You don't have the draft capital to go out and get a player who's good enough to sublimate him to the role that you're talking well, about. Well, but I mean, he... Um I mean, he came off the bench this year for a good portion of right, games. Right, but he still shot the ball the second most times on the team. Granted. And so I, I just don't know. You don't have the players who can step up and take his place to make it so, yeah, Clay, you be our seventh man, and you play 24 I, minutes a night, and we'll still be good. I'm with you, but again, Clay Thompson is not, and this is, again, this is just my my sort of take after listening to Bobby Clay should not be option one. And I mean that in terms of your roster construction, not your game. Clay should not be part of option one. Option one would be, can you go get a, a much younger, true number two who's tall on this team? Ben Long. That's, that's option one. It's one thing but, Mike said today was uh, positional... Length, not yes. just front court length, but positional, totally. positional size. Totally. I think is what he said. And, and, and if they if they aren't able to do that, then yes, there is a way for Clay Thompson to be on this team and still add more players at the right price.
So there, there are a number of scenarios that he's involved that where he's in, and I would imagine there are a number of scenarios where they're out. If you want to be really good next year, I think I would lean toward out. But I don't. Right. But I don't know if the Warriors are going to have that opportunity to actually be a a contending roster next year. For me, Plan A one would be get something for Chris Paul and get something for Wiggins and Moody and keep Clay at a reduced price. If you can have, if forget the Chris Paul piece because I, that's a long shot. But if you can trade Wiggins and Moody and get back a player who is making. 28 or 30, somebody who's a really good wing player, somebody who's a better defender, and then Clay can become your sixth or seventh man, essentially, then you got better. You end up keeping Kaminga, and you keep Pods and TJD and Steph and Clay and Draymond and the rest of it. That's how you get better. I don't think you get better by, even if you get rid of Clay and you get rid of Chris Paul and Looney's gone, I don't think free agent wise you can go out there and get two players, or even one player to make you better than the players you're losing. You like Jeremy Grant? He's all right. I mean... It's he, another name. Right. What's he going to command? What's he going to command? Is I he don't a free agent, or that would be a trade? That would that'd be a trade, but could be available. You know, you have a transitioning club that's not looking to not looking to spend big dollars, makes the exact same amount as Chris Paul. Jeremy Grant does. Jeremy Grant. Okay. Yep. I mean... That's what we're looking at here. Uh, the Captain Clay report is uh, well timed and brought to you by City Cruises. Plan a birthday anniversary or company party on a spectacular dining cruise at citycruises.com. Clay ended the season by going <laughs> 0 for 10 from the field, the first time he was held scoreless in a game since his rookie season. And there's a chance it could have been his last game as a Warrior, too. And so comes to a close the most depressing Captain Clay report that I have ever delivered in history. That report's taken on water. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Clay report, he didn't score and might be gone. Thanks yeah. for coming. <laughs> I was waiting for the tag on the sponsor. Right, that but, was uh, fun. Just, Holy cannoli. It yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it sure was. I just don't, I don't know how, I, I don't know. I do know how you bring Clay back. But yeah, I don't. He, he signs a piece of paper and then he comes and plays. Well, I was thinking financially and logistically because you know you hear everything from everybody, including Bobby Marks, who says, "Yeah, I still see Clay as a guy who can potentially get twenty-five to thirty, probably two years, not three. Well, but there was something about that too, and I it, it, like I noticed that also where you're like, okay, Clay, are we really? And this is I don't get mad at him if he does. But after a career as a warrior and a splash brother and the big three and all the things you guys have all done together, are you really going to turn down 24 a year from the Warriors so you can go get 26 somewhere else? I don't think so. Like, if he does, hey, go get your two mil a year. Well, 24 was like, before. Really? I know. I wonder if 24 is still out there. I don't know. Yeah. And this I, is you're be, probably yeah. not going to get him for a whole lot less. I know Warrior fans want him for 20. That oh, yeah. that's probably not going to happen. Ten per twenty you know, for two years. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. RC Drew Pat eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy reacting to Mike Dunleavy reacting to Bobby Marks. It's Willard and Dibs and Dan Dibley here, and I I need to tell you this.
season over the second apron, your your first round pick in 2032 gets frozen. Okay, so what that means is that you won't be able to use that in a trade. If you're in the apron, um, you know, basically three years in a row, so you're starting with the 24-25 season, your draft pick in the seventh year, so all the way out, will get moved from wherever it is to the back of the first round. So let's say seven or eight years from now, Golden State's got the first pick in the draft. Well, that all of a sudden becomes the 30th pick in the draft because you've been over the apron for three years in a row. I probably operate off the saying there's never a bad time to make a good decision. So doesn't mean it's not tough and you, 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 you stir over it. But um, I'm, I get, my job is to have the best interest of this franchise and the direction of this franchise. And, and, and when I make a decision or we, we make a decision, so um, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Mike Dunleavy looks like a nice guy, talks like a nice guy. <sighs> he might be a mobster, though. There's never a bad time to make a good decision. Wow. <sighs> He's a cold piece. <laughs> uh, you have to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's we some, saw it with that's, Jordan Poole. That's some good fella stuff right there. Yeah, but watch out. Yeah, um, you better be careful. I think they're all setting it up because right now they don't know, but you you can hear in their answers that there are a number of things that could potentially be on the table, and I think for the first time in all of their careers, there is a full realization and acknowledgement that some of the things that will be on the table include. Clay Thompson and maybe even Draymond Green not being on the team next year. Has to be if you're looking at the financial situation and where they wound up. And, you know, Bobby Marks mentioning that they were, you know, a Draymond Green suspension away from being a top four seed. Bottom line is you weren't a top four seed. You weren't even a top six, a top eight. You were the 10 and you played the nine and you got boat raced. You got motorboated, as Lo Neal used to say. Instead of boat raced, he'd say motorboated, which became part of the lexicon mm. <laughs> even though he knew what motorboating is i don't think that he quite knew what he was saying wait but... what's motorboating don't answer that go ahead don't ask me questions and don't let me answer it <laughs> okay that's the answer Stop. that's the answer all right sorry i wasn't rolling can you ask the question again mark no ah please come on grandy you're better than that i'm too cutting late. bobby marks what yeah. do you want from me sorry too late Today. I want you to be I'm wrong out. on both things at once. Uh, moving Man. on. Yeah. Moving on. I'm like Clay Thompson. No, 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 no. We moving really on. need it. No, you don't. Anyway, what were we saying? Oh, that's right. I said they got boat raced, and you said something about, yeah. you know. I didn't say anything. Man, you, you can say it again. Nope. It'd be cool if you I did. Even, I remember what I said. I don't either. All I know is that they were the 10 seed, and you got <laughs> boat raced by the 9 in Sacramento. So Bobby can say what he says, and he's not wrong his opinion, but you wound up as the 10 and you're in a situation where changes must be made. Hard choices must be made. And so you're going to have to make them. I want to split the difference between what Bobby Mark says and what I hear a lot of frustrated warrior fans say skills was one of them. You know, he wants to blow the whole thing up. Bobby Marks is like, gosh, Draymond doesn't get suspended. You guys are the three or the four seed. And it's like, you're still a contender. And I I'm like, can we, can we split the difference? I, I'm done with looking at this particular group and thinking that they can compete at the highest of levels. I'm done with that. However, I'm also done with everybody out there who's like, the Warriors are a joke. It's over. They're trash. Um, They won 46 basketball games in an absolutely epic Western Conference. That is not... To, to, to make it sound like they're right there. They're not right there, but stop calling them a joke. They're not trash. They're not done. They don't stink. They don't suck. It's not over. All these players are did trade them all. Youth movement. I want everyone to be 19 and under next year. Like, that doesn't make any sense either. So, like, I don't know. Everything, everything, oh, not everything. A lot of what I hear right now feels extreme. It feels extreme. Keep the big three no matter what. No, don't say no matter what. They're all trash. Move on. It's over. No, that's not right either. That's my take. There is a way for the Warriors to tweak, maneuver, trade, and be good next year. 
I don't know if they'll be able to do it, but there is a way. It's not over, over. And so that should be option A. They should try. And we'll see what they can do. Well, that is a thought. And, you know, you want to use the 46 wins as a barometer. And you can because they played 82 teams and they won 46 of them. But I look at what they did against the true good teams in the Western Conference and they were 4 and 19 against the top six. So, yes, they're not a joke because they won 46 games against professional basketball players and professional teams and franchises that also pay their players hundreds of millions of dollars to play basketball. But when it came to play the good teams in your own conference, you got boat raced repeatedly. Enough. You were 4 and 19, not even remotely close to good enough. You got dominated by Dallas, manhandled by Minnesota, outclassed e- by Oklahoma e- City, e- easy, easy, pounded easy. by Phoenix. See, I'm no, doing some alliteration here. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you let me finish it's an up, alliteration here. sensation, but it's it also is. it's it's also inaccurate. Laughed at by it's, the L.A. Clippers. It's, it's, it's inaccurate. It's inaccurate. Mashed by Minnesota. It's in Iraq. You already did Minnesota. Noogies from New Orleans. <laughs> Stop. It's it's inaccurate. New, New Orleans one's accurate. That one's accurate. The rest are not. Ostracized by <laughs> Oklahoma City. <laughs> Pounded by Phoenix. No, that doesn't work just because it's a P. No. You're going to have to phonetically be correct there. Finagled by Phoenix. Finagled. Um, you were embarrassing against the top six. No, they weren't. They Four just, and 19 no, is just, embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. They lost most My of them. My opinion. Okay. It was embarrassing. Yeah, but you're making it sound like they got blown out every time. Lambasted <laughs> by the Los Angeles Clippers. Well, they weren't. They were, they were up by 24 One points. One and three against the Clippers. <laughs> Clobbered by the Clippers. All right. Are you done? Demolished <laughs> by Denver. No, they weren't. Yo, consider a buzzer beater. What are you talking about? Uh, 0 and 4 against the Nuggets. Let's go to, a, 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 I'm sorry, the champs. Yeah, they're good. Newsflash. All the good teams clobbered you. No, they did Gobbled by the good. It was alliteration. I was trying to get through it. I think it's run its course. Just my opinion. <laughs> I had a couple more. Just my opinion. Humiliated by Houston. Let's go to Drew Down and Tracy. Oh, boy. Hi, Drew. What are you doing? What's going on? What's going on? What do you mean? Oh, boy, Dibs. Come on, man. Yeah. I thought we were, thought what, we were, thought what, we were friends, what man. What the hell was that insinuating? It, uh, it's an insinuation sensation. Well, I'm no, bracing myself that? for the invariant, because Drew is real nice on the tube, and then he gets on the air, and he always takes a, shot, a, to- a pot shot at the dibber. I called you Dan Finley last week. Come on, man. That was nice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Sal's not getting it done today, Drew. Yeah. Uh, anyway, anyways, um, want to have a fillet? Uh, so yeah, just, yeah, just to talk about blowing it up. I think that's um, obviously a bit much. Um, you know what? What is blowing it up mean? This team does more than likely does not have a first round pick this year in a draft that's widely considered to be a pretty porous draft, anyways. Um, and as far as yeah, I, you know, the, the CP three thirty million unguaranteed. Is nice, but um, from what I understand about the uh, the new CBA, it's pretty punitive, and they'd have to trade CP3 for somebody making at least as much as him, and you know, obviously that includes attaching draft picks. So I'm not sure how feasible that really is. Um, yeah, you know, just the new CBA is it's just super punitive for uh for teams in, under you know in that second apron, and then uh, Clay Thompson. I mean, a lot of players are going to be jaded and have recency bias on that the last game, obviously. That game against the Kings was bad. He's been really bad in the last three elimination games, but I still think there's a spot for Clay on his team, you know, to come back for a couple of years. But in my opinion, it's, he's got to come back at you know at a reduced role. I mean, I know he came off the bench for a while, but he was still more or less getting starter minutes. And I and I've I've been a, I've been of the you know of the thought that hey, as long as we got C, as long as we got Curry, Clay, and Draymond. You know, let let's ride this core out. But and and I did that all the way up until Tuesday, and this team got embarrassed, smacked up in a nine ten playing game. Oh. You know, this wasn't a playoff series against a top against a top seed. No disrespect to the Kings, but we got smacked up in a nine ten playoff game. So like you know that that kind of makes me think like, all right, you know what? Maybe we don't need to blow it up, but maybe we need to pivot a little bit and, and see what we really have. You know, Moody was cooking in that game; he didn't get much run. Kaminga was up and down. 
But um, you know, I don't I don't really know that there's a trade out there. Maybe Wiggins, you know, you know, like I said, maybe there's something out there. Nothing's really clear cut at this point, but you know, I I'm almost at the thought of next year is like, hey man, like, you know, even if, if Clay comes back and, and Draymond doesn't get traded, which I don't think will happen, these guys might need to take a little bit of a of a back seat and and let's let these young guys really cook. And some people might say, Well, we're wasting Steph's prime, we're wasting Steph's prime. Guess what? We had the the main three plays this year, and like I said, we it ended with a nine ten whooping. So you know we might, especially with, with Moody and, and um, Kaminga coming up on their contract extensions. Are you going to pay these guys? Or are you not? So I think next year, you know, we might need to say, hey, let's let these guys, you know, get a little more, uh, you know, a little more run. I know when the Spurs, I think it was thirteen fourteen when they won the chip. I believe Kawhi Leonard was their was their leading scorer. Not saying Kaminga is that. But, you know, those guys took pay cuts and took a little bit of a back seat to let some of the young guys kind of, you know, kind of kind of get the shine. So we'll see. I'm not in favor of blowing it up. Some tweaks are needed. But then again, I'm not a Fairweather fan. Some of these guys just came around in 2014. You don't win every year, man. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you you, you got to, you know, you take some lumps. So. Drew, there's I'm no, there's no, yeah, the there's Warriors. no question. There's no, Drew, thank you so much, man. Good to hear from you. Like, there's no question that a reduced role is needed. There's no question about that. Um, you're wasting the rest of Steph Curry's career if you stay the same. Like, it's time to start looking at it that way. Like, oh, don't make big changes. You're going to waste the rest of Steph Curry's career. No, you're wasting it if you just, if you stay like this. That's how you can guarantee it's not good enough. So, Drew, you got plenty of good points in there. Um, for me, the only thing that's not an option is coming back and putting all of the weight on Steph Clay and Dre's shoulders again. That is there that is absolute that to me is off the table. That is 100% off the table. They can all be on the team next year, but everybody needs to be asked less. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier in your uh, your 415 approach yesterday I think it was where you want Steph, he could still be the one. He can be the one. But Draymond and Clay need to be the four and the five That's in terms right. of import. And then Kaminga's the three, ideally. And then you bring in somebody who's the two. So Steph can get you 27 a night. And this new two gets you maybe 20. And then Kaminga gets you 16. Draymond's a triple single. Clay's giving you a plucky 15 off the bench. And all of a sudden now, you've got a more balanced team. Bobby Marks put a flaw in my 415 plan. Put a bullet in it. Yeah. Pillow yeah. over the face. Big time flaw. Grant, yeah. do you have that? You put a flaw in my plan to have Clay Thompson on the team and a brand spanking fresh 20 something year old yeah. number two. Do you have it, Grandy? Um, give it to him, Grandy. He's going to give it to him. Give it to him, him straight. Give him a second because Lucas is in there and he's yapping at him. And <laughs> I he's, can't and, see Lucas. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's all over him. And so he's that, that distracts him. Do you have it now? Yeah, I it? got it. Okay, Grant has got it. Go ahead. No, they can't. They <laughs> okay. can't because basically what will happen is Clay would replace, if you waived Chris, would replace that. You're, you're basically right at the luxury tax. You know, you, you sign Clay and you move Chris and you take back a $30 million player. The likelihood is that, you know, um, you know you're going to be deep in the tax. You're going to be in the apron. And, and, you know, yeah, and that's something, you know, as you guys know, ownership has pretty much said no to unless, you know, hey, things change. I mean, things are pretty fluid. Um, we don't know who that next disgruntled player will be. Um, but as I said, the challenge as far as going out and you basically got to go dollar for dollar on every trade, um, you know, certainly presents a challenge. Okay, so that was answering the question of can they re-sign Clay and also go out and trade for a big name? And he said no. There was a caveat. Did you hear the caveat? Yeah. Unless Joe Lacob wants to go back into the second apron. And we all sit here today and go, well, man, there's no way he's doing that. Why? He does it all the time. He simply needs to be convinced that to do it, you could win it all. And so, does that deal exist? Probably not. Right. But I'm not saying no. It might. Right. It might, but... And would Joe be willing to do it? I doubt it. I also I doubt, doubt it, it. Yeah, but maybe. And if you are in the second apron at the conclusion of next year's season, your 2032, which quietly is coming right up. <laughs> if that that <laughs> no, baby's right not. around the corner. Kyle Shanahan uh, knows we won't even be here by the then. The 2032 first-round pick would not allowed to be traded and... If you were in the second apron the year after that, 
then your first round pick, I think in 2034, automatically shuttles to the back of the draft uh, based on being a repeat second apron team. So I know Joe Lacob is not only trying to avoid another $200 million in taxes, of which I think he's already paid $600 plus million in just taxes. I think it's north of that. Yeah, I saw I the number on uh, on Twitter. I think it's six hundred and something million yeah, on yeah. just taxes, bro. Mm-hmm. And I say, bro, to try to bring it home, but yeah, it was unsettling. If I'm Joe Lacob, I don't want to add to that total yeah. for a ten seed. Or you could just do all these things and then sell the team in twenty thirty one. Checkers. What's the fun in that? You playing checkers? He's playing chess. He doesn't strike me as a sell the team guy. No, he's not. He he's strikes not. me as a he's a buy the team guy. All right, Kent and uh, <laughs> the other Lakeham. Kent. Let's go ahead. And Kirk. Kirk and Kent. Kent is his other son. You called it. You called Kirk Lakeham the other Lakeham. I couldn't remember his name. Kirk. I don't want to call him you Kurt. I knew it wasn't Kurt. <laughs> no. Kent not, and Kurt. It's Kurt Cousins and Kirk ah, Lakeham. Thank you. I won't forget now. Yeah, please. We've had Kirk on the show. Which Kirk? Lake Cousins or Lakeham? Yeah. I know we have. We've talked to him. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't remember it, okay? I know. He's making fun of me. Uh, I'm an older guy. Always. Memory's an issue. 54 July 1st. Um, God, I can't believe you know that. Pat in Foster City. Hi, Pat. What are you doing? Hey, thanks for taking the call. Of course. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I, I've been listening the last couple of days, and, you know, of course, they have to make smart moves. I mean, no matter what moves they make, you want to make smart moves. That kind of goes without saying. You don't want to give up value unless you feel like you're getting equal or better value back, whatever that means. So that that goes without saying. But this isn't a call so much from a general manager standpoint because I don't understand all this stuff, and I've been listening to the show. I, I You know, that's all nuance and detail. This is more of a big-picture call, and, and that is, you know, I, I think they, they need to they definitely need to get younger. I mean, these teams the teams we're playing against and losing all year against are, are teams with players in their mid twenties, and our our team is in the mid thirties. And this would be this would be great if it was like golf where they had the the, the senior tour, or this would be great if it was like te- tennis where they had the legend tour. You know, bring these guys back. Hey, they're still playing. You know, but that's that's not the reality of the today's NBA. So unless you're really into a nostalgia trip and the fans say, you know, hey, I'd rather I'd rather see our core guys come out every year, even if they lose in the first round. At least as my guys, if that's what the fans want, and that's what Lakeup's happy with, and they have holes in them. Yeah, bro, bro, that was twenty two months ago. 